Hello? What's good?
They're going to claim the 30,000. It's only Orange Marmalade to fight to the end. And he is going to run it out. He doesn't want to leave this finals. He can't believe that they've lost. They've come so far from the lower bracket. They almost claimed victory. They tied it up at one apiece. He is going to run away. And in comes the final abilities, the final kills that they need, despite having to fight against a very resilient Orange Marmalade. So look at her counter kill. This is incredible. Oh my God. Orange Marmalade turned that on his head. SK Gaming were playing like they won. We know what happens next. There's the Wolves and Bloodlust on Ben Ruki drops down. Down to half. Wow, and down goes Ben Ruki. Do not open. I've opened on him, man. You're joking. A ship made. One starter, two starter. Big swap on Rudy, though. Pistol stun in the cheek, round in the gas. And they take the two. What was that? That was the game winning gouge coming in from Wad, denying anything from Looney. That was absolutely insane. Hello everyone, good morning, welcome to the fourth and final championship Sunday before we go into the circuit. My name is I am going to be your host this morning. I am with Zico, Vendruki, and Supatiz. We have our final eight for both regions. We can take a look at Europe for now, since that is where we're starting with today's games here on this lovely morning of championship Sunday games for Europe. Um, and it's going to, I feel like it's going to be, you know, it's a pretty good circuit here. Zika, what do you think? I feel like, uh, you know, there's a lot of questions still to be answered that we may find the answers to in the circuit. Absolutely. I think in general, every cup has been a good cup so far, but of course, uh, looking to finish it strong here in Europe. And um, we can see on the bracket here, we got LF Org versus My Way in that uh, lower bracket uh, semis. And we got Kungana versus SK Pieces in that uh, top uh, in that uh, top bracket, and um, yeah, I mean this is these are the teams that you would kind of expect to be the top four of Europe. You know, SK Pieces, Maro's big roster, LF Org. You got Swapsy and those guys. My way, former champions, Kungana, current uh, top point earner. So I think this is a very accurate representation of what kind of we expected Europe to look like uh, heading into it, and these are. These are our four remaining teams. They certainly are. We, of course, are starting off the day here with that EU lower semifinals. It's looking for Org versus My Way. We know that My Way, they are, you know, that jungle team, classic jungle team. They still have three people on their on their roster. They could have added a fourth as they headed into this cup if they wanted to, you know, have a, a full roster for the circuit, but they opted to just keep with their, you know, keep with those three players who please. Yeah, uh, the thing with these jungle teams when they add a fourth, the fourth usually just ends up not doing anything. So it's like, I, I could see from their logic standpoint where it's like, if jungle is going to work for us, why not just go as three more prize money for us? We can make it work kind of deal. Um, it's going to be a rough road running only one comp, but if you can pull it off, I could see the value uh, in their assessment of it. And like I said, every time there's been a jungle during a jungle meta, the fourth person just rides the bench uh, pretty mm -hmm. much the whole time. So I think it actually makes sense for them uh strategically uh moving into the circuit uh to just try and make it work with the three and these are the top four point earners in europe as well that are remaining in this cup 
these these are kind of the teams that I don't know if we could expect to come out on top of the circuit when we're looking at all the teams that have qualified for it, but it's definitely uh, possible. I'm curious to see what compositions LF Org are going to be developing because it seems like they were kind of slightly behind uh, the other teams in terms of what they wanted to select for meta, trying to like follow along. Um, are they going to be running any sort of cleave setups at all? Are they just going to be sticking to the mage lock? Is that going to be their bread and butter? Uh, these are the questions I want to answer from them moving forward from we can get that information from this cup and then moving that into the circuit. Uh, questions for Kungana are, are going to be, when are they going to utilize Chaz? I have seen him on his own broadcast. He has a warlock. I thought that was was just trolling on his stream when he was talking <laughs> about Chaz's warlock and was kind of poking fun at it. So, But I, I think that that could be a, a good pickup if Chaz gets solid at warlock, much to the same as we've seen Cubsy picking up warlock in North America. It's kind of weird that those are paralleling each other. That is they, true, yeah. <laughs> Like two of the best healers in the game now re-rolling <laughs> over to Warlock, but um, having Mage Lock and having Rogue Mage, definitely going to be good comps to have in your back pocket moving into the circuit. Ah, I, I think so too. It's it's certainly an interesting point that both of the healers that have start, sort of taken a you know a step back this season have picked up the same class. So yeah, I, I for sure would love to see that from them. Obviously, they're a you know pretty well rounded team here already, but that's just going to make them even more strong. We are also heading down to North America, heading over to North America. Excuse me, Enrique, in the afternoon here. What do you what do you make of that? Well, uh, I mean North America. Right now in the upper bracket, you have Cloud9 and Kawhi. It's going to be our second match in North America for the day. I mean, these two teams traditionally have always kind of gone head to head, being first and second in the region. Cloud9, a new roster, but have really kind of risen to the occasion, bringing in Chun Li on the Windwalker Monk. Cubsy taking kind of a backseat as healer, playing primarily Warlock. And then, of course, you have Flop uh, holding it down on the Resto Druid and Holy Priest. And then our first matchup of the day is going to be three and a half men versus Golden Guardians. I would say three and a half men have kind of proven themselves as maybe the top RMP in North America right now. Um, you know, with their performance overall as well as the mirror matchups, uh, they're looking really solid. Golden Guardians, you know, we know them for the Shadow Priest Rogue, but they've also kind of developed their roster. So it's interesting to see how these, all these teams have developed uh, over the circuit um, and over the years. In some cases, like Golden Guardians, really have expanded their classes. Um, I, I think they realize sometimes you just it like I, I was talking to Absurge the other day and he was he was saying, you know, sometimes you'll see teams that just like alt a cleave like they barely practice. They alt a cleave and they just destroy their RPS and they struggle with that. So they, they figured, why can't we do that as Mage Lock? And that's what they're doing. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's great to see these teams adapt to, to new things and have it work out for them. So I'm sure we're gonna we're gonna be seeing a lot of that as we head into the circuit. Of course, looking for Org and My Way, both teams that have made it already. Now they're kind of just you know playing for glory, playing for for a higher placement and more prize pool. So we'll see uh, what they do. I I do wonder if we're gonna be seeing them sort of start to experiment a little bit as they head into the circuit. Do you think we'll see any of that today, Zico? Um. Yeah. Well. Maybe. I think there's a lot of people that they just want to finish strong, you know, and just put their best foot forward and, uh, you know, try to get as high placing as possible and then kind of ride that momentum into the circuit. But I do think that there is also a lot of teams that uh, could benefit from just uh, trying out, you know, some new compositions. Uh, if they haven't had their fourth member in, uh, maybe try to get, uh, get them in the mix a bit, try to get them warmed up as well. So uh, I think there's definitely some value in that. Um, it, and for these teams, obviously, all of them are qualified already. So um, it's not like they lose qualification or anything if they do try that. Um, but with that said, uh, I think um, the best thing to do with your time right now is just try to figure out how to beat my way. So if it's for LF Org, um, they would just have to, you know, figure out, OK, what's our best comp? Is it something we haven't tried yet? Is it something that we are already playing and uh, we think we just misplayed it in the past or whatever? Um, this is their chance to kind of try that. So I think. Uh, it, it just depends on which team we're looking at. But for LF Org, um, there is a couple of things that we want to see from these guys. We talked about uh, uh, the TSG possibly um, being uh, something that we want to see from these guys. So uh, it could be an opportunity to test it without actually like losing, you know, like you don't want to test that in the circuit. You want to have that polished for the circuit. So this would be a good time to test that, for example. Yeah, most definitely would be. It's, uh, you know, nothing really to lose here on the line. So we'll see if they decide to try that out today. It's game number one, the Grand Arena, looking for Org versus My Way in this elimination run.
Ooh, all right. So this is something I've, I've wanted to see from Elephorg a little bit more. Swapsy on the Enhancement Shaman. Uh, Blizzo actually coming in um, on the Warrior. And then Lontar and that Holy Priest. So they're going for the Turbo into My Way. And we've, we've seen My Way actually kind of dispatch of the Turbos in the past. Um, but Elephorg, they're looking for a, you know, kind of a surprise lock in here for game number one. I'm curious to see, you know, who they go after. And uh, if Kasu and Tony can continue that heavy pressure uh, we've seen on those Melee DPS in the past. All right, let's see it. So uh, for my way, they've dismantled a lot of uh, these um, uh, Turbo Cleaves, but it's been with a Paladin. Now we're going to get to see it with a, with a Holy Priest here. Uh, so we'll see how that works out. A lot of the time, the healer has been the target for my way, um, but also the uh, Shaman. It looks like they are going after Lontar right now. Nice stun on the castle to slow him down. Stun onto Lontar into restun. Do they have the damage? Triple DR stun coming out with the War Stump, but they don't force the Trinket uh, from Lontar. So Lontar escaping with just the of Fade and with just his uh, Guardian Spirit. He's going to be happy to take that trade. Now, what can LF Orc actually get done here offensively? Uh, they're just uh, kind of covering behind that pillar, waiting uh, for an opening maybe, but they still have all of their offense. Izzo might want to go in and pop that Recklessness. Here we go. Big damage coming in. Ray of Hope. And will they make it a negative ray is the question. Doesn't look like it. That's what will be at full HP. Just stabilizing here. Nice mind control on Tony in the back line. And they're getting good uptime here on the Kasu. It swaps you now in the Shastai. Actually, Trinket's out. Doesn't want to get feared here. Doesn't want to uh, maybe get cross CC'd when they're setting up for that kill. But Kasu, taking a surprising amount of damage. Raza uh, will be forced to trade out the Guardian Spirit. And that should be enough defense for Kasu alive. But good pressure so far coming out from LF Org. They're not done yet. Getting a lot of cooldowns here. Tony now finally getting swapped as well as he manages to slow things down with that Cyclone. I think one of the biggest differences for LF Org is that they're running a Holy Priest, not a Holy Paladin. We saw the Holy Paladin turbos. The Paladin was just trained down the whole game uh, by the jungle of My Way. And maybe with the Holy Priest, that strategy is not going to work. We've seen them now already switching off of Lone Tar, which means if they're going after DPS, Blizzo gets a lot more uptime. And if Blizzo gets uptime, I think it's going to be trouble time for Kasu. As uh, Swapsy and Blizzo both connect. Lone Tar getting on top of the fight here as well, going for stun locks, trying to assist as much as possible, but not finding enough damage to take out Kasu in that attempt as he trades out his Roar of Sacrifice. And even between the healers, Relza is running that Kyrian Holy Priest, though, just sitting on the Boon of Ascended. Here comes that Boon of Ascended right now. How much damage can Relza get out? He gets feared on it. He's going to use Will to break out and get value here. Fearing Lone Tar away, Tremor comes down. Swapsy is going to break that crowd control chain, but now Swapsy getting Cyclone. Decides to actually get mass dispelled out of it by Lone Tar, so committing a bit of mana there to get Swapsy more aggressive, trying to get him back onto Kasu. Kasu avoiding him at the moment. Guardian Spirit gonna come down as Swapsy does connect and bash Blizzo away. Tony trying to reposition, maybe looking for a stun or a cyclone here, now chasing down Lone Tar. They get a massive shot, and they are actually attacking Lone Tar here in the main stun. Scatter chastise, triple CC by my way as they swap over to the healer. Can they drop Lone Tar here? Guardian Spirit, Greater Fade, likely to deny the kill. Now the question remains, are they going to stay on Lone Tar, or are they going to go back to the DPS? What's going to be their plan from here? It looks like they want to be going after Lone Tar, but Kasu's getting forced away. When they swap to Lone Tar, though, Relza has had an opportunity to sit in the back here and drink and regenerate a lot of mana should this match go into dampening. And we'll see if it does. We're about three minutes right now. Lone Tar's mana not looking good. Blizzard and Swapsy haven't had the kind of pressure that I thought they would going after Kasu. He's been doing a pretty good job kiting around in this match. Kasu's going to get topped off here. Crowd control going on Swapsy. And this is one of the best strategies. You just go after the healer and then you get crowd control on the DPS. So if Swapsy overextends, he's going to be eating a trap. He's going to be getting feared. He's going to be getting rooted, as you can see, Blizzard right now. So makes it more difficult for Lone Tar, because not only does he have to worry about his own health, but he also has to worry about getting those effective dispels out. Now going after Tony, developing a little bit of momentum. Kasu switches its attention over onto Blizzo. Big aim shot coming in, but he does get topped off quite quickly by Lone Tar. But Lone Tar is burning through a lot of mana. We're not even in dampening yet. Rouser right now with the boon of the Ascended, trying to get really aggressive on that Priest. When that cooldown's up, He's basically uh, an additional DPS and get really aggressive. Not, not really getting the most value in this matchup. We have seen it in the past, though, for Relza and Dampening really be that kind of X factor that pushes their team over the edge and allows them to get kills they normally wouldn't be able to. Yeah, it's been working out really well for Relza. He's been, I think, the only priest actually that been running that Kyrian as well. So definitely a thing that's unique to my way. Uh, right now, Tony forced to use his bark skin here, getting swapped too. And uh, like you mentioned, Lontar's mana is not uh, doing too hot. This matchup 
Uh, they need to find a kill on the side of Elf Org uh, pretty soon. Because Lontar is falling behind on mana, on cooldowns. He doesn't have a trigger right now. My way could set up uh, for that kill. Um, Wopsy right now in a cyclone. And it looks like Elf Org are trying to push here. And they get faster here. He's trying to revive his pet in the back line. And he does get it. They swap to Ralza. Big damage coming in. But Tony is there spamming out the regrowth after regrowth. Getting so many off heals there. Actually saving Ralza's life with that. And now Casado, a little bit of damage, getting stunned here as well in a storm bolt, taking a decent beating, but Relza is able to deflect it there in the back line. Now Lontar as well getting swapped to and uh, right now Casado needs to be very careful to get it scatter onto Blizzo. The potential for a freezing trap there as well. They stun Lontar and fear him. They get a fear onto Swapsy as well. Nice cross here from my way. And that will be the ray of hope coming out for uh, Lontar here. It will stabilize him and get him back to full HP. Now, once again, Kaz is potentially going to be the target of choice here for LF Org, and they are looking to push him over. Big damage coming out right now from Blizzo, telling uh, that Fleshcraft as well for maybe some extra CC immunity. They get a nice intro up there onto Lontar. Scattershot coming out. They're going after Swapsy. Nice uh, Astral Shift by Swapsy reading that swap, and that uh, will be enough for him to survive that Boon of the Ascended, doing a lot of work for Ralza here, but he needs to be careful. He walks into melee range, getting swapped to. That ray is going to be a positive ray. I don't think so. He's taking so much damage using that Guardian, uh, as well, actually using the Apotheosis there as well uh, to keep himself alive. And that uh, was a very, very clutch call there by Relza. But a little bit of mismanagement there with his positioning. He just basically walked on top of the, the meat grinder. And he definitely had to pay for that. Now, uh, he's at, actually behind Lontar slightly on mana. So both of these healers definitely uh, running very, very low on mana. And it's still anybody's game, though, Sid. Yeah, they're right on top of Kasu, pushing for the kill. Exhilaration might not be enough. As they trade out Guardian Spear from Relza, now swaps down the back foot. Lontar is completely zeroed out on mana. Swapsy is stunned. He trinkets, goes for a big healing surge. Swapsy's basically got to pick up the heals, but he's out of mana as well. There's not going to be a lot of healing incoming here, but Kasu dips dangerously low at the same time. Who is going to fall first here? 10% dampening. Lontar getting cloned up for a second. Swapsy down to half. Lizzo getting cleaved a bit. Tony tearing in, trying to finish this. Relza getting sprinted in to go for crowd control. Full fear. Chastise onto Lontar, trying to finish the game onto Swapsy. Big damage incoming, gripping him behind the pillar, but there's no mana once he comes behind the pillar. He pops the Chain Harvest. That's not going to do too much, and I think this is it for Swapsy. He's getting run down here behind the pillar, popping the Astral Shift, wow. trying to tank up a bit more in line of sight. Kasu, the best of his ability, but mana is so short. Mana is so limited. Eight seconds away from the Guardian Spirit, just trying to cleave whoever comes nearby, but Swapsy has somehow managed to survive in that position. Going after Tony, trying to force him away from Lone Tar, trying to maybe find an opportunity to drink. Kasu, in the meantime, pops an Aspect of the Turtle. He could be an open target. The trade Guardian Spirit immediately as it comes off cooldown. Fear onto Relza, trying to connect onto Kasu, but Kasu is avoiding them with that tar trap on the ground. They aren't able to connect. They have to go after Tony. Can they take down Tony and Dampen? He's going to pop Survival Instincts, trying to tear him up, but they're leaving the Hunter open. They pop Chain Harvest. Big heal comes in from Swapsy, trying to finish the game here, but now it's Swapsy on the back foot as Guardian Spirit activates on Tony. He's looking to end the game. Scatter shot on Lone Tar, stun on the Blizzo. Double War Stomp, trying to close this one out. Once again, really tight on mana, and I think that's it for him. Ray of Hope, but he has no mana to heal into the Ray. This is likely to turn into a negative Ray right towards the end, and he will fall. As my way close out game one. A ray of hope looking like a ray of nope in that one. Unfortunately, there's just no mana for either side. Uh, that was a really close game, though. I mean, Relza, at the beginning of the game, it felt like he had a huge mana lead. But as Dampening went in, that uh, lead definitely started to uh, dwindle. And they were tied at the end. But it just seemed like Swapsy wasn't able to really leave the pillar and generate any pressure. They stayed alive for a long time, but... I'm just, I'm still not convinced of the turbo. It just seems like they don't really have a good target to go after. And eventually later on in dampening, all that off healing doesn't really uh, amount to too much. And uh, they've been overwhelmed. And uh, this is kind of what we've seen in the past between these two teams is what I'm talking about. Swapsy right now, he's surviving, certainly going after Tony. They actually kill off the pet too, which is what forces the aspect of the turtle. So taking down the pet, maybe that's something that they can do effectively in the future is... Uh, go after the pet if it's running behind the pillar that's the only way that they got aspect of the turtle in this game so allowing him to re uh, resurrect that pet but you see here swapsy low on health low on mana low on cooldowns lone tar nothing left as well swapsy tries to get off the pillar but this is where you just have kasu in the open basically doing whatever he wants with aim shots tony's just going to tank them out in bear form and uh swapsy realizing he's in trouble tries to retreat back to the pillar but uh, at this point there's really not too much you can do you've got no mana you've got no cooldowns uh, the Ray of Hope does come in from Lone Tar, but it's just not enough healing, and eventually uh, Swapsy does fall.
Yeah, that was a really nice war stump there by uh, Tony as well. Getting a triple war stump when they're all stacked up there. But yeah, my way, this is something we've seen them do in the past. They are so good, actually, into that uh, terrible matchup. Uh, every single team that has tried it against them has been forced to swap off of it. And uh, it's been with the Holy Paladin, though. But now we got to see it with the Holy Priest as well. And even with the Holy Priest, it just looks uh, really, really tough to deal with. Um more damage actually from the turbo compared to my way but more off heal actually more off healing as well <laughs> how how is relza out manning uh lontar he did more healing and did more damage and um he has less healing from his hybrid so uh his team did less damage too so i, I don't know what relza is doing but think it's clearly it's, working <laughs> it's like the difference between impactful damage and pad damage you know how like in a raid encounter there might mm -hmm. be a bunch of trash that spawns you don't have to care about but you're dotting it so your damage looks really high on your parse swapsy is playing a build that kind of does that he's just flame shocking and spreading flame shock and the flame shock is probably one of his top damage along with chain harvest and enhance has like three different builds right now and i was looking at his build particularly to try and figure out for myself what i might want to be running um but i'm not <laughs> i'm not 100 percent. i'm not 100 percent sold on his stat allocation so with the build that he's running, the legendary that he has, it, it basically will make it so his flame shock reduces the cooldown of chain harvest, uh, and then he has a legendary that will also increase the critical strike chance of flame shock by fifty percent, which means you have more chance to keep reducing the cooldown of chain harvest. But I think with this build, you're supposed to stack crit and not haste. You're supposed to go full crit versatility with this build. That way, your chain harvest basically crits every time. You're resetting it extremely fast. Um, and if you're not running full crit on your gear, then the cooldown reduction isn't as impactful with this build specifically. But this is actually a really scary version of it. I just, I, I, I would like, I would like to get his like thoughts on like what stats you should be going for because I, I really think stacking crit with this build is very important because it's basically an all-in build on chain harvest. And if you're not getting lucky on the flame shock crits, although it is a pretty enhanced amount of crit from the legendary, I think it's still better to just keep stacking it, and go all in on it. Or you can run the um, the actuators build for lava lash damage, uh, and that's going to be more impactful damage. Like that's more single target, more consistent, steady damage. Um, uh, I, I'm not sure what I would rather see in this build. Or you could run a doom winds. I actually think, actually, people underrate doom winds now. I think because um, in this comp, there's nothing that stops his doom winds. There's no disarm. There's no immediate stop. You can actually connect that every time Castu gets stunned. I actually don't even think doom winds would be that bad in this matchup. But there's so much to be discovered on Enhanced now because of all these different options and all these different builds. Um, so I'm wondering if he's considering that because he's got some crit pieces on his gear. It's just not. It's just not all of his pieces are crit. He's mixing in a bit a bit of haste uh, on some slots. So something to take into account uh, for Enhanced right now is that the like the, the concrete build of what is the best for it. I don't think has been decided. I like the Lava Lash build. Who was it I ran? Was it Wealthy Man? I think it was Sam I am. Oh yeah, Sam it was Sam I am. Yeah. yeah, I really like that one. It seemed to be the most damage, the most meaningful damage. Uh, and we can see it here the Doom Winds build. Uh, that's the one you, you think Doom Winds is. Uh, in this people specific are looking game. past it because in the past people ran it and now. Yeah. Well, it options. had counters. Like if you just get CC'd on your Doom Winds, then you weren't really doing a lot. Um, but against this team, there's not really a lot of CC for him. And if they use it to stop Doomwinds, then they don't have it to kill him. Um, but if you connect with Doomwinds, it's still just as good. Like, it's still going to just plow somebody over. It's, like, no different than popping a Combust on a Fire Mage if you're able to connect it. Um, so, honestly, I think I'd rather see that build for this specific matchup um, out of all the options. Lava Lash would be more sustained. The advantages of running the Chain Harvest build is that it also heals. Like, Chain Harvest is a big heal and a big damage spell. Um... But I think if he if he ran full crit, he would be getting more of them, and it might be more impactful. The problem is, is if if the chain harvest doesn't kill the target, it might hit them for half their health. But then the holy priest just press serenity; they're back to full, and then you're doing nothing again. That's that's the problem with the chain harvest build in my mind for this. Like you need enough damage on the burst to actually kill the target, um, which I think Doomwinds would be able to, or run lava lash and have sustained damage the whole game. No, I mean, let's see what they can do. Smaller map, go to hook point. This should theoretically be better. I wonder who LF4 really should be going after. Potentially the pet. 
the pet could be an opening if they kind of slip up and they're looking at it. Um, it might allow them to actually get some pressure, force Cassie to play a little bit more defensive in the match. Maybe they could go after the healer, um, but it looks like Blizzard will be the opening target for the side of my way early on in the match. Cassie moving forward does land the full trap. Now a big swap over on the swap C, down to 10% health immediately. That's going to be a trinket astral shift. It's overlapped though. Lone Tar trinket guardians. This is a disastrous opener here for LF Org. They need to go and get aggressive, start getting some cooldowns in their favor because that was a horrible start. Yeah, that was a very, very bad start. And honestly, if my way gets a really, really clean setup, they might just be able to take it. Tony still has Berserk as well, so they could go for a big one shot, but they do kill the pet. Kill the pet. So using the turtle, and he will resurrect the pet. There's a lot of damage coming out here from LF Org, though. And my way still trying to recover. And uh, who will be the target? I think they could, if Swapsy doesn't pre wall, he might just die on the next setup. Uh, if they can uh, do it cleanly. Ray of Hope coming out though, onto Kasu. And now swap onto Tony, big damage coming out here. Big chain harvest there, connects, and Tony almost dropping there. Now they to get aggressive on the swap, this could be the kill, they get a stun, but Tony gets feared on it. That could have easily been the game. They continue the chain though, they get a fear onto Lontar and a bash onto Lontar, and he will connect the Ray of Hope, he heals into it. Oh. He might control the Ray of Hope, I don't think he got Serenity he's into it. He's going for the Cyclones, nope, he gets full HP. Now Tony on the back foot, and Kasu <laughs> as well, taking massive hits here, getting stunned up there by Lontar as well. Beautiful uh, performance here, but that was an extremely close call. They did force out basically everything, though, uh, with that Ray of Hope and with Swapsy's Astral Shift. So one more push could do it, but now they don't have that Berserk uh, for Tony, at least. So they're going to be lacking damage, going after Lontar. It uh, just uh, looked like Kasu took a, a chance there to see what could happen, but Lontar manages to heal it back up. Kasu still taking a lot of damage. Blizzard getting a lot of uptime. Here comes the setup, 3-2-1. Nice pre-fear though by Lontar breaking up the chain and uh, as a result they will not be forcing too much here on the side of my way uh, except uh, maybe burning some mana. Well, let's see if they can stay on Kasu here. Binding shot preventing them from connecting. Lontar trying to retreat away from Relza getting a double fear. Stun onto Swapsy. Trying to set up for the kill here but I don't think they have enough damage to even get close. Tony is shut down on his Cyclone. Kasu's rapid fire connecting onto Swapsy. Big chain harvest comes in from Swapsy. That was definitely a crit. You can see the spike of damage on Kasu and Tony, but it's not a damage, not enough damage to actually close out the game. I think Relza and Tony should be able to recover it. It might be, though, in this position, Kasu knocking them away desperately as Blizzo and Swapsy reconnect once again. Kasu has to shrink it out of Chastise. Swapsy gets cloned. He trinkets out to go aggressive onto Kasu. A lot more pressure coming out from LF Org here in game number two. If they can sustain it, that's the most important part here. They can keep Relza on the back foot and just burn all of his mana right here and now. Chastise scatter shot. Desperation swap onto Lontar to try and pull off a kill, and Lontar shuts it down, but they have panicked using his Guardian Spirit as well as Trinket Fade in that swap attempt. Now if they go back at him, he won't have a consistent answer, but in the meantime, Kasu needs to survive before that opening. He's going to knock Swapsy away. Swapsy sprints to reconnect on the Storm Bolt. Looking to get that chain harvest that's available. Another crit comes through across the board. Hitting all three members. Relza with the Ray of Hope trying to recover. And Swapsy is getting a lot better crits this game around. You can see it just on the health bars this time. But another setup. Using Trap on Lone Tar. It's not on Swapsy. Mind Game's going to connect. Swapsy line of sighting while Lone Tar is in crowd control. Waiting for him to get out so he can get some heals onto him. But now into the full Cyclone. He's going to pop the Astral Shift. Has to be careful if he gets stunned or being able to activate it. He's not going to be able to. Ray of Hope comes out. Looks like he's going to recover. They have to stop Relza from drinking. They still want to win this game on mana. They shut down the door of Shadow's Escape. They're swapping back to Tony in the Storm Bolt. Crushing him with another Chain Harvest oh! crit. Into Execute Range. Almost enough damage to take him down. Swapsy oh, rooted. Gosh. Tony jumping in again onto Lone Tar. But Kasu is getting chopped right now. LF Org looking like an entirely different beast here in game two. Now this smaller map is really paying dividends for them. They're allowed to have a lot more uptime on targets, burning through Relz's mana. I like the fact that they're swapping around and just playing this game a lot more aggressive. Lontar right now, cotton's him stunned, but I don't really fear for him that much. He's got the Guardian Spirit, does get interrupted, but cast at the same time, cotton to a stun. Tony has to come back, retreat, and help out his team just a little bit. But now Blizzo Swapsy, they're going to be chopping him up, continuing the pressure and making it really difficult. Relz is sitting behind the pillar right now, going for a drink. Nice. Capacitor totem there by Swapsy will shut down that drink. Stun up Relza, put some crowd control. Kasu has the aspect of the turtle. He's got the exhilaration, so there are cooldowns to work with. But the one thing my way does not have is really any mana. What? This is a symbol of hope. But in order to get that symbol of hope, they trade out the turtle. Kasu almost goes down. This is disastrous right now for the side of my way. Kasu almost getting taken down there, but that Ray of Hope will get him back to full HP. But now my way 
uh, definitely flailing here. They got basically zero mana to work with. Lontar still has trinkets. Swapsy still has all of his defense. This is looking like LF Org's game to lose here uh, if they would. And uh, Swapsy will get that Ray of Hope once again. Mind Games connects. Here comes big damage from Relza. CC will end on the Lontar. They get a mind control on the Lontar, actually. Big pressure coming out here. But once again, Swapsy equalizing things there with the Chain Harvest. Uh, able to just uh, keep everybody alive and now trinketing there as well as getting that guardian spirit so there's a little bit of an opening here maybe onto swaps here but he still has that astral shift free astral shift tony as well uh, still not entirely safe rolls us mana dipping ever so low to get a nice chest nice don't alone they're going for it swaps here once again ducks for cover behind the pillar and he will recover now once again. Swapsy going after Kasu. That's taking huge hits. They actually win Sheer Relza here on his heels. And he's trying to be very efficient there in the back line. The Relza now going for the Door of Shadows. Looking for the drink. Potentially, can he find it? Lizzo leaps over. They're just trying to stop him by doing damage to Tony. But Tony is so far uh, looking alive. But he gets a Ray of Hope. They do stop the drink. And Relza at this point has absolutely zero mana left. So I don't know how he's going to keep my way in this one any longer. But... I think they've ran out the clock here on the side of LF Org. All right, let's see if they can close it out now. They just need to connect for a few more seconds. Kasu down at half, looking to try and retreat. Blizzo leaps to reconnect. Swapsy's making his way downtown with the ghost. So a feign death camo from Kasu in desperation. But if they get there, he's going to go down. Double stun, chastise, trying to hold them at bay, trying to keep them back while Kasu continues to retreat. Rels is trying to find a sip of water, trying to regenerate any mana, but Swapsy's moving towards him to stop that drink immediately but here comes rapid fire massive damage are they ready for the hits here looks like they are swapsy bounces back to full continuously mind games fishing up from relza trying to counter pressure swapsy just going to chain harvest through it leaving down the whole team trying to close this match out somehow some way relza still has some mana left in the tank despite the pressure coming up from lf or perhaps they could still turn this around swapsy now on the back foot when that guardian spirit fades tony's carrying in with that berserk Rels are getting interrupted for a moment. Kasu reviving his pet, gets it. Oh, one second away from being stunned. That could have been the end of the game if he didn't get that res. Maybe it still is regardless. Ray of Hope comes up from Relza, trying to stabilize. Tony jumps in, stun swaps away from Kasu. They trap Blizzo, they chastise Lone Tar. They're crowd controlling everyone, trying to hold them back, trying to get Swapsy pinned at the pillar so he can't push for the kill. He retreats for now, going after the pet once again. Another chain harvest comes through from Swapsy. Not enough damage to end the game. Relza's trying to drink, trying to catch another sip behind the pillar. They stun Kasu. Guardian Spirit forced to be traded. Tony is trying to help. He's really the only one healing at the moment. They knock Blizzo and Swapsy back away once again. Rooting them up, trying to prevent the reconnect. Swapsy doors over to reconnect, but Blizzo's in a cyclone. Swapsy's alone over here, pops the astral shift, hoping that it's going to be enough, but perhaps it's not going to be if Kasu can continue to avoid him. I think his pet has gone down again, though, and without that pet, he won't have Roar of Sacrifice to immune any critical strikes. That chain harvest is coming off cooldown very rapidly for Swapsy here. Five more seconds away, has the aspect of the turtle to resurrect it. But still, Relza has mana. How does this guy still have mana at this point? The fact that he has mana makes me think that they can pull this off. Another chain harvest, but Relza has apotheosis. He should be able to easily heal. It's going to be Swapsy on the back foot. Chastise is likely off cooldown for Relza. Where is he going to throw it for crowd control? Is he going to go after Lone Tar here or Blizzo to stop the intervene? We'll have to wait and see. We see a stun on the Swapsy. As he gets knocked back, Guardian Spirit activates for Lone Tar. He heals out from Swapsy. Charging in, trying to finish the match. Despite all of their momentum, the game could be slipping away. They need to end this thing now. They definitely do. Kasu barely holding on. He's just immortal in this match. I can't believe my way is still alive, and now it's actually Swapsy that has to run away. No way! Oh, Ray of Hope is negative. Look at Kasu! <laughs> Look at Kasu! Kasu. <laughs> I mean, Kasu. What was that? that <laughs> I mean, he's just fired up. I, I mean, what's this game like? This game it was felt the like my way. He did. Yeah, that's what I was about to do. He's got clap. He's got tongue. He's got... What is going on? I need to see this, man. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, no, I mean, it's just it's crazy to me. My way, I would be excited too. It felt like such a disaster for them, but they just don't die. <laughs> This team, they just don't die. I don't know what it is, but you can never count them out until their their frame shows that they're 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 dead. These guys just somehow live in situations that no one else really would, and I think it's one of the reasons their team is so special. Castle on that hunter, backed up by Tony and Relza. I mean, these guys just they live forever. The only time I believe he used Aspect of the Turtle this match was to resurrect his pet. Other than that, they were never able to force that defensive cooldown, which is kind of crazy. Uh, there was that one point where Castle just dropped to 1% HP, but it was like really early. Um, 
Yeah, it, it's my way, man. This, this team is uh, absolutely insane. How do they, like, the Relza had a mana deficit for such a long time and still able to just constantly sneak away. And it's not just that he just goes for a drink, but even with low mana, he's like going in, he's spamming out smites, he's getting mind controlled. He's just doing what he can. But at this point, uh, this is this is right before Swapsy uh, dies. And Ben, I want you to take a look at the camera here of Casa, because this has got to be a gift. Like, this is, look at, look at. <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta become a gift Someone, someone's gonna make a, a, a gift out of that for sure uh but my way up now two to zero against lf org eating them <laughs> yeah that was awesome that's who has for sure the, the best of war cry of the season uh, and also uh, oh. winning the match uh, i have nice i word. got some some uh i got some intel as well so if you look at relza and lontar's damage done on the scoreboard it's not exactly representative of how much damage they're doing so there's a weird kind of thing that happens um i believe where ray of hope when it's used all the damage that is being absorbed by ray of hope actually counts so let's say rel oh. uses ray of hope on tony and blizzo and swapsy attack into it all that damage that's absorbed counts as damage done for relza okay on the that makes sense so that's why you're seeing like these crazy high numbers for the priests, even though it doesn't seem like they really have that much time <laughs> to actually be doing a million damage, you know, uh, you know, almost keeping up with their DPS. But L4 going to Dalaran sewers. This tells me that they're probably going to play the same thing. I'm, I'm kind of curious as to why. What else could they play? I really we haven't really seen too much mage lock into jungle, and I kind of wonder if like a frost destro mage lock on a large map could win. Your win condition would likely be just like getting them out of mana, like keeping them at the pillar, getting them out of mana. Uh, might be risky and dampening, but I'm not sold on the turbo right now. It, I'm, I'm not entirely sold on it. I thought it might be something that could work, but I, I guess the last game looked better than the first, but still, they ended up uh, losing. Uh, maybe it's a matchup they played a lot, but I just can't help but feel like there's got to be some other answer for jungle. Like, what are the things that my way struggles into right now? Like RMP, rogue mage. I think that's it. <laughs> they just struggle with rogue mage, and that's it. Everyone else is just gonna <laughs> have a difficult time. I, I mean, crazy. My way. What other cleave options could they do? What about wind they could do TSG? Is TSG good? <laughs> I don't. Could the rat warrior also plays rat? Didn't I? Wasn't there a jungle that just completely dismantled a rat warrior? Sure. Yeah, I think so. I think it was them. So. Wasn't it? I feel like TSG is not that good into jungle. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like the maybe DK it, gets banged. Maybe they just have to run at the priest. Like instead of going after the hunter, like swap more. Instead of just trying to stay on the hunter. Whenever they swapped, they got so much more pressure. And then you get like baited towards the end of the game. Like Rels is oom. We can just end the game, attack the hunter. The game is over. Um, is it? I, I, I think they just Relza. Is there a, do people play arms on the ladder still or like are they do on the ladder? Tournament? Why not on the tournament? I think it just dies to jungle. <laughs> I'm pretty sure <laughs> Arms Warrior literally just dies to jungle. Like Fury Warrior heals itself enough. Actually, I'm surprised they're not killing Blizzo at all during we, the game. I feel like even as Fury, you can still kill the Warrior. Have we seen a single Arms Warrior this season? I feel like there's always, they've all been Fury. I, I want to say that Mez played arms in one series. That's Turbo. I believe. It's possible. Uh, I'm getting and a vision. Definitely an interesting, it uh, it's an interesting change, though, for Warriors. Just everyone is a Fury Warrior now. And last season, we didn't really see any Fury Warriors. So yeah, well, their cool. tier is it's a cool really change good. in the patch. Yeah. I think that's the difference on live, is that a lot of Warriors don't have their tier, and ARMS is probably better than Fury without tier. Oh, OK. But when you get to tier, then you, then you want to be putting that on. Um, I don't know how they're planning on. How are they going to close this game out? Maybe more coordination, like get a chastise on Tony at the same time you storm belt Kasu so Tony isn't healing, right? Because the main problem, I think, is that Tony is the one healing when they're trying to end the game. Rels is out of mana, running away drinking, and then Tony's just regrowing. So coordinating stuns on the Feral and the Hunter at the same time could be something of importance for them um, so that they're preventing that cross crowd or pre preventing that healing from the Feral Druid yeah, because it's such a significant portion of it. A stun mind control anything on the feral get rid of the feral like he's actually the healer once rels is out of mana tony is the healer so more cc on tony once they get to that late stage of the game uh, is something i'd like to see here from lf org 
I just feel like yeah. you can't really dampen jungle. Like I, I think it's so hard, especially like my way. They every time when the games go into like the deep dampening, they always win. I swear, they are the dampeners. They are the mage lock. So I want to see a, a more <laughs> aggressive strat. Like I want to see maybe continuously just hit the same guy every single setup. Do it on the caster or do it on the Tony. Last game they were swapping around a lot, trying to maximize their overall pressure. I actually don't like that. Uh, I, I think they just need to do a 3 to one go on the same guy the entire game. Or just ride Relza the entire time as well. Because that one time when they swapped him, it looked really good. Um, we'll see what they can do though. Right now, the gates are open. And this is a, a potential elimination here for LF Org. Uh, they would be going home in fourth place, but they are qualified for the circuit. So, um, but still, they want to make it to that grand finals. Now is the time to do it. All right, how many chain harvests can Swapsy get this game? He's already launched one here, 40 seconds in, 40 seconds away from his next one. Needs to keep Flame Shock on as many targets as possible and send that chain harvest as frequently as possible. Not even a minute in, he might get to his second chain harvest. That's going to be the main important quality of LF Org. In the meantime, Lizzo needs to maintain his mortal wound stack on the targets so that's taking 40% less healing when those chain harvests connect. Chain harvest available. I think Swapsy should just send it. He sends it again. Now he needs to get those flame shocks back up and reset the cooldown, try and get as many of these as possible to keep momentum. They stun Kasu, but now they get blasted off the side and Dalaran might backfire on them at Z axis here. They're gonna charge in and swap to Tony in the chastise, not wasting their mobility as Kasu is too far away. And I do like that. Just maximize your uptime here. Swapsy refreshing those flame shocks, trying to make his way towards the hunter. Kasu getting pulled, Blizzo leaps in. Swapsy can reconnect. This could be dangerous for Kasu. Caught in a storm ball, getting blasted down here. But a double fear stun swap on Lone Tar. It's match point, Lone Tar. What are you going to do? Stunned up again. Big heals oh. coming through from that chain harvest. A massive crit onto Kasu. And finally, they get Aspect of the Turtle. I think Swapsy's already maybe three or four chain harvests in. I already lost count. But if he can maintain this momentum, now getting it down to another 52 second cooldown, he could certainly still win this. Chain Harvest is really scary. I mean, Swapsy completely turned around that swap onto Lontar. Lontar was low. Swapsy heals him up and almost almost one-shots Kasu as well. So really close call. Tony at the same time taking massive damage. Could be the Guardian Spirit and the Ray of Health. There's no way that it goes down. He's full health. Okay. There's a lot of healing that they have available. At the same time, Lontar forced the Trinket and use his Fade. Good pressure there by Tony. Nice little swap. Now, Swapsy. Trying to reconnect over to Kasu, who has no aspect of the turtle. So really no cooldowns for Kasu. If they can somehow get Rels out of the game, maybe an interrupt, and burst him down with that Chain Harvest. There's an opportunity here for LF Ward. My way has to navigate the situation. Chain Harvest and a stun. Kasu gets gripped away, and it looks like he will ultimately survive. And it seems like Kasu just has this mode where when he's got cooldowns, he's a little bit more reckless in the match. But without cooldowns, he plays very defensive. Kiting away, not overextending himself, making it really difficult for Blizzo and Swapsy to actually connect on target. So I feel like for Kasu, for him, it's unlikely we see him really push in. He's just going to try to avoid and kite, but can't really kite when he got caught with a storm bolt. And Kasu will knock them off once again. Tony sprints him. Kasu on the run. Mana greatly in favor of LF4 once again, but this is kind of a familiar theme of these two teams really feels like Lone Tar has a massive mana lead until Dampening kicks in and that's where things really start to equalize. Kasu's still in trouble. The Ray of Hope will connect and likely top him off. Now swap over onto Blizzo. Scatter trap on Lone Tar. Yeah, that was Warbander to Whoa. DR. Blizzo might just go down. This is going to be the Ray of Hope from Lone Tar as well as a Fleshcraft. He should hold on. Beautiful intimidating shout by Blizzo as well. Setting up Kasu. Stunning it up or fearing up Tony. Helping him avoid a lot of incoming damage. Swap now over onto Castle with the Stormbolt to try to connect to him out of that fear. He gets gripped away. Good job by Relza, creating some space in the match. But this match is still very back and forth, and that was a really close call on Blizzo. Yeah, and now uh, potential here for a close call onto Kasu. Doesn't have too much to work with right now. Relza's Guardian was actually procced earlier. Kasu has his uh, sacrifice active right now. He goes for the scatter into the trap. They might take down Swapsy. Swapsy taking huge damage here, but he does trade the Astral Shift as well as the Gladiator's Emblem. There's no way he goes down through that, even with that full Cyclone onto Lontar. A defensive uh, Chain Harvest there as well for Swapsy. So he will be completely top in that situation. Good pressure though, still onto Swapsy. Kasu now though, needs to be careful. Gets a stun onto Swapsy. Nicely done by Tony. Gets feared up. Reza sitting in the back line drinking. Swapsy pushes over. They knock him even deeper. They have a kick for that interrupt. Mind games. Mind games connect here. Big hit. Oh my goodness. This knock was absolutely gorgeous here by Kasu. He scatter shots Lontar on the heel. That ray might be negative. They trap him. Lontar doesn't have a trinket. It doesn't look like. 
disorienting roar. It looks like Swampsy might survive now with Lothar out of crowd control. That was an incredibly close call. And that's all because of that knock from uh, from Kasu right there. Beautifully set up. But now Kasu on the back foot. He has the aspect of the turtle to work with. He's dropping dangerously low. He might need to use it. And he will use it, that Necro Banner from Blizzo with the Recklessness, with all that Fury Warrior damage is really adding up here. Another knock, though, from Kasu uh, is going to bounce Swapsy really far back. So far, Relza, though, completely tapped on mana. And I think a big reason for that is because of that uh, Guardian being on 3-minute cooldown. And they do force out Lontars. I think would have forsaken there. Uh, so, at least a small victory. Might have been... Uh, yeah, no, it was definitely Lontars would have forsaken because Swapsy doesn't have Tremor. Um, but Relza, mana is not looking great, so I don't know how my way are going to pull this off uh, with everybody basically having their trinkets. Maybe they can swap to Lontar and kill him, but I, I find it really hard to believe that my way walks away with a win in this game. It's not looking great for them right now. I said the same thing last time, and they still won. They knocked Blizzo off, they cloned Swapsy. As long as they can't catch Kasu, I feel like there's still a chance for my way, even though it's not looking good. They swapped to Tony here, and I really do like the swaps coming from LF Org. Just Hitting whatever's close by, maximizing their damage. Mind games, Freezing Trap gets grounded there by Swapsy. And Lotari is going to be able to avoid crowd control as a result. They stun Kasu. That chain harvest four seconds away off cooldown here. It's a big zap available for Kasu. If Swapsy can connect it, when is he going to pull the trigger on that chain harvest? He wants to pull it. There's the chain harvest hit onto Kasu. Tony was ready. Big regrowth, but they're still chopping him up. He feigned death, knocks Blizzo. Blizzo immediately leaps re to reconnect. Cyclones out from Tony onto Blizzo, trying to hold them off of Kasu for however amount of time as they can. But a chastise stun comes in. They grip Kasu in cap roar from Tony, trying to prevent them from reconnecting while charging in with the binding chop. And now they're swapping to Tony. Tony needs to run away clutch out some heals rels is trying to reset a stun he's got zero mana here trying to avoid it they can swap the rels in this position but they stun up swapsy they're going for the kill can they drop him in a two second stun i don't think they can here but maybe bash on to lone tar swapsy has options drops the chain harvest defensively healing his team back up storm on a castle massive damage incoming ray of hope on one percent he feigned death camels trying to escape knocks off the Take side him. disengages away from the late leap but it doesn't matter lf org are going to take him out and they look like they're just getting better and better with each game here and maybe the matchup is starting to turn in favor of the turbo. Yeah, I mean, that game, there were some close calls, though. I mean, Swapsy lived at 1% a few times. Blizzo lived at 1% a few times. So really, really back and forth series between these two teams. That Ray of Hope, if there was any more healing from Tony, might have actually been able to keep him alive. But L4, they strike back in a big way. That being said, they got to do it two more times on big maps. I can guarantee you, we're not going to Ruins of Lordaeron. Uh, we're going to be going to Tolveron. We're going to be going to Maldraxxus Arena. I think it's going to be a lot more difficult for them to actually stay on target, which is what they were able to do, and we'll see it here in the replay. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, very limited amount of space here for a castle to walk around with. And with that said, a couple of really, really close calls there uh, on Swapsy. One close call on Blizzo as well. Uh, decent pressure on Lontar, but ultimately LF Org finally uh, get enough damage out here to the point where Relza is kind of tapped on mana and he doesn't really have too much to work with. And I think a lot of it comes down to the fact that he's Guardian proc. So uh, the fact that you can just Guardian and Serenity someone, it, it just increases your healing so much as a, a, as a priest. So uh, it really ends up, uh, you know, costing you a lot of mana if it does get proc in the long run, uh, aside from costing you that big defensive. But that was a nice premonition there by Lontar on the scatter shot and that's actually what breaks up this uh, chain but they had a clean a triple cc there but lontar uh, broke out and then that ray of hope coming in tony getting two regrowths there into it but still not enough and kazu will fall there uh, at the end of that ray so uh, lf org good uh, good pressure this game good uh, targeting and uh, they definitely use the map to their advantage but i kind of agree with van probably going to tolvir Probably going to like Asha mains or something like that. So um, there's definitely a large map that's waiting here. And also, uh, we've only seen them blind lock the MM Hunter. And that could be because maybe it's better against like Mage Lock or uh, one of the other comps that LF Org has. So uh, we might even see Kasu swap things up in the Hunter department. We've seen him flex between Survival, BM, and MM. So playing all three specs right now uh, could also be an option for my way. Interesting to see. I feel like he's played marks every time into turbo though every previous iteration yeah. of turbo i don't know if holy priest changes anything but when they switched survival they dominated ret warrior i think that was on friday yeah. um, they just had massive two target damage as survival jungle so that might be an option for them uh moving into this game now that they have two sort of advantageous matchups they can set up they know that there's not going to be any mage lock they're not going to be any wizards they'll see what comp is coming their way 
So I am curious to see if we see them flex or not, see if the matchup develops uh, as a result of that. But LF Org looked so good in that last game. I really liked that they just bounced targets, hit what was nearby, used their mobility well to reconnect to their target. Like it, it showed on the scoreboard, because in the previous games, Casu was keeping up with Swapsy. This time it was a staggering difference. Um, and even Blizzo was leaps and bounds ahead uh, on the scoreboard. So we are going to Ashamane's Fall, and now they've got the decision to either continue running marksmanship or switch survival. Um, try and get some of that two target cleave. I really liked the survival yesterday, but I'm not sure how effective it'll be into a holy priest. The resto druid oh, struggled BM. to heal through it. Um, I don't know why we don't we don't see BM specifically into this matchup. Uh, I was expecting marksmanship to fall over and not be able to get any damage out. Oh. I'm actually really impressed by the fact that Casu isn't just dying almost immediately as marksman because usually if you're stationary against a turbo or a ret warrior or any of these melee cleaves, like you just get dominated. And Kasu doesn't get dominated. Uh, it could be just be the coordination of his team, like timing these disengages with roots from Tony and Cyclones, and maybe it's their coordination that's uh, kind of shaping up that weakness uh, for the MM Hunter. But they're taking their full time to lock it in, and he is going to go BM. Yeah. So he's not, not right. going to be more mobile. Um, this, we'll have to wait and see. Maybe this is better. Maybe it's worse. We don't really know. Um, the, the main thing for my way that only ever changes is the hunter spec. Like Casu is just playing all three <laughs> hunter specs, and that's it. Like, normally, not very much else changes. I think Rels is never going to go disc again after he tried it uh, earlier. <laughs> Holy Priest is just going to be the better pick for him. Um, but it, it is curious to, to see Casu just like what types of advantages he he can get just by changing his spec. Yeah, I mean it is. A it's impressive to see the level of flexibility on Cassio, but just as well as that composition jungle, if you can just change your spec, I guess you can have a solid answer into everything. I, I expect the damage from my way to be a lot higher in this one. Beast mastery hunter is kind of just unrelenting pressure. never really lets up a lot more burst from the uh, marks hunter, but I feel like LF org is kind of dealing with that burst with the chain harvest. And uh, I think overall it's going to be more difficult for Swapsy to kind of off heal through this pressure. Um, since it's going to be a lot more consistent and less spiky, uh, which I think the Chain Harvest is particularly good at kind of dealing with. So, yeah, I'm curious. Big map, different specs. My way right now, they're up 2-1, one away from uh, eliminating LF Org. LF Org showing some flexibility here, bringing in their cleaves. Seen a lot of mage lock from them with Tessia and Swapsy, but having Blizzle on the roster, having Swapsy on the Enhancement Shaman gives them a lot of options, and this could be just one of those things where they're trying to experiment for the circuit, see if they can make the turbo work, and if not, go back to the drawing board, drawing board, and uh, come up with something else for the future. Absolutely, I, I think it's it's kind of interesting because we talk a lot about you know my way there being a their three man roster, but uh, it does unlock a lot of flexibility. Um, the fact that they are just changing hunter specs all the time um, because a it's kind of hard to get you know practice into all three hunter specs with jungle and b it does open up new play styles it, it opens up a lot uh, a lot of new options and it's one of the things that we criticize mages for a lot you know we're like oh uh, they're picking up you know alts and they're playing this and that but a lot of mages they only play you know that one spec now we're starting to see that as well uh, people playing you know frost mage uh, in mage lock for example we're seeing frost and fire uh, obviously we're never going to see arcane but uh, <laughs> Uh, at least, uh, you know, we are seeing uh, more people actually play every single spec. And it's the same thing for rogues as well. We've seen sub, outlaw, uh, and assassination, and all three kind of have something that you need, you know, in uh, a mirror against another rogue. A lot of the time we see a sub rogue, you know, if it's RMP or rogue lock or RPS even. See a lot of sub rogues come out. See a lot of assassination rogues uh, against things like mage lock uh, and uh, outlaw rogue as well uh, when you want to have just like a tanky rogue. So it's interesting to see. How much uh, of an advantage you can get by actually playing every single spec for your class and there's not that many people that do it i feel like I feel like a lot of people they actually rather pick up a whole new class instead of learning every single uh, spec uh, for their respective class so uh, it's nice to see that my way are, are at least um, using that to their advantage maybe we'll see tony boomkin no, I'm just kidding, <laughs> we're, i don't think we're ever seeing we boomkin won't. again <laughs> Uh, I'm sad for Boomkins. I, it's I think Assassination Rogue is what's keeping Boomkin in check right now. I played yesterday, and every Assassination Rogue <laughs> I saw, I disappeared. It was not. Uh, <laughs> uh, I I didn't experience it yet because I don't think the rogues had picked up their four set yet. But now there's a few rogues that have four yeah, set, yeah. and yeah, you don't exist as a balanced druid into assassinations, and there's a lot of them. So uh, I don't think we're gonna see any balanced druid uh, for this competitive it, season, which makes me sad. Really? 
it really is interesting. I mean, people might be wondering who are watching this, like I don't know, these comps. I don't really see them on the ladder. You, I mean, you probably do see some jungle. You see some RMP. You see some mage lock. Let's not kid ourselves. But <laughs> you see some all of, of these specializ- <laughs> Yeah, some of these specializations have not risen to ma- uh, to full power. I mean, the creation catalyst coming out um, next week. Uh, I think a lot more players are going to be getting their two sets and their four sets and. I think things will change. I mean, if you think you were afraid of destruction warlocks before, just wait and see. <laughs> and uh, you know, things like that have a profound impact. And it is interesting because I feel like all that ladder play might actually bring some new specs um, and compositions to power that maybe the players haven't thought about just yet. Uh, it's going to be a lot of experimentation that is going to be done after these cups uh, before the circuit. So something to look forward to for sure. Let's see, Cassie right now on that Beast Mastery Hunter. Let's see that consistent damage we were talking about. Going for a Scare Beast early on on Swapsy. It looks like he will get dispelled. Dorian, a disorient uh, Dora Shadows there coming in from Kasu. And it looks like he will get the full trap on the Lone Tower. Kasu almost getting just one shot in the opener. Chain Harvest Crit coming in from Swapsy as he retreats behind the pillar. But a lot more difficult to line of sight against the Beast Mastery Hunter uh, for that enhancement shaman. Yeah, Swapsy already taking decent damage, but he's able to hold on to his Astral Shift. They only trade out the Guardian from Lunthar, but they still have the Ray of Hope. They still have Astral Shift. They still have a lot to work with. And uh, Castle almost got one tap in the first uh, uh, Chain Harvest right there. Uh, coming in once again here for Swapsy doing massive damage, but Castle this time will respond with the Sacrifice. Will be enough to survive. And now here comes the setup. Stun, trap onto Lunthar. I think it was grounded there by Swapsy, actually. Very nicely done, Tony, though, following up with the Saurian Roar clone, but they don't have the damage now because Tony is not actually doing damage. He's casting spells to CC. Ray of Hope gets forced out from Relza. Asu uh, will actually maybe drop there through the Ray of Hope. That Chain Harvest was massive, almost getting a triple kill there for Swapsy. Huge damage coming out from LF Oregon. They are not getting around right now. Another setup getting launched here onto Swapsy, and they find the trap. They do find it this time. Big damage here for uh, potential or uh, my way. Can they get Swapsy's big I don't know, they need that Astro Shift. They don't find a follow-up CC on the long card. No Astro oh. Shift getting traded out. They get another Chain Harvest, almost killing a triple kill here again. Full Cyclone onto Lontar, and that will be the Astro Shift of Swapsy. And now, if they can Cyclone Swapsy, that would be massive, but I don't think Tony can go for it right now. He needs to sit in bear form there for a second. They're going after Kasu. He gets gripped on the stun, and it looks like Kasu will survive. Tony getting mind controlled. But they do dispel it. Now Tony looking for the Cyclone here. He gets feared on it. VR fear though. And uh, Ralza here as well getting wind sheared. Swapsy has the harvest ready. If Kasu, yeah, they're nice feign death though. He actually pre feign deaths there. Or uh, I think he harvested into the shield. I'm not sure exactly um, what happened there. I think he did it a little bit too early. And so Kasu actually got a big absorb on that one. And each one of these harvests are absolutely devastating to deal with. Swapsy's build making a lot of work and making a lot of sense right now. The problem with the Beast Mastery Hunter is you have an extra pet, which means an extra target to Flame Shock, which means an extra t- chance to reset your Chain Harvest. So Swapsy's getting his... I think he's got like seven of them in the last... Not even three minutes. Eight of them now in the last three minutes. Like, that's like a 20-second cooldown Chain Harvest or something. Uh, but at the same time, Swapsy is taking way more damage as well. So Double-Edged Sword here. Will Swapsy be able to close out the game with his Chain Harvest? Just look at the cooldown rapidly coming off right now. 20 seconds, 19 seconds, 18, 17, 15... Jumping off cooldown here. Kasu doesn't have much for it. It's going to come off cooldown any second now. If they can connect to him, they're swapping to Tony for a moment. Swapsy doesn't want to overextend, but he's got Trinket and Ball. I'm surprised they don't want to go for it here. There's no cooldowns, actually, for Kasu. If they can connect here, they're just going to drop him, I think. They're lining up for the Chain Harvest. Swapsy gets stunned. He goes to the Chain Harvest. It's not going to crit on that one. Swapsy now on the back foot with Mind Games on him, though. Still match point. My way could take it. Swapsy trades Astral Shift. Looking to try and reconnect onto Kasu. Having a tough time getting there and he's baiting Swapsy out into the open right now but Blizz is going to reconnect as well he's going to reposition pop that Beast of Wrath gets stunned on his Beast of Wrath Swapsy trying to spread those flame shocks around but gets stunned up Lone Tark's going to trade Guardian Spirit to recover mana slightly in favor of LF Org at this point cooldowns slightly in their favor as well as we see another Ray of Hope trade on the Kasu and they stay on target here Chain Harvest coming off cooldown he's still low it's going to bop him up it's not too high Chain Harvest off cooldown where's it going to go who's it going to crit big damage incoming that's it LF Org are going to be moving to match point. Wow. <laughs> Swapsy is an absolute terror <laughs> on that enhancement shaman. Those chain harvests is consistently coming off cooldown. They pack quite a punch. And uh, unfortunately for Cassie, kind of ran out of defensive cooldowns. LF Org striking back in a, in a big way. And I feel like this is really interesting because every single one of these games is looking more convincing than the last. 
Every single game is looking better and better for LF Org. And going into a game five, I really wonder now, are they going to get off to Beast Mastery Hunter? Are they going back to Marks? I think a large map is certainly going to happen. But yeah, just look at Swapsy and his Chain Harvest. Such a short cooldown. Every single one of them is just kind of a reset on his health as well as potential just outright one-shot Kasu. Yeah, Swapsy is uh, this build. The first couple of games, we weren't 100% sold on it maybe. But uh, the Chain Harvest here, especially into the BM Hunter, has been doing a lot of work. And Kasu actually pre feigned death, I think, one or two of them. Uh, so he got that big shield and kind of Swapsy uh, kind of wasted it more or less. But even with that, uh, the pressure was just absolutely insane. This build uh, is very, very smart. And he's just doing a lot of, a lot of work. And we're going to see it here on the replay. Kasu uh, taking a decent amount of damage. And you can see Swapsy, look at a, a red button there under Swapsy's health frame. The bottom right there, you can see it. Nine seconds, five seconds, zero seconds. It's just ready. And uh, as soon as you drop to about half HP, boom. boom. And that's the harvester. A There's a new harvester in town. <laughs> there is a new harvester in town. <laughs> we, we used to call uh, Seralium the harvester, but I think Swapsy is definitely taking the title right now. Look at that damage and healing of Swapsy, doubling basically Tony's well, both damage and healing. And uh, you can start. You can start to see on the scoreboard now that the turbo is definitely pulling out ahead. I love do? it. This is good intel as well for teams that are watching this because I feel like they're not the only team that can run the Enhancement Shaman Warrior Turbo. Um, so yeah, Yellow Forward kind of putting in the work right now, laying the foundation for a nice little you know answer into jungle. In my way, they got to be scratching their heads. Are we going back to Mars? Do we do survival? Do we do beast mastery? Was that just a fluke? Where are we going in terms of map? Um, I would anticipate we're going to Tolveron or Robodrome. For some reason, I have a feeling about Robodrome. Like it could be picked, even though like it's not that. picked that often. I like Robodrome. You have a big map plus a knockoff location. That seems yep. really good. Uh, it's like the best of Dalaran without it being a small map. Mm -hmm. I think Robodrome would be a good pick here for my way. Um, I think we're going to Toothpick Town. <laughs> Toothpick, Imperial <laughs> Domain. Oh, oh Robo Drum. Okay. Uh, what spec of Hunter though? Like BM. I don't think you can bring another pet. I swear it was giving Swapsy like an extra thirty seconds off his chain harvest or something just by having an extra pet in the game to dot. I really don't think you can play BM Hunter in this matchup just because of that. So He's we might see him go back car marks. I, I think. But will LF Org play a? A wizard comp on this map, maybe? Instead? I don't think North so. Should. It's match I point. That's a little frost mage. Frost mage, it's, it's risky. Jungle can be a very back and forth matchup. It can be really difficult. Um, but no, that, I, I like end. it. Like I, I, I like said, it. I mean... Play, play it, it out. Yeah, play it out. And the, the truth is, LF Org a little bit of a bumpy start, but it's been getting better and better as the games go on. So I feel like there's no reason. I mean, if we're going to continue that kind of upward trajectory for this composition, we should probably <laughs> just lock it in for game five. You know, you've been warming up, you're figuring it out. You've won your last two games. Probably not a bad spot to be. Yeah, we're not expecting a dip uh, just yet in the performance here of uh, LF Org. And expecting the graph to continue to uh, go trend. to the moon. Yeah, we're conti continuing the trend here for LF Org. Um, but my way, they're taking their time now. Like, I, I don't think we're going to see survival. I think if we were going to see it, it would, we would have seen it last game instead of BM. And I think at this point, if you're my way, the safest option is probably just go MM. You won two games on it. Now you get to, you won one of them on uh, hook point, I believe as well. So, um, you, you kind of have, uh, you've won on, on, on bad maps with MM. So it makes sense to just go MM again. Um, I think BM. It makes their strategy a little bit one-dimensional. I think a big reason to my way success is uh, I feel like teams, like anybody can die. Everybody feels like anybody on their team can die. Um, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a nice thing to have when you're going after Lontar and you're going after Swapsy, for example, uh, like they were when they were MM. But when they went BM, it was like, you know, cookie-cutter jungle strategy. Stun, trap, kill Swapsy. And it makes it kind of easy for Swapsy to pre-line or... Uh, drop a grounding on the trap. We saw him do that at one point on one setup and just break up the setups. You just have to trade for every setup and every setup is going to be on the same guy. You're going to have a lot of cooldowns to rotate. So uh, I like the MM and they're going to go back to the MM. 
and they are going to be playing it on the drone. So, um, why why the Robodrome? Why the Robodrome? Big map and a knockoff. Yeah, large map, and also the platform is really good for the hunter to kite to if he needs to. He needs it to knock off. Um, I think overall, it's just it's good positioning, and it gives him a lot of space to kite around. I think it's an underutilized map in, in general. Um, a lot of open playing field, even for caster comps, you can kind of bait people into bad positions. And if they get behind that platform as well, it's a great spot to try to take them down. And as a healer, you really have to overextend to uh, actually get in line of sight. And if, let's say you actually do transition to that central platform and they go up top, there's really nowhere to run and hide. You're very susceptible to CC. Okay. Here we go. Well, let's see if the Robodrome can deliver here. My way about to get reverse swept by LF Oregon. LF Org only had uh, a strong performance, I believe, in Cup Number One, right? They came second, and that was their best placing. Yeah, um, and then they I really think... fell off after that. I think. Yeah, they had like a sixth time. place. Mm -hmm. I think they had like a sixth place finish in one of the cups, uh, and in general, they haven't been able to go that deep. So, uh, taking down my way, you know, a second on points, uh, finalist from last week, would be a good sign. And after that, uh, they solidify another top three finish, um, which is good. Is out of work, obviously, uh, another one of these uh, stacked rosters uh, with a lot of really, really great players with a lot of experience, but not necessarily playing together uh, that often. And now they're going to come together here uh, with this team. So there's probably some uh, some growing pains uh, for LF Org. But if they can straighten those out and have a strong finish this cup, I think that would be absolutely fantastic for them heading into the circuit season because this is one of those teams that we're, we're expecting to be one of the titans out of Europe. Uh, for LF Org, they just have, uh, you know, every single position on their team is stacked. All right. Match point, game five, everything on the line here. Going to be eliminated from the tournament. LF Org had a rough start this cup season, but this could be their opportunity to fire up and have a good performance moving into the circuit. They'd be the first turbo to beat My Way's Jungle. I don't think we've seen any Cleaves able to beat them. Uh, and now with these last two games, they're looking like this is their best shot as we begin into the Robo Drum, is LF Org going to be able to connect to their targets? The moment just taking it slow at the pillar. I uh, don't know if Dampening really, f which side Dampening favors heavily. I, I feel like the jungle maybe more than the enhance, uh, just because the healing is so much more prevalent from the shaman. Like we see Swapsy doing double that of Tony's healing. Uh, but Tony is now moving in in stealth. Kasu in camouflage, setting up with traps on the top of the ramp. So, like, preemptively preparing to play this game from the top side there on that ramp and Swapsy wants none of that. He knows what's going to happen if he runs up there. He's going to go all the way back down to the bottom like snakes and ladders. So I don't think he wants to go up there right now. Um, and they're just chilling at the moment. Maybe talking strat, maybe talking targeting. Uh, they're just waiting out the camouflage, I think. If, as soon as they see camouflage gone, they don't have to worry about like surprise stealth attack from the hunter. Um, would be my guess here if Elorg, Elforg really want to play for every advantage. That's got to be what they're doing right now. Yeah, I mean, uh, we'll see. A lot of times these teams will wait and kind of try to decide, you know, who is favored in dampening. It's like, oh, if we wait longer, it's going to be better for us. The other team thinks the exact same thing, and then eventually one of them just says, all right, let's go. <laughs> and, they, and they just push in. So they are going to be pushing in. Kasu already up top, just throwing in aim shots, taking advantage of that elevated position as Swapsy and Blizzo are looking to connect. Looks like uh, Blizzo will actually get knocked, but immediately able to charge back. And now Kasu... Could be in little trouble. Not getting full utilization of the map just so, so far. Lone Tar, though, getting swapped to, forced to trade up the trinket and the fade. That's that overextended position I'm talking about where there really is no line of sight. So maybe that's what they want to do. If Lone Tar pushes in, they can swap on him. But at the same time, Kasu taking a lot of damage right now from Blizzard's all over. A big stun does come in. Ray of Hope from Relza. That should deflect most of the damage. He will get topped off. And now Kasu and Relza are going to have to kind of kite and maneuver around the map. They need to get away from Swapsy and Blizzo, who've had tremendous uptime. Yeah, and finally, here comes another 3 2 1. The trap Blizzard, they fear Swapsy. They're going after Lontar. Swapsy actually using his trinket here. So, already forcing out Lontar's trinket and Swapsy's trinket. This is exactly that same situation that they had uh, in that previous match. Um, let's see if they can capitalize on that. Lontar getting kicked on his mind control. Now, Blizzo and Swapsy making their way over onto Kasu. Kasu making his way back to that elevated position. You can already see him. Uh, trying to uh, make, move over there. He's going to knock Blizzo away. He's trying to build some distance, but Swapsy and Blizzo are all over him. 
28 seconds left for that chain harvest. He's going to be ready, and obviously it's going to be a lot less than that as the one keeps ticking down. Here comes a setup onto Swapsy. Big damage. They connected with the mind games. Do they have anything on the Lontar? They have a freezing trap for just a couple of seconds. Swapsy will get the Ray of Hope overlapped, actually, with the Ashmore Shift. The Harvest is ready to go here. Where is he going to send it? Ray of Hope connects here. Kasu will probably get full HP at the back end of that. Then next time Kasu drops to 70% HP, Swapsy could maybe harvest him and just take him out of the game. But before that happens, they might just kill Swapsy. Big heals coming in. Nice grip there by Lontar. Swapping uh, Swapsy's position and making sure that he can stay alive through that push. And there's the harvest that we're talking about from downtown. Swapsy snipes it. You got a scatter shot there onto Blizzo. And they're going after Lontar. Lontar's in a mind control right now. He's actually taking a decent amount of damage. They're going after the pet as well. The pet. Oh, it's getting a couple of heals. Can they kill it? And they will kill the pet there. Uh, so now, once again, looking to kill Lontar potentially, but Lontar will survive here onto Swapsy here as my way looks to set up their next victim. Well, binding shot, pinning the team. Kasu trying to get back to that top side, wants to knock them off the edge, but he's having a rough ride getting there at the moment. Has to abandon the ramp as Rels is not in a good position, but he's getting chopped up on that oh, wow! Aspect of the turtle on 10%, almost going down. Hex onto Relza. Tony not able to dispel it. They're not getting good heal value out of that apotheosis. Finally topping Katsu. Swap over to Lone Tar. Can they drop Lone Tar? Triple crowd control. Big damage incoming down to half. Lizzo intervenes back. Greater Fate activates and Lone Tar should recover. Now they're getting back on the Katsu. Katsu disengages away. Chain Harvest comes through. They shut down the Cyclone. Chastise on Katsu. Looking to reconnect. My control attempt by Lone Tar. Trying to remove that Feral healing. Very important that Lone Tar gets that crowd control and these regrowths when he can. As you see the symbols of hope coming out from Relza, trying to reset those important defensive cooldowns. Gripping Kasu back behind the pillar, trying to door of shadows towards the ramp. They interrupt Relza, but Kasu can now get to the ramp while Swapsy is rooted out of line of sight. Mind control on Tony. Swapsy door of shadows in, trying to reconnect, trying to keep momentum, but they can't get to Kasu. Kasu camouflages. Relza now swapping to Lone Tar with the mind games. Will he be able to connect it here? Lone Tar blinks into the middle of the map. That is risky to blink in the middle of the map against a marksmanship hunter here. Especially when he's been targeted down so heavily, but with the Guardian Spirit. It looks like he'll be all right. He fears Tony away. Now setting up on Kasu. Chain Harvest connects. Kasu going to feign death, trying to get away. Gets sundered. Nox and disengages. Roots over onto Blizzo. Relza is trying to drink. They need to get mana back. Lone Tar is charging in to stop the drink. Shadowward pains it. Keeps Relza in combat. Blizzo looking to try and reconnect as soon as possible. Attacking the pet on his way over to Kasu. Swapsy is taking a ton of damage. So no trinket. Lizzo intervenes. Rallies. Will it be enough? Fears them away. Swapsy holds on by a thread. Lone Tar finally out of crowd control. Ray of Hope comes out. Big heals into Swapsy. Kasu running to the top side of the ramp, looking for a knockoff. Gets storm bolted though. He's gonna pop that roar of sacrifice. Still trying to set up in a good position. Knocks Swapsy down. Is he gonna be able to avoid the fight? Looks like he got gripped away. Swapsy's gonna have to waddle over there, attacking the Raptors on his way over. And Kasu's actually running that feign death talent, so he's feign deathing his pets a lot of the time as well to try and fake out as if his pet had gone down. He's done that a couple times this game without the pet actually dying. And Kasu's in a good position here, far away from the cleave, while Tony tanks him in bear form. Kasu can free cast damage. Relza now stunned up. Swap over onto Relza. Doesn't have Guardian Spear for 10 more seconds. Ray of Hope is going to be forced. If they can make it negative here with the Chain Harvest, it might take him out. Greater Fade comes up for Relza, trying to turn it around with the Mind Games. Gets pummeled on it. Goes for a heal. Chain Harvest almost closes out the game. Guardian Spear in one second. Apotheosis comes out. Relza on the run. Match point between these teams, and it's looking dicey for both sides. It really is super unstable matchup. At the same time, Relza down to 20% health, has to trade out the Trinket. But Swapsy and Blizzo are just chopping him up, and it doesn't seem like he's able to get away. Dora Shadows gets interrupted. Flash heals, get windsheared as well. Nice double interrupt there. Can Relza hold on? He's so low in execute range. Blizzo oh. gets scattered on the damage. He gets mind controlled. Lontar keeps him in place with the mind control, waiting for the interrupt to get back up. But Relza gets up top. Beautiful heroic leap there by Blizzo. Stormbolt does connect. Does he have the damage to finish it off? Swapsy right now in a cyclone. Relza will run away with the fade. But Blizzo's there once again. Swapsy doors over. And he will get dropped. A beautiful performance here by Elephor. I don't know if he's running the Resurrection Legendary. Doesn't look like it. They will tap out. Elephor 3-2 over my way with their turbo. It was not looking good at the start. But they got better and better. Every game more convincing than the last. And I feel like this is a really... Kind of scary thing for my way. They're in a three-person roster. They only have jungle, and uh, Ella Ford has shown a composition that can beat them. Very, very strong performance here by LF Org, and it just goes to show uh, a lot of the time, you know, uh, maybe you just didn't execute right. You had the right idea in mind. You had the right comp. You had the right, uh, maybe even strategy, but you just didn't execute on it uh, early on. But then LF Org 
keep their cool and they're able to reverse sweep my way what an insane statement here and they don't swap comp they don't swap anything they just keep going with that turbo and this man on your screen right here uh, mr swapsy big reason to why they do it of course uh with these chain harvests just doing devastating amounts of damage and uh, blizzo just uh, been playing a very consistent role uh in the team right now just uh, doing a lot of damage having a lot of uptime uh, it's not the flashiest warrior place that we see from blizzo but it's exactly what they need just a, a consistent source of damage somebody who uh, knows how to break up the cc chains and, and heal when he needs to and just get aggressive and uh, here relza tries to make it out uh, make it out alive here and uh, eventually swapsy will connect uh, with that chain harvest at the end relza using that greater fade looks like he's about to survive but then blizzard reconnects and then boom harvest from downtown swapsy just erases him and uh Cassius face kind of says it all um lf org gonna secure themselves a top three finish my way gonna be eliminated in fourth uh but still a pretty solid season so far for my way this is uh, the last time we're gonna see them in these cups and uh, we'll be seeing them in circuit moving forward so uh, definitely a great job from them this season uh, we weren't sure about jungle about how jungle would be performing but uh, i think they showed us that they're still a top contender here in uh, europe yeah, most certainly did. Uh, really great turnaround, though, from looking for Org. They're going to take that victory. So we'll see them continuing on here um, in this fourth and final cup here for Europe. So my way, like Zico said, uh, incredible season. So we'll see how they perform in circuit. But I would definitely be worried if I was them with uh, looking for Org, finding a pretty solid counter for them, it looks like. So we'll have to see if they have a solution with that. Either way, looking for Org, moving on here to the lower finals in the fourth cup for Europe and next up we're going to be in the upper bracket once again it's Kungana versus SK Pieces and that is going to be uh the next series we have coming up here Sid what do you want to see from them uh I'm curious to see I saw Zipai tweeting about wanting to play like he really wants to play it seems like he's not getting a chance to play um I wonder if they'll bring in that tank elemental shaman they brought a build like that into rogue mage in the first cup um or if they'll just stick to the mage lock um, that they've been running because they were able to actually beat uh, Kangana in Cup 2, I believe it was. Uh, the only team uh, to be able to do it. So SK Pieces, what have they got this week in the last Cup to be able to take out Kangana? Yeah, I'm curious as well. I know that, you know, I was talking with Mara a little bit behind the scenes here, and it sounds like depending on what Kungana plays, we may see a rogue from Zipai. Um, so we'll we'll see if they, they bring that out. But either way, we're going to head to a break. When we come back, it's going to be Kungana versus SK Pieces coming up next.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back. We are now on our second series of the day here, still in the European region. We are in the upper bracket. It is Ghana facing off against SKP, Sis Venriki, two very highly seeded teams. Yeah, I mean, these are some of the best to do it right now. Kugana has a lead. Um, and in fact, um, SK Pieces is the only team that has beaten Kungana, I, I do believe. So they're the only ones that have actually beaten them um, and, you know, forced them to go back to the drawing board from their RMP. Uh, unfortunately, the drawing board was just kind of changed up the specialization and they still brought RMP, uh, but very back and forth between these two teams. Uh, we'll see if SK Pieces does have a different answer because so far, Kungana, they've only had to play one composition. The RMP, Raikou, Meh, Waz, they're going to be locking that in once again. And for SK Pieces, it, it's going to be the Mage Lock. We've got Mage Lock Priest. This matchup went in favor of Kungana last week. Um, we'll see if SK Pieces has figured out a different strategy uh, and how exactly they're going to approach this matchup. I really want to see Maru go on the Fire Mage. Uh, I think with the Fire Mage, it could be... Uh, you know, a lot of unexplored territory there, but we are going to see Asgraf get sapped, Mercy getting opened up on. Decent opener here, Raikou already popping that combustion, getting a DR ring, getting a sheep onto Maru as well to get a double fear onto Asgraf and Maru. This is uh, Mercy going to be trading out his unending resolve, but teleport out of the line of sight there. He will go back to Asgraf's line of sight, relaying his portal there as well. And they didn't actually overlap any cooldowns whatsoever. They only use unending resolve for us and that out. And now Waz! Getting absolutely crashed here with that damage from Mercy using that Dark Soul, getting a lot of pressure. Mara now blinking in here with the big Deathborn, PI, everything. This is Veins. This is all. Actually, Mara hasn't activated his Veins yet. He's waiting for it. Maybe waiting for that second push to come through. Mara actually in a full fear right now. He's playing Trinket. And Mercy now in a lot of trouble. They are going to trade out the Trinket and the Guardian Spirit. That was in trade for the blind. So now, checkmate situation. Mercy with nothing. Asgrath with nothing. Next setup, we'll have Combustion. Could be deadly here for Kungana, but we're gonna see Maro still with that death point active. Looking to get something done here. To maybe buy a few cooldowns here. Needs to get aggressive, needs to try to make something happen, but it looks like Mercy is gonna be in a lot of trouble shortly here, Sid. Yeah, let's see if he can avoid the reconnect here. Waz is just back with Maro. Meg grips Waz into range, but Waz is getting blasted. Mortal Coil instantly dispelled. That is still just waiting for Waz. Ooh, that Chaos Bolt almost catches Waz, but not close enough as he gets back to the pillar. Avoiding damage at the moment. Building up combo points. Getting ready for the push here. On to Mercy. 30 seconds away from that unending result. 20 seconds away from the Guardian Spear. Pre-fade by Asgrath. Anticipating the stun lock here. As they grip Mercy into midfield. Is he going to be able to survive Combust and Vendetta? Both rolling onto Mercy with a fear onto the healer. I think this could be it for him. As he ducks for cover behind the pillar. Gates the Garrote. But Asgrath is still polymer for one more second. Ray of Hope sweeps in from Asgrath. That's the last ditch line of defense. And it will allow Mercy to stay alive throughout that critical moment. Now that Unending Resolve available, Mercy likely to play more aggressive. Which means Waz needs to be responsive to it. He's got Cloak of Shadows, but he's getting blasted. He's trying to get back to the pillar here. Actually getting in aggressive. Cheap Shots Asgrath, setting up damage under Mercy, setting up a Ring of Frost. Polymer on Morrow, three on one. I don't know if it's enough That's here. It. it looks like Mercy will go down through the Guardian Spirit and Unending Resolve. Ghana's RMP looking lethal as ever. They're just so clean with the setup. I honestly feel like SK Pieces, I mean, after watching that game, I think they need to make a change. Morrow maybe go play the Fire Mage. Um, but it just doesn't seem like they're really able to find any openings in this match. Can Ghana basically from start to finish, outside of a few moments where Waz still had a ton of cooldowns. His health did get low, but he still had a ton of cooldowns. They were never really scared in the match. Their setups were clean, and uh, Ghana just feels like they're building a lot of momentum in this matchup. They're getting better at it. And I just don't know if SK pieces, if this answer is going to really work for them. Yeah, it just looks like uh, SK pieces was just basically trying to survive. There wasn't like this typical mage lock situation where we see the RMP goes back to the pillar and the mage lock kind of just keeps them there and they can't really move. That never really happened. And here, I mean, it's Mercy basically uh, trying to hold on the pre-Eternal Ages uh, right there, by the way, uh, which is why he's able to survive during that CC chain on Askarath. And Asgraf comes out, Ray of Hope immediately pauses the damage, gives him uh, some nice heals there, and then he keeps his Guardian Spirit for the next setup. So uh, Asgraf also not, you know, panicking in that situation. Then Waz just goes to the Vanish, gets the cheap shot, and look at Matt here, teleports in, and they get the sheep, they get the follow-up, they get the mind games here. 
and uh, Mercy just dies through Guardian with the mind games on him. Uh, and Matt also, with that beautiful positioning, is able to follow up with a fear if they needed it. So that was a big overkill right there. Um, so yeah, I, I completely agree with Van. I want to see the Fire Mage, or I want to see you know a different matchup altogether because uh, we've seen we've seen this play out a, a bunch of times now, and it just feels like Kung and I are always the team that comes out ahead uh, against these major lock teams. I do, I do think there's one thing that they could try, um, and that is go after Raikou a lot more. If they want to play the Mage Lock, I actually feel like going after the Mage is probably the best target. Rogue can be really difficult to take down, unless he's committing like his Vanish and Cloak of Shadows aggressively. Maybe you could swap on him, but I think keeping a lot of pressure on Raikou forces him to actually sit at the pillar a lot more, and it's much more difficult for him to actually push in and get those Ring of Frost, get those Polymorphs uh, during those you know really important moments where they're going for a setup. Um, whereas if you just go after Waz, uh, Raikou's a lot more free in the match. So I, I think they could approach the matchup a little bit differently, but potentially just target the mage, force him to play really, really defensive instead of going after the rogue until maybe later on in the match and just control Waz with fears and polymorphs. Um, that's something that they could at least try. I think yeah, I like it a lot more. Like again. I don't see them going fire on this map. I feel like they probably blind lock fire maybe. If they blind lock fire, will Waz go sub? Uh, that's why I want to see does the matchup evolve like that. Fire RMP maybe it's better into Asa, but if he goes sub, then suddenly it's not. The fire mage is going to be easier to kind of run over once you know the threat is out of the way. You don't have to respect it because Deathborn's been lasting so long. Um, but taking their time to lock it in here, I feel like they're going to be going the same comp. Maybe run a series of it just to see if they can make it work uh, before readjusting it. Get more data points make sure that like if we can get wins on big maps we should still use it on big maps uh, and then change it for small maps uh but yeah they're gonna stick with it frost mage Destro, holy priest despite mercy getting cut down very quickly um not very often we see a mage lock ended so fast um but Ngana are experts and i'm sure that they've got so many games of this matchup with how many teams are playing mage lock i feel like they're gonna outscale mage lock in practice um pretty soon so SK pieces might have to throw a curveball here pretty soon. If let's say they lose this series, go to lower bracket, they have to beat LF Org, come back in the finals again. Um, probably going to approach it a bit differently if this swings 3 0, uh, not in their favor. Yeah, I, I like that. The, I like that they're going to keep it and, and at least try it on, on the bigger map. But uh, I think Van has a really, really solid point. I feel like when you go after the rogue, the rogue is like, he's like the damage sponge, you know, he's just going to completely fine he screams and vile like it's only scary when the double chaos bolts are coming in uh, outside of that uh, the rogue is not really going to be super scared um but when you go after the mage i, I like i want to see was push in first which is typically what happens he kind of starts the setup and leads it i want to see them just try to crowd control him when that happens and go after right i think that's uh, the way you actually shut it down and then when raikou is forced to run and mech is forced to run after raikou to heal him why is going to be isolated and that's when they can uh, go after him and that's how they can um, get a lot of that pressure um with that said though uh, i feel like if sk pieces do that they will survive longer in the matchup but i i find it really hard to see them survive long enough to where like they win on mana over meh you know um so i, I think it's still going to be an uphill battle for sure um, but may as well do what Sid said, just play it out, see, uh, you know, with uh, more data points exactly how you think about the matchup, and then uh, maybe if they uh, face each other again in, like, the grand final or uh, just in the circuit, they have a different answer. What's the answer for yeah. RMP? What's the secret <laughs> formula? <laughs> they thought it was Mage Lock, but <laughs> I don't know. I really do think, though, they can change the strategy. Like... That exactly what we talked about. Go after Raikou when Waz is in the open, control him, force Ma off the pillar, and then you can crowd control Ma. And then Raikou is kind of left alone if he gets locked on Arcane. Can't really run anywhere outside of his soul shape, so he's going to be stuck in the open and can get blasted. And I think it's a, it's a much safer line of play for SK pieces, and you can either drop Raikou by doing that, or you force him into a very defensive posture, and that's when you can kind of play that win condition of getting them out of mana. Uh, as the mage lock so strategy change i think is definitely in order they are going to a better map so going to empyrean uh, i would say this and maldraxxus are probably the best mage lock maps just because the pillars are small there's a lot of open space 
And uh, if you do decide to go for kind of a reset and hide, uh, a Blizzard, a Frozen Orb will be easy to get off. And there's not really any position you can get where you can line a sight you know, the mage and the lock at the same time, it's going to be really difficult to do. So if SK pieces can force Tungana defensive, I think that's going to be a key for their victory. If they can't, Tungana can get away with just doing these clean setups over and over and over. It's just a matter of time before SK pieces uh, falls behind and loses. Yeah, let's see if they can do it here. Um, you're going to need a lot of pressure and Morrow, uh, the man on your screen right now, is going to have to be the one who generates a lot of it. And uh, he is playing uh, with that Necrolord, Deathborn, of course. Let's see what Mar decides to do. He's actually standing on top of Mercy. So he wants Waz to open up on the Mercy, and then he can Nova him out, potentially. No, he actually goes for the Quaking Palm. So Waz could have evasion that, uh, but it's okay. We forgive him. And we're uh, going to see a Fear onto Asgarath into a potential sheep here, right? They're looking for it, but takes out the, the Premonition, but not able to actually find it. It would have been DR'd anyway. And now they are going to connect onto Mercy, but no CC onto Asgarath. He's Mercy. Most likely would just get kidnapped into Grip or just Grip without even getting kidnapped. And uh, Maro did swap his Trinket here. I, I like that a lot more because last game he was playing with the Trinket. Now playing with that Echoing Resolve. Mercy with a pre Eternal Aegis is going to be enough. There he gets Mind Control on it. Big hits coming out from Maro here. Pre Eternal Aegis from Waz getting absolutely blasted here. Double Infernals called in for Mercy. Big damage here with Cataclysm with the Holy Priest down. Uh, and that was the Guardian as well. Waz might just go down. Forced to trade out that Trinket and the Cloak of Shadows. A lot more pressure coming out in this game from SK Pieces. They're lobbing out some Chaos Bolts onto Meh now as well. And now Kungana looking to get that pressure again. Raikou! This is exactly what you love to see. Raikou now on fire, forcing out his Carterize. Maru getting a lot more work done here now that he's playing with that Echoing Resolve uh, instead of that e Trinket. Another triple Infernal. Mercy doing a lot of work here cleaving, but now finally taking a more defensive posture. And they're going to take that uh, Triangle Wizard formation with one healer in the back and one wizard on each side of the pillar. Both of them free casting essentially here. Uh, and they are going to pick Mercy's side. Go after Mercy once again. Shadow Step Kick. Gets gripped. That means he can get a full stun now onto Mercy. If uh, everybody on Kungana can dogpile onto him, this could be Mercy's unending resolve coming up shortly here. Well, let's see if they can push for the cooldown. Vendetta coming up in seven seconds. Really going after Mercy here. Maro caught in a polymorph. Asgrath fading away from crowd control, stabilizing Mercy throughout this assault, but it wasn't even really too much of a commitment. I'll have to wait and see what the next kidney will bring as Waz has Vendetta for it. He's frosting of it at the moment, being blasted by flurry combos of Maro. But without those cooldowns active, likely not going to be lethal. They're swapping back to Raikou in midfield. Good idea to just turret whoever's in their line of sight. Procking to Deathborn. Opportunity for Mara to find a bit of extra damage here onto Raikou. No cauterize to rely on. Just tanking both Mercy and Mara out the middle of the map here on that mage. Meb sprinting in for crowd control. Gets the psychic scream. Mercy on the run. Pre-gates the kidney shot. Nice play by Mercy, but perhaps it won't matter. Massive damage incoming. Is he just going to die through on any resolve? They go all in on it and close it. I cannot believe that he got cut down like that pre-gates the stun walls respects the damage boss vendetta's into it regardless and just completely takes him out i don't think this is a matchup you i don't want to see this matchup again in that situation you go down there's no way <laughs> yeah that's really scary he looked that's like really a blue scary there. he looked like me when i was playing <laughs> yesterday <I'm just> <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I mean, I don't even feel like SK Pieces really played offensively. I feel like they kind of got what they needed done. They forced Waz really defensive. Oh. They got his Cloak of Shadows early, his Trinket. Uh, they forced Raikou really defensive as well. Had them behind the pillar, but it's just these clean setups that do come in from Kugana. We could see exactly how it does go. So Mercy uses his gateway here. And um, let's see how Raikou and Matt actually do get the crowd control in order um, to secure this kill. So I don't think it's this kidney where he actually goes down. So there's still a bit left on Vendetta, but they do get the combustion. They get a nice CC chain on Marl, which he actually ice blocks. So he ice blocks out of the crowd control chain, spell steals the combustion, and they're able to get the Ray of Hope uh, out of the way. But Asgrath still has his Guardian Spirit. However, there's no Trinket. So if they can just get crowd control on Asgrath, and go after Mercy, they can actually drop him through that unending resolve, and they do have the Vendetta, which is exactly what we are about to see. So, this next setup, Waz right now, behind the pillar, he moves in, gets the Garrote, moving forward, trying to get some CC on Asgrath, does manage to find the cheap shot, as Mercy actually portals and gateways, but Waz is there with a sprint, Vendetta likely to come in, does he even use the Vendetta? He does at the last second, and they just cut through the wall, massive damage incoming, Asgrath wasn't able to help him whatsoever, it was good kiting there, 
um, by Mercy, but was with the sprint, um, was able to basically catch up not only to the portal, but as well as the gateway. So good cooldown uses there by Waz to stay on target, and they cut him down through all his defensives. Yep, um, I think we could all agree. This matchup against a really strong RMP does not look that good. Um, I think for, for the Mage Lock, I would love to see Maru go over on the Fire Mage because uh, so far we haven't actually seen that much flexibility from SK pieces. We've seen them um, use the Ally Mage. We've seen them, which let's be honest, they won a few games with it, but <laughs> I don't want to see that. That did not look convincing whatsoever. Um, we've seen them on the Mage Lock. And we've seen them on the Warrior Mage. And I feel like all three matchups are bad. I think Mage Lock is probably the best one into Rogue Mage out of those three. So I would like to see a Fire version coming out here. Um, but we're going to see. We're going to do the Coliseum. So yeah, I think um, for SK Pieces, this could be a situation where they might bring in Z-Pi. Like, they're a team with a lot of options. They could bring in Z-Pi and go for a Cleave setup. They could. I don't think the map is great for that. Um, they could go Warrior Mage. Um, which they've done in the past. You could go Ellie Mage, which I don't really want to see, even though they're the best at it. I just don't feel like it's a good matchup right now. Um, and they could go Fire Lock. Uh, I think Fire Lock is the best uh, option out of everything the they have. Thing. Uh, I think they're doing the same thing as well, but <laughs> it didn't look great. I'm actually really surprised they don't at least try Fire. Maybe they just don't think it's good, but... I don't know. It seems like the nice thing about the Fire Mage is it makes the matchup a little bit more stable. And as Morrow, you can get consistent control on Meh. Like, when Meh pushes in, you can actually get a Dragon's Rush Sheep on him. And then all you need to do is stun Raikou or Waz, and you can do a big setup with Combustion right away. It's going to be, I, I would say, probably overall uh, less pressure, but the, the pressure is more kind of concentrated. And the peels for Morrow will also be greater uh, on the Fire Mage. So they're not going with it. Maybe it's something that they try in the finals if they make it back to that point. But SK pieces are going to the second best map for Mage Lock. A uh, very large map indeed. Um, I, I like the pressure on Raikou last game, uh, forcing him really defensive in the match. But really need to be careful because I don't know. It just the way they deal damage. Uh, they're so they're so calculated, coordinated. Gonna they play this matchup extremely well. It looks like they've been getting better and better at it. Um, they know how to control and kind of avoid Morrow when he's got his death born up. And if you can do that, you can avoid using basically all your defensive cooldowns during that moment. That's when you're not as afraid in the match and you can actually play really, really aggressive. And Matt actually is playing Venthyr, so gives him a bit more mobility with the Door of Shadows. He's not going to be able to reset the cooldown for Waz as often on that Vendetta, but uh, he will be able to assist a little bit more in terms of his own potential um, damage. Yeah, absolutely. And um, let's see if SK Pieces can turn it around. Uh, exactly what type of adaptations uh, that we can see it coming out of them. Uh, Mara was playing the Echoing Resolve last uh, game. Uh, in the first game, he was playing the Trinket. So uh, maybe small adaptations like that could be enough to turn things around. But Kungana definitely looking uh, a little bit uh, unbeatable right now on that Rogue Mage. And we are going to see the same opener potentially here. Dragon's Breath on the Mercy into a setup. Was once again not a patient taking calm right there uh so he will get slowed down uh, slowed uh, here in the opener here he does get this spell and here comes the pressure nice root on the grip big damage coming in here uh, from maru potentially and mercy but uh, they actually get the ray of hope without actually activating anything they still have that dark soul they still have that death born in their back pockets and maru actually will activate it now still has that uh, icy veins as well available he's getting uh, controlled beautifully by raiku Ooh, raiku counter spells him on, on arcane there so Mario is actually able to precast Frost Bolts, and uh, he's going to go after Raikou right now. Raikou blinks all the times. So they try to purge it. Mercy's taking a lot of damage as well, but Raikou is definitely in a lot more trouble right now. And Raikou is getting blasted. He will get that Guardian Spirit. I'm not sure if it actually procs. I don't think it procs. Mercy on the flip side gets the Ray of Hope here from Ascraft. It will trigger. He also had to use his um, uh, Eternal Ages Waz now with the Trinket and uh, actually just the Vanish uh, or the Shadow Melt there, I believe. Uh, Waz still has that Cork of Shadows in his back pocket. So both teams so far trading a lot of cooldowns. But I would say Kungana probably a little bit in the lead. Actually, they did proc that Guardian from earlier. So Meh did not have that Guardian uh, for another three minutes. So actually, not too bad of a situation here for SK Pieces. They got a lot done with their first Deathborn. But still, they didn't get that Carterize. Uh, but I think the biggest thing they forced for sure was Waz's Trinket. 
But the in-between time is going to be not nearly as threatening. Here comes another kidney shot. They grip him away. Riker still hasn't committed. The combust now going for the combust towards the tail end. Gets instantly stripped. It looks like maybe he's well stolen back by him. He's feared, though. Double mortal coil from Mercy. Intercepting that combustion beautifully. But Vendetta is coming off cooldown. Waz is pushing to connect. But the ice wall. Oh, it's not going to get too much value. Met is in line of sight. Waz is going for the kill here. Is he just going to pop Vendetta even without CC on Asgrath? He's actually getting it turned around. Big damage. They pawed him. Pod. They pod managed him. to punish the push. Can they take out the pod tender? Met is trying to heal the pod. He's absorbing the pod, trying to keep it alive here. Can they keep it alive? No. Let's get pieces. Strike back. Putting a point on the board. Wow. Uh, that was a surprising amount of damage. Big Chaos Bolt's coming in from Mercy. I think it was actually the double Chaos Bolt combo. Was actually did have his Cloak of Shadows available, um, but I think he was just caught in the stuns, unfortunately unable to find it. It was a nice fear on Meh. A, a good push. Morrow actually didn't really assist too much in that kill. He was going for crowd control of his own to follow up the fear. So that was a big push there by Mercy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, being able to take down the, the pod. Um, this is the best map, I would say, or second best map for SK pieces. But uh, I think they played this one well. They created a lot of space on the match, and it was a lot more difficult for Waz and Raikou to actually find these consistent setups that we've seen in the previous games. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, at this point, it really is that situation. Max playing Relentless. They forced out the um, Guardian Spirit, so it's on a three-minute cooldown, and Waz is no trinket. So that's really your opening. You have to kill him in a stun, and they're going aggressive here. And this is where Maru sends the Ice Wall, I believe. Raikou with the Combustion gets actually spell reflected, and one Chaos Bolt connects, double Mortal Coil, and uh, Waz gets dispelled there, and Meh uh, is uh, actually getting Ice Walled off here, but he's in range. He goes for the heal, he gets feared fully, and Waz has Eternal, he has Eternal Ages there as well, and he actually just gets blasted. He just dies through it with double it. What is that damage? Mercy basically solos him through Eternal. <laughs> what? It's only fair <laughs> for him killing him through I think resolve in ages earlier. Mercy yeah. is getting an opportunity <laughs> yeah, to, so, yeah. to answer back here. Uh, but now it's going to be going to the rogue mage friendly maps with the bigger pillars. Uh, seems like that push was just maybe awkwardly timed. Like, I'm not too sure. They weren't really committed hard on it. The wall didn't seem like it got value, but maybe it did. Uh, and they didn't get CC on Asgrath. Like, they were just, they were literally just about to pull the trigger and then died, right? As they were going to maybe go for the win with Vendetta. So. I, I'm still worried for them here on the smaller maps. I'd much rather see them play Fire Mage as a blind lock um, than Frost. But then maybe Waz goes sub. So who knows if that's actually going to be uh, the correct move. But playing Destro Frost on a small map or a map with bigger pillars, I think, is going to be just as difficult here. That just kind of feels like maybe a miscalculation on Kangana's part more than anything. I'm really curious to see where we're going. What map? What is that? What do you think the best map for rogue mages against mage lock? What's not too big, not too small? It's Tigers. perfect. Tigers, maybe. I could see that. What else? Not the drone. Where are we going? Mm, maybe Ashermans. Ashermans? I could see Ashermans. Still a decent map. Like if you're in the mage lock, you're not too sad about that one. But the pillar does make it annoying. Or, nah, I probably won't see black or cold. Like getting black ice walled into the room <laughs> would be kind of nice for the mage lock, actually. Hmm. Is ice wall really that threatening though? When you have master spell, they're gonna go. Hard, okay, right? they're going small, as small as possible. Asgrath, good luck avoiding crowd control in this map. That That's going to be the most difficult thing, I think. <laughs> it's just Asgrath is going to be a lot more exposed. Because as the Holy Priest in this match, you want to be... Outlaw! As... Outlaw! Okay. I did not expect that. I mean, Waz is never going to a... die. <laughs> yeah, so... that's that's This is really interesting. Because we've seen the Outlaw Rogue before. Uh, I think it was Acro. Well, we've seen it from multiple rogues, but Acro, I think, played it in the Mage Lock setup, and he looked extremely durable on the rogue. That being said, I feel like it might be better on a smaller or on a bit bigger map. Um, it seems like the, the overall pressure... I mean, I guess anything could happen. If they get consistent crowd control on Asgrath, then the damage will eventually add up um, from the Outlaw Rogue. But when we did see it win in the past, it was on you know a larger map, 
Um, and basically they just had um, Acro chase down the Warlock the entire game, making it really difficult for him to actually get anything done. And eventually in dampening, they won. Doesn't have the same kind of punch as the uh, Assassination Rogue, but the consistent damage is there and you gain a lot of durability, which I think is uh, really important in this match. It's also yeah. just experimentation, right? Like you may as well, why not? You've got a couple games, maybe Outlaw is actually better. Um, we, we don't have the data points. Kind of find it hard to believe. I think Vendetta on a small map, like you said, to be able to connect is way easier. And then Outlaw on the big maps where you might have to run out further and get blasted. So you're gonna have the durability um, could give you an edge. Uh, so it is a bit strange to see them try it on a small map uh, as Outlaw specifically, because I don't think they needed the advantages of it here. Um, but SK Pieces might get an opportunity to maybe take the series here if Kungana, you know, the experimentation goes uh, awry on their part. Uh, it might be a chance for them to grab the series. Yeah, definitely right. interesting. We'll see. I love Outlaw Rogue. Yeah. Well, this is home field advantage for Outlaw Rogue as well, so maybe that's why <laughs> you picked God. it. The pirate map, yeah. This that is, is a, true. A hidden passive <laughs> between the I eyes does 50% more damage <laughs> on hook point. You remember when Waz started playing Outlaw Rogue? They put the Outlaw Ellie with SWAT. Like, that was way he back. was really good at Outlaw. He was extremely mm -hmm. good at Outlaw, and uh, I'm curious. Maybe he's figured out something on the specialization. Like, maybe, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of hoping that Outlaw kind of has a rise to power because it wasn't, it hasn't been the best for most of the expansion, but with some of the set bonuses and double legendary, like, it, it seems to be really stepping up. I think the, the, the main advantage it has over the other specs is just its defensive capabilities. It's just super high stamina. Um, yeah, you have a lot of defensive cooldowns that you can rotate through. Uh, really difficult to actually take down. So if you're going to be the target in a match, Outlaw could definitely be a really, really solid answer. Maybe Waz just tilted after dying in that last <laughs> game. Like, you know what? I'm just going to go Outlaw. I could just uh, play three DPS and I won't die. I'm chilling. And uh, yeah. He doesn't want to sit at the pillar anymore. Just wants to attack, even if it's less damage. <laughs> just... Yeah, why not? <laughs> Run out there like poking people with his little swords, hoping that it goes. He could be, have a sepsis vendetta, just instantly kill someone in one second. But Outlaw Rogue is definitely... He's actually playing Kyrian. This is new. This is new tech. New Outlaw Rogue tech. All the you Outlaw Rogues before this have been playing Flagellation. They've been playing Venthyr. So why, what is Waz running for a build? I'm waiting for the thing to refresh the AWC companion. I need to I need to know here. What's the new tech? What's the secret he's found? Because no one's been playing Kyrian Outlaw. Until now. <laughs> Until now, and now uh, we're going to see Waz do it. Marl's going to move forward. He switched over to the Human Mage. So he's playing Panda, and now he's actually going to be playing the Human Mage. Uh, and this one, maybe anticipating he's going to be the target, perhaps, but he will lose out on the Pandaren Racial, and maybe they're just going to go after Morrow. Just put control on Mercy, train down Morrow uh, on that Outlaw Rogue, being really, really durable. Pre-faint coming in from Waz, but he gets a kick onto Morrow. Morrow getting a lot of work done now, but Waz is going to be able to gouge off uh, his Trinket, so... That unending resolve is not going to be as potent, potentially. Waz has a, at least a one more answer to deal with it, so we can maybe land some stuns. Uh, but immediately, Kunkana is forced back to the pillar. Yep, and we're going to see Waz just ducking for cover here with the rest of his team. Uh, Raikou actually blinking away from his team. And this is where the map can be really, really punishing. Get a sheep on tomorrow, sheep shot onto Asgarath. And they don't actually... Raikou doesn't have a blink, so he can't swap that sheep, unfortunately. And do a go with it. Uh, but they are going to gouge Maro here, and now Maro blinks. Blinks again with the gateway, and now he will get a ray of hope. I feel like that was actually nothing really being committed. Oh, he pre rayed the blind, so nicely done there by Askarath, actually. And getting caught up in the chastise, potentially uh, into a fear as well. Mind games connect on tomorrow. This is a really long push, but you don't find anything with it. But that was Maro's death born, and now Waz is getting a little bit of uptime if he can get dispelled out of this thing. And he will, and he gets rerouted from another frostbite. So maybe not the most uptime, but this is where normally an assassination rogue would have to run. But Outlaw Rogue just gets to stay in there. And they're actually going to be attacking Raikou and uh, just kind of CCing uh, Waz here. So I like that a lot more from oh SK pieces as well. And uh, Waz just uh, having a field day here on, on this pirate. Just charging forward, putting kidney shots onto the Warlock because he knows Mara's just going to blink out of them. So just trying to get some value out of the stuns somewhere else and just marching down Morrow here on hook point. I think we'll be able to chop him up. He blinks away from Waz. Waz reconnects there with the grappling hook, looking to take down Morrow, but gets feared off by Mercy. 
Raikou not getting enough damage to finish Morrow, but Met is slipping in to get crowd control. Chastise doesn't get the Psychic Scream, and Asgrath was able to get Ray of Hope off. But now Asgrath is interrupted. They could make this Ray negative, potentially. They don't. It at least doesn't top him off here. Can they push for an Ice Block? They're turning it around on Waz. He pops the Faint. Faint, he's going to be all right here on Outlaw. He gets the Ray of Hope Excellent. as well. Line of Sighting in the stun. Waiting for Meh to come out of the Polymorphs, and I think he's going to be okay. He gouges Asgarath, just setting up a little bit of extra crowd control as Morrow blinks away. Can they get rid of that Equine Resolve and go for a Kidney Shot before Blink comes off cooldown, I wonder. Waz doesn't want to leave the pillar just yet. He's building up combo points, getting his Slice and Dice back up before deciding to make a push. Meh resetting some cooldowns here, but big damage coming in from Mercy off to the side with that Chaos Bolt. Blasting down Waz, Morrow's Frozen Orb holding them at bay while Asgrath tries to drink in the back line behind the fence. Meh is greater fading in to stop the drink. Gets a Chastise looking for a fear, I would imagine. They're gunning for an Ice Block. If they get a Master Spell on it, they might be able to end the game here. It is match point for SK Pieces. Meh is fake casting the Interrupts, gets the Master Spell. They're going for it. Guardian Spirit at 10%. Is it going to be enough? Raikou is blasting him with Combustion, looking to take him out of match point. They proc the Guardian. They're trying to cut through it. Waz is trying to reconnect. I don't think they're going to get there in time. Morrow does stabilize, but an Ice Block and a proc Guardian Spirit is still pretty high value. And every time Meh has this Chastise Fear, it just seems like Morrow is going to go down. Yeah, this is a really good push here by Waz. He's just been able to sit on Morrow for a majority of this game. Morrow does have one Ice Block left, but Mana is actually relatively even. Surprisingly, an off Kitty Shot. Waz is actually just not putting Kitty Shots on Morrow whatsoever. He just knows he's just going to blink them anyway, so he's throwing them onto Mercy. He's throwing them onto Asgroth. Just additional crowd control. Raikou now getting swapped to behind the pillar. Mars actually just going to blink in aggressively. The double mortal coil comes in. Raikou on the run, but he's stunned up in midfield. Big damage from Morrow. What is Raikou going to do? It looks like Waz is there to help him out. Raikou trying to reset his counter spell. Blinks towards the pillar once again, trying to avoid Morrow at all costs, but Morrow's there. He's got the Deathborn power infusion. If he can land Frostbolt, it's going to be devastating, but. Has this annoying outlaw rogue all over him. <laughs> he just can't seem to get away. Waz well, going to retreat to the pillar. Go for a kidney shot on Asgrath once again. Morrow with a beautiful altar time right now. Could get dispelled, but it looks like it is still going to be active. Morrow getting dangerously low with no cauterize. Dancing with death, but Waz well, once again all over him. This is the combustion from Raikou. And uh, I really feel like Morrow kind of realized he was going to be the target this match. He's playing the Aegis, he's playing the human to get out of stuns. Um, and for the first time in a long time, Don is actually forced to run back to the pillar. Yeah, this is uh, really, really the first time, I think, where Waz is forced to go back here and just reconvene with his team for a second. And uh, that was a nice push, though. They almost uh, pushed through and got that second ice block from Morrow. But the longer he stalls, the faster his cold snap is going to come back up, which would give him that extra safety. That's really what Maru is playing for right now. And once again, they're going to go after Waz here, but Waz is winning that exchange. Calls in Braun here as well to do some work. And Mercy getting counterspelled there by Raikou. And he's going to be the main target to kind of CC and put counterspells on. Since they are going after Maru, Waz looking for the kidney shot. Actually, he gets faded there by Asuka. Really nicely done, but he gets blinded. And he's going to be a full blind. Free Ray of Hope again on the blind here. He's going to help Maru out just a little bit. And once again, Asuka now in a full sap. here. three seconds left on his trinket. And uh, they might be actually able to get that ice block. Maru blinks away. He doesn't want to use it here. And I think he's managed to actually hold on to it long enough. Now, with that um, ice block, or with that cold snap coming back off cooldown, Maru actually might be looking good here on that mage. If they can't force the ice block literally right now. Big damage coming in on tomorrow. Can they get it? That's the question. Riker's blinking in. He has the Dragon's Breath to follow up. They get the Shastas and they get the ice block. Man is there with a fear. Looking for the Master Spell potentially. Doesn't maybe want to waste mana. Maru gets topped off, but that's exactly what they came for to get the objective. Now, a little bit less than two minutes on that cold snap. Maru is going to be a completely wide open target, but Asgaroth has his trinket. Asgaroth has, uh, you know, answers. So, potentially Asgaroth could stall for Maru's uh, third ice block to come back off cooldown. But on the side of SK Pieces, Mercy's been having kind of a quiet game right now. Finally activating his Dark Soul and uh, looking to get aggressive, but so far it doesn't look like he's been getting too much done here. He's been, again, controlled quite a bit by Kungana, and now Maro looking for the Frost Pulse here onto Raikou, but Raikou, once again, going to be completely fine to get a kidney shot onto Asgarath into a full sap here. Big pressure pressure oh onto Maro. He's got the all the time he gets That's this, but I think Maro's just dead here. Yeah. They get a fair Asgarath trinket, and they manage to keep Maro alive with that trinket from Asgarath. It was has a full blind, and it's not over yet. They might just DR blind it, and they will send the DR blind, and they get a kidney shot off. Oh, why isn't it this, but he gets Oh my goodness! Shot. Ice wall coming out from Morrow, 
trying to survive here, trying to extend oh, himself. And Raikou gets blasted. He's on fire. He gets forced into the ice block. And just when we say Mercy's been having a quiet game, he finds an opening. That wall got everything. Raikou blinked into the wall, so he was out of line of sight of Mev while Mercy blasted him down. That wall almost won the game for Morrow. Defensive ring of frost drop by Raikou. Not gonna catch any pets for him though, and now he won't have that crack of Asgarath, but there's no blocks. Oh, actually, Cold Snap just came up for Morrow. He's gonna have one more ice block, one more lifeline to take this to a game five against Kungana here. But his death horn is faded, his icy veins is about to run out, so his damage is gonna be low, and Waz knows that. He's jumping in. Mercy is trying to force him away with Chaos Ball. Tomorrow gets pulled back to the fence line. Waz is pushing in aggressively, looking to close out the game. Mez trying to sneak in a drink before going for the push. Is he going to be able to get to Asgrath and crowd control him in time? Waz is just moving in. Is Waz just going to be the one to crowd control Asgrath? Asgrath pre-fades, I think, the kidney shot there. Line of sighting Raikou's polymorph. Ned doesn't want to walk into the Wizards. He's going to line of sight with Raikou. Trying to just wait for the perfect opportunity. Whittle down Maro's health a little bit more before committing. Ray of Hope comes out onto Morrow here, and that should stabilize him. Waz is now taking some hits. He's going to close the shadows, get aggressive here. Blind is coming up in 10 seconds. No trinket for Asgrath. Could be a game-winning play if they connect the Master Spell onto Morrow. Five seconds away, Adrenaline Rush is rolling. Waz is setting up for it. Shut down on the Fleshcraft. Asgrath on the run, trying to avoid the blind. Waz steps in, gets stunned on it, into Kidney Shot on Asgrath. Are they going to blind out of the kidney? No, Waz gets feared. He's not able to connect the blind here. Is, is he going to get in range in time? Net is chasing down Asgrath as well, but he's line of sighting him at the pillar here. Raikou gets pulled away by Mercy. Mercy needs to hard carry, but he doesn't really have any damage to carry with. Morrow is down to half once again, but Asgrath has continued to stall and stall and stall, avoiding this blind, but finally blind connects. But Asgrath doesn't care. He stalled long enough to have Trinket to escape it. Now big damage is incoming from Mercy. Decimating Bolt, swap to Meh. He's going to line the sight behind the pillar with the Guardian Angel. Waz is trying to restealth behind the pillar. No Cloak of Shadows, no Ice Block, no Guardian Spirit. Mana and favor of SK Pieces. They have control of the map. This is looking solid for them in this position. If Morrow can get another one of those clutch Ice Walls, potentially they close it out here. Raikou getting blasted, has to blink back. He can't stay aggressive. Waz is trying to carry the team on the Outlaw Road, but he's going to get whittled down. We're getting deeper into dampening. That extra stamina may not carry its value this late into the game. Stun on to Asgrath, trying to push for the kill. Waz gets Mortal Cold crossed over the, and Frozen Orbed away. Raikou gets in aggressively, lands a full Polymorph. They're pushing for the block here with a pre-ray of hope once again from Asgrath. Stabilizes them for now, but how much longer? He's kicked on Frost. Four seconds left to kill him. He's kicked again. Is he going to fall two seconds away? They no drop them way. in the kick. Kungana close it out three to one. Really nicely done by Kungana. There was a really nice push there by SK Pieces where they were able to get not only the Cauterize, but the Ice Block from Raikou off the back of a really nice wall and some burst coming in from Mercy. But Kungana looked really solid in this match. The Outlaw Rogue was interesting for a few different reasons. Uh, number one, obviously very durable in the match, but number two, it allowed them to get crowd control just by throwing off off stuns. So we were just seeing off stuns on the healer, uh, Raikou would follow it up with like a dragon's breath, and just those two things alone is a 10 second CC <laughs> that they're able to kind of burst and push through. So Outlaw not needing stuns to do damage is going to be really, really effective against Morrow playing, you know, the blink stun on Mage. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, also, uh, sometimes Waz just saps out of the kidney shot as well, so... Uh, definitely a lot of uh, just disruption on the outlaw rogue they can survive for a long long time as you can see was he was forced to the pillar like once or twice this game but in the in the grand scheme of things he definitely had insane amounts of uptime and uh, that's the strength of, of outlaw i think it's uh it's just a solid dampener and here is one of those pushes a kidney shot uh, onto asgarath and a mortal coil actually onto was was could have sapped that for sure he vanished here he definitely would have sapped that but he just uh, does a dr cheap into the, the, sh the full sheep, uh, they are sheep shot into a full sheep, and then they go after Morrow here once again, and that kick uh, is ultimately what uh, seals the deal there. Was that actually a kick on Polly? Looked like he was kicked, maybe he got kicked on both schools, but uh, I think Morrow would have ice blocked there if uh, he wasn't kicked, so I'm gonna just say he was kicked on cross there, and uh, <laughs> Waz on the outlaw doing, uh, doing some work. For sure, two million damage. Well, we could say whatever we want up here, right? Nobody's here to correct us. Yeah, exactly. That's the beauty of being at <laughs> the desk. We can just we can just make things up if we want to as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Oh gosh. Okay. Well, either way, uh, Kangana taking that victory here. SK pieces only managing it one game off of them, so uh, obviously a little bit unfortunate to them. However, they're going to be jumping down there to that lower bracket. I was talking with Mario a little bit earlier today, and I think he was fully expecting my way to win the first series. 
um, and actually move forward and having to face them in the lower bracket. And he was really confident he'd be able to win that. But now that they're against looking for org, how do you think that match plays out, Super Tease? I mean, didn't we see the wizard mirror between them? Swapsy's did, yeah. team got just dumped. <laughs> like, it just got <laughs> completely plowed. Like, there was nothing they could do. Just bulldozed by them, I'm pretty sure, in the mirror. It was pretty one-sided um, in favor of SK Pieces wizard cleave at that time. So I don't know if something has changed now between Friday and today. Um, certainly their turbo looks really good. I don't know if they're planning on utilizing that, though, um, in that specific matchup. I think they're going to have to wizard cleave mirror um and we'll have to wait and see if it's if it's improved because otherwise i, I think sk pieces were the, the dominant wizard lords the last time they waved wands at each other <laughs> yeah we'll see uh who can wave there do the swish and flick better here as we get into this uh into this next series it's sk pieces versus looking for org uh the winner of this will be moving on to the grand final so we're gonna head to a break and we're gonna see who is up for that up next sk pieces versus looking for org. we'll be right back Guys, I haven't seen Harry Potter. No references, please. Okay, but you understood the reference, so...
Hi guys, welcome back. We are now in the EU lower finals. The winner of this one will be moving to the grand finals. Loser will be taking third for the fourth cup here before we head into the circuits. SK pieces versus looking for org Ven. Yeah, I mean, the last time these two teams met, it turned into a battle of wizards. Um, SK pieces ended up coming out ahead uh, in the mage lock mirrors, but we'll see. I do feel like there is some room for other wizards. Like, I, I want to see Zipai. I, I swear Elemental Shaman, Destro Warlock can be really strong. Um, I, I really want to see it as an answer in the mage lock to at least, like, let it play out. Um, but it isn't something we've really seen too much. I've played against a team that did it on the ladder, and it was a difficult match. Um, Elephorg as well has some options. But I, I can't help but feel like both these teams at this point, they feel like just Mage Lock is going to be their best composition, and that's what they're going to play um, for the entirety of the series. It's just Frost Mage, Destro, Holy Priest, mirror after mirror after mirror. And uh, <laughs> let's see which, which team pulls out ahead. Is this going to be a, a long series then? You, sounds like the tone of your voice is... But what about the tone of my voice? I don't know. It sounds, it sounds uh, I don't know, sad or, or something. I'm, I'm, I mean, okay, but no, I'm not. Uh, I'm not. I'm not saying it's going to be a long series or anything like that. Uh, I just think it's one of those things where both these teams, uh, they feel like that's going to be their best chance. And honestly, the mage lock mirrors, they've been kind of explosive. I feel like the uh, icy veins and the deathborn from the frost mage, uh, when those cooldowns are up, really anything can happen. As well as kind of the explosive nature of the destruction warlock right now, getting out those double chaos bolts with infernals. The games have the possibility of going long, but they can also be over in the first setup. Mm. Yeah, love love games like that. Honestly, from a viewer perspective, at least, where uh, it's just like super unpredictable. You don't really know when it, when it's gonna end, but. Uh, yeah, well, I guess we will have to see. Obviously, like we've already mentioned, you know, both of these teams have been qualified for the top eight, so they're just kind of feeling things out, uh, you know, for this last cup. But um, I, what do we think is uh, the grand finals is going to look like? Obviously, it, you know, could could go either way. Who would you rather see um, out of these two teams here, Zico, in the grand finals? Um, well, to be honest, I think uh, Kungana probably have the edge into both of them um but if i had to guess i would say probably lf org be a little bit of a better match uh in the finals um but yeah we it depends right because sk pieces they definitely uh had a bit of a tough one but at the same time there was some signs of life um and at the same time we also haven't seen their full potential you know there's still some things that they can do uh, on that side, I can still explore a couple of more options there. Um, for LF Org, though, I, I really want to see the TSG of LF Org in like a long series against Kungana. So uh, I wouldn't say I, I think Kungana probably has, has uh, an advantage against either of these two teams, but uh, for the closest final, I would say LF Org. I want to see just a full session with TSG into RMP. Um, because I think that could be a, a good matchup, especially when you have, you know, Lizzo and Swapsy and like these monster players basically playing it. So, uh, yeah, that's what I want to see. Mm. I think that's really interesting that, you know, we're only in, we're already into the fourth cup of this season and we're still seeing those developments happening from players that, you know, even the ones that have been consistently performing really solidly. Um, do we think that that development further continues into the circuit super tees? I mean, definitely at that point, like everyone's going to have their characters caught up for ladder practice with the creation catalysts. So they're going to be able to get like full practice on a ton of different alt characters at that point, try and flesh out their specs. Like even in Rogue Mage, like Waz has found Outlaw now as like a good answer into Mage Lock too. So um, discovering these new specializations, mastering them is just going to be more and more fine tuned over time. I swaps these enhanced build, like Jungle was stomping every turbo. This is the first time today that turbo has beaten Jungle. Um, and it looks more and more better for them uh, every single win. So I think there's still a lot more to be discovered, practiced and polished, and there's a lot of time now between those. And it looks like we are gonna be flicking the wrist uh, here with this Wizard War once again. Who's gonna come out on top? A Little bit of a difference between the teams. Swapsy running a Night Fae Destruction Warlock as opposed to Mercy, who's still sticking with the Necro Lord. Here's to see if that difference works out here for LF Org, because the last time these Wizards met uh, lf org were left with more than just a scar 
All right, here we go. Middle of the map right now. Mar with the Deathborn with the Icy Veins looking to get active, but he gets caught into a Polymorph. Jesse at the same time looking to reverse the pressure. This is when the match becomes very explosive. Both these casters are going to be periodically Im immune to crowd control, just blasting out these Frost Bolts that can crypt upward of 25,000, leaving everybody down. So it's a, it's a fine balance between trying to find your own damage while at the same time, uh, trying to get aggressive and it could be a really difficult spot to navigate tessia right now has already traded out one of his ice blocks but they're blasting mercy he's caught at the pillar but Tessia not going to be able to really follow up too much damage tomorrow going to be coming back with his aegis soaking up some of that damage but he gets blasted and forced away nice alter time though by morrow negates a lot of that damage tessia still with death born up it's ramped high finally going to fade get some damage onto mercy but very back and forth but if you look at cooldowns during these opening stages, SK pieces come out way ahead. They have both their ice blocks as well as their unending resolve. Yeah, and that's kind of what happened last time they fought. Uh, SK pieces just uh, came out ahead. Um, but I like that both teams have the confidence here to go for that mage lock mirror. And let's see which team can uh, beat that advantage or get that advantage. Mara right now getting blasted. Mercy actually taking huge hits here. And that will be his dark pack. That will be as well as perhaps a guardian spirit coming out there. Very nice trade. Nice reflect there by Mercy. Swapsy takes a big chunk of damage as a result. Tessia in the back line. Here comes the damage though. Infernal's Fest is going to bleak into the middle of the map. Might get bolted as a result. And uh, Swapsy is actually playing the Casting Circle. So they're just going to grip Mercy there away from that Casting Circle. That Casting Circle might actually be a really good adaptation uh, in the matchup because it basically forces everyone to try to play further away to make Swapsy move out of it. So it actually buys them a lot of time. Um, on the side of LF Forge, so that could be a, a nice adaptation here in the uh, series. But so far, uh, Tessia actually pushing in kind of aggressively here. Lontar is right behind him. Demonic Gateway, it looks like LF Forge wants to make a push. Danish coming out there on the path, and they are going to push up on the same pillar as Askarath here. Can they find any crowd control is the question. Can they find any walls is the question. Mercy looks like he's going to be the target. Teleporting behind the pillar, and uh, Mercy will uh, survive for now. Uh, getting counterspelled there as well. And uh, it looks like LF Org are basically chasing SK Pieces, uh, and SK Pieces are just trying to kite LF Org right now. Let's see if they can keep up the chase here. Mercy trying to blast back with the Chaos Bolts, getting denied for now. Big Chaos Bolt coming in from Swapsy here. Dark Soul active, Soul Rot, big boost to stats. He's immune to that coil. Chaos Bolt's likely to be flying in from that casting circle. They're trying to get rid of the Nether Ward. Big Chaos Bolt's incoming from Swapsy onto Mercy. Is the Guardian Spirit going to be enough to tank this? Desperation Polymorphs on Swapsy trying to hold him back as Chaos Bolt's fly one after the other. But now his damage is done. They're turning it around. They're going after him. He's going to have to portal away from the engagement line of sight. Deathborn. As Frost Bolt's fly through. Morrow has loaded a lot of damage. Tessia's on the run. Morrow blinks in aggressively. Crossbolt's flying over to Swapsy. No port. They have a grip. He's kind of stuck right now, getting free casted on at the moment. Mercy just channeling Fleshcraft, loading up to try and get some immunity here. But he gets counterspelled instead. Not going to find any Chaos Bolts with the remainder of his Dark Soul. Swapsy's Chaos Bolts rocking that Blasphemy. Big damage. Ice Wall line of sighting Mercy from Asgrath. Asgrath moving forward, gripping Mercy and trying to stabilize him here from Tessia's Power Infusion Deathborn. Tessia is now a monster as he's casting Frostbolt towards Mercy. Swapsy is pushing up to midfield, fearing him out in the open so that he can't port. Find time for Tessia. They're swapping to Asgarath. He's going to fade. He's trying to get back to the pillar. Now swap back to Mercy. Looks like Myrtle Quill was immune from that Equine Resolve. Chaos Bolt's coming in on the Swapsy from Mercy. Mercy still on the back foot. Oh, double Mortal Coil gets fully immune there by the Equine Resolve as well. Desperation banish onto the Fell Hunter. Tessia is standing right on top of him. Big damage potential here. Lontar gripping Swapsy, trying to get him on top and finish Mercy here. They're stacked up. Are they going to regret stacking up like this? Morrow is free casting a lot of damage on them at the moment. Mercy repositioning the other side of the pillar using the Blizzard to kite, trying to get into a stable position. Lontar is way ahead on mana at this point in time, but Asgrath is trying to drink and stop by the Blizzard. Mercy's Fell Hunter looks like it has gone down to some cleave damage. He's going to banish the Fell Hunter of Swapsy. I'm gonna try and resurrect his Fell Hunter. It looks like it's gonna be okay at this point. Maybe he's just preemptively resing it. He's down at half though. LF Org has just been right on top of Mercy for most of this game. Casting Circle, he's gonna line aside it. The Swapsy is spamming out fears with that immunity, not finding the connection that he wanted to. He's gonna portal Chaos Bolt from around the corner, catching Mercy. Mercy gets gripped far away. Swapsy switching targets. Gonna be going after Morrow. Morrow blinks back to the pillar. Oh, now just casting frost bolts, standing on top of Lontar here. It goes for a polymorph. Looks like Lontar was able to death it. And Chaos Bolt's flying in on Morrow now. They get an ice block. Doesn't look like it. Gladiator's Aegis from him. 
and the Shadow Meld to immune the casts. He spams out Polymorphs, trying to get control. Gets stunned up by Lone Tark. Holy Fire incoming, pushing for an Ice Block on Morrow. They are going to get it. Now ahead on Ice Blocks and slightly ahead on Mana. LF Org look like they're in a good position. Yep, right now, Morrow in the middle of the map with a Sightsee Bane, still just kind of trying to find that damage that he can. 4% dampening. Right now, there is a bit of a mana lead, so LF Org, they do have that going for themselves right now. In fact, that they do have that mana lead, Lone Tark into a Polymorph. Remember, this game could end with just one nice ice wall from either one of these mages. If anyone's caught out of position, they get interrupted at a bad time. They can just get one shot, so really d difficult spot to be. A bit of a swap here on the Lone Tar, punishing him for being in the middle of the map, but Swapsy getting blasted. He does get topped off with the Guardian Spirit. Asgard actually going to grip Mercy away from the battle as well. Just for a few moments, Mar with Deathborn rotating back up. Should be a huge hit of damage once he gets that locked and loaded. Swapsy gets interrupted, forced back to the pillar. Got an Infernal down for Swapsy and Infernal down for Mercy. <laughs> Both these Warlocks just throwing in a ton of damage. Real Infernals now for Mercy as he gets interrupted on his Chaos Bolt. Not going to be able to get too much done with that. Swapsy has the Dark Soul, so watch out for that. Swapsy with his Casting Circle, going to be blasting Maru who's forced to channel the Fleshcraft. That's going to be enough for him to hold on to his Ice Block, but still, really scary moments. Mercy now going for a one-shot on Swapsy. Can he find another Chaos Bolt? No, he gets stunned. Beautiful counter stun there by Lone Tar. And if LF4 can just hold on a little bit longer, uh, their mana lead might actually get them this win. That being said, Asgrath is sitting down for a drink. He recovers a bunch of mana. They lose that lead, and SK Pieces is back in the game. Beautiful uh, timing here by Asgrath. They get so much pressure on the side of SK Pieces, and that will allow Asgrath to get full mana here. Uh, and we just set foot in dampening about two minutes ago, so 13% on that. Um, it'll be harder and harder here for Lumter to actually uh, get away and reset like that. He's going to need a lot of pressure from his team. This could be a moment where he could sneak away if they can force Morrow back. While Swaps is actually still taking a lot of damage, force the port back. It's going to allow Morrow and maybe the confidence to go up there and, uh, and send that laser, make sure Lontar stays in combat. He channels the symbol, and it looks like Lontar actually will be able to drink here with Mercy teleporting all the way to the back line. So Lontar manages to reset his mana now as well. Really nice timing there. And almost wish that Maru actually had the confidence there to make sure that he stops that. Uh, so they have some kind of pressure uh, moving in from, uh, later into the match. But still, that's yeah, actually quite low. Might get swapped to here in the back line. Links into the middle of the map, activates the Aegis, gets a, a, a Ray and Guardian. That should be enough defense here to keep Cassia alive. We're trying to blast him through it though. Big damage coming out from Mercy here right now. Huge hits and Cassia will death recover. And now once again, Mercy will do the same. Relaying his demonic circle behind the pillar. Goes for the Anish. Morrow just uh, in the midfield, kind of just uh, keeping everyone in combat, trying to get cross bolts out on whatever moves. And uh, that target right now is Swapsy. I think he got a Deathborn proc. I don't think that's Mario's actual Deathborn right there. Uh, but still doing a lot of work with that. About a minute away. Ooh, Mercy, though. He's a big hit. We'll use Eternal Ages. Actually using Unending Resolve. He's just getting crashed here. What is going on? What is this pressure coming from? And that's the Infernal. Actually, that wasn't even the Infernal of Swapsy. That was just a proc Infernal uh, from Swapsy. He still has that Infernal. He has Dark Soul coming back up as well. And Mercy just had to trade in a big way. So... Uh, actually, I would say LF Org are in the lead right now. Uh, mana is about equal on the healers. And unless they can pull Swapsy's big cooldowns right now, it's going to be a nice lead for them. He's actually holding on to that unending resolve. He's just trading out the Eternal Ages. And it seems like it's enough defense with that Dark Pack to actually allow him to keep that cooldown. So one major uh, defensive cooldown in the lead right now for LF Org. I'm going to coil off the Echoing Resolve there. Set up for a counter spell. Uh, Infernals have been called in. Swapsy has Dark Soul, but he's counterspelled. Surprised to not see him go for the Casting Circle. Now he's stuck in a Blizzard. Uses Soul Shape to escape it. Mercy gets pulled back to the Pillar. Morrow has Deathborn up. Icy Veins coming up in about three seconds. He's looking to activate that right after this counterspell. Likely to do a lot of damage. Who is he going to go after? I think it has to be Swapsy at this point. They're behind on blocks, but not for very much longer, actually. If they can hold on. Big damage comes up from Swapsy on the Mercy as he ducks behind the Pillar. Morrow's going one-on-one -on -one with Swapsy. Who's going to win this Wizard War? Mercy now getting swapped to as he comes back out in the open. Chaos Bolt after Chaos Bolt shattering through those shields as he has to pop Nether Ward, reflecting bolts back and now going after Tessia behind the pillar. He's going to ice block and respect the damage of Mercy's Dark Soul, but he's far away from Lotar, trying to get back to him, getting gripped across the midfield here. Maro is still blasting down Swapsy. That one-on-one -on -one still happening. Is Swapsy going to lose the exchange? Maro links away from the engagement. 
Swapsy pulls back out of line of sight, not wanting to go down here, but Maro, while he's retreating, has to ice block. Mercy is still down at half health, taking a big frost bolt from Tessia. Tessia line of sight in the chaos bolt with blink, shadow fear from Swapsy, gripping Mercy back to Tessia's pillar. Polymorph gets faded here by Asgraf. Big Inferno called in by Mercy on the Tessia. Trying to close it out here. Mortal Quill, Tessia in the midfield. Fierce man by Mercy. He's going to get feared by Swapsy first. Netherward Chaos Bolts, massive damage. Fleshcraft immunes the Infernal Stun from Mercy, but Morrow is caught out in midfield. Asgarath has zero mana. Momentum fully in favor of LF Org. They just have to push in now and close out this match. Keep riding their momentum. Lone Shark getting symbols, resetting defensive cooldowns, getting ready for the final engagement, the final push. They got stomped last time these teams met, but it's looking like completely different matchup here in game number one. They are so close to closing it out. Lone Star stunned up though, trying to stay alive. You're trying to go after Swapsy. Can they drop him at this final oh, moment? So on any resolve trades. Now Morrow getting blasted out midfield. Swapsy's gonna get a lot of damage out. Ice wall here onto the pillar. Morrow has to ice block. They cancel the ice wall. They master spell the ice wall. Swapsy's still a target though. Lone Star is counterspelled. Morrow versus Swapsy. Who's gonna take out who first? Mercy just line of sending at the corner here. Asgrath is trying to find a drink across the map. Mercy ports away. Lone Tar is chasing him. Likely has a chastise stun. Looking to not get howled here. Is he going to be able to avoid it and land this chastise stun to close out the game? Mercy gets counterspelled. He's going to gate while he's interrupted. Now Morrow is left behind. They manage to stabilize, but here comes that chastise. Big damage on Morrow. They grip him back. He blinks behind the pillar. SK pieces stay alive, but they have zero mana. They're in shambles. Damage is now following up from the other side of the map. Full fear on Asgrath. I think this is it for Morrow. No, Asgrath shuts it down again with a big heal. Mercy popping Dark Soul. The Miracle Chaos Bolt. Can he get a kill with it? Over onto Swapsy. Swapsy Dark Packs it. Absorbs the Chaos Bolt. Another Chaos Bolt fished out by Mercy. Doesn't find a target. His Dark Soul now being line of sighted. He's going for it on Tessia. Gets a Chaos Bolt. Tessia Shadow melds it and immunes it. Mercy netherwards the incoming attack. Tries to reposition with his Dark Soul on cooldown. He's trying to avoid Swapsies at all costs. Defensive Ice Wall comes out from Morrow as they're looking to try and retreat. Trying to get Icicles off the pet. Bell Hunter Resurrection from Mercy around the corner. Trying to make sure he has that spell lock somehow. Asgrath has it. He's managed to wrangle together some amount of mana. But I'm not sure if he's got the cooldowns to deal with this Ray of Hope. Up in one. He has Ray of Hope. And they save him here. Morrow down at 30%. He's holding on to Ray of Hope. I can't believe it. He's counterspelled. I think that's it. With that spell lock. Asgrath greater fades. Chaos Bolts come in. Double Shadow Fury in defiance. SK pieces are in complete defiance. Refusing to deny their own deaths to LF Org. They continue to stay alive. But how much longer? No. They will fall. LF Org take game one. With that build adjustment, running the Night Fade Destruction Warlock, as opposed to the, the Necro Lord. He actually was running that the first time these two teams did meet as well. So going for a bit of a heavy hit. And also, the nice thing about it, I guess you do have the Necro Shield if you get interrupted. But if you get interrupted, the fact that you can actually use the Soul Shape to get out of line of sight is going to help you, uh, you know, avoid a lot of damage. So. Nice to see uh, from Swapsy, and this game looked a lot better from LF Org. We mentioned it a few times. I mean, the last time these two teams did Wizard Battle, um, of course, it was SK Pieces that did come out ahead. So LF Org really stepping up in this one. They had, uh, you know, some close calls on themselves, but overall, were able to ride a lot of that momentum that they did develop. We can take a look at the damage here. Uh, you know, Maro Tessia, not too big of a difference. And all, honestly, between Swapsy and Mercy, not that big of a difference as well. So really really close between these two teams and that took 48 percent dampening to close out i went and double checked it because i wanted to make sure he wasn't night fay last time i went and opened the vod i wanted to make sure because i'm pretty sure he wasn't <laughs> um he wasn't night fay last no, time he was running necro destro the first time they've played in mirrors they played warrior mage in the first game and then they switched and they mirrored necro. But i gotta i gotta see it to believe it necro, yeah, I, will, I, will link you the <laughs> I will link you the timestamp. I, I went back to check because i was like this Pretty sure nobody has tried. Maybe Nazrin's played it one time, um, but this this looked a bit different. It's hard to see the value of the Night Fae because it's just stats. Whereas like the Necro one is you beef up your incinerates and you can see that value right away when you're pressing incinerate. Whereas the Night Fae one is like this accumulation of extra stats, bigger chaos bolts. Oh, um, it was actually Mercy that was Night Fae. Wait, were they they were traded? Yeah, they traded. <laughs> I knew one of them was running it. What? Yeah, Mercy was running it. So Did Mercy just traded. forget to go back then? <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I distinctly remember one of them was running it, but it was Mercy. So they actually did flip Covenants and had opposite results, which is kind of funny. <laughs> Wopsy also did more damage, so I don't know. Mercy, might be time to go back okay. to uh, to the Night's Fate He brought in here. the new tech and then abandoned it like it won in the game. <laughs> 
I swear he must using have just forgot, tech. Right? <laughs> is 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 covenant something you have to lock in when you lock your blind pick, or is it just race and? I don't spec? think so. Because if it's not, then I think he might have just forgot. The I don't change, even. I'm not even. He didn't know what to expect in game one because in game one they played warrior mage. I'm looking at it and Mercy was necro against warrior mage, and then he changed it when it was wizard. So we'll probably change it. I'm guessing from that point would be my guess. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, Maybe they have sure a, a different answer altogether. Maybe they don't even mirror. Maybe they... Uh, Zipai. Yeah, maybe they bring in Zipai. Zipai You really want to see Ellie, don't you? I think it's good. Why do you think it's so good, though? No one plays it ever. There's like one on the ladder, maybe. It's because yeah, they that's... don't have their four set. They don't have their, their set bonuses yet, but once they do... They also don't have Zipai. I played, against, I played against the comp as this comp, and it was, it was a difficult matchup. So... Whatever. I mean, we went one and one. We lost one. We won one. So <laughs> you lost one game to a con played one time. I don't... Yeah, but I mean, but it's Zipai, super tease. Exactly. Like, don't you want to see it? Yeah, sure. But I, I don't know why they won't. I mean, I, I'm curious to see if Mercy just either didn't think it was going to be Mage Lock game one. And that's why he was Necro, and he changes Night Fae here, or if he just forgot. To go night fay there's a lot to remember i swear like i struggle when i get in the game to even have the right trinket on it's like oh forgot to wear ages <laughs> in the rogue mage i'm dead <laughs> like like you're you having like nightmares of this you're you have to remember so much dying stuff. Rogue mage all day um... yeah pretty much i i can remember uh when i played with tony and wad he would flex between ellie and enhance and he forgot for an entire season after going back enhance to put his enhance cloak on he played with an ellie cloak the entire season without ever noticing <laughs> like there's so much yeah. little details you have to like pay attention to you have to like hover over your character and just be like is every slot right Do I have the right enchant is that the right bracer did i remember the right conduit is that right legendary on the right slot like and then we, we have to checks. change that yeah you need somebody to just be like the babysitter of the team and be like does everybody have the right talents did everyone pack yeah. their lunch <laughs> does everybody pack their bags <laughs> everyone have their pencils does everybody have their like you need that to i do. swear you need somebody that yeah. does that because if you, I think Lizzo, Lizzo joined the game with the wrong conduits one game. He had arms no conduits. conduits. That's what he was feeling. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no someone conduits. had no conduits. Yeah. yeah. No, like, that was uh, Nixie, right? I think it was Nixie. Nixie, no conduits on Assassination Rogue. And then we had <laughs> Blizzo playing, uh, what did he have? Arms he was playing fury, arms right? conduits as a fury warrior, which is massive, by the way. It's like, yeah, conduits matter a lot. But there's a lot of things, like you said, you have to go over the gearing. Like, do you have the right trinket on? Are you running the right soul bind? You got your right conduits? Are we playing the right race? Like, all these things. Are we playing the right covenant? Like, there's so many things you have to pay attention to. Just trying and, uh, to think look about how much for. work that is. If you have to make like four different warlocks, you need a dwarf warlock. You need a human warlock. You need an orc warlock. Yeah, orc war you need probably an, probably need an orc warlock. And then you got those three different builds on those three different warlocks that you have to remember to switch between. <laughs> Like there's a lot to to remember, so I don't. I wouldn't even really be surprised if maybe Mercy forgot, but he may have been planning for something else. Um, his elf org didn't start with this the last time that they seriesed. Um, but when we jump in here, we'll see right away. Like, does Mercy go Night Fay? Is he like, oh, dang it! <laughs> if I was Night Fay, we would have won this because um, it felt like pressure was really in elf org's favor. Also, that casting circle was a bit different. It's something that I was running on my lock, and I saw no other locks running, and I was like. You just get to cast all of your important spells when you need to. Like, I don't understand why that's up? bad. Uh, probably, well, I think he had Nether Ward too. I'm trying to check. So he had Nether Ward and Fell Fissure and Cast. Remember, she was playing like Demon Armor. 10% maximum health or free cast your spells for 12 seconds. That's what I you're trading. Free cast your spells for sounds a lot better than 10% maximum health. Even their builds aren't the same. Like, um, Mercy's got his legendary on his gloves. Where oh no it's the same no he's got it on his ring instead I'm just trying to like look I'm looking looking at the nitty gritty details and they actually have quite a few differences like there's a PVE ring for Mercy as opposed to their stacking versatility on the side of Swapsy like it's just straight haste versatility different wait are they wearing different tier pieces too I think they're wearing different tier pieces Mercy's wearing crit legs no they're wearing the same crit legs their builds are not identical though. Different, different necks. Like, Mercy is way more haste mastery, it looks like. 
rather than versatility. It's interesting. He's trying to, maybe he's like, he's getting kind of greedy for extra damage, like haste mastery offhand here, or there, a little bit more haste mastery. Swaps is just straight up tank lock almost. I like the tank lock. <laughs> I feel like lock is the most susceptible target, so be a tank lock. <laughs> When in doubt, well, then you would think he's going to play demon armor too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's the thing though. He's missing demon armor, but I don't know. Casting circle is definitely punishable though with fear. Like if you get feared on your casting circle, you just move out of it and then have to kind of run back in. And you can be or, interrupted. Yeah. Or they just run mm. away from it. But when you do get it, I like demon armor more. <laughs> I think. So. I think it's, it's more, more consistent. I, yeah, I feel like it's more reliable. I think uh, casting circle, it's it's nice if you get off the perfect circle, like, you know, but a lot of the time, eh, I think that there's pros and cons to both. I think uh, in that first game, it was a casting circle that basically forced the entire SK pieces to like move back yeah, to their like side it. of the map. Um, so, if you, I mean, even if you don't get to cast there, that's still like very impactful. You're making everybody else also stop casting and run away, basically. So, uh, I think there is a I lot of advantage to it. No, yeah. he went right. back to his All own right. tag. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he must not. He either forgot or must not have expected Mage Lock. One or the other, maybe both. Um, here we go. Triple Inferno called in right away by Swapsy. Mercy's going to get pulled away from the pillar. Maro dumping Frozen Orb Blizzard on the whole team here. Karma Storm's incoming. Massive damage onto Swapsy around the corner. Trying to turn it around with the casting circle. Mercy's going to line inside him with the Soul Shade, but it looks like Chaos Vault already connected. Last him down to half. Ray of Hope was forced onto him. He's now spell locked. Lone Tar's firing the Holy Fire, trying to push through that defense and kill him. But now Chaos Bolt gets line of sighted by Swapsy, trying to stay at the pillar. Multiple Infernals incoming. Massive Infernal numbers on Swapsy right now. It's like three of them just punching him at the moment. They're going to swap back, it looks like. They're going to go after Tessia. He's really extended, maybe. He's going to get at this pillar, though. I don't think he's going to be the best target at the moment for Mercy. Chaos Bolt from around the corner from downtown. Tessia tries to line it, but not in time. He's down to half, and Infernal spawned onto him. Lontar repositioning here, trying to get on top of Mercy. Stunning him. He's going to get gripped through the side of the map, pop that dark pack, but they're blinking right on top of him. Chaos Bolt after Chaos Bolt. Tessia Kona Cold snaring Mercy, preventing him from retreating around the corner, keeping him pinned and contained with the Blizzard, but Lontar's in a polymorph. Swapsy respecting it, line of sighting while Lontar's in a fear now, trying to avoid Mercy, muting that Chaos Stun, and now Swapsy coiled out into midfield. Mercy setting up for him here, spamming fear. Trying to get a kill, swapping to Maro. He's down to half, looking to push for an ice block. Not finding it as Maro bounces back into the fight. Yep, nice little reflect there by Mercy as well. Going to be re redirecting some of that incoming damage from Swapsy. Mercy forced behind the pillar. Maro in hot retreat, in retreat, trying to get some damage out right now, but he gets feared out. This is a great push here from LF Org. Mercy and Asgard having to play very defensive. Asgard's actually just going to gate away. And Swapsy will chase him. So wants to shut down the drink. Might actually do a swap here on Asgrath as he's forced to soul shape into the middle of the map. But he's snared up. Asgrath's actually kind of a vulnerable target. It could go after him, maybe, but maybe too risky. Bringing up uh, everyone. They do get a polymorph onto Asgrath. But it looks like Mercy and Maro just full health right now. Both teams kind of weathering that initial storm a lot better. Maro right now with his Deathborn. I do believe this is a proc. So getting out some heavy hitting cross bolts at this point of the game that will fade. Uh, Swapsy down to around 20% health. Line of sighting, he's gotten to a stun. This is the Ray of Hope at the same time. Mercy getting blasted in midfield. And it seems like the War Orlocks are going to be the main target for both of these teams. So pay attention to their positioning and uh, them actually being in their portal range. Ice Wall does drop down. Morrow gonna get blasted. Um, but like I said, I feel like the Warlocks probably gonna be the main target. They're a little less mobile, uh, especially if it's after that portal. Oh, Swapsy right now getting dropped. Beautiful damage coming out here from Mercy with the Infernal proc. Get a full fear onto Lontar. They could actually swap onto Lontar. I think that's what they're doing here. They're just lobbing one Chaos Bolt onto him, but uh, they unfortunately don't have a stun there. I think Asgrath is uh, somewhere in the back line here, drinking potentially. Uh, does not uh, recover any mana. They're going after Mercy. A little bit of damage coming in here. Mercy kind of finding yeah. himself abandoned there behind the wall. He gets gripped back in. Maru also getting blasted here a little bit. LF Org once again looking like they are in the lead here. A nice mana lead. Ascraft is trying to conserve his mana. Deathborn for Maro. This is the big push. And this is potentially 
Uh, it could be a KO situation. They need to be careful. They're not respecting the death form, but Tessia has it active as well. Going after Mercy. Mario gets crowd control on his death form. Big damage onto Mercy. That might be a negative raise. Taking so much damage into it. I think it, it could be very well. Uh, well, it's it's a positive one, but it's not a, it's not very positive. It's just a little bit positive. <laughs> Mercy uh, gets gripped back here to the pillar. Asgrath will fade and swap away his position. Uh, to another pillar, but Morrow gets it left alone here in the back line, and uh, he will blink to safety using that Eternal Aegis Trinket, Triple Shadow Fury, Fear onto Lontar, and they set something up. Mercy gets Counterspell. This is a prime time to get Kraos Bolts out, but he gets Mortal Coil nicely done there by Swapsy, shutting him down with the Counterspell and the Mortal Coil, but now Mercy finally making his way back to the same pillar as Askarath, looking to get some pressure, but he gets Counterspelled. And Maru's getting sheep. Just a lot of control coming out from LF Org using all their interrupts onto Mercy. And now blasting Maru. He's going to ice block immediately there. Double Chaos Bolt coming in. And LF Org just finding advantage here and there. But Ascraft was at least able to get a drink. So uh, that's a pretty big victory for him. Now Swapsy with the casting circle gets his spell reflected there actually. And he has to abandon his own circle. So not the highest value there for Swapsy. And Ascroft able to drink. They only traded out one ice block there. So Maru is going to be a vulnerability, but mm. unless they can punish. Ice wall! Oh, the nice ice oh. wall! That ice wall. Oh my goodness. I was just about to say, Maru, he traded out an ice block for the drink, but unless they can literally kill him right now uh, w when he's on that hypo, it's not going to matter. Um, but that ice wall, man. Wow. Yes, yeah, definitely showing up big in this game. Last time around, it was Maru, actually, who was uh, looking like. Um, he was making the big plays with the ice wall, but now it's going to be Tessia, and uh, that was beautiful. Mara, I think, had a couple of seconds left there on his hypothermia. We can't see exactly the debuff, but uh, he did block just before that happened, so really, really clean uh, push there. That's like one of the most hype kill moments I think I've seen <laughs> from the ice wall, like just perfectly yeah. timed here, and this was when they got Mara's ice block to trade for a drink, I think, earlier on. Maybe we're much further ahead of that. Uh, in this specific moment, but it was very important because it put Morrow on hypothermia. Uh, I think this is way before that point. Is Asgrath trying to sit for a drink is what I'm looking at, or looking for, because they got an ice block because of that from him. Um, but we're watching this on slow motion so far for that point that I'm not sure if it, it was. Morrow blinks in aggressively. Frozen Orb is down. He's really stunned. And Asgrath is far, so he's just going to block the... He sees the purple Infernal coming down from the sky and ice blocks it. This means he's on hypothermia for a few seconds and can't use his second ice block. And so SK pieces get put in a position where LF Org can punish that. Asgrath is off the screen to the right side of the map right now. He's so far off the screen that you, like, you can't even come close to seeing him, I think, even at, after the kill happens. And because he's so far away, Tessia sees, sees the opportunity. Maro blinks. He's limited on mobility. So if Tessia can get an ice wall right here to line aside Asgrath, who's on the right side of the map off screen, no one's going to be able to heal him. He won't be able to grip him. So Tessia walls him off right as he's trying to move. Ooh, blasts that. him down. Mercy and Asgrath can't help him. He tries to master spell it, but he's already dead at that point. Um, and this looks like a completely different team. LF Org have really stepped up here in the final cup. They had a, they had a solid performance in cup one, but then it kind of felt like they fell off. Couldn't figure out what they wanted to do in the meta. But now they're taking out some of the best teams looking for looking for that Kangana final. See if they can rise up. Tessia gets my ice wall award for the weekend. <laughs> Every single weekend, I'll be giving one out depending on how these frost mages perform. And Tessia, you earned it. That was perfect. Precision, you know, right in front of Marl before he was able to get away. There was nobody that could help him. And uh, they were able to pull off a win because of it. So beautiful plays. And there's actually a clear damage difference in that game. I don't know if you guys saw the scoreboard, but... Uh, Tessia did about 30% more damage uh, than Morrow in that game, which is pretty significant in just a straight up mirror like this, um, especially where pre pressure matters so much for burning mana and creating opportunities. So great performance here. And honestly, last week it, it looked like SK pieces. It was like, all right, well, I guess this team is just the, the better mage lock. I mean, their mirror match looked way better, but it feels like either LF Org have really stepped up. Maybe they put in a lot of practice um, to get better in these mirror matchups, but they're playing this really well. And uh, I do fear for SK Pieces. I almost feel like going to hook point, SK Pieces is going to change up their composition. Uh, I feel like they're going to make a change, uh, which would be kind of a statement. I mean, can you happen. blame them after, after an ice wall like that? Uh, re-rolling as well. Um, got the... <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, that was that was a, that was a nasty one from Tessia, and maybe or maybe they just want to have a, a bit of a more aggressive map. Um, I mean, it's Mage Lock Mirror anyway, so the map doesn't really matter that much. It's just about just about who uses it better. And like Org, though, taking their time here. Do they really want to blind lock that Mage Lock on a, a small map? SK pieces could go for like the Warrior Mage. Um, could go for some other options as well with Sea Pike cleaving. Could bring in Mercy on his Warrior. Uh, and LF Org, they are going to go to their warrior mage now. They're kind of flipping the map a little bit here it's onto SK Pieces. Is SK Pieces now going to lock? Yeah, are they going to are they going to go warrior mage druid now on the side of SK Pieces? I think uh, no who way. won when we saw that? I swear we've seen warrior mage priest versus warrior mage druid. I think the priest won. I could be Chances wrong. are the priest will win. <laughs> Priests uh, seem better right now. Than... Say, <laughs> really say the priest won, I think. Um, yeah. Are they gonna mirror again though? What, what, that's like imagine a, that's like a statement. You can win in their wizard mirror and win on your warrior mage mirror and just <laughs> just win with every single mirror. Uh, or do they yeah, do they... mage lock? <laughs> like they don't. They could play mage lock still in the small map. I don't think it would I think be. Blizzo, we don't really talk about it that much, but Blizzo has to have something to prove to this team, right? Like. He's playing against Morrow and Zipai. I don't really know what happened there, but they used to be partners, and now Blizzle finds himself on a new organization. So he's on LF Org, new team, mm -hmm. and he probably wants to take them down. And if he could do it in a mirror, like he's <laughs> like, yeah, get mercy on that warrior. I'll show you what I can do, you know, type of thing. <laughs> I'll so, show you what you're missing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, just like an ex yeah. just coming, like flexing on him, like, you wish you still had me. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, now I'm the warrior. Some part, realistically, I'm the warrior you didn't want, but I became the warrior you'll never have. You, you know, <laughs> there has to be some part of him that's feeling that way, right? Hundred percent. Yeah, that's the only. That's the only thing they're thinking about right now. It's like I, I hope they look in the mirror just so I can show them how much better I am. If they lose, it's gonna be awkward. They're not gonna mirror. Well, I think SK pieces here. They're kind of doing the smart thing. Lock in the mage lock. And I, I feel like Mage Lock should win this matchup. So SK Pieces, now they don't fall into the mirror trap and they have a matchup advantage, but it's on a small map. Um, we've seen LF Org, I think. I don't know if it was against SK Pieces, but we have seen them try this and fail horribly. Um, Blazo did get a lot of uptime, but then he got to like 10, 20% dampening and then he just kind of fell over, so. Uh, I, I don't really like this pick from LF Org, to be honest. Really I think they should I. have stuck with the, with the Mage Log. I think they actually like outplayed themselves a little bit with this pick, but we'll see. Uh, it is, after all, Blizz on a Warrior. Anything can happen when you put these three players together, and um, we'll see. But they're definitely going to have to win in maybe a, like an unorthodox way, or unless they have some new tech that they, that they want to show us here. Um, I feel like they're going to just be playing the... I think last time when they played it, they played the, the Leper... And uh, Gnome, Legendary. The Blizzard was just like the Incredible Hulk, just jumping all over the place, getting a lot of uptime, but Leopard then dying gnome. anyway. Did you see Leper now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. maybe, maybe I played a little bit of Hearthstone lately. You know? <laughs> I think it's a good uh, idea. High Mobility Warrior. Uh, they tried that on Negrand. I think they must have lost yeah. that game. I can't remember. Yeah, the they did lose. They all... The Warrior Mage always loses this matchup, by the way. Like, yeah. I don't think we've seen yep. a win yet, so I'm kind of surprised. I mean, I really wonder what LF4 was worried about here. Why are they afraid? The the map. Oh, there's no way you're but afraid the... of a Turbo's Mage Lock, right? Are you afraid of Turbo? Even on Hook Point? Nah. Are you afraid yeah, of... you're not that afraid. You should have been afraid of anything. They should have just Mage Locked again. Yeah, yeah they should have Mage Locked, but... You're only afraid of Asa Rogue uh, with a Mage. Frost Mage Warlock is only afraid of Asa Rogue and Ellie Shamans, but no one wants to try that. Okay, <laughs> I don't know about the Ellie Shaman. I'm not sold on this thing yet. If Z Pi isn't picking Ellie Shaman, has all of the gear. You know, best you know Ellie in the, the best game answer? is not picking it. I feel like there's you know gotta the be something best wrong. Answer? The best answer I've seen so far in a Mage Lock was what we saw from Liquid this week, which was BM Hunter on Holy Death Knight. Against the Mage Lock. BM Hunter just sits at the pillar, sends the pet, the Unholy Death Knight runs in as a mortal. It, it looks really good. It Nobody has really, that really comp, good. though. Yeah, I know. I'm just talking They're literally about the stuff. only team. Who, who, is there literally anyone else that could run Swapsy's team? No. I don't see Hunter in a DK, just a DK. Um, 
my way is the only hunter team. There's no DK unless they're Tony wants to pick up a DK. What if Cedar's team manages to the clutch that through also... in the circuit with that comp? I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe they can. Unfortunately, I don't think that comp's good into other things. <laughs> so it's kind of <laughs> if you lock it into Mage Lock, you are winning. But if you lock it into anything else, you are struggling. That's for sure. So, yeah. I mean, we, this is a topic for a different day. But for now. We are going to be seeing LF4 switch up their composition. They're up 2-0, but SK Pieces locks in the small map, and I feel like LF4 potentially may have baited themselves here for no reason. Like, if they had just stayed on the Mage lock, they probably could have beaten the Warrior Mage, but time will tell. We'll see how LF4 navigates this matchup. All right, let's see it. Blizzo here. Uh, is he playing the Heroic Leap Legendary? We'll uh, have to see. He's done one leap so far, and uh, let's see. He's a... Uh, Gonna charge over on tomorrow. Here is uh, another blink from Maro, and uh, Maro will actually be the target. I think last time around they were going after the Warlock. I want to say, but Mercy, nice Dragon's Breath there onto Mercy, and he is playing the Leper Gnome Legendary. He just leaped again there, and he gets gripped back there to Lontar actually, as Lontar is getting swapped to. So, and now already forced back uh, to stay on that pillar. Maro with the Deathborn with the veins. Mercy already using that Dark Soul. This is a good time to try to retreat. Uh, but here comes damage. One Chaos Bolt will proc that Infernal. Maro, though, not in position. He has to really capitalize on it. He gets one Frost Bolt, though. Now looking to get some more. Blizzo going in with the Storm Bolt. Maro makes his way out. Getting big hits here. And now Blizzo forced to charge out. He grip Maro. Uses the Heroic Leap. Maro once again trying to build up some distance. He's got the Eternal Aegis here. And uh, it's doing some work for Blizzo so far, allowing him to stay aggressive. But the problem is his teammates need to cross with him uh, for that uh, aggression to actually pay off. They do get themselves a ray, and Blizzo still taking massive hits of damage here right now. He's not feeling 100% confident. He gets his own ray right there by uh, Lontar, and that will be enough to pop him back up. Pops his wreck, looking to potentially connect here. Nice intervening into oh, charge, no. but look at Blizzo getting absolutely blasted. What are they going to do? Can they get any more CC onto Lontar? They have a stun for one more second, but Blizzo will survive there using every single self heal tool and he has plus the guardian there as well i'm not even sure if they proc that guardian but so far ella ford not looking great in the matchup and lontar is in a fear they might even take lizzo down here another big heal coming out there for lizzo but dampening these heals won't do anything so yeah, a little bit of a, a forecast of what's going to happen later on here as these mages continue to ramp up Trying to stay on Morrow, they get Alter Time, not really high value trade here. Morrow blinks away from the fight, cancels it, it looks like. Mercy's setting up Fear Spam here, trying to find damage onto Blizzo. Kick on Fear, but now he can spam Chaos Bolt. Blizzo spell reflects, Mercy fakes it out, gets Storm Bolted. Trinkets tries to Soul Shape it back to the gateway. Blizzo's chasing him down. Can they cut him down through Dark Pack? Can they cut him down through Ray of Hope? They're trying to take out Mercy here. Can they do it? Blade Storm out from Blizzo, immuning the stun lock. He's going to get pulled away. There was a lot of damage incoming. They're going to go back to the pillar and try and recover. Fortunately, this was the Conqueror's banner. Blizzo really wants to connect with these cooldowns. Is he going to manage to get there in time? Morrow just shoving Frostbolt after Frostbolt onto Blizzo. Now polymorphing him. His mirror images are actually going to break his polymorph, unfortunately. Now sh uh, switching it over to Lone Tar. No trinket. Massive damage onto Blizzo down at half. Can they take him out? Tessia intervenes with a double Dragon's Breath, double Ring of Frost. Trying to prevent them from finishing Blizzo. And now Blizzo proccing Reckless oh, nice is going CC. for the kill. It is match point. LF Org looking to pull it off. 3-0. Can they do it? They have Mercy so low. Looking to make it to the Grand Finals of Cup 4. Leaping in. Trying to close it out. Staying on target. But it gets denied. And now Blizzo on the back foot gets absolutely erased. SK Peace is putting a point on the board. 1-2. to two. I can't help but feel that this cop swap was unnecessary from LF Org. It was so close. I mean, honestly, at the end there, I, I thought Tessia was just an absolute hero there at the end. The setup that he was able to pull off for his team, got a nice little double Dragon's Breath, double Ring of Frost. Morrow was immune, so then he's put into a full Polymorph. Morrow kind of had a panic, traded out his Ice Block, and uh, I mean, Mercy barely survived there. I mean, he's hanging on at 10% health, uh, but I mean, Blizzo unfortunately overstayed his welcome in the open. That was the Deathborn. That was the Icy Veins. Marl punished him in a big way for being there. But I, 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 I agree. I feel like Elaforg, uh, at this point, they just really they mind games themselves. Like because I, I, every single time we've seen this matchup, the team that plays the Mage Lock has won on both sides. When we see SK Pieces yeah. play Warrior Mage, they lose. When we see Elaforg play Warrior Mage, they lose. And that's all I've seen. Uh, that's the only result I've seen in this matchup. 
Yep, that's uh, absolutely right. But uh, what a nice turnaround that was, though. They get the fear onto Lontar. They're building up that pressure with the recklessness. Lizzo gets stunned. He trinkets out to get a sheep onto Lontar. And then Tessia comes in, denies here. Double Dragon's Breath. Get the full Ring of Frost onto Abster, uh, onto, Abster, onto Asgarath. And then here comes the damage. I cannot believe there's so much time left on that CC, but the Unending Resolve is really doing some work here. And, uh, of course, that Guardian as well doing a little bit of work. Mercy finally stabilizes somewhat and then boom boom headshot uh, and that will do it Manruki. that certainly will do it not as um there's no <laughs> doubt about that i mean blizzo no cooldowns in the open healer gets locked out he gets evaporated just three minutes and 30 seconds into the game sk pieces they put a point on the board and now i think it's likely like <laughs> where do we go from here I mean, maybe they'll try to lock in another small map and try to trick SK pieces into picking a bad matchup too. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I know that's worked against us. Uh, let's see how this goes. All right. So you want to play Warrior Mage? We'll take that. Here, here, here you go. We'll Warrior Mage Mirror. <laughs> oh man. Well, well, yeah. I, I don't know. I think we're going back to Mage Lock for the rest of the series. The only composition that they could run to win is the Elemental Shaman Warlock, but nobody wants to try it. So, <laughs> come on, Zipai, yeah. give us a game. Come on. I think, I think we're gonna see Mage Lock Mirror, unless unless SKPs is hard to troll now and just blind lock Warrior Mage themselves. I just don't see that happening, especially considering they just beat that. But um, still, uh, anybody serious? This is the lower bracket final. Loser eliminated in third place. Winner. Uh, is going to be making it to the grand finals, and it is going to be Asherman's fault, and it is going to be Ella Ford versus SK Pieces. Full on mirror, every single thing going to be copied and pasted across the board of all of these characters, except for the Warlocks, actually. Swapsy opting to run the casting circle, Mercy opting to uh, run the demon armor. So that's uh, the only difference we've seen so far. Um, I think everything else is pretty much identical between the mages and the priests, so we'll see who wins this one. LF Org, though, did look better in the mirrors, but with that said, SK Pieces looked better, uh, I think it was last weekend, so uh, anybody could win this one, and uh, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. It's going to come out on top of this wizard war. LF Org trying to get, you know, trying to take advantage of the map with that warrior pick, but... Warrior is really easy to exploit as Mage Lock, so I'm not completely surprised to see them lose that now. But they still got two more games of Wiggle Room, um, and they'll have map pick advantage. They'll be able to set up the matchup, which is likely this mirror, uh, unless Zipai just comes out of left field with Elemental Shaman hero play, just brings his team back from the dead somehow in the last game or something. I don't know, but if they get to a game five, they're probably not going to feel like they need him anyways at that point. Um, I, I think it's likely going to be mirrors. The mirrors look more and more in favor of LF Org. Those ice walls, though, if Morrow can get an ice wall, like we saw Tessia, maybe that just turns the game around, puts a point back in their court. Um, right now, I'm kind of feeling like I want to see in the finals, I want to see LF Org. I feel like there's, they have a couple of different comp that options that they could run that I want to see just matchup wise in the finals compared to like SK what? pieces. The TSD. I want to see two rogue <laughs> mage, like a like a hard commit TSG series, like. You're playing that the whole time and not changing. Um, it's, it's kind of what I'd like to see. Because um, we, we haven't got to see too much. Like we saw um, we saw Rin's team with TSG, but they didn't get to go too far. We didn't see them in Cup 4. Maybe that's maybe that's saying something about TSG. <laughs> if they, they didn't go very far and then get back in on the next tournament. So uh, it might not work. But I'm, I'm curious just to see what builds people come up with. And I think that LF Org have a... a of options that SK pieces don't that I'd like to see against Kangana. All right, here we go. Wizard War going to be starting early on. So Mercy is going to be the primary target. Deathborn traded out by Morrow, working to get the Frost Bolts. So I've seen the back line right now. He's playing very far away. Both Warlocks don't really want to commit to the open as the Mages will kind of soak up a lot of that damage uh, with their Eternal Aegis. Tessia right now with the veins. PI, big damage on Mercy. He gets interrupted. He's just free casting Frost Bolts. Does finally get shut down there by Morrow. That's going to allow Tessia to just spam out Polymorphs. But no, they're just going to run away. I mean, this is a lot of damage as well from Morrow. So they want to avoid that. This both mages just kind of shattering each other in the middle of the map with their flurries. 
Tessia right now blasting Maro. Maro blasting Tessia. Which one of these mages will fall first? An interrupt on a Tessia, but he catches a huge heal. Guardian Spirit. He's in the middle of the map, though. Tessia may have overstayed his welcome, and that will be an ice block. Now forced to retreat back to the pillar. Tessia playing a little bit aggressive there. Yeah, Tessia definitely getting a little bit too aggressive there, but you're going to have one more ice block to fall back on. Now Maru Whoa. actually getting... Twopsy getting blasted, though. And Lontar actually getting swapped to as well here. Everybody's taking damage right now on the sides of these wizards. And Tessia will get counterspelled right there. Maru looks to move in. He gets polymorphed by Tessia. He gets re-polymorphed. His trinket absorbs it, and then he gets polymorphed again. Twopsy now in a fear. Lontar in a fear. Can they find some crowd control onto Lontar? It looks like they're trying, but... Uh, it doesn't look like they're going to be able to find it. He fades it. And Alontar will connect with that Ray of Hope as well there onto Swapsy. Swapsy should recover in that situation. Now, Tessia here in the back line taking massive damage. Infernal's called in for Mercy. Morrow on one side, Mercy on one side. Looking to get some pressure going here in terms of cooldowns. I would say, uh, actually, SK pieces are ahead. One Ice Block and one Unending Resolve on the DPS. Ahead on, uh, Ma actually, even on Mana. But Asgraf is sitting down for a drink right now, so this could be a moment where LF Org could get aggressive, uh, actually Chaos Vaulting that pet there, trying to take it down, and now we see Marcy actually pushing in very dangerously, deep here, could be in trouble, activates the Dark Pack, and uh, Wapsy actually getting uh, some big damage on onto his pet there to get a Fear uh, or a Mortal Coil onto Lontar, but no Fear, Shadow Fury gets interrupted, Lontar fears it, and uh, Marcy now looking for the Shadow Fury once again, they do kill off Swapsy's pet, and that could be an opening here. And they pick up the reflector as well. So Ice Wall coming up. Swapsy is isolated with nothing. Lothar needs to make it all the way around there. <gasps> they almost blast him. Oh my god, they do blast him. What an insane Ice Wall. And Unruki right now, there's more nominees <laughs> for top Ice Wall of AWC. Better make more room uh, of on the these list. cups. Yeah. We're need to see the replay. Make more room on the list, dude. Nah, I think that Ice Wall was just as beautiful. Uh, we're gonna have to, I might have uh, to take away uh, the award, huh? Yeah, we might have to take soon. a look at the, the committee of, of, of major awards here. We might need to take a look at the <laughs> at the bots here before we make our, our final prediction here on on the best ice wall award. But right now we have two strong majors here from Europe uh, looking to claim it. Then, yeah, I mean, I definitely we're gonna see exactly what Mara was able to get done here. It's very early on in the game too. Most of these games have gone uh, at least into dampening a little bit. Um, but it is ultimately going to be Swapsy that does drop. So Maro in the midfield right now, just going to be blasting Swapsy, who is, uh, you know, eating a few Chaos Bolts. Nothing too crazy. Lone Tar actually positioned on top of Swapsy. So the two of them are going to go for a double attack here onto Mercy. Two versus one, but Asgrath is there to connect some healing. And uh, this is where Mercy goes for a bit of a counter attack. So we get the double Mortal Coil out onto Lone Tar, as well as Swapsy. He gets interrupted. Maro right now. Let's see where he does connect that wall. Big flurry combo out onto Swapsy. And is this where they separate him? I think this is where he does actually get isolated. Um, nope, not yet. There's the Shadow Fury. Lone Tar is going to have to be a little bit further away. Uh, but Swapsy basically is just tanking a ton of damage. Like, that's that's what's going on here. He's taking a ton of damage. Unfortunately, not able to get away. There. Lone Tar moves. And there is the Divide and Conquer. Marl with a very precise Ice Wall. And Lone Tar not able to finish off massive damage coming in from Mercy in the nick of that time. That port and as well. That was that was nice. Offensive portal by Mercy. These are the ice walls you love to see. And I don't know. Uh, Maro making a strong case for himself for the Nuki <laughs> Ice Wall Award. So we'll have to see what happens in game five. Maybe one of these mages can rise uh, to the top. But <laughs> um, definitely some beautiful plays coming in from both sides. And man, that's got to feel so bad if you're LF Org. If you're LF4, you won two Mage Lock Mirror matchups in a row, and then you kind of baited yourself into a bad pick, in my opinion. You lose that matchup, and then you try to go back to the Mage Lock, and you lose again. And now all of a sudden, it's all tied up. Like, I can't help but feel like what would have happened if they just kind of rode their momentum, uh, stayed with the Mage Lock for the entire series. We could have had a 3-0 instead. Yeah. And now LF4, they, they need to patch things up together here if they want to have a shot. Uh, at that grand finals, LF Org, they have only one chance left to do it. And uh, SK Pieces, they got all the momentum now because they picked up two back to back. They lost the first two. And it's a little bit tilting, but now they pick up one win. No up, way. I swear no they're going to Warrior Mage. If they Warrior Mage, if they Warrior Mage that like... then, then Maro gets their word. 
Yeah, <laughs> agreed. I agree. <laughs> Warrior Mage would be a blunder. Like I said, I've seen this matchup play out between these two teams. So I've seen it where SK Pieces play as Warrior Mage, they lose. I've seen when LF Orc <laughs> plays Warrior Mage, they lose. So it, I don't know the line of thinking. that I've never seen the Warrior Mage win, to be completely honest with you. So if they go Warrior Mage, I think it's like, a, it, I'm not sure. I don't think they'll do it. I don't even think we need to talk about it because I don't think it's happening. We'll see. Why would they go to Dalaran Sewers? I guess they, Dalaran Sewers actually played that in the series as well. They could Mage Lock. I just says it's like similar signs. Like why would they go to a small map after small map was locked in <laughs> earlier, and they and they did so. Uh, bit sketchy here for them. Wondering what they're gonna lock in. They're really talking about it at least, so it's not a hundred percent sealed. Uh, and these Mage Lock mirrors can be so volatile. It's like. You just get clipped by a double chaos bolt. Oh, game's over. In a bad spot for a second. Oh, game's over. Like, you have to be 100% focused. Even if you're in a good spot, ice wall, game's <laughs> over. <laughs> you have to be so focused that it's it's probably fatiguing to a certain point. So, like, all right, they're going to go Mage Lock Mirror, Dalaran Sewers. Not really a lot of places to hide. You're going to get cleaved very easily with these little pillar boxes uh, by Blizzard, Reign of Fire, and Infernal. So, this could be over fast and... I thought this was LF Org's day. Like they had solid performance, reverse sweep with the turbo, looking good in the first two games of Mage Lock. Uh, but that last game was a stomp by SK Pieces, which means that this series is far from over. We've got a real series here. The last game. Who's going to go to the finals? Who gets a second chance at Kungana and to show what Europe <laughs> has got? Oh, what if you're Kungana? Like, what are you thinking? You're like, oh, we got Outlaw. We're chilling. Like, <laughs> figured out some new tech what are you gonna do sk pieces and lf org so uh, i bet they I, I almost wonder if they don't even care who they get at this point they're like yeah okay we'll see we're probably gonna fight mates lock and it's been looking good for them so um sk pieces lf org I, I hope one of these teams has something different prepared uh if they do make it to the finals but we'll have to wait and see dalaran sewer is going to be the last map between these two teams on game number five after this one of these teams will be eliminated lf org had a lot of initial momentum picking up the first two wins but sk pieces now two in a row i feel like in a situation like this where it's 2-2 it's way better to be the team that picked up the last two games than the first two games you know like you, you start doubting yourself if you just lost two games in a row like figuring out what went wrong blah 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 the other team just feels like all right we finally got this locked in like we got this we won the last two it's time to go I completely agree. I think right now all the momentum are with SK pieces. They're feeling fired up and, uh, you know, we can tell guys that uh, they just need to do it one more time. But same thing for LF org though. They've had two games to kind of figure out their mistakes and uh, now they could be rising back to the occasion. I would say overall though, that game um, actually didn't look too good for LF org. Uh, aside from that, um, ice wall. So, I don't know. It's anybody's match. We are live with game number five between SK Pieces and LF Org. Loser goes home in third place. Winner advances to the grand finals of Euro to face off against Kungana. And uh, Tasia has his Deathborn ready and launched, looking for some damage. But right now, he's not getting too much done with it. Just uh, trying to get some crossbows on the pet right now. And uh, there we go. Now, finally, going to be recovery. Be, uh, getting some damage out but Maro meanwhile is ice getting wall. a lot of work done of ice wall coming out here beautiful onto Tessia here isolating him just for a second there but doesn't get the most amount of value they do get the eternal ages for it but not more, much more other than that I like it more when these ice walls go towards the warlock actually and I think they just a lot more um uh, better cooldowns that you force like even if you force an ice block it's not necessarily the end of the world but you force out that unending result, it, you really do take a big lead. Um, Wapsi, his Dark Soul is still active, but it will be fading soon. Maro still with the Icy Veins, fading just now. And uh, so far, it looks like no team really got ahead too much in the opener. Everybody's still holding on to basically all of their cooldowns. Uh, the only real difference is that Guardian was used by Lonta, and it wasn't by Askarath. So pretty much dead even game so far here after the opener. Yep, no advantage is built just yet here on Dalaran Sewers. They're just going after the Fell Hunters, it looks like, at the moment. Trying to take out the pet. Swapsy Health funneling his Fell Hunter to save it. Mercy portaling in aggressively. Soul Rot casted into a fear, looking for crowd control. Finds it onto Lone Tar. Asgrath looks like he deaths the Polymorph. Maro is still down at half health, though. He's trying to get aggressive, trying to push in here. Dropping the Frozen Orb, going for Frost Bolts, trying to take down 
knockdown swaps it looks like, but that Dark Pact absorbs all of it. Mercy is going to line aside with Ray of Hope. Morrow is trying to retreat away, immuning the coil with that echoing resolve, unfortunately, for Swapsy, not finding that on Morrow. Now Swapsy once again going after Mercy, procking that Blasphemy, trying to get more Infernal Ramps. As he has his casting on the Fell Hunter, I think, behind the pillar, ramping up some Icicles, trying to get ready for a push here onto Mercy, but it feels like the Mage Lock that has the other pinned at the pillar is likely going to be advantaged because you can drink. Although it looks like both priests have been able to regenerate their mana back to full at this point, equalizing, playing more of a mid game. No serious overextensions from either side, though. Now Chaos Bolt's flying on Tessia. He's going to Fleshcraft, absorb those hits. Maro is just line of sighting Swapsy. One Frostbolt moves to the left. <laughs> One Frostbolt moves to the left to line Swapsy. Just peeking in and out. As if he's playing an FPS here on his Frost Mage at the staircase right now. Another Frostbolt fished out here onto Swapsy. Flurry combo. Maro blinks in aggressively on top of him. Lots of damage being launched, and Swapsy has to portal away. Back behind the boxes. Now getting back out in line of sight. Chaos Bolt trade with Maro. Is he going to block or run behind the pillar here? Still just trading with Swapsy here out in the open while Tessia and Mercy are going after each other on the other side of the map. It's almost like we have two different games going on at the same time with the mage is like 1v2ing the lock and priest on each side. Yeah, it's trying to keep them pinned at the pillar and not allow them to kind of connect on the same target. Morrow right Ooh, now has gates. a lot of damage available. This is everything. Icy Veins, Deathborn. Can he get cast off? This is the real question. Tessie actually is getting control of him. One Frostbolt will land. Big Frostbolts. You have to be very afraid right now. If you are Ella Forg, Ice Wall will drop down. Defensive Ice Wall there by Tessia. That get absolutely cracked, shredded instantaneously. Marl blinks in the middle of the map, will activate his Aegis in order to stabilize and perhaps buy Asgath a little bit of time to drink. And both teams are prioritizing mana in this matchup a lot, going for early drinks, trying to keep that lead. At the same time, Tessia getting blasted. He's forced to potentially run away. He's in the middle of the map. He gets gripped. Lontar realizing he's going to be in a little bit of trouble as both teams basically are in full kind of default position. Um, Tessia, Swapsy, Lone Tar, they're going to be behind the pillar together. Mercy Asgrath tomorrow, they're feeling confident to actually push in. They do get an ice block from Tessia, which is massive. He decides to exit the ice block and actually go uh, a little bit of damage here on Mercy, but it looks like Mercy will be okay. Ray of Hope will land. Mercy likely going to be topped off here. And now if Swapsy wants to push in, he's going to get hit by Morrow and... Both these teams just trying to find the opportunities where they can find them, hit whatever caster's out in the open. If you stay in the open for too long, you're likely going to get blasted. It's just such a volatile matchup. Yeah, and right now, Mercy's the one getting blasted here in open field, but Swapsy needs to be careful. When you play on one side and Tessia plays on the other side, it can be very, very tricky for Lontar to actually get heals out onto both members because he has to keep ducking back and forth on that pillar. Uh, but Lontar doing a great job, keeping both of them alive for now. Tessia actually moving up a little bit, and uh, the rest of SKT is kind of playing at the uh, stairs here. And Swapsy right now looks like an exposed target. They get a nice uh, mortal call there onto Tessia. Big damage potential. Here's the casting circle, though, from Swapsy. One Chaos Ball connects. Double. Big damage onto Mercy. And he gets isolated by the wall. Beautiful ice wall here from Tessia once again. Trying to get something going there, but unfortunately... The Eternal Ages is just enough there to keep him alive, and it's actually Swapsy who's forced to run away, retreat, and gets the Guardian Spirit. Tessia now, once again, needs to be careful. He's already down one Ice Block. Doesn't want to have to use his second one, as he takes a bunch of damage right there. And once again, it looks like SKP is in the driver's seat, but Lothar with a little bit more mana to work with. Now, finally, Mercy gets pushed off the pillar. They're forced to run away here and, and try to recover for a second here, as they are all dropping dangerously low. But now it looks like they just trade positions here. Mercy still, though, left back, taking a lot of damage there. He will take the Guardian Spirit and actually try to get aggressive. But with that trade, they're happy to take it. Swapsy with Dark Soul looking to take down Mercy, but he gets sheep uh, really far away from his team. Nice demonic circle, though, will clear that slow and allow him to reconvene with his team. But that Dark Soul uh, still with just a few seconds left on it. He would like to get aggressive with it. This would be a prime opportunity to use that Ice Wall as well to get a Shadow Fury. Big damage here, potential for Swapsy, but doesn't look like he'll get much more done with the Dark Soul. Now Swapsy getting swapped to huge hits of damage coming in. Ray of Hope will come out. Lonto keeping himself alive, keeping Swapsy potentially alive as well with that Ray. And both teams so far trading back and forth, but it is Asgrath who's falling behind on mana. Let's see if they can keep the lead here and finish this match on the Mercy. They're blasting him out in game five. Last chance here. Asgrass so slim on mana. Trades out Ray of Hope in the final second. Now blasting damage back on tomorrow. 
Swapsy not wanting to overextend as his defense is limited as well, but they're pushing forward here. Tessia blinking in aggressively, trying to stop the drink of Asgarath. Infernal's called in onto the Fell Hunter by Mercy. He's targeting down the Fell Hunter quite a bit here, trying to take it out. Swapsy launching Chaos Bolts in return onto Mercy. Gets spell locked on the second one. Now Mercy turning the tables with Chaos Bolts of his own. Swapsy gets pulled to the pillar, but Morrow got left behind. He's at down to half out in the midfield offensive gateway from Swapsy, getting ready for the push here. Ice wall down from Tessia, isolating Mercy on the other side of the pillar from Asgarath. Big damage incoming from that, and that will oh. take it. LF Org 3-2. Tessia really wants that Vinruki Ice Wall award. <laughs> <laughs> he certainly does. But yeah, LF Org battling it back in a big way. This is such a back and forth matchup. Uh, there was just a moment right before this where Swapsy went down to 10% health, but after they managed to recover, uh, it seemed like they just had the, the momentum in their favor. Swapsy threw down a casting circle, was able to get two Chaos Bolts on Mercy, was able to get a Chaos Bolt um, onto Morrow, keep them on the back foot, and that's where Tessia was able to kind of push in um, and close it out. Ella Forg, uh, it was looking scary for them. They won those first two games, they lost the next two, but taking uh, game number five, they are going to claim the series and uh, some beautiful mirror matches. Absolutely gorgeous Ice Waltz coming out here once again and uh Tessia having two of those Morrow having one on the day uh, I think we got to give it to Tessia here but uh we'll, we'll uh, wait for the final verdict on that uh from Judgment Rookie we're gonna see we're gonna have to re-watch it first though, to make sure it was as clean yes. and crispy as we would expect here uh, you know being at the wall connoisseurs here on the desk uh <laughs> but here uh they're, they're getting a nice push in uh doing some decent work here and they got them cornered you know on that pillar and this is uh, moments right before it happens. So Swapsy gets counterspelled. He gets pulled back. Morrow takes a decent amount of damage. And um, he gets uh, pulled back as well to the rest of his team there. And this is where Tessia is moving in. There is the ice wall. Look at that. Beautiful. Surgical precision. Absolutely flawless. Blocks the, the, the corner of the ramp right there. And it literally bounced uh, Mercy a little bit further, like, in front you know it, it like basically sure. bounced mercy a little bit and bounced asgrath a little bit in the opposite direction so yep. that was just a, a top tier surgical position um what are we thinking here ben he's definitely keeping the award there's no doubt about it the <laughs> the one there's a maneuver so when you get to that level of precision with the ice wall there's a lot of really cool tricks you can do the one trick this is my this is venriki's ice wall tricks my favorite trick for ice wall is if a, a rogue, the enemy rogue, kidney shots your healer, and you can split them up. If you can drop an ice wall between them to deny the rogue actually attacking during the kidney shot, and that's the kind of precision we saw in that last game. So definitely Tessia gets the award today. Although Morrow, honorable mention, no doubt. Very nicely done for him too. I like, <laughs> I like that. Um, all right, well, yeah, nicely done indeed. And now we do have our two teams here for the finals. Uh, unfortunate for SK pieces, but we will see them again in the circuit. So looking for org, now they're gonna be moving forward here and they're gonna face off against Kungana in the grand finals for the fourth and final championship Sunday before the circuit. So uh, gonna be gonna be a pretty explosive team. Kungana, you know, we know that they're very high up in the standings looking for Org following closely behind. Uh, so these players are kind of just playing for, you know, the glory at this point. Obviously they're qualified here for top eight. So let's see what they can do as we head into this next one to the grand finals. We're gonna go to a break. When we come back, it is Kungana versus looking for Org.
Hi guys, welcome back. We are now in the European Grand Finals here. It's Kungana facing off against Looking for Org. Looking for Org, they were just able to beat that Wizard Mirror in uh, SK pieces, getting third, and now here they are going to be facing off here against Kungana in the Grand Finals, hoping to get that first place finish. Uh, Kungana, obviously, they're coming here from the upper bracket as well, so playing super, super solid. So kind of just another, you know, another normal day, Zico for Kungana. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just uh, been playing a clean season so far. Number one point earners. And uh, we still have yet to see Chaz from these guys. Maybe now would be a good time to bring him in. Uh, you know, last chance before the Cups at least to um, get him nice and ready. But yeah, we're gonna, gonna uh, be once again undefeated here. Taking down a lot of the a lot of the top teams here, you know. Taking down Bugs, My Way, pieces. And now looking to take down LF Org. Now for LF Org, they just won, well, almost something as as important as winning the finals. They won the even rookie Ice Wall Award, but they're not <laughs> done yet. Specifically Tessia, yes, yes, specifically Tessia. But you know, it's a team effort. So the team, <laughs> they, it goes to the team, or does not it go to with the, the Ice Wall? It's not. <laughs> oh really? It's a it's a personal award. It's like an MVP <laughs> award. All right. So it's at least Tessia award, is yes. going to be walking away here, winning something, but. The rest of his teammates, they obviously want to win too. So they're going to be looking to tear, to tear things up in the upper bracket. We're, we want to see TSG, but uh, maybe they're just going to play Mage Lock, uh, like SK Pieces, and lose. Please, uh, TSG. But I would like to see, I would like to see the, TSG. some TSG, yeah. I really want to see it. Spear you Bastion. Should. Go ahead. Yeah, Spear Bastion, uh, the Necrolord, DK. I, I just want to see a true series. We've only seen a few games, and every single time, it's extremely close. It actually looked like their best answer um, before, and it would be really interesting if they could actually force Kungana off of the RMP and see what other compositions that they have, because that, that's my big question. I mean, Kungana right now, they look absolutely fantastic. If something happens to a Rogue Mage, or somehow people figure out the Rogue Mage, what else are they going to do? Like, what other comps do they have? I, they, I guess they'll have mage of Raikou and the mage with was and basically any melee but what else what else is there for them no one plays chaz warlock, warlock. They... chaz warlock yeah mage lock i was gonna say no yeah. one plays warlock but okay chaz warlock, <laughs> chaz warlock so yeah. funny thing about chaz warlock i asked him behind the scenes if he if we were gonna see him play that and he says uh kind of want to play Warlock and bolt Sidu down, but that's not an option. And he said, Channel's not playing left to void in the AWC, and I just want to fill that void. It's like, it's just <laughs> funny thing that he said during the day that I thought, you know, was relevant since we're talking about him playing Warlock. But uh, do we think that we get to see him play it? I, I feel like it'd be maybe a bit of a waste, though, since they do so well with their current comps. I would like to see it for the BM factor. Bring in Chaz on Warlock and then beat LF in a in a wizard mirror and then swap to RMP and win that way. That, that would be a satisfying way for Jazz to start his season, I think. Yeah, his debut as DPS winning in a mirror. You think that they, they would win the mirror, Zico? I haven't seen Chaz Warlock play, so I don't want to make any predictions there, but uh, Swapsy left, definitely looked kind of scary <laughs> uh, in that last match, so I, I don't know. He definitely has, uh, he has his work cut out for him if he does play that. Um, but most likely, we're just going to see Mage Lock into Rogue Mage and we we want to see we want to see swap CDK. That's what we. Hmm. Yeah. Co lots of uh, lots of decisions here. As we head into the grand finals, we're going to get the game started as soon as we can. It seems like they are kind of you know taking that delay timer. Obviously, since looking for Org, I've just played. So uh, we'll see if they can get that started shortly. But you know, well done to them. They've been in the the lower bracket for quite some time on the side of looking for Org. Originally getting sent down there by SK pieces, so you know, fantastic. Of course, that they were able to beat them the second time around. So now, of course, they are hoping for a victory against Kungana. I was talking with Lone Tar a little bit, um, and he says that like everyone, their their team is still trying to find you know a counter for RMP. Uh, they don't have one. They're just kind of hoping, it sounds like, for Kangana to, to make mistakes and find those openings there. Because obviously, like every other team looking for orgs, also struggling with that um, and struggling to find an answer for that. So we'll see if they if they do have that. But I'm interested because, I mean, we've got like one game left in this region. But I do wonder if a solid answer eventually comes to fruition cool. in the circuit. Do you think, Fen, that we see something like that along the line? Or is this just going to be a constant question? 
I think it's going to be a constant question, to be honest with you. I think RMP is in a position right now where if you play it as well as Kungana, like, I don't think there's... I, I, I feel like you have a fair shot into anything. Like, now, like, rogues are in a really strange spot where this doesn't always happen, but rogues right now can play Subtlety, which specializes against some things. You have uh, the Assassination Rogue, which specializes against some things, and now Outlaw to specialize against some things. So... You have a lot of variety uh, just within the Rogue Mage uh, preset up by itself, uh, where you can just change the Rogue specialization. And luckily for Waz, I mean, he's extremely good at all three specs. So that gives uh, that makes it even more difficult because if you're a team like Elephorg, maybe you have an answer for the Assassination Rogue, and that's great. But then they switch and they play sub, or they uh -oh, switch and they play, <laughs> and they play outlaw, and then it's like, okay, well, we have to figure out all three of these right now. I just think the composition is so good. Um, the only thing we've seen from North America is the Paladin Shadow Priest Rogue. The Shadow Priest Paladin Rogue actually seemed like a decent matchup, but even then we've seen signs of life when we watched Unitas play against um, Kawhi. Um, it seemed like they still had a chance in the match. So maybe if they just played a little bit better, maybe they could actually win that matchup. So it's really hard to say exactly what's going to be able to beat a solid RMP right now. Very hard to say indeed. We are, of course, heading to North America fire. after this series, so tune in for that. But yeah, it looks like we got a Fire Mage, Ben. Fire Mage. Jesse is actually going to be locking in the Fire Mage. This is something we predicted could be good potentially here against the Rogue Mage Priest. We'll see. So Tessia no longer having Ice Wall, no longer having the Deathborn, but what he does have is really heavy burst with his combustion so he's going to be able to set up crowd control with dragon's breath uh, if he's left alone he's also going to be able to burst really heavily while he's moving forward going for a sap finds the sap on lotar going after swapsy very early on in the match good counter dragon's breath there by tessia slowing down was but he gets gripped to target good positioning by kingana beautiful counting so far by swapsy as well we need that fort out and uh, also that mortal coil onto was just trying to slow him down in that opener, and now they get a Reno Frost onto Math, swapping onto Math. But Math will deflect it. Gets that nice uh, read there with the dead. He'll trace out his Guardian, uh -huh. he gets re down, he might proc. Yes, he uses his, every every man for himself there, as well as his Battle Master. So Math, he's out, he's Guardian proc too. So Math is he's literally everything. down a whole spell book. He literally has no spell book. But now Mind Games on the swap team, but swap team might just die here. What? <laughs> All right, that was a one, less than a minute game where two players died, basically. And um, <laughs> it's going to be Swapsy uh, in the end who really dies. So we're going to need to rewatch that. I, that was a crazy game. I, like, from start to finish of this game, both teams were making insane plays. Like, really, really impressive plays. Like, there's so little, so many little things. Like, the fact that Swapsy was able to kite the way he did, even though we saw a man in a great position to kind of rip Waz over. Uh, very nice setup um, onto Matt as well, getting basically every single cooldown that he had available. Uh, we can see here, this is where Waz actually gets gripped, and then he does get Polymorph. So this is a big setup here onto Matt. He gets caught into the Infernal stun, and does get the fade before the Chastise stun. It was actually a blind on Lontar, but Lontar just decides to trinket and go for it. And they almost are able to punish Matt. It was so close. He used every single cooldown but i'm kind of wondering what happens to swapsy where he gets caught so the chastise on lontar and he gets dr feared is there anything out of that it's just a dr smoke fear bomb. mind games and smoke bomb so lontar getting punished for his aggressive trinket um but you really can't blame him because that was a really powerful swap there by ella Ford, but i'm gonna gonna punish it what about shadow priest mage into rogue mage I don't think they have it uh, as an option, but I feel like you could kill the Holy Priest as that, and the Shadow Priest will live way longer than the Warlock. Good work. Maybe. I mean, it's been an answer in the past. It, it's definitely been a composition that you've been able to run in the past. Um, I'm not sure, to be honest. I, I don't even... I, I, I'm not exactly sure how I feel about this matchup. I mean, those priest swaps are devastating, and I feel like if they had got one more setup like that, Matt was just dead, and there's nothing you could do about it. So they were pretty close to winning that, but Jesse has to be really careful of not trinketing aggressively, I guess. Um, even though it's a fair, it was a trinket on the blind, right? It's like, a, it's a fair trade. Um, so it's just, it's just difficult. You have to navigate offense and defense so perfectly. Um, for both sides, and uh, especially the Mage Lock side. I mean, if you mess up, you undercommit or you overcommit, you can get punished really fast with how powerful the Assassination Rogue is right now. Yeah, that's the problem, but uh, I, I don't know. 
I feel like Swapsy, it was like the perfect uh, kind of go on him because he was already a little bit low as well. Before that Chastise Fear or DR Fear uh, Smoke Bomb came in, like before the Chastise land, he, was, he wasn't at full HP. He was like maybe around the 80, 70% mark. And that's when you can kind of just keep it going. And um, yeah, Lontar just playing too aggressive. And the reason why is because he popped his Apotheosis and he wanted to reset his stun. Um, and I mean, offensively, it, get, it got them everything. It got them the whole spell book. But defensively, they needed uh, they needed to cast one heal onto Swapsy or get something onto Swapsy to top him at least, or at least give him like a dragon's breath in the smoke bomb. Um, get something. But I, I do like the matchup actually. Um, I'm a bit a much bigger fan of the Fire Mage version, into Rogue Mage, compared to the Frost Mage. The Frost Mage, I've seen it play out too many times now. The Frost Mage just pops Deathborn, goes in, and <laughs> thinks that he's like James Bond, but then he gets blinded, and then. Like that's that basically it's the ice block and uh, they just slow him down TSG? double counter spell him uh and then uh, please yeah. tsg map yeah this would be I, a nice I, map for tsg i feel like i've i've like i've been saying tsg so much or we've been saying tsg so much that i almost feel like a fool that they haven't done it like maybe it does <laughs> suck like maybe i'm just crazy but i also still feel like it's good like i really do want to see it so i hope i want to see it, it. Because and not necessarily because I think it's good. Like in theory, it feels like it should be okay. I see like some win conditions for both sides, but it's more because I think LF Org, at least in Europe, has some of the most solid people that you can have running it. Like uh, you have you have Swapsy, he's insane on DK. You have Lizzo, he's arguably the best warrior. So you already have you know like your core on the TSG is going to be super solid. And then you have Lontar. Uh, I don't know if he would play Shaman TSG. It might be a bit feed. But uh, at least, um, you know, have him keep him on the Holy Priest or whatever, whatever you think is the best healer, Paladin. He can play all, he can play all of them. So um, I think LF Org just has a really strong lineup of players for that. And we are going to yes! see it with the Shaman. Let's go. This is, if these guys can't win with TSG, maybe the matchup just isn't that great. But if they can make a <laughs> convincing case or like a, you know, uh, why shaman be, though be, oh. yeah why shaman i'm that's the one thing that's like i don't know how i feel about that one it's corrupted data like you you know yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, they lose. if they lose this i'm just gonna blame it on the shaman not even the warrior death knight but true they're, they're gonna get so close to winning and we're gonna be like wow if he was a holy priest i would have won that <laughs> oh man i want shaman to be good maybe they are i mean they they Here's the thing that the Shaman is going to bring. If he's playing the Rock Elemental Legendary, they're going to have a very powerful start. Like It's going to be a ton of damage, basically going to be 3 DPS. Um, but once that's gone, once that's gone, it's going to be it's going to be difficult for Lonto to keep up. So for Ella Forg, their ticket to winning this game is going to be all out aggression. So really utilize that Rock Elemental, trade out your defensive cooldowns, play super duper aggressive onto uh, Raikou, I'd probably say. Go after the Fire Mage, purge him out. Um, and just see what you can do. I think you just have to beat them at their own game. Keep Kangana on the back foot and uh, mm. let the chips fall where they may. Zug it out, dude. When in doubt, Zug it out. RMP versus Zug. Who is going to come out on top? It's a test of time. A battle of the ages. Can LF Org <laughs> manage to pull it off here in Europe? Kangana has just been on an absolute tear. SK pieces look like they'd solved them in cup number two, but after that, doesn't look like it. They got knocked down. LF Org tried mage lock. I mean, it looks better than the frost, but still, Swapsy just dying to Vendetta. So, swapping over now to Death Knight, trying to run some TSG, bringing in a Restoration Shaman. Is Restoration Shaman going to go from zero to hero? Like, it's just like everybody's abandoned it. Nobody wants to play it anymore. Everybody's like, I'm not playing Shaman anymore. I'm deleting my Shaman. That's all I see from Shaman players. Is it going to be the secret ingredient, the key to their victory? The one that everybody banished to the their afterthoughts and wanted to forget. <laughs> it, it could. It could. Who knows? The story is about to write itself. It's like mm. uh, it's like uh, at the start of, uh, of Shadowlands when you have to free Thrall from, from the Jailer. Now we're freeing all the Shamans here. This could be, this could be the... the the matchup that kind of the catalyst that makes everyone play their shaman again uh can they can it happen can lontar lead the charge here for his team yeah i mean <laughs> that would be miraculous i, I want to see it this is this is the best map all right we got the best map they aren't playing 
Kyrian Spear. So they're not playing the Spear of Bastion on the side of Blizzo, which I, I think is really good, but they're going to have an, a crazy amount of damage with the Conqueror's Banner. Um, so we will see. Elephorg, let's see how aggressive they decide to play here in the matchup. Looks like Lontar is just going to be flesh. running in right away with the Fleshcraft. <laughs> Fleshcraft by all three members. Triple Necrolord. They're going straight for Meh. Dragon Express shuts it down from Raikou. It looks like they are going to be... Who are they going after? They're actually going after Blizzo. This is a combustion right away. Blizzo will reflect. Looks like he should be okay. He's able to hold on. Now finally connecting to his target. This is all the damage. But a dismantle comes in from Waz. Now Blizzo could be in a little bit of trouble right now. He's trying to play really, really aggressive. But Waz shuts him down. Now Blizzo just tap targeting Meh. Uh, or Blizzard tap targeting Waz, trying to cut him down, but he's still got the evasion. He's going to trade out his Vanish, go for a cheap shot on Lone Tar. Can Raikou find the Polymorph? No, he gets wind sheared. So far, I feel like Swapsy and Blizzard have kind of struggled to find pressure so far in this match, but at least they're still alive. Oh, big damage uh, on the Blizzo. Sepsis Vendetta. Big hits coming in, and he might just get taken down. Beautiful setup here. Might just get taken down, and Lone Tar will trink it. Spirit Link, and um, now he will also use his Ascendance. So they are down zone. Trinket Ascendance, Spirit Link, and Swapsy's Trinket. They still have Icebound Fortitude on Swapsy and Blizzo's Trinket to work with. That next setup on Tumant needs to really net them something here. Lontar uh, gets the cap totem. He gets Sheep Shot into a Sheep. Counter Spell onto the Fleshcraft of Blizzard. They're going after him. This is big damage onto Blizzard. Can they get a reshape? He gets kicked on it. Man is there with a follow up. And I think I speak for all of us when I say we definitely do not want to see PSG with a Shaman ever. It's a Shaman thing. I, I swear. Is it, <laughs> is it a Shaman I thing? <laughs> Spear of Bastion is better too. Like, they don't. Like, the, in my opinion, the way TSU wins this matchup is actually go after Raikou. Like, you attack the mage with Spirit Bastion, and that's that's how you win. Why not like, be Frost? I, I, Why is everyone so dead yeah. set on Unholy? I feel like your sustained damage is good, but who cares about sustained damage? It's Holy Priest. They're doing, like, 2 billion HPS. Like, I don't think you're going to sustain damage out of Holy Priest right now. Bring in a Frost DK, like, double stun Spirit Bastion, burst them down while they can't heal, I feel like would be so much better for them. Uh, at the moment, like there's just no spiky damage. It's like the difference between Kasu playing BM against RMP and then switching MM and getting like that big bursty damage that's actually threatening to kill a target. But Holy's not threatening enough to actually be like, I'm going to kill you damage. It's like, if you ignore me for a while, I might eventually be able to kill you. And I, I don't think that's going to be good enough to beat a team like Kangana. And this is the moment. They use Animatic Zone on Vendetta and they just don't care at all. That zone, that zone did nothing. Lone Tar still has to trinket Link and when you use zone plus trinket link, those are like two major stops. The other disadvantage of the shaman is that Blizzard's enraged regen doesn't get reset. As the holy priest, you reset that defensive cooldown faster. So he would actually have it here at the end of the game, which he doesn't by like literally like five seconds. And I think it would have saved him because he still has his trinket. So he trinket fleshes and he's just like, wow, I wish I had enraged regen. I wish you were a holy priest right now. I would have it right now. Oh man, I don't have it yet. Like. <laughs> there's no way i don't think shaman should be in this matchup but i also think that they should try frosty k i want to see it i really want to see know. it but i'm happy we shaman, get to see the like, tsg at least but yeah i, I want to see the tsg again I, I like i still haven't seen the variant of it that i actually like i, I just think one of the reasons i mean people might be wondering why shaman are the best right now i i feel like the problem for shaman is damage is so high at the moment um that the way they heal doesn't exactly match that like shaman are really good when the damage is a little bit slower and they can kind of sustain with their riptide and their earth shield when it gets scary maybe you drop your healing tide totem but you just don't have the the healing um i feel like i think that's a big sh problem with shaman right now is you just don't have the healing uh with how high the consistent damage is you see a vendetta i mean what do you do you trade out your spirit link totem okay well you He's going to have, what, what, three vendettas in the time you have your Spirit Link totem. So you're not always going to have an answer, at least two. So you're not always going to have an answer. And I think that's where Shaman kind of falls short right now. Uh, good offensively, uh, perhaps. But I'm not even convinced of that right now. I just feel like Lontar should probably just stick to the Holy Priest. I, I have not seen a matchup yet where I think Shaman is better than Holy Priest um, at all, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, I think uh, Holy Priest could. So, uh, right, I want to, I want to, because you said you haven't seen the version of TSG that you want. So, 
if you could tailor your own TSG, you could you could pick these three players to pick exactly what you want. They're not doing it like. again. They're not doing it. They're not doing it. But like, I want <laughs> I want to know for fun. You would you would pick a Kyrian warrior for the spear? Yeah, Kyrian warrior. Yeah, Kyrian warrior. Uh, unholy or frost? I'm not sure. Unholy you know you or frost. Want to say frost. Frost. Okay, so we're saying Kyrian warrior. What about arms warrior? For the sharpen, like Kyr. Nah, I feel like that's a it's a devastating combo. Maybe, maybe I'm. It could be okay. I, actually, an unhinged arms warrior. It's like the Bladestorm Lego, and just yeah, all in, in the opener. Just grip everything, aggro Bladestorm, kill something right away. Just see if you can kill the whole team. I feel like you need the problem against Assassination Rogue is you need a teammate that can dispel sepsis off the kill target. The, but the main problem is the Assassination Rogues are almost always going after that target. It's like you're going after a Windwalker who could dispel sepsis. Um, so like having two people on the team, two DPS that could dispel sepsis, so the other person can like a Ret and a Windwalker. A ret pally can dispel the monk on sepsis, and the windwalker can dispel the ret on sepsis, because um, that's where all of the damage is coming from. Like you think it's vendetta, but it's really sepsis. If you remove sepsis instantly, vendetta it turns into like a little puppy dog, um, but it gets enhanced so much by the four set <laughs> bonus because you use the shiv, and then your set bonus empowers the sepsis dot to tick faster on top of the vendetta, uh, and that's what spirals it. So having something that can remove sepsis is like super important. And th that's the problem on LF org with Mage Lock. There's nothing to remove sepsis. You just have to heal through it. You have to use a cooldown, or you have to heal through it. There's no dispel for the poison. So I don't, I'm not sure what comp you could build that one wouldn't get cross CC'd, so it could actually dispel the sepsis against Rogue Mage. But Asa doesn't really always perfectly cross CC. Sometimes you're left open, and then have two specs that have poison dispel that don't immediately get ran over by Rogue Mage, like Boomy Windwalker, for example. The Boomy could dispel Sepsis off the Windwalker, and then the Windwalker wouldn't take damage if the Boomy isn't crossed. And the Windwalker can dispel the Boomkin, and I don't think the Boomkin I'm... will die either. What happens if you sheep the Windwalker and you? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It, it, there's no comp where <laughs> it doesn't just get crossed. Like uh. you could run Dwarf. Like I think maybe a Dwarf Warlock would be better. But even then, then you're just kidneyed longer, and you don't get out of the kidney to do the Stone Form to get rid of the Sepsis. So it's like the counter to it. It's covered by the comp. Like Rogue Mage will just cover the counter to that specific covenant ability. <laughs> I, Mage Lock. That's it. <laughs> that's the only thing we've seen to be able to take a series uh, on Shingana. So LFOR, they're going to try their hand now, switching it up, going to the Mage Lock. Frost, large Not map. Frost. They didn't like the fire, I guess. I like the fire. I feel like there's no reason. Like, I don't think. F Frost Mage would have prevented what happened in game number one, in all honesty. Um, but uh, they're going to be mixing it up. Tessia is playing. Okay, he's playing a Dwarf Mage. All right. Waz is going to get. Um, he's going to get Nobit out of the opener, but it doesn't really matter too much. Still gets a Groat. Here's the Kitty Shot. Let's see. Raikou just going to be combusting. Can they shred through the Unending Resolve or the Dark Pack? They do manage to do that. Swapsy trades out his one minute cooldown for the combustion. That's more than a fair trade, and Lone Shark doesn't have to trade more than that. So, for LF Org, I feel like this opener was definitely a win. Yeah, and uh, we're going to see here once again Tessia with that uh, Deathborn doing a lot of work right now, trying to get aggressive onto Raikou. And that's kind of what we want to see. We want to see them go after the mage mainly. Swapsy pulling in the Infernals here, forcing out the cloak from Waz with his trinket there as well. So, Actually, a decent uh, force here. Raikou not getting blasted, but he will blink out of that stun right there. And now, casting a defensive ring of frost. Uh, waiting behind the pillar, trying to recover HP. As you're pushing in, getting a lot of frost bolts here. Finally getting counterspelled by Raikou. And now, with that counterspell, they want to push in and get aggressive here. Swapsy going to be the target of choice once again. As though getting stunned up. Holy Fire gets casted out. Big damage onto Wazim. Uses the Vanish. Uh, with his uh, Crimson Vial. Now cheap shot onto Lontar, Geralt onto Swapsy. They should be an easy sheep for Raikou, or at least a fear. They do get the fear onto Lontar, and now they do get the follow-up sheep. Mind games connect here onto Swapsy. This could be very devastating. Nice master spell, pre master spell on the ice wall. That was a great defensive ice wall, but Waz does get feared. Swapsy with excellent defense here between him and his mage, Tessia, of course, uh, with that defensive ice wall. But now Waz finally going to connect. Sepsis is on the target as well, but Ray of Hope and Guardian will deflect that. Waz now getting pushed back to the pillar. Minute left on his Cloak of Shadows. Trades out the Eternal Ages. 
and once again forced to reset here so mage lock uh looking decent so far swapsy able to hold on to basically every single one of his cooldowns it burned through about half of mass mana it's not uh, looking too bad so far if you're lf org this is probably the best any mage lock has looked uh, today against the kungana yeah, we see Tessia just trying to hold Meh back here at the pillar. They're stunning up Waz with a spell lock on Meh. Big damage incoming. Can they drop him? Pops the faint. Big heal comes through. Meh will stabilize him. Waz, now, Waz is now getting aggressive. Vendetta coming off his cooldown shortly. Has a blind available to get Dark Pack with the Polymorph. Meh in position with the Psychic Scream ready. Onto Lone Tar. Swaps he ports away. Trying to kite. Lone Tar feared into the distance. Waz chasing him down with the sprint. Looking to reconnect. Kicks the fear. He has Vendetta. He's pulling the trigger on the interrupt. They might just drop him here in game three. He gets gripped back, but that Sepsis is still ticking away into the Ray of Hope. Will it make it a negative Ray of Hope? We'll wait and see here. Swapsy bounces back. Full Lone Tar with good recovery. No panic on the side of Elevore dealing with that Vendetta Sepsis expertly. Waz now pinned in the in the middle of the map here with that Chastise. Nessia free casting on him. He's going to soul shape towards Swapsy. An aggressive soul shape. Mez trying to push in as well. But he's going to get pinned by the Blizzard and proc rooted at the moment. Another kidney shot out by Waz. Trying to keep Swapsy at bay. Counterspell on Tessia. Swapsy going to portal back into the middle of the map. And avoid Swapsy at all costs while Tessia takes control of Raikou. They stun Waz. Mez is trying to drink, but he can't afford to. Big damage, Waz! At 20%, they hold on to Cloak of Shadows, but they trade Vanish in this exchange. They do it at least not overlap. Waz is sneaking up on Swapsy and Stealth. Has Blind. He's going to set up Cheap Shot for Polly. Can they get the Polymorph here? They go for Blind instead. They don't have Vanish to Sap, so they're going to need to Sheep out of this. Will they get the Polymorph on Lone Star out of the Blind? Keep the chain going here. Doesn't look like it. The chain's been dropped. Waz has to get out of there. Defensive Shadow Step, but Raikou is isolated by himself. Can they pull him to safety? Yes, Met has the grip, but now Met is getting blasted. Has to pop the Greater Fade. This is Icy Veins. They Ice Block. Big damage in from Thessia. Big damage in from Swapsy. Their best game yet here against Kangana. If there was a game to win, this would have to be it. Yeah, I love this aggressive play here by Tessie. He's just on top of them. He procs Raikou. Raikou could get potted, and he does a double kill. Double Absolutely kill. Absolutely <laughs> crushed in this game. LF Org, complete domination. This is exactly what you want to see. If you are Tessia, uh, I love it. I've been impressed by his Frost Mage today. Playing really, really aggressive. Don't let the RMP reset. Keep them on the back foot. Keep them at the pillar. Keep the pressure on. Don't let them get out of the snares. And uh, have your priest play 100 million miles away. And... That's kind of the positioning that you want. <laughs> LF Org, they, they take a really clean game here. Yeah, beautiful stuff here from LF Org, getting that double kill at the end. And um, that's, a, that's, that's a nice win for them. Um, Mage Lock, I think the kill that uh, Pieces got onto Waz, it was a lot less convincing uh, compared to this game. So this is the best game we've seen so far, uh, I think against uh, Kunganas RMP, uh, this, well, today at least. And, um, I'm going to see it in the replay here. Waz, a lot of pressure onto him. Meh is going to heal him back up, but he will be forced to use that vanish right there. And then Waz just can't really get it to you know, go aggressive and, and get those setups for his team. And Raikou here getting shut down. They get the blind onto Lontar. Big damage here onto Swapsy, but he calls in the Infernals. And uh, they stun. They call in a second Infernal. And uh, he teleports his way away as well. And then Raikou here is just kind of stuck in a 2v1. He gets gripped. But a, whole, but a Chaos Bolt connects through it. Raikou actually uh, ice blocking there. Doesn't want to get hit with that Dark Soul Bolt. But then look at Tessia here. He's getting super aggressive. He gets Counterspell. He gets kicked on his Fleshcraft. Infernal's coming in. Swaps is shooting him through the wall. They Counterspell Meh there. And then here comes the damage onto Raikou. And onto Meh at the same time. And they get that double kill uh, at, at the back end of that. So really, really nice push. And uh, a lot of it just comes down to that Counterspell that they got. Very, very nicely done. And... They kicked the Fleshcraft there as well, which is what actually allowed uh, Tessia to uh, get that uh, Shatter combo off onto Raikou. And also, I think Raikou's Ice Block was... Uh, he Ice Blocked because the Chaos Bolt connected, but by the time it would have connected, he would have been full HP again. So it was a bit of an overlap there between him and Meh. And um, yeah, I don't think it would have mattered because Meh would have probably just died anyway. But yeah, small, small defensive overlap there as well. Big map, small pillar. Looks pretty good for Mage Lock. So they got another map of that. They've got Maldraxxus. But then for the rest of the series, I <laughs> uh, don't know if this is going to work for them. I feel like you probably blind lock fire for the rest of the series after that point. Um, but here we're probably going to a small map. So do they try TSG again and switch healers? Bring in a Holy Priest? I really want to see a Frosty K. A Frosty K, Holy Priest, Kyrian Warrior, all in. 
maybe arms as well unhinged all in just something that maybe they're not ready for um because that blade storm legendary is actually very scary burst damage um you can just if you get like a proc double tap you can maybe one shot the rogue the only problem with doing an all in is if was just trinkets evasions mad trinket fades trinket alter time i'm pretty sure that just shuts down everything um so like it's like you, you can't can all in them though. huh you can dispel alter time you might get it <laughs> no you can't you might get it <laughs> maybe you get it even if you do they caught blocks like it, you get so much in the opener but it then it becomes can you do it again later on as long as they respond I just like, to it i like sharpen into ray of hope i think it's really good it's like a yeah. pretty effective counter into ray of hope which is nice you don't have that like healing but uh, honestly after that game i don't think they're ever going to switch off mage lock i think lf for the rest of the game is playing this but was surprise this is what we talked about at the beginning of the series was he can play a different spec and uh, it looked really really good now uh, the last time we did see it was ended up so this is basically what we saw from was on the outlaw rogue has used a lot of his stuns just his crowd control so putting a kidney shot on lone tar and then just running after the mage so normally you go after the warlock uh, as the rmp but with the outlaw rogue you have the mobility um, to actually just chase down the mage the entire game. You don't really have to worry about stuns. A lot of mages right now are playing blink stun, which is super effective into an assassination rogue because as the assassination rogue, a lot of the time you want to be kidney shotting to lock someone down and that's when you're going to shiv, etc. But for Waz on the outlaw, he doesn't need a stun uh, to actually do damage. So he's just throwing a stun onto uh, you know an off target and then just kind of training down uh, Tessiana on the small map. Uh, I think it could work out really, really well for Kungana. Yeah, definitely. I think Outlaw is just um, just that chanky bruiser, and I think we're going to see a target swap as well. They're going to go after Tessia, and I think that's why they're picking these small maps, because typically we're like, well, you're Outlaw. You want to play a longer game anyway, but I think the reason why they actually lock it in on all the small maps is because the mage won't have that much uh, distance to work with. So uh, most likely going to be going after Tessia and uh, probably just play like an extended control game, get kidney shots onto Lontar, into Sap, and then get uh, long extended setups and they can gouge off his uh, echoing resolve as well if he's playing with that trinket so just a lot of ways for uh, kungana to kind of deal with the trinkets and uh, also just have a tanky like bruiser rogue that uh, just gets to stay in and to basically be as annoying as possible and uh, was of course uh, is a big outlaw uh, player he, well he used to be when outlaw was you know the go-to spec so uh, it's nice to see him pick it back up and uh, for Kungana, this is kind of what we're seeing. Um, it's kind of what we saw from My Way, which is also kind of like a one-trick team at the moment, um, where, you know, Kasu is uh, swapping between MM and BM, and Survival Wise is swapping between Asa and Sub and Outlaw. I think it's a good mm. idea. Um, I like just, it. He's just really not a target, because the, the Mage and Warlock damage just has a stopping point. You're going to do 80k burst, which would normally kill a target. But Waz has 100k HP. So he's just going to stop at 20 and then heal to full. And then you've ran out of damage. You can't finish the last 20k, which is why Waz is allowed to play so much more aggressively. Outlaw's got to have, I think it's got to have higher stamina than a Warlock even in combat um, with stacking up its honor talent to its maximum duration. So that's the main reason it gets to just stay on the mage. The other advantage too is that Tessia with Blink Stun doesn't want to blink unless he's stunned, which means that Outlaw can still kind of move around and do things because as soon as Tessia does blink, Waz will stun and punish it. So maybe the mobility part of it that might hinder it a little bit uh, isn't as bad. And if Tessia tries to line a side him, you can still use your mobility. It's not reliant on a target like Shadow Step. Um, but its burst damage is definitely noticeably lower. I don't think anything's going to compete with Vendetta Sepsis right now. Um, but you trade just sustain damage. So if you can stay in the whole game, never have to run away, your healer doesn't have to worry about you as a main target, lets them focus their defensive resources elsewhere, you can just win on attrition. Outlaw Rogue looks really fun. I'm going to make one, I think. You've decided I'm making one right assassin. now. I'm going to make an Outlaw, are, are dude. You? I'm not, you're mm -hmm. going to make an Assassination or set I have an Assassination sepsis, Rogue. Like... That's what I played all last season. This is what I always <laughs> do, though. This is like... My favorite thing to do is play a spec, and then when it gets good, change for some reason. <laughs> like, played Assassination Rogue Glass Patch, and now that it's like really strong, the thing is I don't have tier either. Like I haven't been, I don't have tier, so I, I don't know. Outlaw looks fun, honestly. I've never played it before, but it seems fun. Yeah. It's like harpooning around the map. You like it? What do you think? Should I should I pick one up? 
Hundred percent. If you just want to be like a like a like a little mosquito flying around on the map, just annoying <laughs> everyone, then you pick outlaw. You're like a road hog wanna... with tracer weapons. <laughs> just... yeah, I love it. Pretty much. Pretty it's much. A yeah. Giant bruiser running around going pew pew pew. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> like I don't even. Uh, but it worked for them the last time this matchup happened, so I'm, I'm not really surprised, I guess. Although, is it really necessary? Like, I feel like they could still... I feel like they need to outlaw on the big maps, and, like, Asa would be fine here on the small map. So, I wonder if they'll blind lock it, though. Like, you don't think TSG would crush outlaw? Like, outlaw's pressure is zero. You just run down the mage. I don't think Kangana can blind lock outlaw. Um, well, I actually don't know because we haven't really seen it that much, right? Like, uh, maybe the maybe the potential is there. I mean, we haven't actually seen was forced to play outlaw into different matchups. Uh, maybe he would have blind picked it if he did think it was good. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, was he's going to be moving forward? Expect him to be really annoying on this map. Um, high uptime on Tessia. Tessia realizing he's the target, going to be switching over to uh, Human in this match as well. So same exact thing we saw from Morrow, but it's just really difficult to get away. Waz right now actually opening up onto Lone Tar, it does look like. Not really committing too much, just a cheap shot here, building up some damage. Now going after Tessia. Tessia gets interrupted. This could be the Deathborn. Is he just going to go for it? He drops an Ice Wall. Big damage here on Waz, but doesn't look like they have the damage to actually swap to him and take him down. That was a nice little attempt, but... They didn't really have any damage loaded up, so unfortunately, I uh, won't really be able to capitalize on that. Yeah, and uh, Tessia still getting chased down, though. Has the ultra time active, taking some hits with Swapsy free casting, doing a lot of work here, trying to set up uh, maybe something onto Meh, playing that casting circle talent there. And uh, Raikou's going to be counterspelled, sitting behind the pillar. Waz just uh, making sure that he's still staying in combat, hitting those pets. And wants to keep stacking up that brawler uh, buff. And uh, now kidney shot onto Lontar. Here comes the damage onto Tessia. Can they find it? Meh gets rooted down there, so he's not going to be able to find it. Actually, looked like Lontar Trinka right there with his human racial. It really looked like he did on the last second of the kidney. Um, so, uh, that might have been a mistake by Lontar, but Tessia will survive. That's the Guardian there as well. And uh, they're going to have a full blind for Lontar. Basically, anytime they want to, they can have full blinds onto Lontar. And Lontar is not really going to have a, a good way to escape out of these CC chains, but right now it's Waz that needs to escape. Actually, Raikou, uh, they polymorph Waz up, and they're going to target Raikou. Now they're looking to blast Waz here on the side of the wizard. Big hit coming in there, and they're actually mind-controlling Waz back towards the open field, but it does get purged, and he will be able to recommune with his team for a second. Now looking to pull back out, Kidney Shot onto Lontar, looking to get aggressive onto Tessia, but Look at Tessia, they're really nicely played. As soon as he kidney shots Lontar, he just uses his blink. Uh, because he realizes, well, he's not going to be able to kidney shot me before I can blink again. So he just all the times blinks. And uh, that's a good way for Tessia to kind of counter that play. Just to actually use the blink. Get away, Ice Wall coming up. And it's going to be a decent sized one right there. And they will force out the Ray of Hope. But Waz will get topped with that full blind now secured onto Lontar. Waz gets feared. Does he have a sap? I think he does actually have a sap, but he gets feared. Not gonna be able to find it. Lontar will be escaping out of that crack control, but still, mind games getting casted from Meh. Gets feared into a sheep. Big damage potential here. Swapsy just uh, definitely controlling the situation very well. Tessie going for a resheep, gets Guardian, and now they're swapping over to Meh. Big hits onto Meh, and they take him down. Mortal Coil connect, and it looks like Meh will survive using that Greater Fade, and Tessia will just negate the other side of the map. Waz just gonna be chasing him down. And it looks like, uh, for now, everybody's going to be fine. They actually get CC on the Lomtar. Tessia might actually be in danger. He gets gripped back once again. Will survive. Nicely done. But Mana, not looking super well here for LF Org. I really like them going after Meh. You're not going to have to worry about that Sepsis Vendetta just KOing you. Like, getting aggressive, running on top of the healer, making swaps to the healer. I think that's going to be the main win condition here. Attack whoever you can in between that downtime. Uh, but always looking for these swaps. So I like that they're kiting across the map. They're trying to force them in bad positions. Waz punishes it, though, and saps Lontar's drink, setting up for the kill here. Master Spell on the ice block. Can they just take it here and move to match point? Swaps who fears Waz away. They frost Nova Waz, trying to keep him under control, but he gets dispelled. He's looking to reconnect here onto Tessia, but Lontar is no longer crowd control. Should be able to heal up. Stun onto Waz, but running outlaw. Look at Chaos Bolt. He's only down to 50%. If he was Asa, he's probably 20% right there. So. Not going to be going down. Ray of Hope denies the kill. Waz is trying to get aggressive again. Has another blind. Lontar is playing Relentless, so he's not going to be able to escape it here. Tessia on Hypothermia. If Waz wants to make a big play here, has that Echoing Reprimand. 
trying to build up for damage, waiting to maybe be on DR as he already got feared here. They use Chastise on Swapsy, Kidney Shot on Lone Tar, setting up for Polymorph from Raikou. Is Raikou going to find it? He blinks forward, not finding it. Gets feared by uh, Swapsy and Infernal Stun. Crowd Control shut down. They're swapping back to Raikou. He blinks back behind the boxes. Met doesn't want to overextend into Tessia and Swapsy, though. He's still playing in the back line. Gets caught in a Polymorph. Could be an opportunity to go after Raikou. They're trying to blink towards him. He's just line of sighting at the moment. Waz looking for a resell for maybe a blind. Lone Tar's going to reposition, staying on the same pillar as Waz and Raikou. Likely a mistake for him. Met is out in the open here. Lone Tar's going to try and drink, chasing down Tessia while he drinks. The Waz Harpoon's in for another sap on the drink. The last one was a block. I think this one's going to be a block as well. Two blocks out of the way. Mass Dispel again. Full blind, no tricky. That's, That's it, it here. We're going to match point. Unbelievable. I mean, Waz really making plays on this row. He gets two saps. You can see him a little bit of a flex there. Uh, he had a terrific <laughs> performance, getting two saps on those drinks. Each one of those saps is going to be an ice block, the second being the game. So I really like this Outlaw Rogue into the Frost Mage, uh, Destro Warlock, Holy Priest. Uh, and now my question is, my big question is, are they going to be able to blind pick this? And if they do blind pick it, what kind of answer are we going to expect uh, from LF Org? Probably Warrior Mage, if I had to guess. Um... I think you're gonna should, I, I, yeah, mom, well, uh, yeah, maybe TSG as well could work. I feel like there is answers. Uh, I feel like you're gonna should just blind lock the assassination. They already won a game with it, uh, but we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. Let's uh, watch this uh, play from Waz here. He gets a kidney shot on Talontar, and they chase. Uh, they're going after Riker right now on the side of LF Org. Waz getting aggressive here onto Tessia. Tessia uses the altar time, big damage onto Raikou. He blinks away behind the pillar. Waz kicks Tessia. They're ducking for cover here. This is a scary time. Uh, with Deathborn and uh, PI and Banes and God knows what else here on Tessia. Uh, so just lining him, trying to shut him down for a second. Lontar uh, looking to cross the map and uh, maybe sit down for a drink. And I think this is where uh, Waz starts to push in. He, he vanishes, hooks over, saps the drink, makes his way back. How does he have a second hook there? And then he gets uh, the ice block. Then he instantly blinds to get the master spell by Meh. And Waz uh, Raikou is there to finish him off with the combustion. So... Really great work from all three members of Kungana there. Was leading the charge and um, doing a great job with it. Um, what what was that hook? Like he hooked cool, to Lunter, but how does he does he have two does he have two charges or what? Like how did he just prep hook like that? <laughs> how did he just double hook there? Uh, because that's ultimately what actually got them the win as well. Because so he has blade it's one rush. thing to get the sap. He has Blade uh, Rush, thing. which is a 20-yard charge. He can use Blade Rush and he can use Harpoon, Grappling Hook. So maybe he I Blade Rush. I swear I saw two Harpoons. I, saw, I thought I saw two Harpoons, too. Maybe there's some interaction with Priest, but he's not Night Fae. <laughs> so... Is it, I think is it, it I Roll the Bones? I don't know enough uh, about it. Look at yeah, the I need to, to play. try and see if there's a conduit that reduces the cooldown of it or something. <laughs> is it Roll the Bones that reduces the cooldown on it, maybe? Uh, I'm not sure. But uh, I yeah, cool either way, from Roll the Bones. getting that uptime was definitely huge. We're all just like looking. Yeah, I'm just all hovering right. his <laughs> talents. <laughs> Nothing on his talents makes sense for what he just pulled off. He must have had a cooldown reduction buff, I feel like. Yeah, that's There's the only no thing. Way. He must have been Roll the Bones, no? So he's blind locking oh. Asa. There's obviously, this is going to be more consistent sense. than Outlaw. Um, and LF Org are going to probably mage lock here on Robodrum would be my guess. They could just lose here. Um, but if they do win, what are they going to do? Like they have to do two swing matches in a row, basically where they can't pick the map and they, they can't counter comp. So well, count counter comp <laughs> RMP. They can't, uh, they can't get this matchup where they know it's, it's an ass rogue, I guess. Um, I mean, this is still like, this is a matchup we've seen Kugana come out ahead more yeah. times than not. Right. So it's like. This, I wouldn't even say that this is like a great matchup for LF Org. This is like the best they're going to get. But um, yeah, uh, LF Org, what we need to see from them in this matchup, if they want to stay alive here, is they need to continue that level of aggression. Like I really like when the Frost Mage play is super aggressive, keeping Raikou uh, defensive at the pillar, not allowing him to really run away, uh, keep him as kind of the main target in the match. I think Waz, the way he's playing, being a Night Elf, number one, getting the Night Elf, like the Shadow Meld Restealth or the Vanish, uh, is two basically instant ways to survive. His Aegis, his Vanish, 
He, he feels really tanky in this match unless he commits that offense um, or he commits that defense offensively. Uh, whereas Raikou, if he's just pinned and he gets like, if he's in the open trying to go for crowd control, he gets interrupted on Arcane, then he's basically just a target dummy that you can throw damage at and throw spells at, force him to run away. So I want to see aggression from Thessia. I want to see Lone Tar positioned as far away as possible and Swapsy just weathering the storm the best he can uh, with Lone Tar. So Swapsy and Lone Tar need really good defensive um, uh, awareness, positioning. Thessia needs to play really aggressive and keep Kugan on the back foot. If they can do that, I think they can claim a win here on Robodrome. Um, but in Ghana, I mean, if they, if they just get a couple clean setups. It seems like they can take down Swapsy. I actually asked Waz <laughs> straight up. I just asked him how he did it. Uh, it wasn't uh, a second hook. It was his Blade Rush. And he's playing with Acrobatic Strike, so he has even longer range on the Blade Rush. And... Uh, oh, so he, he grappling see, hooks this here This is the replay, sad. okay. Yeah, so this is the re It actually wasn't a, a secondary hook. He hooks but here. It looks like it, though. Like, that's the first hook? And then sad? he Blade Rushes. Yeah, okay. Just, that's Blade Rush. That's yeah, crazy. Uh, that is a long range, though, on the Blade Rush. It's because it's a, it counts as a melee attack, so it benefits from acrobatic strikes. So he gets extra, uh, how, what is it, three yards? Yeah, three yards. I love In acrobatic addition, strikes. Three, yeah, no, it's it's great. It's, uh, it's, I'm an it's outlaw, a nice right? play as well. I'm an outlaw. You can basically right? zigzag the map like that in one second. That's insane. I'm retiring the Windwalker Bunk. We're, we're going outlaw. <laughs> it's happening. Oh, uh, it looks really fun. It looks really, really fun, but why is he going to abandon the outlaw dream and go back to assassination in the blind pick? <laughs> I feel like you're so. gonna pick Outlaw Rogue up for a couple of days and then forget you have it. That's not true. <laughs> you're gonna do that like you did with your Demon Hunter to me. I'm like, oh man, Ben's gonna play Demon Hunter. We can play Demon Hunter Boomy. Stop slaying Demon Hunter. I don't like have tier on my Demon Hunter, so he's retired. Okay, that was last being, patch, okay? though. I'm just following the the trends. Okay, I'm following the trends. That's my prediction. Uh, I had fun on the Demon Hunter. I just said at the end of the patch, I like to try a bunch of builds, but this is the start of the patch and I want to try Outlaw. So that's going to be my new main uh, after this. Um, but we'll see. Kungan, <laughs> they're one away from claiming another victory here. At least three out of the four cups that they end up pulling out a win. Uh, very impressive indeed. Um, but they still need one more win. LF4 going to be battling it back in defiance. They won this matchup. The last time they played, they actually won this particular matchup. Uh, off some beautiful aggressive plays by Tessie and Swapsy. Um, let's see if they can get it done again. All right, let's see if they can get it done. This is the best case scenario, which isn't that great of a case. Waz well, is going to be making his way over onto Swapsy, spending blood in the water. There's the Sepsis Vendetta coming in immediately, cutting through the Dark Pact, full blind onto Lontar, and he turned out Ray negative. It doesn't look like it. Waz well, still sticking around Lontar here. Looks like he wants to go for a sap. He will go for the sap, and eventually actually going after Tessia right now. Swapsy is just super far away here. Greatly, greatly positioned. Uh, Wapsy going to be looking to get a little bit aggressive now that finally his healer is out of crowd control. They stun up Waz With the wall. and a nice ice wall to block him out there. Uh, but he did get. Oh, that is a negative ray. He gets mind controlled. Nicely done there by LF Org. They do at least get themselves the shadows and the guardian spear right there. Beautiful ice wall from Tasia starting things off here. There's a reason why we gave him the ice wall award and it shows uh, in, in this game number five. They proc the Guardian there, so three minute cooldown, double fear set up here, but Swapsy's just gonna escape with the portal. I like the Robo Drum for the Mage Lock, having that upper axis to gate and port up to for an escape. Seems pretty good for them so far. And then they can wall off those massive corners. Raikou is overextended right now, trying to jump off the ramp, but meh, still far away. Waz is pushing forward slowly but surely, trying to make his way to the Warlock, but he does have the high ground uh, at the moment, and Waz is trying to cross that high ground. He might just get melted. He has to get pulled away from the ramp by Meh. He's trying to reposition, but double Dragon's Breath Punish. Looking for a Ring of Frost. Doesn't find it. Greater Fate on the poly. Meh is chasing down Lontar. Looking for crowd control. Lontar is trying to escape Meh, but Vendetta is rolling massive damage onto Swapsy. Portals back upstairs. Waz chasing him down. Fleshcraft from Swapsy in desperation. Trying to soak up as much of this sepsis damage as possible. Will they be able to heal through it? Guardian Spirit activates, and it looks like they will recover here. Lontar is just fishing for mind controls on Waz. Trying to shut him down for the remainder of the Vendetta. In the meantime, we see Lontar and Cheap Shot. When they set up a Polymorph, doesn't look like it. Just another Kidney Shot on Swapsy. Holding him at bay. Swapsy getting gripped on that Kidney Shot. Might have been a waste, but at the same time, now Waz is stunned. Pre-faints the Chastise, reducing damage. Soul Shapes to the Pillar. Raikou blinking back with Waz. Mea got left behind. Mea is really far away from his team. He's going to jump down to the bottom side of the ramp. If they could turn around and, and stun him and punish him for where he is right now, 
be great, but they can't. Oz Shadow steps in. Another kidney shot. Holding Swapsy at bay. Moving towards Lone Tart. Oh, he tried to death the blind there. Almost deaths the blind, but Waz predicted it and held on to it. Now vanishing, looking for the blind play from Stealth, likely. No, Cheap Shot, but a swap onto Mech, catching him out in the open. He's in a greater fade and immune to damage. Waz gets coiled away into a fear, but Lone Tar is into a fear as well. Vendetta coming off cooldown in like six seconds here. Mez taking interrupts for the mind games here. Nether Ward fakes out the Nether Ward, but a double Shadow Fury intercepts them. Fear onto Mech. Waz has a lot of damage here. Wants to land that blind, wants to go aggressive, but he might just die if he goes for it. He's down at half, has to cloak. It's rooted on his life grip. Matt and Waz are trying to reposition away. Line of sight of the pillar. And Shadow step back defensively and avoid Tessia's damage. But Waz gets done. Gauss Bolt, is he going to be able to connect it? Nope. Waz line of sights. Managed to stay alive a little bit longer. That threat is still lurking, though. Combustion, Vendetta. Where are they going to go with it? And when? Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, we'll definitely have to wait and see. Tessia right now is going to get crowd controlled. Nice grip there. That's exactly what you want. Uh, if you're Lone Tar, be as far away as possible. If Waz commits the Shadow Step Kidney Shot, you grip Swapsy. Beautiful Ice Wall here, but a massive spell does come in. Oh! Oh, Waz gets spotted. He gets deleted, and he will get crushed. Nice setup there. I mean, the Ice Wall, they dealt with that as fast as he could, but Swapsy, he took it full advantage of that small little window, threw in the double Chaos Bolt with his Dark Soul, and immediately pods Waz. I mean, if you're a Mage Lock, these are the plays you love to see. Even if you're not a Mage Lock, if you hate RMP, these are the, the plays that you absolutely <laughs> love to see. <laughs> that I don't was know which right? Like, before Mage Locks arise to power, everyone, you know, I, I feel like everyone was, you know, everyone could RMP. agree RMP was public enemy number one, but I, I don't know if people share that same sentiment anymore. And what we see happen to Waz is, I think, something a lot of players are going to be able to relate to uh, when we watch this replay. Uh, that was absolutely filthy damage. So here he gets a Frostbite root, forces out his cloak as he's about to get... Because there was a Deathborn proc on Tessia right there. As you can see, it's still 10 seconds on that Deathborn. Um, so that, uh, that Frostbite right there, doing a lot of work. Then Meh is like, okay, I'm going to trade out, uh, you know, the Ray of Hope. I'm going to make sure Waz recovers here. And then... He's casting out a mind control here onto Tessia. Tessia activates his um, uh, his Deathborn, goes for the Fleshcraft, has his veins active. Waz uh, goes for one kidney shot here. Tessia gets actually he gets his Frostbolt off, just one single Frostbolt right there. Pops he gets gripped. Waz making it uh, his way back to the team. Pops tricks here uh, because Raikou still has combustion, so they're just uh, getting a little bit aggressive on the path here while he's retreating. And then here comes the Perfect. Ice Wall. Perfectly played. Look actually, at, look at the Chaos Bolt. Look at look, look at Meh. One Chaos Bolt this guy's with deleted. the Dark Soul. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Nuclear launch detected. <laughs> you know, they had the high ground and apparently the Death Star, too. They just, they've got all of <laughs> the <advantage. laughs> He's like, all right. Well, so, yeah. nothing I could do. <laughs> well, yeah, no, well, uh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> I mean, now, that was... if they lock Mage Lock, they're getting outlawed, though. So. They're getting outlawed. You think that's just going to come down to outlaw? I swear I don't want to see them blind lock mage I lock. I think what they should do, like in my opinion, what I want to see Tessia Swaps and Lontar do is play mage lock, but fire. Because I don't think outlaw is going to have the same success against a fire mage. I don't think you can lock them down quite as much. And I, I think the burst, you might actually be able to overwhelm the rogue or at least get more control of him in the match, especially if he's going to be throwing off all his stuns onto off target. I feel like having Dragon's Wrath as a defense is going to be really strong and then it's still be decent in the assassination rogue if they play that so i think that would be my line of thinking if i was ella forg um because i do fear if they play frost Tessia is going to have a miserable time in the match and they're going to be able to have high uptime on him same kind of control we saw um every single time we saw was play outlaw so I, I think they need to throw a little bit of a curveball here yeah the question is where are we going to go i feel like you don't want to go too small but at the same time you kind of want to go small because you want to go after the mage and Black Rook Hold, this is a map that we've all agreed on. It's pretty decent um, against Mage Lock. But there's, I feel like there's one thing that could change the matchup here. And we just saw it happen. So I, I think Ice Wall... <laughs> can, does it block you? Could you block both doors with with one Ice Wall? If you no. put it on the outside, it's not that wide, right? Yeah. No, it's not yeah, that you, wide, you, yeah. you could you, you can still, still block one of the entrances, though, with it. You can, yes. Yeah, so... That could happen, you know, if uh, maybe Meh and Riker are in the room while he's making his way to the room, they could just lock the door, throw away the key. 
and uh, take him down. So uh, there's potential. But with that said, though, I was going to be playing Outlaw. So probably not going to be a, a great target to go after. I think it's more going to be uh, going after Raikou here. But LF Org showing some resilience here in their in their composition. Uh, so far, we've seen a lot of different things from them. We've seen Mage Warrior, Double uh, Caster. We've seen the Fire Mage a Warlock. Uh, we've seen TSG, which admittedly uh, we thought it was a lot better than, than that. But yeah, we've seen, we've seen different things here. I still kind of feel like they're battling at the end of the plank right now against Outlaw Rogue. Like, <laughs> they're just one step away from the edge at the moment here. Um, so I, I don't know if they're going to be able to pull it off the same way. Like if they isolate Waz like that as Outlaw, I feel like he doesn't even die. I feel like he's just like, he's just chilling, just sitting there like, yep. It was a chaos bolt, just shrugging it off. Like, Shrugged it off. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't have to really care uh, as outlaw, which is the main reason they're switching it for this matchup. Um, so can they get an ice wall to like isolate Meh? I, again, I still really think they should try Meh more in this matchup because uh, I think the icons are mixed up here. But Swapsy uh, playing Destro uh, is going to be way harder to kill. Like, he's never going to be a target, so he can like fear Meh into a bad position, set up the stun coil, um, do an all in on Meh something like this is, is what I'd like to see from Ella Forg. I, uh, I'm excited to see how they navigate this, how they play a different Waz. Uh, I feel like such a key part of their victory um, with the spec is, first of all, Outlaw is really, really tanky, but also um, the game we saw in Dalaran Sewers, he was getting a lot of crowd control, like the Vanish Saps on the drinks um, from Lone Star were really, really key, and he can maneuver around the map in ways you don't normally expect. I mean, that, uh, what is it called? The, the chain Blade that you rush. can use. No, the harp. The, the, the hook? Harpoon. The hook? What's a hook called? Sorry, it's called the grappling hook. Oh, grappling hook. Okay, yeah. So the grappling hook is actually really... Because normally a rogue, the way you maneuver, you have two things. You have sprint and you have shadow step. So uh, some of the saps we were seeing, Lontar might not have expected because there's no one for him to really shadow step to. So he doesn't, he's not used to a rogue moving in that kind of way. So he can vanish use the grappling hook, cross the map pretty much instantaneously and get those saps. So I, I think for Lone Star, there's going to be a bit of a learning curve, like really panicking when you see Waz go for a vanish, especially if you're going for drinks, um, because he's going to be able to get there a lot faster than the other rogue specs. Yeah, he can even use vanish mid hook, like while he's in the air yep. flying through his target. So uh, it's a very, very short window there where you could put yourself in combat again. So um, that could be something uh, Lone Star definitely needs to pay attention to. Uh, because that was what got them the win. But I want to know what happens in a game where Lontar doesn't go for drinks. Nobody's really going for drinks. Like uh, they're just trying to play it out the uh, standard. I, like I want to know what happens when you get into into the unstable part of Dampen Land because that's usually where Mage Lock is uh, typically really good, uh, even against tanky melees. Uh, it's usually where they shine. Um, it's usually uh, about getting to that point where all three members are at the pillar covering for their lives that's when you safely can go for those drinks but um we've never really seen it because i feel like drink trying to drink before that might actually be a mistake um now that we've seen what uh, what happens so maybe lf org just needs to just play it out until they basically have zero mana left pop all their cooldowns offensively and um try to go for a reset uh, you know we've seen a lot of mage locks do that in the past but that could be a way for them to turn things around and for lf org if they can beat the outlaw version then I think they have, uh, they might have actually sealed the deal here in the final. So this is really the only thing that stands in their way uh, between them and their cup victory here. Swapsy went Night Fae. I, I don't remember if he was Night Fae against Outlaw last time. Maybe that's going to be more damage out from him because he's left to free cast. I'll have to wait and see if that adjustment pays off for him. Waz moves in, saps Swapsy, opens the cheap shot on Lone Tar and isn't able to connect anything just yet. Likely wants to kidney shot Swapsy. Oh, that wall locks Waz in the room. He's stunned up in the room. He's rooted on his grip. He cannot move. They're gonna pop the Ray of Hope. The ice wall goes down. The Ray of Hope, Waz should be all right. Now, if he was assassination, maybe he's just dead there, but as Outlaw Rogue, he is way more beefy. He can take some of those hits when he gets caught in a bad position like that. Um, but definitely this map maybe could backfire on Kingana in the future. Setting up Kidney Shot onto Lone Tar, trying to get after Tessia. Actually, looks like they are going after Swapsy. A bit interesting here. They didn't go after him as Outlaw in any of the previous games, but they're experimenting, I guess, onto Swapsy. Or maybe just trying to punish the Night Face selection from him. It's going to be a little less tanky than the Necrolord. He's able to portal and escape out of the room. Tessia has been left open with 
his uh, Deathborn up right now. But he's pressing Fleshcraft with the immunities the CCs from that Echoing Resolve. Boss Shadow steps over to Lone Tar, sets up with the Gouge. Now he's on to Tessia. He's kind of given up on Swapsy. I don't think that he's an optimal target here. Or the Outlaw Rogue. Really tough to cut through on that specialization. But Waz is stunned up once again. They're really focusing and hammering on the Outlaw Rogue here. Um, it can be a bit of a bait because he has so much health. But maybe in dampening, that strategy could work if they can live that long. They have to live a while, though. But... For now, they still have pretty much all the defensive cooldowns. They're not looking too bad. Maz actually behind on mana. Potential other win condition. But are we going to see a sap? No, Lothar actually goes for a fade. Tessia, though, getting absolutely crushed. And will be forced into that first ice block. If you're now in the Lone Tar, Master Spell being faked out there by Meth. Tessia's still in trouble. Ray will connect. And is that same kind of play Waz is going for. He was looking for a sap. Tessia does get topped off, but he's looking for the sap. Lone Tar actually read the situation this time a little bit differently. He went for the Fade to avoid it, but still was punished. He got feared. They got Tassia's Ice Block, and this is still not looking good here for LF4. They're slowly falling behind. Yeah, but let's see what they can do here. They're uh, going after Waz a lot more. Line of sighting Raikou is basically the plan. Ooh, Waz looking for the kidney shot there. He does connect with it. And now Blade rushing back to his target here, doing a lot of damage on Tessia. That's the alter time. And then he gates after he pops it. He might just uh, alter time back here and get aggressive. Looks like he wants to just cancel that and stay back there at the pillar. He spell steals the bush in there as well. So uh, Raikou won't be able to do too much work. Now here on Waz. Just bolts connecting here from uh, Swapsy. He gets sheeped. Raikou with some good control here once again with the Wii Sheep. You get the mind control as well, just slowing down Swapsy, allowing Waz to potentially close the gap. And there's the hook. Actually, there is the Blade Rush coming in from Waz. Tessia still has the hook here, saving it for Lontar. If he decides to go for a drink, Waz is just laser focused on that right now. And he's just tanking up a lot of damage tricks of the trade here as well for Raikou. They got a full blind onto Lontar. He vanishes early to go for the sap, gets it, and now potentially making his way back to the target here. Nice uh, Guardian coming out there by Lontar. They got a DR Sheep, Ice Wall being fake casted here. Waz actually uh, forcing out a decent amount of defensives there. Heldstone and Battlemaster coming out there from Tessia in trade for that blind. And wall. now here comes Tessia. There's the wall. There is the Mortal Coil. Here comes the damage to Frostbolt. Uh, crits there onto Waz, but he will respond with the unending with the Eternal Aegis. He will survive. But Raikou now getting blasted in the back line as well. And there's a lot more pressure here from LF Fork, and they have the mana lead. So this is the kind of situation we're talking about. What happens if you actually just survive and get to deep dampening? Uh, will Kungana actually have the lead uh, at that point? They might have to change their build here. It's looking decent for LF Org here. Can they take us all the way to a game seven here in game six? Waz rooted up, pushing for the kill on Tessia. Massive damage incoming down to half, trying to finish him. Can they close it out? Ray of Hope denies the kill, but Lontar is mind controlled on the Ray of Hope. They're blasting through it, trying to turn it into a negative ray, and they do. They get an ice block. Number two, they got Lontar's trinket. Kungana now in an excellent position to close out the series, forcing very important cooldowns. Tessia is desperate, going for the Deathborn, trying to pressure them away trying to scare them, but I don't really think they care. They already committed the cooldowns. Raikou is just trying to get fireballs to reset combustion for the game-winning push when he gets it. Waz is getting back on target, has Cloak of Shadows and Vanish. He's in a comfortable position. They get mirror images out of the way, chopping down those mirror images, and they're going for the kill. Full blind, no trinket. Tessia blinks into the room on match point, drops a blizzard on one entrance, tries to line a sight at the other, but that's a full sap, and there's no way. Kungana are going to close it out four to two. Beautiful performance once again. The Outlaw, I mean, it's looking like a solid counter. I'm not going to lie. None of the games that we've seen from uh, the Mage Lock have looked convincing whatsoever. Every time the Outlaw rogues in there, it seems like the pr pressure is just kind of unrelenting. They can't really force uh, Waz back uh, on the rogue. And I, I really like the fact that Kungana has this prepared. Um, yeah, I mean, they're looking devastating. They've won three out of four cups now uh, in Europe, uh, specifically with their rogue mage. Chaz has basically just sat back and just been enjoying, you know, making memes on Twitter, <laughs> all that stuff. Just having a great time. Uh, his team with this RMP is looking absolutely deadly. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, Chaz has just been uh, hanging out um, this entire season, basically. Uh, so nicely, nice, nice situation to be in for him. Um, but here, once again, Kungana going to be taking another cup here uh, with this roster. Beautiful setup there at the end. This is where they force out Lontar's Trinket. And this is where they put themselves in checkmate. Because at this point, Waz has a Vanish. He has a Cloak. And he has a Blind. So all he has to do is just Blind, Cloak, get the Vanish Sap, and uh, have the damage to back it up onto Tessia. 
and that's exactly what they do. Tessio with some beautiful kiting here. He pops the death point. He knows that situation is dire. Uh, all they have to do is blind. And Outlaw has that blinding power as well, which um, gives him a long range on that blind. So you're going to see it, right? It's so hard. Lontar already trying to fake uh, the death on the blind, but there it is. Full blind security. You can't even see Lontar on the screen because he's uh, really far back there. But the blind just has such a long range. And at this point, Wise knows all I have to do is just connect with the CC. And then there it is, grapple back and send the last kill. And Meh as well, always on point with his chastise. Always, always setting up kills with it. And uh, of course, even here in the final moments, no, uh, nothing different is going to be coming out from Meh. Going to be there to set that up. And they will take it here in Europe. And uh, now we're going to be finding out who is going to be our champion in North America. It's not over yet. All right. Well, we'll see. Uh, I mean, this is actually a really, once again, beautiful performance by Kangana. No one's really been able to beat them in the entire Cup Series. There's only one team that could beat them, and it was with the Mage Lock. So that's the only comp that beat them. And now they have a, a very solid answer. Like, I'm, I'm really convinced that the Frost Mage Destro Warlock is not going to be an answer into the Outlaw. Uh, potentially the Assassination Rogue, but even then, I mean... They had to get some pretty crazy one shots to actually pull off that win. Um, but yeah, congratulations to Kangana. And now uh, I guess we're going to be turning our attention to uh, North America and see what's going to be going on there. I'm really excited for this. I, like, I want to see the Kawhi Golden Guardian series. I think there's a chance that we don't see it though. But the Golden Guardians are already in the lower bracket. Like, Golden Guardians need to make a deep run. But at the same time, Golden Guardians don't have their Kryptonite team to worry about. Team Liquid's not there. They're not in the top eight. So like, <laughs> if you're a Golden Guardians fan, like this might be their week to show us that they can do it. They can take a win on one of these cups here because uh, they've been working so hard to get it. They've been getting amazing plays from their team, just not able to get past that brick wall of Team Liquid that isn't going to be here. So I, I'm very excited to see if the Golden Guardians can pull off a win here, get a W. Feels like it's been a while, you know, since we, we get the Golden Guardians on top. What is their best placing now? I think it's third place, right? Um, it's, I think it's the upper bracket. Win, I think. Golden Guardians are them. fifth in point standing, so... Yeah. No, I mean, like, in a cup. Uh, I think well, they're guaranteed uh, top third, four sorry. right now. Right? They're guaranteed top four, so they might get fourth, depending on what happens, because uh, they are on the lower bracket right now, I do believe, so... Yeah, but still, I mean, it's been a great performance by them. Uh, we've seen kind of the evolution of their team as well playing compositions we didn't really expect. I mean, we saw Jelly Beans on the Frost Mage. It was kind of like, okay, what are they trying here? But it actually ended up working out, being an important uh, composition for them to pick up against some of these Cleves teams that they really struggled with. Now, believe it or not, they actually lost. I think it was in cup number one, they actually lost to that Rhett Warrior. So having that Mage Lock prepared for the Cleves actually is what ended up winning them that series. So, yeah, I mean, all these teams, uh, yeah, have a potential here to bring in some surprise compositions for this uh, final cup. Um, but yeah, curious to see what they can do in Europe. It was kind of the story of RMP and Mage Lock. Uh, what are the main differences going to be in uh, North America? I think the one thing that we haven't seen in Europe at all that it seems to be really popular in North America is that Shadow Priest Rogue. And in fact, in yeah. Europe, there's no Shadow Priest. Like, nobody's playing Shadow Priest in Europe. But in North America, it seems to be really popular, especially with the Assassination Rogue. Well, no money, just think, uh, Villay qualified with Shadow Priest, but yeah. he hasn't he hasn't been brought out just yet. But his team could play it, right? Uh, he's got Acro on his roster, so they they could run it. Um, but yeah, no, that is a very big difference. I think Hunter Rogue as well. I guess it's only the Golden Guardians that run it. But uh, in terms of actual meta, the things the biggest difference that I'm seeing in EU and NA is number one, NA really likes Windwalker Mage. And NA really likes uh, Rogue Shadow Priest, and they're doing very well with those two comps. Whereas in EU, it seems to be more uh, Rogues instead of Windwalkers. Uh, and there's just not really that many Shadow Priest uh, Rogue teams at, at all. Just one team that even has it. Um, so yeah, there's some interesting differences for sure between, uh, between the regions. And uh, hopefully we get to see that clash because uh, it could be interesting. Um, NA... There is no jungle as well that qualified. So I'm pretty sure uh, my way qualifying is kind of unique to Europe as well. So there is a, there is, you know, it, it all comes down to what players main, you know? Like in my way, they main jungle. So they started making jungle and they signed up with that and then they did well with that and now they're my way, you know? 
Um, so uh, for NA, they, I don't think they had a team of that caliber that signed up with Jungle uh, in general. Well, I feel like it's going to evolve, right? Like Chun Li's team feels like it's evolving away from the Windwalker and more to the Mage Lock. So that yep. unique distinction yep. to North America might morph over time um, as they get practice because they had to get Cubsy reps. Up. Yeah, they had to get Cubsy reps on Warlock. Um, so yeah, maybe North America a little bit behind. I do think the Shadow Priest Rogue though, like if I could ask for a series right now, it would be Kawhi and Kungana. Uh, yeah. Because I hope we get to see that at some point. That'd be it, awesome. It seems like at least the North American RMPs struggle with the Shadow Priest Rogue that they are running. Um, and I, or in Europe, I'd really like to see Valet's team commit to Shadow Priest Rogue um, as an answer for their circuit series against Kungana. Yeah. And we actually, uh, we have an interview with uh, Kungana, the winners, champions of Cup 4 and Aya, so we can go check that out. Hi, everyone. I'm here with uh, Waz, or is it Meh? I guess we're here with Meh. I was reading the, the label, but hi, how's it going? Oh shit, Waz is talking to me. Wait, I have to. Okay, <laughs> now, now we're good. We're good. You can hear me, right? <laughs> I can't hear you. How's it going? All right. No, I, I'm doing amazing. You know, really pumped after you know, really, really close games, really hectic games, especially. Feeling really good. Yeah, I mean, I bet you guys obviously had an incredible season. How's your experience been overall on this roster? It's been very pleasant. Yeah, I, I think we're kind of all. We're kind of all the same. We, we want to practice a lot and it's not always the same with other teams, I'd say. And we just get along together very well as well because we've been friends for a long time. And it's been very nice. Obviously, winning the tournaments as well has been, you know, a bonus. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, you guys are like very solidly in that first place. So it's been cool to see uh, you doing so well with the with the team. So what um what's your plans now between now and circuit? Are you just going to go rest or you're Gonna go right, oh, right I'm, I'm definitely gonna rest. I'm definitely resting. Um, yeah, it's I. Be, before we started competing, I started competing. I didn't know that the format was gonna be like this. You know, week. You know, back to back to back weekends, right? So, I don't think I haven't at least gotten like any time off. You know, on the weekends, not not on the like weekdays either, to be honest. So, yeah, I'm just gonna take some time off now. Probably not play WoW well for a few days and just relax. And especially go out on the weekends. Miss that. Go, go see some sunshine. Yeah. Exactly. Cool. Uh, yeah. Um, right. So thank you for obviously taking the time out of your day to chat with us. Before I let you go, do you have, before I let you go rest, do you have anything you want to say to the broadcast or for your team? Any shout outs? Uh, shout outs to Kungarna, you know, our sponsors. Thanks. Uh, shout outs to my teammates and everyone who uh, supports us and, yeah, it's, it's been great so far. Really enjoyed the experience so far competing. Um, and yeah, make sure to follow my social. Uh, that's fine. I can so shout out my social media as well, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, just make sure to follow my Twitter, you know, at, well, yeah. Just follow my Twitch, mehex, twitch.tv, mehex, and my Twitter at Yuhani Halme. If anyone catches that, then you'll feel, feel free to do that. And yeah, shout out to my teammates. It was really great being in a team with them and I, I just love every minute of it, to be honest. Not much more to say. Yeah, maybe our uh, our mods can link your Twitter if they if they copy. Yeah, that. but thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's been great to see <laughs> you guys. Name, it's been, so. That's okay. Uh, it's been great to see you guys doing so well this season. So I am looking forward to your guys' performance in the circuit, and I'll see you later. All right, thank you. Talk to you later. Peace. Peace you. All right, that was Meh from Kungana, and looking forward to seeing those guys perform in the circuit. And that's where they are. I mean, look at that, 460 points. That is almost twice as much as the second place of Looking for Org. But <laughs> Three-way tie. Yeah, three three -way tie. Tie. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, right. Thank you for pointing that out. Oof. That's, uh, that's going to be an exciting thing to deal with. <laughs> yeah. I mean, ultimately, going into the round robin, the standings don't matter all that much, but it is interesting to see how evenly matched like LF Org, SK Pieces, and My Way are. All of them, they, they go back and forth uh, with each other. I'd say the one team that's like clearly ahead right now is going to be Kungana. Um, if you look at like the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth position, uh, I, I feel like there's a lot of potential for every single one of these teams, you know, bugs. 
Um, they have the Windwalker Mage, which look phenomenal. Casual Dads, they also have the Outlaw Rogue as well as Mage Lock. So I feel like their team could be a real contender uh, with the compositions that they have. Uh, no money just funny as well if they could step it up a little bit with their rogue mage they could definitely take wins um off of some of these teams and then of course delirium as well so uh, i feel like this round robin is going to be really really interesting uh, we could see who's going to pull out ahead because uh to me the only team that is i know is going to do well or at least you you would really think is kunkana they're the ones that seem like nobody really has an answer for them at the moment I, I think you're absolutely right. So I'm looking forward to the round robin in the circuit to see if, if anybody does find out an answer to them. And they're going to have to because with that round robin format, uh, for those of you watching from home, you know, every team has to play every team. So there is no avoiding Kungana or any of the RMPs. So we'll see how that go plays out. But that is going to wrap up the U EU region uh, for, you know, for cup number four. And now that means that we are going to be heading into the North American region. And this is, of course, the bracket uh, that we've got for today. Four teams left. The first match of the North American region is going to be an elimination. It's the NI NA Lower Semis, three and a half men versus Golden Guardian Super Thieves. Yeah, and this is, this is what I was talking about. This is like Golden Guardians tournament. Like, they know how to beat the RMPs. They know how to beat Cloud9. Um, unless Cloud9 brings out, uh, what was it, Wealthy Man DK? I thought, I thought we saw Wealthy Man DK, actually. Maybe Cloud9 actually could be a new Team Liquid. I think they... Didn't they play a Windwalker DK? I swear they brought they brought out a Frost DK from Wealthy Man uh, in one of these cups. Yeah, they have Mage Lock now, so... Okay. Mm, That's true. You think... You think they're ready for that? I do. Okay. I believe in Jellybean's Mage, all right? Okay. <laughs> I believe. There's a lot of faith you're putting in Jellybean's Mage right there. I... I believe I, I'm with you, Ven. I'd love to see it, but either ah. way, uh, we're going to head to a break. We'll see if we do get to see those comps come out. Three and a half men versus Golden Guardians coming up next.
Oh, for sure. Was was great. I was doing such a great sellout. Oh my god. Wait, you were oh muted? Oh my goodness. He was muted was that no! whole time. That is so oh, unfortunate. No. He was on fire. Yeah. No one heard it's it. It's devastating. You wanna, we can pretend that didn't happen. You can go through it again if you want. We can't uh, it, won't, it, won't be, it won't be a thing. All right. Okay. TLDR well, sub. Yeah. Yeah. He, he <laughs> went through all of the dates and very smoothly transitioned to April 10th is the day you can subscribe to this YouTube channel, which is true. Make sure you're subscribed. Uh, you get uh, all kinds of, you know, you get our, you get a support. The you We've got coming up. We are in the North American bracket. Of course, now we're going to be seeing either three and a half men or Golden Guardians go home um, here on Championship Sunday. There's only four teams remaining in the North American region, Super Tees. Um, who goes home first? I want to say three and a half men. I feel like Golden Guardians, Paladin, Rogue Shadow Priest, it's looking good. Um, I don't know what three and a half men are going to throw at them. Like, is this going to be a sub RMP? Um, or is it going to be something weird? Are they going to see like a jungle from them? Because we saw a jungle uh, starting to peek out from them a little bit. Like, what, what are they going to really play here? I think it's going to be sub RMP versus Rogue. Uh, Shadow Priest Paladin, and if that is the case, then I think Golden Guardians probably take this 3-1. 3-1. That's very specific. You gonna, you gonna bet your life on that? No, but you guys, you guys, Jeez, you guys were the like ones having faith. Bet. Yeah, like what? You guys were the one like, I have faith in the Golden Guardians, and now you're telling me to bet my life against them? Like, what do you mean? I you mean, guys I don't saying... know. It's just a very specific number, three to one. I, I'm just, you're very confident in that. You're All right. for a lot, Aya. That's I'm sorry. A, that's a pretty big commitment. I feel like that's right. in the middle that was of a, the road. Like, that was a little uh, dramatic, I apologize. Three is like, I think they're going to own. Three, two <laughs> means like, I think it's going to be close. And three, one is like, I think three and a half men could win a game. Ground. But it's, okay. like, it's like a middle pick. It's not that weird of a number, I don't think. That's fair. That's fair. Okay. I, I, I do apologize, Super Ds. All right. Well, Ven, Zico, you guys are as, as confident with Golden Guardians win as Sid is? Even more confident. 3-0 Golden Guardians. Oh. Get them out of here, Carl. Let's go. <laughs> I feel like I need to be like the, a little bit of like balance here, you know, like Golden Guardians, you know, excited to see them do well. But three and a half men, they have definitely proven that they're the best RMP, I would say, in uh, North America right now their mirror matches as well as their overall success uh, i feel like it's kind of hard to argue that so uh, they're looking really really clean uh, i i do think based off the games we saw who was it between it was between um Kawhi and um unitas those games were actually pretty back and forth the sub rmp from unitas actually looked like it wasn't that bad of a matchup into the assassination rogue shadow priest paladin so three and a half men i feel like they're going to become prepared likely what we're going to see in game number one it's just going to be rmp versus shadow priest rogue paladin and i don't know i think it's going to be a lot closer than my uh, co-casters would would say Maybe. three two uh, interestingly two, enough as well oh yeah you, you want him to give an exact score sid come on, ben. yeah we what's, need a score from you score? too come on ben come on ben uh, oh, the what's score? the score i would yeah. say yeah. The... <sighs> man uh, abster is not going to heal me on a shaman after this but <laughs> It's going to be, I think it's, we're going for a three, two. I, three I think two. we're going to go three, two, um, for the side of three and a half men. Okay. What? All right. Oh, well, you know, I I'm looking at the bracket for the offline games and it was actually golden guardians yeah, they... that sent three and a half men down to the lower bracket. It was their first game of, the the of this entire tournament. Three, one. It was, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, okay. I, that would kind that would make sense. Um, so it's kind of, definitely a rough position to be in as well. Three and a half men, you're you know you're immediately sent down to that lower bracket, and you constantly got uh, you're facing elimination if you drop a single game. Uh, and now you know here you are on Championship Sunday, the last cup of the season, and you could be facing elimination again against the same team that puts you down there. So we'll see if they're up for the challenge here for round number two against this team. It's game number one: three and a half men versus Golden Guardians.
I actually saw those uh, offline games that they played. They, they were an absolute joy to watch. Um, really nice uh, setups. And uh, also, Golden Guardians had a game that went into a 2v2. They played a rogue Shadow Priest versus a rogue Disc Priest on the side of Alvish and Kearney. Um, so definitely huge uh, hype games from the Golden Guardians. And this is a matchup that they know pretty well, but Kyle is going to open up onto Absturge, going after the weak link here, potentially, uh, on that Paladin. And uh, Absturge will trinket and trade out his Battlemaster there for the Vendetta and the Combust. So pretty fair trade, I would say. Um, but uh, three and a half men are going to be happy with getting that cooldown. And now it is uh, the Golden Guardians' turn here to get aggressive. I'm not sure why Absurge used his Divine Steed there. He didn't actually end up going anywhere with it. He's using a second charge of Divine Steed now, trying to get in and land a hammer, but he already used his trinket. They want him as the target. They're gonna go for a blind, but gets caught in a poly. Fear on the Kearney, though, set up on the Calvish here in game one. Peekaboo looking to connect, can't make it there. They silence Kearney on his will, chasing down Calvish to try and kill him. Kidney shot connects, Vendetta is popped. Massive damage on the Calvish. Looking to close it out here, Cloak of Shadows off the sepsis. Good reaction by Calvish. Stays alive with the trinket cloak here. Uh, and manages to survive, but Peekaboo is actually still just chasing him, hunting down Calvish. Calvish turning it around with a kidney shot of his own, but Wizke is just bodying Kearney, just standing on top of him. Really aggressive panda right now, just running him down. Absurge chasing after as well, trying to assist Peekaboo in his reconnection here. Deadly throw, getting that crippling poison up, waiting for that gladiator's aid, just waiting to go for the kidney shot. Calvish with the blind as well. Where is he going to go with that blind? Kidney shot gets gripped away by Kearney. They're just trying to avoid Peekaboo at all costs. High time for Calvish. Get the next Vendetta, get the blind, get some cooldowns with that push, and he now has them. Where are they going to go? Master Spell on the Poly Stun for follow up. They're making a swap over to Absurge and the Chastise, but they can't connect. And he is able to bop off the Vendetta Sepsis combo and survive. But every single time it's a trinket, it's a bop. They're getting a cooldown. So long as three and a half men can keep rotating well defensively, eventually Absurge is going to run out of options. Yeah, Wizk luckily has an option too with that Void Shift, so as long as they rotate, I feel like they have a little while. Calvish now could take some damage. He just decides to Vanish out, but he has the Vendetta rolling on him, so not really going to be that effective of a Vanish. It's a little peel there onto Wizk, but other than that, he will be knocked out of stealth. Wizk just in hot pursuit, chasing him down. Full Kitty Shot will land by Calvish, and I, I feel like going after Wizk during this downtime, definitely not a bad idea. And it looks like Peekaboo is going to be putting a little pressure on Nuked. So we want to see the Vendettas on Absturge, and eventually Golden Guardians might not have an answer. But between that, I feel like they should get maybe a little active. Uh, they don't really want to, though. Uh, Calv is just going to be going for a re-stealth, crossing the map, kind of just letting Nuked play uh, the tank <laughs> for their team for the time being. But we have seen Fire Mage just drop to the Shadow Priest Rogue in the past. So it needs to be careful it doesn't get a too greedy. Kearney out of line of sight, throwing in heals. That should be more than enough. He could be getting kidney shot. Whiskey grips him away. And uh, I like these kind of just defensive kidneys. Calvish has a vendetta. Let's see what they're able to get from Absturge. But if you look, I mean, Absturge, if he just uses this trinket, he's going to be okay. Oh. So uh, we'll see. Nuke right now going for a little bit of appeal here. They are going for a setup on Calvish. Nuke doing the best he can, trying to shut it down. It looks like Calvish will be able to hold on. He does have the Cloak of Shadows. Aegis will be traded out. Now they want to likely go after Absturge. He gets caught into a stun. He trinkets into a kidney. Then he has to oh, double no. trade. This is not what you want if you are Absturge. A bit greedy there. Yeah, and he does get punished in a big way. Trading up the trinket and the Blessing of Protection. And only has one answer left there. Yeah, and that means they can blind Absturge, go after Peekaboo or Whiskey, and try to get his Divine Shield that way. He's on Forbearance now as well. And he has no Bob, so... An easy way to, uh, to actually force Absurge to bubble would be to do exactly this. Sheep Absurge, go after Peekaboo. Alvish here uh, looking to stop the uh, Whiskey there. Uh, Whiskey doing a great job here playing defense. The kidney shot Calvish. Peekaboo didn't actually want to commit his Vendetta on that last push. He kind of wanted to bait Calvish to use his trinket, but Alvish held on to it. And now as a result, Peekaboo actually uses Vendetta here onto Nuke. Big damage onto Nuke. And they proc him, they get the ice block, and the Guardian actually overlaps there as well. Absurge, though, needs to be careful where he's running. He only has that Divine Shield to fall back on. No Fulmans left, really, to work with outside of that. Still have the Void Shift on the Whiskey as well. Double Fear Connect. This could be an opportunity to take Nuke down. Peekaboo he has a Smoke Bomb here as well. Nuke blinks out, though, and he will get that Blazing Soul barrier. And now Peekaboo in a Kidney Shot here. He pre-fainted it. Beautifully done there by Pika. Now looking to make his way over onto Nuke again. And Nuke now, uh, with only the Cauterize, is becoming a very real target here for the Shadow Priest Rogue. Alvish just playing super defensive, hiding here. So I think it's a good idea to just keep chasing Nuke and see what they can get. The Ray uh, will be negative, but Kearney with, with a big heal 
gets nuked back up to full HP. Kinesh onto Absurge. Here comes the combustion. It's down onto Whiskey. This is going to be Absurge Divine Shield immediately. They master spell it, but they don't actually get it. Kearney messes that up. And now, as a result, Peekaboo actually is going to be taking some damage. They blind Absurge now, finally getting rid of that bubble. But uh, Peekaboo is just able to tank it out so far. And they get a follow up. They'll nuke the sheet. He gets kicked. Beautifully done there. That will break up the big chain. Trouble. And that will also big trouble onto Nuke here. Big hits coming in. He uses the trinket. And again, full blind. Kearney. Kearney full blind depth it. And uh, Kearney gets feared there. Beautiful stuff here. And uh, Nuke was for sure toast right there. I'm pretty sure he deft that blind. And uh, Nuke will survive. All right, let's see if we can keep it going here. Abster's not many options here. Trinket, but might not be enough. He needs to make sure that when he trinkets, he removes the sepsis by dispelling. Otherwise, that vendetta will close up the game. But maybe Nuke dies before that point even occurs. Nuke is just getting destroyed right now by Peekaboo. Dragon's Breath onto Abster's not long enough to lock him down. He line of sights to swap into Peekaboo with a kidney shot. But it looks like Abster's is more than ready to sustain him. Vendetta coming off cooldown for Calvish. 18 seconds. T minus 18 seconds. He's going to be looking to end this game, just whittling down the fleshcraft of Absorb, softening him up here to get him ready for the kidney shot and serve him up into a game one victory. Vendetta's up in two seconds here. Peekaboo's in crowd control. Absurge is in his sheep. They're setting up. They drop the bomb. Here comes the chastise. Looking for the kill. Kidney on the trinket. Massive damage incoming. Void shift comes out from Whiskey at the last possible second. Shifting his health over. And now it's the Golden Guardians who are aggressive, chasing down Nuke and looking for the win. Kearney fades the Hammer of Justice, but Absurge held on to it. Still has the stun lock. It spells Wiz K out. They need to get all over Nuke here. They need to finish this game right now. Stun into fear onto Kearney. They need to hunt down Nuke. Can they proc cauterize and outright kill him? Purging off the barriers. But Abster's now into another kidney shot. Wiz K grips him out of line of sight of Nuke. Peekaboo moves for the peel. Cheap shot on Kalvich. Garot on Nuke. Kidney shot on Nuke. Trying to buy Abster's time. He needs one more global. He's not going to get it. Dragon's Breath is going to clip him down. Three and a half men. One zero. Oh, really nicely done. I mean, oh, three and a half so men. Over. Oh, let's see. Guardian no Spirit, mana. that should be enough, oh, right? Okay. Uh, can they pull off the Miracle? I, we've seen Peekaboo pull off some pretty crazy plays, but I think this one is over. And uh, Golden Guardian's luckily going to be tapping out here, and they do. Three and a half men, game number one will go to them. Their RMP, these consistent setups going out on the Ab Surge. Uh, if Ab Surge, I mean, I feel like overall, defensively, they, they didn't do a bad job. There was maybe one overlap, but... They, just, they can't afford to make a mistake if they overlap a trinket and a blessing of protection. Little things like that can cost you in the long run. Uh, there's a few opportunities there. Actually, currently doing a really good job. Uh, I believe deathing the blind, you called out Zico. And if that didn't happen, it could have just been game over. So both teams making some really solid plays. But three and a half men uh, look like they are prepared for this matchup. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you can see it. Um, maybe, no, uh, it's already past that point. Uh, I wasn't sure if he... Late trinket. It looked. I saw a death icon. It could have been Whiskey's though, uh, but I'm pretty sure he did actually death that blind. And I'm pretty sure if they get a full blind there, it was just over for nuked. But uh, I like what the Golden Guardians are doing. The main target is Calvish, but Calvish just plays really defensively, so they're going after the mage instead. And this is the void shift. They're smoke bombing there uh, at the same time onto nuked, trying to get uh, him going. Kearney here tries to fade the blind or try to fade the uh, hammer of justice. Absurge holds it though, fakes it out, and then um, they continue the pressure here. Kearney gets uh, caught up in a full fear there by Whiskey, and the Golden Guardians are looking to get aggressive, um, but it is Absturge here getting kidney shot, gets gripped, and then uh, gets uh, re stunned here, I believe. Whiskey powering out with some heals, they stun nuked, and Absturge just falls to the damage covers with an offensive trinket there as well, and um, Absturge will fall. And like you said, uh, it's Absturge, he needs, to, he needs to rotate his defensives a little bit better, but at the same time, sometimes. You kind of misread the situation. You think, okay, if I drink it here early, it's going to be fine. But then you just get restunned, and there's so much damage uh, still rolling in that you have to use a blessing of protection as well. So um, Absurd just uh, needs to be a little bit more on point there, I think, defensively. But offensively, I think three and a half men are actually making it really difficult to, to take down the rogue, which is typically what we see uh, when Shadow Priest Rogue is playing into RMP. So they're, they're forced to go after the mage a lot. I feel like they're changing their strat here because I'm not 100% certain, but I'm pretty sure you can't blessing of protection chastise is, is considered a magical stun as opposed to a physical stun. So they're actually starting the chain with chastise, waiting if he trinkets, then kidney. Uh, and then if he bops, it's like trinket and bop in one go um, rather than just being able to bop freely. That's so nice. flipping those stuns around seems to be really key. Um, the other thing is, is that they're just choosing to literally not attack unless Vendetta is off cooldown. It's like Galvish is doing nothing but running away, maybe stunning a target to run away. 
until he gets Vendetta. And then it's Chastise, Kidney, Vendetta, Ab Search, repeat, 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 over and over and over. So how are the Golden Guardians going to cut that line? Because I feel like it's pretty obvious. That's that's the strat they're running. It's going to be Vendetta, run away. Vendetta, run away. Vendetta, run away. I think going <laughs> after Nuked was the right move. And if they had done that sooner, um, they would have gotten through all of his cooldowns faster. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, right? If you're the Priest and the Rogue and you're running away, um, the Mage being left behind, if he's getting dispelled out by WizK, if you can get off those Blazing Barriers, especially after a Blink, uh, it is possible for you to actually kind of cut them down. And it's been the one composition that has actually been able to take down and kind of punish the Fire Mages playing this really, really tanky Blazing Soul uh, um, build. So Golden Guardians, I, I think what I would like to see is if Calvish and Kearney are playing a little bit too defensive and they're only really going for those hit and runs, uh, they need to turn their attention on nuked faster, like you said, and they can start getting through those defensive cooldowns a lot quicker in the match. That being said, if that happens, I want to see Calvish not be so afraid. Like, I, I don't mind the Vendetta hit and runs, um, but if they're going after nuked, I really feel like he needs to at least throw in those kitty shots uh, defensively in the match and uh, try to just slow them down with that at the very least. Yeah, both teams taking some time here uh, to, to lock it all in, but I am probably just talking strategy. We've seen, um, I, I, we saw this matchup, this exact matchup in the open bracket, and I was watching a PK stream at the time. And uh, basically uh, the strategy that they were talking was mainly, they like going rogue, they like chasing rogue, they like, uh, you know, uh, taking down the rogue as the main target, but when he just goes for a restep and he's super far away, it's really good to swap the mage instead of chasing the rogue. Um, so that's basically their game plan. And um, for three and a half men, I mean, they just need to get through all the cooldowns. Absurge has a lot of them. They can get clean setups, forcing those cooldowns, and they're going to be in a great spot. So um, I think that's uh, really all there is to it. Uh, hook point going to be nice for the Golden Guardians since they're the team kind of chasing, whereas the RMP is more like the hit and then reset wait for DRs, go again type of comp. So the Golden Guardians makes a lot of sense. Whiskey is going to be able to get a lot more fierce as well. He got a lot of fierce in the previous game, but you're going to be able to keep that up uh, in this match. Uh, the only downside is that Absters also is going to be an easier target to connect to. And obviously Kearney as well is going to have an easier time landing fierce. Um, so uh, it could also go after Kearney maybe if he trinkets. Uh, I feel like Holy Priest swaps. Uh, maybe without mind games, you actually don't have enough damage to do it, but um, I think Holy Priest swaps could be a thing as well. You can blind him, get his trinket, and then go kidney shot into maybe a vanished cheap shot or something. Uh, try to take him down. Could be an option for the Golden Guardians, but we'll see. What about like uh, a kidney shot silence on the mage so he can't blink? Like use the psychic horror on the healer and then kidney shot silence the mage and just send cooldowns into Don't that. kidney shot the mage. You can do the no kidney strat. I'm just trying to think if there like was no a way kidney. to like wait. You like the <laughs> hashtag no kidney. <laughs> I I don't know. Like if they play like this, where it's just the mage being left behind, like get a little shadow priest psychic horror on the healer, and then just send us kidney silence on the mage. Like if I guess with the trinket, that would be really tough. You'd have to like silence oh, yeah. him, kick it off, and then stun him or something. And at that point, it's probably already <laughs> lost. Sounds a bit. It's probably already lost the value. But at the same time, the silence is longer, and the stun is longer too. It actually might not be bad to do that. But you would have to be really down. coordinated to do it. How can you silence and psychic whore the healer at the same time without no, being no, no. dispelled? No, no, you silence the mage. Oh, so you, you shadow priest on the the healer and then silence, <laughs> and then kick off the trinket and then kidney. It's gonna. Be I mean, that uh, it's not gonna happen. But I just I was trying to think of a strat to kill mage. They already get a sap on Whiskey. That could be bad here. They get a sap on Kearney at least. Opening up on Absurge, I would imagine. Their strategy seems to be pretty cookie-cutter here on the Paladin. Just Kidney Vendetta on cooldown whenever he can. Maybe they're mixing it up. Sheep on Absurge. Hold him in place for the setup. Peekaboo rolls up for a counter Kidney onto Calvish. And it looks like Absurge is going to get away from his first stun. Pretty scot free. Massive damage! Holy! They potted him! Potted. They potted Calvish! Peekaboo just absolutely icing out Calvish there. Wait, and they killed the pod through the ray. Yes! Oh my... Wow! Peekaboo is not letting... Calvish get away with going after Absturge. Like, you, you, you want someone to come as a bodyguard? You bring Peekaboo. That was uh, that was definitely something. <laughs> I mean, that was a lot of damage from the Golden Guardians. A, a great kind of counter push, like you said, defending Absturge. Uh, Calvish, uh, I, I, I think that was unexpected. Now, I'm really curious to see how that happened. I mean, it, it likely a sepsis vendetta, but even then, I mean, that was 
That was really surprising, the amount of burst damage they were able to put in Calvish in such a short period of time. He was a pod before he knew it, and unfortunately, they were not able to save it. So, the early stages of the match, Calvish actually gets a nice sap here on Whiskey, but Pika with the counter sap on Kearney. Uh, Absurd's kind of dividing them, and uh, unfortunately for Kearney, wasn't able to actually find combat here. Um, and I think that was really, really crucial. Nuked, trying to just poke off Absurd shield. So in the early stages, trying to just poke off a shield, keep them in place. And then if you can get the counter CC on Whiskey, they can go. But Whiskey actually fades it, gets a Pandera in racial. And here is Peekaboo. Let's see how much damage he's able to put out. Like, this is nice unbelievable. Hodge. He just gets that Hodge and Calvish trinkets way too late. I mean, norm normally Calvish is the rogue with 10,000 APM, you know, but that was a, that was a really, really late trinket there. Um, unfortunately, Kearney was also crowd controlled at the same time. And uh, that was basically just a, a solo kill by Peekaboo. Honestly, I have to give a, a big shout out to Absturge because this weekend, I feel like his Hammer of Justice plays have been really crucial. He's won like five games that I can remember this weekend with Hammer of Justice at the right time. Yeah, absolutely. And that's exactly what it is. Calvish kind of gets baited here. He gets gripped by Kearney, and that's kind of what baits him. He gets gripped, so he thinks, okay, I'm getting gripped. So that means I'm, he's just going to Guardian me, and I'm, I'm fine. I'm going to get a ray of hope, and I'm chilling. But he gets gripped, and at the same time as he gets gripped, it's actually Whiskey coming in with that silence. Very, very sneaky. And that uh, is what tells Absurge that he can safely hodge, and just everyone yeah. on the Golden Guardians here on the same page. I've yet to see an RMP, like I've seen a lot of RMPs win in the opener. But I have never really seen an RMP that dies in the opener <laughs> on their own go. So that's definitely a new one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, that, that's the thing is like game number one for three and a half men felt like it was such an uphill battle. Like, you know what I mean? That to get through trinket then they got through bop and then they got through like trinket bop and then they got through bubble and then they got through void shift. Um, and it just, it was a really long extended game where they had to run and barely holding on and whiz can people were chasing them down and you play that game and then you go into game two and you kind of just like fumble, you know what I mean? It's the first play of the game and you fumble and unfortunately peekaboo and Absurge and whiz they catch you off guard and it's immediately all of a sudden we're all tied up 40 second game. That's not what you want to see. Same comps. I don't think we're seeing anything change here between the teams. Looks like a pretty evenly, uh, evenly matched fight between these comps which makes me wonder if more teams are going to adopt Shadow Priest Rogue if they can because there are so many Rogue Mages like there's three in North America right Unitas three and a half men and, and novice so having an answer for that is like literally almost half of the top eight um and then having an answer for some melee cleaves and then having an answer for wizards this like the Golden Guardians are in a good spot like if they can utilize Mage Lock for melee cleaves Shadow Priest Rogue pretty much solves everything else for them um they, they might have a decent run in the circuit as a result, and this could be their tournament. This could be their cup. Finally, a Golden Guardians win. Like, they've been they've been gunning for this for a while. It's always, like, runner-up. It's always, like, they do this Cinderella story in the lower bracket and then just miss by a little bit at the end. Like, is this going to finally be the cup where the Golden Guardians get a dub? Um, that game, they played with confidence uh, and completely shattered them. And their first game was pretty good defense to live that long uh, against Rogue Mage, so... I feel like they're going to be taking this still. Hoping my prediction holds up. 3-1. This is where it gets decided. At this point, if they lose any more games, I'll be wrong. Um, but I have faith here. Uh, I think that this this Rogue Shadow Priest Shaman, like they're they're coordinated. They know what they need to do uh, defensively and offensively. It's just a matter of playing it out now as we load into Ashamane's Fall. Very big map. Going to be tough to catch Calvish if he gets away. But he has to get away, which he didn't that last game. So let's see if the Golden Guardians can prevent Calvish from retreating and close out the game here in game three. Okay, here we go. Let's see if they can get that same level of aggression. They have three and a half men are going to be able to weather that initial storm uh, a little bit earlier. Absurge realizing he's the target once again. I really feel like that setup we saw from three and a half men was something Golden Guardians maybe didn't expect. The Chastise Kidney Shot, it is quite devastating um, as he's not able to blessing and protection out of the first stun. So you can find these overlaps. Calvish just waiting right now. Peekaboo actually gets knocked out of style. So if they get crowd control on Wizk, prefade once again. So this is a pretty much similar to the last game. Do they get the do they get it? Chastise on Wizk. Big opener here, but Peekaboo is just gonna run in and get the kidney shot on Calvish. Calvish does commit the vendetta, really doesn't get anything uh, against the Absolution. I would say this 
this kind of opener is definitely a win for the side of Golden Guardians. Hit three and a half men, they're on a timer getting these cooldowns for map surge, and they didn't pull anything with the first vendetta. Yeah, definitely big, but they still have that combustion uh, rolling in the back line. Who are they going to send it on the kidney shot? Whiskey, and now Kalish in the kidney shot, but I think it was on. I'm not sure if that was a one point kidney or what, but oh. Kalish was in the kidney for one second, but he's still taking massive damage. Currently, going to trink it out. Kalish with no cloak of shadows, no vanish. That is going to be absolutely devastating. Kavish might just die on the next setup if they can stay on target. This is definitely a game where you want to dogpile on top of everyone. Absurge gets feared. People get feared. You could go after Absurge. Here's a kidney shot. There's a combustion. There's a smoke bomb coming out as well. But Panda, Rachel saying hello to Nuke here. Whiskey is going to shut that down immediately. And Kavish realizing what a danger he's in. They might go after Kearney, honestly. I, I kind of want to see them maybe target Kearney with that next vendetta. If Kavish keeps playing like this, he's just running, running, running. Uh, staying away from the fight, uh, just trying to reset. So uh, I think if he keeps playing like that, they definitely have enough damage to take down um, Kearney. They will blind. Uh, there it is. They're going to swap to Kearney. Here we go. Getting the shot though on the peekaboo. Nice peel from Kalvish here, realizing that that might happen. He's in the right spot at the right time. And now who are they going to go after next? Full ring of Frost. Actually, DR ring of Frost. On the absolute grab. Peekaboo. Big damage here from three and a half men. Peekaboo will not use anything though. And neither will Absurge. Once again, Golden Guardians holding on to all of their cooldowns, and this is their opportunity. They just need to pick a target. Kalvish or Kearney, who is going to be the target? It looks like it will be Kearney. They're all dogpiling on top of him. They slow him. Here comes the damage. Full kidney shot. Do they have the Vendetta? Peekaboo gets blinded on it. And defensive smoke bomb, I believe, as well, was uh, put down there uh, from Kalvish. So really nice defense there. Kearney's going to survive for now, but he did use his Battle Master there. 30 seconds left on that trinket. This might just become a train the Holy Priest type of game. Kearney... Needs to survive one more kidney. The next one is going to be the lethal one, but they need crowd control onto Kalvish because so far he's just been shutting it down every time. And this time around, he's going to do it again. Peekaboo can't use his vendetta, and not yet anyway. Peekaboo uh, in a kidney shot still. Dragon's Breath Sheep on the app They're actually Whoa. going up Peekaboo. Big damage onto him. And oh, no. uh, defensive overlap from the Golden Guardian stream. Good sacrifice. Uh, overlap there with the Shadows for Peekaboo. But they might take down Kearney here. Do they have the damage? What? And they will have the damage. That was. That was what? what they were waiting for the whole time, I'm telling you. They're just waiting, waiting, waiting for that one time where Kalvish cannot heal and they can safely press the sepsis and the vendetta. And I think Kearney's trinket literally came up as he died. So he really he, like, used it at the final moment when they had that window. Really nice win for the Golden Guardians, punishing that overlap from earlier. So they sit on the silence, they hold it as the game-winning condition here. Uh, knowing that they can't use any cooldowns in a silence, right? Like, you're not going to Guardian Spear, you can't use any of that. And they managed to KO Kearney in a Shadow Priest silence. Vendetta really Sepsis, second right? Trinket? Yeah. We're going to see it in the replay. This was this was like the world's most insane bait then. They kidney shot Kearney. Like, here we're in the replay. They kidney shot Kearney, and this is a bait. They're baiting Kalvish to use peels on Peekaboo. So they blind Peekaboo. And it's like, all right, well, blind's out of the way. Absurd is going to bop off Vendetta, make a fair trade there. They're still going after Kearney. They're like, does Kalvish have a disarm? What else does Kalvish have to kind of peel Peekaboo in this position? So he doesn't commit the Vendetta on this next stun. He's just waiting, anticipating crowd control. He dismantles Kalvish, kidney shots. And then, yeah, Kalvish is like, all right, you kidney, I'm dismantling you. I'm going to stop all your damage. But Peekaboo's like, I don't care. I haven't pressed Vendetta yet. Like, I'm still sitting on this. Whizcase sitting on silence. Bit of a mistake here by the Golden Guardians to use Trinket Sack and Cloak. But they know they can kill him. There's no more Kearney's peels. Trinket. They're already blind. They're already oh, disarmed. No. This trigger comes up one second. He can't use anything. Literally That's the last so possible second. <laughs> what? If you're a healer you in that situation, you do not expect to die. It's like, oh, I have my trigger in five seconds. I'm fine. And then it's like, oh, I'm silenced. Well, that is very sad because he had the Guardian Spirit. He had the Fade. He had the Ray of Hope. But no access to any of the silence vendetta. I mean, that was kind of out of nowhere, in all honesty. But Golden Guardians definitely capitalizing on that situation. They're up 2-1 now. And uh, they have been looking good. Uh, really, really solid in these last two games. Obviously picking up a quick win in game number two. But this one was very convincing. So I kind of wonder what kind of adaptations we're going to be seeing here uh, coming in from three and a half men for the next game. I think the, the convincing part of this game was the defense. Because three and a half men, they did yeah. do an overlap. So Kalvish had to play really scared. And the Golden Guardians realized, okay, well, let's just go after the priest. Okay, they're going to peel. They're going to peel. They're going to peel. All right, finally, we can get our uh, our little vendetta go off. And they don't have anything for it. Let's just uh, send it. And uh, it works out for them. But I think the really convincing part was the defense. 
up until that moment where they overlap, you know, Trinket Sack and the uh, Peekaboo's Cloak, that was because they just wanted to get aggressive anyway and get the kill. So it didn't matter that much. But aside from that one time, uh, the, they basically shut down every single setup from three and a half men. They didn't use anything. Like, they didn't use any of Absturge's cooldown on several kidney shots. They didn't use anything from Whiskey or Peekaboo. Uh, just uh, kind of navigating through it. Whiskey with nice panda racial and... Uh, Sub... What am I missing? <laughs> yeah, it's a point sub. It. I'm trying to point at it. But my arm, you know, like. Wait, was there a sub thing and I missed it? No, no Calvish. No, he's a sub rogue. But oh, if you want to hit sub the subscribe rogue. button, you well, can. Yeah. Speaking of subs. Exactly. Yeah. Speaking of subs, <laughs> if you click right there, just help me out. I can't reach it. Uh, if you click right there, you can definitely subscribe. And don't forget to ring the notification bell. Yeah, <laughs> uh, they're dumb. Uh, <laughs> Don't forget to ring it, guys. I mean, look at these games. Uh, this is what we do here. And this is the final cup in North America. So uh, final opportunity here for you guys to subscribe and uh, to like the channel, to like the video, and uh, to tell your friends about the AWC. And um, now we let's talk about the matchup. Sub Rogue. <laughs> it's going to be less... It's going to be less kind of obvious. Uh, I guess Calvish right now is only really a threat during the Vendetta. And it seems like, uh, you know, Absurd, Whiskey, Peekaboo, they have a lot of answers for it. So as long as they don't overlap the defensive cooldowns, I mean, I, when you think about the ways they could rotate through it, it feels like it feels like they probably have like 10 Vendettas. And that's a lot. Like if they don't mess up Golden Guardians, I feel like lives through 10 Vendettas in all honesty. So three and a half men, they, uh, they have to force uh, mistakes with the Assassination Rogue. They have to force overlaps. And if they're not, which we're not seeing, then I, I feel like... The assassination road just isn't going to work, and they need to go for more of like a controlled, precise play style uh, with the uh, subtlety rogue. Yeah, but uh, also it's about the combusts as well. Like, it's ten vendettas, but if you can get some value out of those combusts, then you can reduce that number a little bit. But either way, uh, now it's going to be all about the combusts, and uh, going to be able to reset those a lot. And uh, sub rogue is going to be able to get clean setups. And I was wondering about this uh, about this. Big thing. I feel like if this matchup was played in Europe, every rogue in Europe would be playing sub in this matchup. I don't think they would be playing assassination. So I, I like that Kalvish is going for it. And uh, let's see if it works out for him. They get a sap on Whiskey into a fear. Dragon's Breath Sheep on the abs. There's willing. He's going to go after Whiskey here. Mikabu could go for the Garrot. Okay. Uh, he's going to. Oh, he won't peel Kalvish though with disarm from stealth. But nice panda racial by Whiskey. Absters though with the sacrifice there. Doesn't trust uh, his team to kill that situation. People getting this belt, Calvish in the kidney shot. Calvish will survive it though. And so far, no one really pulls anything super uh, major. They get the sacrifice from Absurge though. The sacrifice did nothing. That wasn't a yeah, blades. That, was... that wasn't a duel, a blind, a bomb, a bust. Like that sacrifice might come back to bite him here if Calvish and Newt get a setup here. Blind on Absurge, Dragon's Breath setting up Peekaboo for Calvish. They're gonna drop a smoke bomb here on the ring, I think. Maybe not. Just going all in with the kidney. They get Trinket Cloak. Of the bust, they still have blades. How do we duel? Can Calvish do a one tap wonder? I think he can if he doesn't die right now, though. It's match point for three and a half men. Are they gonna close it out? They have to drop the defensive smoke bomb, dropping everything that they can to get out of line of sight. They just need to keep Calvish alive. I swear it's just kidney dual blades dead. Peekaboo is getting a hundred owed. They're playing resonators as well. Kidney, there it is. Kidney, are they gonna duel? Shadow blades, they edge the smoke bomb. Where's the duel though? They're not going for the duel right here. Seems so strange to me that they wouldn't go for the duel there. Whiskey just gets the void shift, switches his health over. They do at least get through that cooldown, but they committed the blades at this point. Calvish is now getting stunned up. Is he going to defensively duel at least? He's still down at half. Kearney manages to stabilize him. Really surprised to not see him go for the all in there. Trying to shadow step away. Peekaboo and Whiskey chasing after him. Get Frost Nova by Nuked. Nuked is intercepting with Dragon's Breath, Polymorph, Chastise, and Whiskey. Excellent setup here by three and a half men. That's going to get Absurge's Trinket to try and recover. And now they are down three medallions here on the side of the Golden Guardians. Bust is coming off cooldown. Calvish pre-evasioning, anticipating a kidney shot here with Vendetta coming off cooldown. Trying to buy time for Ray of Hope to come off cooldown. Shadow stepping away from the engagement. Nuked is just firing Polymorphs, firing fireballs. Bust is almost up. Calvish line of sighting, staying max range from Peekaboo. Peekaboo forced to actually go after Nuked does not want to be doing that with 50 seconds left on Calvish's Trinket. Whiskey drops a Psy Fiend, but is it a Distraction Fiend? Like, there was no go there. Calvish is now open and free. Step by Peekaboo. He gets the stun first over onto Calvish. Ernie looks like he's in a good position, though, to just easily heal. Nuke already has Whiskey in polys. 
It's going to be Halvish's opportunity here in a moment to strike, and they get sacrificed. It looks like Absurge, maybe he's not playing big sacrifice. He tried to pre-sack, but he still had bubble. Now he's going to bubble, and it's almost no healing. Okay, I take that back. Almost no healing. He's managing to save him so far. Avenging Wrath comes up for him, and he stabilizes Peekaboo. Now landing a blinding light on the whole team. Trying to set up on Calvish. Still no trinket for 12 seconds. Vendetta available. Nine seconds on match point. Can they get to Calvish? Seven seconds away. Figabu can't get there, I don't think. They're going after Nuke now. Maybe giving up on the rogue altogether as Calvish is so far away. Siphon onto Nuke. They're going to drop that, but still massive damage incoming. Kearney in the Full back blind. line trying to pick him up, but a blind. I think he's on forbearance from Bubble. I think this is it. Peekaboo trinket cloaks. And tries to stay alive, tries to stay aggressive onto Nuke. He dismantles Calvish, trying to buy time. Kidney shot on Nuke. Nuke blinks out, and I think Peek was going to fall. He's down at 10% and will get taken out. We are tied 2-2, two to two, moving to a game 5. Oh, so back and forth. I really like the sub-rogue. I mean, having control of the matchup just seems so much better. Uh, I, I feel like this is where Calvish, Nuke, and Kearney really shine. Getting those clean setups with the triple crowd control out. Uh, it was just rinse repeat setups they rode the pole out a uh, really close call a couple times there on peekaboo but uh yeah i mean on the slurge map being able to just basically force peekaboo out into the open uh and uh, forcing as well absturge and was k to kind of cross the map it just allows nuke a lot of free time to actually get the polymorphs out the dragon's breast and then basically all calvish has to do is uh set up with a stun so you can just go ahead throw the kitty shot on peekaboo uh nuke just setting him up and uh yeah it's really good teamwork Absolutely. I'm a big fan of the sub rogue and uh, just how Calvish plays it as well when he's got nothing left. He's just running, running, running. I think this was one of those games for Golden Guardians where uh, they just chased Calvish for two minutes straight and it ended up costing them. Uh, at the end, they started going after Nuked and they actually got a decent amount of pressure. But at that point, Calvish had his trinket back and uh, he was able to just uh, get aggressive once again. And also, they got Absurge all cooldowns um, during the time when Calvish was running. So. I would say for the Golden Guardians, what's happening right now with this pressure on Nuke, it should have happened a lot sooner uh, in the matchup. And unfortunately for them, Peekaboo does a great trade here. He trinkets cloaks early, um, but uh, just too long of a CC chain here onto Absturge. We still have uh, you know a lot of uh, CC there with the DR Polymorph into the Dragon's Breath as well. Uh, and Peekaboo will fall. And um, I think the Golden Guardians can still win this, but I think they need to go after the Mage a lot more. Like The Rogue is nice target to hit. Um, but I think we're going to go to a smaller map and they can just go between the mage and the rogue a lot more, have more pressure that way and um, should be good for them. Did he mean to play Darkest Before the Dawn and not Ultimate Sack? Because he was pre-sacking a lot of the times and I think that's because he was not playing Ultimate Sack. But I feel like why wouldn't there's like no sustain damage against Sub Rogue. I feel like you don't <laughs> need the you don't need the heal from Darkest Before Dawn. I feel like just having that trinket save or bubble save or bop save like would be more value uh, but that has to be the logic behind him pressing sacrifice preemptively like that it's just that three and a half men never fell for it they just waited for it to end and then went for their chain and then there's no sacrifice in their way at that point uh, but runes the lord are on game five between the golden guardians and three and a half men alvish is sticking to subtlety at this point i think it makes sense uh, for the matchup, Vendetta is just really easy to answer as a Holy Paladin specifically, uh, especially with Shadow Priest support and the personal cooldowns of the Rogue. So Subtlety is going to open more doors for them, uh, but Golden Guardians are not out of it. This will be a tough map to run away as Calvish. Like, where, where are you going to go? It's Runes of Orderon. Yeah, good, where's good, the pillars? <laughs> good luck running, Calvish. This is what the Golden Guardians are saying right now. Yeah, but uh, like I said, uh, the one thing that is noticeable is even if Calvish can just cross the map, he's forcing both WizK and Absturge in the open, and that's where Nuked is really going to shine on that Fire Mage, finding Dragon's Breaths, finding Polymorphs, and uh, getting that crowd control where basically Calvish doesn't need to set up for the whole team. All he needs to do is just put a kidney shot on Peekaboo, and uh, that's what we saw in the last game. See if they can do it again. 2-2, two, two, three and a half men, Golden Guardians Elimination Series. The loser of this game will be knocked out. All right, let's see it. The gates are open, and it is Ruins of Lord Aron for game number five, Super Tease. Yeah, Ruins of Lord Aron. It would be a fitting final resting place as it is a cemetery who is going to be laid to their grave here today as we must have a winner. Bernie stunned up, going after the healer. That's a bit reckless in game five here. Peekaboo getting punished. 
Huge setup by three and a half men. Get the Trink Cloak faint. Swap over to Wizkid. Maybe it disperses as well. Big heals come up from Absturge. Stabilizing the team in this position. It is fortunate for Peekaboo. It was the Blades and Bust. So his Trinket still at least gets good value exchange for that. But now he won't be able to save his teammates if he gets crossed. And they're stun locking the team. Sapping Peekaboo out of the polymer. Setting him up for Kidney. But no, the Kidney shot gets dropped. Kalvish gets cheap shot for a moment. Still manages to connect it. Triple crowd control for a moment. Can they close the game out? Absturge blocks it with Trinket Sacrifice. Trades that really far ahead, maybe prior to a smoke bomb or something like that if he was worried about it. Defensive Shadowy Duel comes in from Kalvish. Still trying to play defensive, but they're going after Kearney. They're actually just going straight for the Holy Priest. Here comes Vendetta Sepsis. Massive damage. Guardian Spirit trades. Is it going to be enough? Kearney doesn't trust it. He Trinkets as well. Blind is available, but here comes another 3-2-1 setup. What are you going to do? Absurge Bubbles. He's got to get big heals right now. Massive spell on the bubble into a fear, into a cheap shot. Looking to close out the game here. Is he going to fall? I think he's going to. Nucleus is powering through. Peekaboo vanishes away from sight. Stuns Kalvish. Sets up on Kearney one more time. Can they kill Kearney? They have to take him out here and now. Can they drop him? Bop off the disarm, Absurge. Just go in on the kill here. He's going to die. Just pop it. He doesn't even need to. I think he's going to take him Fade. out. He would have died if he popped it. Kearney's going to greater fate. He's going to stay alive. Now nobody has a CC break. If three and a half men get triple crowd control, it's game over for Peekaboo. He blinds Kavish. Kavish knows it. He trinkets. There's the poly to set up Peekaboo. This is it for the Golden Guardians. If they cover Whiskey, chastise under Whiskey. Resonators are down. Holy Fire is going to connect, but Whiskey gets out early. No, he's feared as he tries to get there for the void shift. It won't be enough to stay alive. And three and a half men take it three to two. Who could have predicted this outcome? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ben, I'm taking over. All right. Okay, okay. You predicted this outcome. Great job. <laughs> All right, so three and a half men, absolutely clinical RMP here in game number five. What an insane game here with them. And I was a little bit worried there for Kearney, honestly, um, when he trinketed there on, on the Guardian Spirit. Uh, he was blinded, but he still, he still had so much damage that... Uh, he didn't feel comfortable not uh, using it, so he used that trinket, but then he survived that next setup by the skin of his teeth. And then as soon as Kearney survived there, we all knew it. Uh, if they get a clean cross here, they can take him out. Uh, and uh, that's exactly what they did. So great job by three and a half men. No one could have predicted this result. <laughs> yeah. You just bop but, the disarm. I mean, this is, bop this yeah, right here. This just is bop this that. disarm. You're so right. You press best lane protection on this yeah. disarm. You're not living the Kearney next go, and he's 100% dead. dead. There's no way. Yeah, it was one of those decisions that just had to be made. And uh, unfortunately for the Golden Guardians, that really was their moment to just win, turn it around. They're in such a difficult spot right now. Nobody has an out. Uh, you can see Wiz K, no trinket. He does have Void Shift. Uh, so if he could have gotten the Void Shift off there, I'm going to actually see. I think he was just out of line of sight. But Kalvish, he trinkets aggressively. They know. They smell blood in the water. They're going for it. Cheap shot on Absturge. Kidney shot on Peekaboo. Chastise on Wiz K. Three versus one. Combustion from Nuke comes in really, really late. But Wiz K gets feared before he can get there. Absurge still in crowd control. And Peekaboo gets dropped. It's a really nice series. Three and a half men. They came in with an obvious game plan with the Assassination Rogue. But it was not working out. Wiz K, Peekaboo, and Absurge were able to deal with that. But once he switched over to sub, I, I feel like three and a half men, they really leveled up here. Mm, yeah, most certainly did. Well fought victory for them. Going to be moving forward, and we'll see them once again in the lower final towards the end of the day here. Um, and now we're going to head up to that upper bracket series, Cloud9 versus Kawhi. Why they've been a you know a roster for quite some time and they are really showing up here in the um season so far in shadowlands cloud nine they've got that newly formed roster and they're definitely ramping up in recent cups so we're going to see who comes out on top in this next series who drops down to the lower bracket of phase three and a half men who moves on to the grand finals we're going to head to a break when we come back it's cloud nine versus Kawhi. see you soon
we are now heading into the upper bracket. It's going to be Cloud9 facing off against Kawhi. I was talking with Chun just a little bit to see if he was ready for this matchup, if he was ready for the day ahead. And I think he gave me like the most Chun answer I've ever heard. He just said, uh, feeling good, got some fatty series ahead. Uh, and I quote, so um, we'll see how they do here in this one. But what do you think in Super T's? I'm wondering what comps, like, are they gonna just mage lock, start to finish here uh, into Kawhi? Like, they really struggled, I think, with, with this team particularly. So do they have a secret comp? Are they going to be breaking out Windwalker DK? Or like, what, what is going to come out here from Cloud9? I actually think I like a Windwalker DK first pick, uh, anticipating the Rogue Shadow Priest of Kawhi. Yeah, I'd like that as well. It'd be cool to see them try that out. Cloud9 definitely getting pretty experimental. If you look at also the, you know, the match record between Kawhi and Cloud9, uh, it's two to zero. So the odds are kind of stacking up for Kawhi at this moment in time, Ben. Uh, but what, what do you think if Cloud9 brought out that comp? Would it be good against anything that Kawhi could bring to the table? Mm, I don't really know. I feel like Windwalker, like, so for chun to play Windwalker, um, it's gonna be, he's gonna be really vulnerable to the paladin assassination rogue. That's the thing is like they have mage lock and they have windwalker comps. That's like what we've seen from them so far. So I am a little bit afraid for them. Maybe maybe like Destro Warlock. Oh, we're not gonna see it. All right, well we're not gonna see it. We're gonna see Chun Li on the Windwalker Monk. Uh, Cloud Nine, they're locking in um, a composition that they've been playing quite a bit. Quite honestly, the Fire Mage Windwalker uh, Priest. This comp has been played a little bit in Europe as well as a lot in North America. But I worry. I mean, this is what I kind of mentioned. I mean, for Kawhi, they're the assassination rogue paladin, which in, in general is really strong into the Windwalker because not only uh, are assassination rogues super effective at just kidney shotting the Windwalker monk and putting a lot of pressure on him, uh, but also they have the blessing of protection for the touch of karma. So you really can push through some of those defensives. Yeah, and we're going to see if they can do exactly that. And right now, game number one is live between Cloud9 and Kawhi. A big kidney shot coming in onto Sean Lee immediately uh, using that set piece and uh, getting that data on cooldown. Sean now, though, will survive. Uh, up using his trinket in that exchange. And uh, that's the first uh, kind of uh, check mark uh, checked off. Now, in the ring of cross, going after Prav. Prav taking massive damage here. This is what mass combustion is trying to greet it. Not using his uh, dispersion here on this push is very, very good uh, for Kawhi. Now they're swapping over onto Drake here. Drake's taking a decent amount of damage, uses the evasion. Second kidney shot is uh, ready to go here for Drake. Who are they going to go after? He shadow step over to Wealthy Man, actually. Kicks Wealthy Man into a kidney shot. So, um, does this mean Wealthy Man is playing Shimmer? He's not blinking it, but he was kicked. He gets cheap shot. He could blink now. So, I think Wealthy Man is playing Shimmer. And I think uh, he will be the target here for the rest of the match, if that's the case. And uh, I think Kawhi is just, generally speaking, one of those teams that just love to go after Shimmer Mages. So, a bit of a flip in the matchup now. They're just going to be tunneling Wealthy Man the whole time. And he's going to be feeling the pressure. He might have to use Ice Block here right now. It's going to be Cauterized. they are getting pressure onto Prev as well. Can they get the Dispersion back? And they get the Ice Block, Kidney Shot, Smoke Bomb onto Wealthy Man. He's not even using his Trinket here. Might just need to use his ice block. And Prev is taking massive damage here from Chun. So actually, nice hold there by C9. Ultimate Man doesn't even use his trinket or his ice block on that smoke bomb attempt. And Prev is actually the one who's supposed to use cooldowns. Now Drake in a leg sweep. Let's get back here. This is the dust coming out from Chun Lee. Look at the dust. Somebody. And right now, that somebody is looking like Drake. There's no evasion right now. He has his cloak of shadow stuff to work with. Ultimate Man realizing what a danger he's in going for the sheeps and uh, onto drake here and he gets shadow step kick and here comes the damage combustion gets popped Prev is taking huge hits brain trinket sacrifice and now Prev uh, actually using his trinket there as well but didn't use his void ship so trinket overlap there coming out from the shadow priest and the paladin as a uh, quiet continues to march down this mage right here I think I like this from Wealthy Man. As, as long as they can keep him alive, it means Chun Li is just getting free reign to do damage to a Shadow Priest, which is huge value. He was just getting shut down every time before. And if they don't go after Wealthy Man, then he gets Link Sheeps under the Paladin. So, uh, so long as they can keep him going here, I think this is a good strategy from Cloud9 in game one, definitely mixing it up, giving Chun Li more opportunities. He's got a lot of damage available. He's ready to pull it. He's ready to rip it on a Prev here. Can they stun lock Prev? They need to CC Brain and stun Prev. Prev is on the run, trying to avoid the leg sweep. Chun Li ports on top of him, fades the leg sweep. Prev pre-fades, he was dead there. That was a dead priest walking if he didn't immune it. But Chastise connects ultimately. Is he gonna die here? Fist of Fury flying in. 
Not enough damage. Oh, maybe not. Massive hit from Chun-Li. Rev gets interrupted multiple times. Rain is trying to save him with heals, but his heals are just doing barely nothing. Chun-Li's damage is massive right now, but at the same time, Wealthy Man, critically low. Flop trying to pick him up with that Ray of Hope. Managing to stabilize. That was the clutchest fade Prev has had. Uh, but now Wealthy Man on the back foot. Looking to close it up. They get an ice block. Massive spell gets interrupted. Chun-Li is still lining up massive damage for Prev here. He might just send it without a stun. Huge hit! Oh! Disperse on one. No, he's a pot. He touch of death them in the disperse. Can they keep the pot alive? They bop the pot. They're doing whatever they can to protect the pot. And it's not enough. Chun-Li will drop them. I really like that. The offensive greed from Cloud9. Having two threats. It's like, what are you going to do? Go after our monk? He's going to kill your Shadow Breeze if you leave him alone. Or are you going to go after our mage that's going to be playing sheep in your paladin if you don't? So Cloud9 took like a risky gamble uh, by building that their option to be like fully offensive and it paid off. Yeah, I mean, I really liked it as well. The thing is, if they can kind of bait um, them going after Wealthy Man, Chun-Li can actually detox the sepsis as well. So it, it is going to be effective. Um, and that burst that, Prev, uh, that burst on Prev at the end was, it was really high. Oh, I mean, they the just kind of sent the... They just kind of sent the combustion. Uh, yeah, the strat you were talking yeah, about earlier today. Sure. Now, there it is. All right. Well, Prev, at this point, we see a really cool play from him. He runs away. chun -Li actually transcendence, and he fades right there. Leg sweep. He fades it. If he did not get that fade, it, it would have been lights out. But you actually look at Prev. I mean, he's rotating back. He's got his void shift. He's got dispersion coming up in just a few seconds. Gets interrupted here. This is a little bit devastating. Brain somehow keeps him alive. Prev goes for a really greedy play. Uh, by not just trading out the dispersion there it gets interrupted this is where they kind of get the, the counter pressure i'm curious to see what happens to brain like how does this actually prep they have every cooldown still like they have so many cooldowns to work with wealthy man out of this just sends it he gets so prep gets interrupted does he get interrupted on shadow like what happens he just sends combust randomly and kills him like that that was through wing ceiling like they had no crowd control on brain whatsoever. Oh, they had it paralyzed. They had it paralyzed oh, okay, they paralyzed them. Okay, they paralyzed them, but still, like, I, I don't know. I, that that was that was crazy how fast they were able to take him down there. Yeah, definitely. He didn't expect that. He had the dispersion there to trade. So, unfortunately for Kawhi, uh, they are going to be losing that first map. And uh, for C9, this is looking uh, it's looking pretty good. I, I don't know how much I like the the shimmer. It worked out in this game, but I feel like Prev had cooldowns to trade. So I think if they go with the same uh, kind of line of thinking, it might get punished. And also at the start of the match, they might just go after the mage right away instead of wasting a couple of goes on the Windwalker early on. Uh, but there's definitely upsides. You know, if you leave a, a free Chun Li, um, you can definitely get a lot of work done, especially on Shadow Priests. We could probably make a montage of all the Shadow Priests that, uh, that he's dusted over the years. Like, the problem is that the Shadow Priest team doesn't have cross CC. So it's like Chun Li can just grapple the rogue and dispel the sepsis if they send something on Wealthy Man. Um, mm -hmm. So, like, this this is a really good build into specifically what Kawhi have. I think Kawhi should play Rogue Mage. Dump the Shadow Priest, get a mage instead, uh, and get better cross CC um, rather than the Shadow Priest if it's, if it's going to be this matchup specifically. But they're not. They're going to stay with the same comp. I just assess it as like we should have traded cooldowns. We still burnt down a lot on wealthy men there. Um, we were probably close to winning if we just traded more appropriately. Also, the trinket overlap. I feel like uh, Shadow Priest shouldn't trinket unless it's Void Shift or Fade. Like you're you're trinketing and, and using. I think it was trinket fade, but because it was trinket sack, those two things can't happen at the same time. Like that's that's kind of like you're opening up a, a can of worms uh, in the, against these types of fire mage setup comps. Um, but I think Wealthy Man needs to t keep this greedy build. Chun Li is basically gonna have to carry the team uh, <laughs> while Wealthy Man is just running around the map for his life. Um, but I, I think that's the that's the faith that Cloud Nine need to have uh, to win these types of matchups. It's really funny to me that we're like considering this like the super greedy build, even though this has been like the meta fire <laughs> build for like two expansions now. <laughs> but I think it's good because the problem is you're right you want to have two threats so if they go after chun li and wealthy man's playing shimmer he can get a lot done the thing is wealthy man gives us some defense but it doesn't really matter that much because chun li windwalker monks in general i feel like are actually super effective against assassination rogue if you're not the target you can keep people alive and no doubt about it the grapple weapon detox paralyze bring a piece you have a lot of tools to keep your mage alive so uh, i feel like if they don't go after chun li i I'd be really surprised if they actually were able to drop Wealthy Man. Yep, absolutely. And um, 
We'll see if they go after Wealthy Man or if they just go after Chun right away. Right now, Chun in uh, Hammer of Justice here. Kawaii looking to try to build up some momentum there to get a blind onto Flop into a sap. And now uh, Chun is going to be in the Aegis here. And they're just going to pop into it here. A lot of damage coming out, but Chun will ultimately survive there. No problems. Drake now going to be the target. Good script on Leg Sweep. Drake here trading out. Invasion. As well as his feint, as well as his cloak, Chan now taking huge hits of damage, and Prev as well taking massive hits here. Both teams, everybody's HP is just going down and spiking back up, but it looks like they won't trade the dispersion, at least from Prev, so uh, that's a bit of a victory. And they will be going after Chan Lee uh, exclusively in this match here and just ignore Wealthy Man, so they're actually going to let him get away with playing that greedy build potentially. Um, we haven't actually seen him shimmer yet. And he actually just used Soul Shape there, so I think Wealthy Man is playing the tank mage here. Um, which means that Chun will just be a, a nice spicy target here to go after. And uh, we'll see if Wealthy Man actually can blink. But he gets interrupted on the resheep. And now, once again, Chun is going to take massive damage. This is the sepsis. This is a vendetta. Big hits coming in. Chun is going to trinket and defuse magic. He'll keep himself alive, but there's always going to be that threat of a smoke bomb. And with a Night Fae Priest, it means that Drake will have that vendetta coming back up very, very soon. Good, good synergy composition built by Kawhi here. Been getting them wins back to back cups. Drake stunned up. Blasts of damage coming up from Chun Li and Brain responds with Trinket Sacrifice in that exchange, redirecting damage to himself. Chun Li getting pulled away on the kidney shot. Pre grapple on the kidney as well by Chun. Nice read by him here. How much can Wealthy Man get done offensively being left open? If Chun Li's the target, it's Wealthy Man that needs to carry with Dragon's Breath Sheeps and he blinks back. Dragon's Breath Sheep on the Brain. Drake's in trouble. Is he going to bubble here? They get the Master Spell. Brain gets some heals. Drake Shadow steps out defensively. And should get a big heal in a moment from Brain here. He's loading up with the Vanquisher's Hammer. Now getting aggressive towards Flop. Wants that double blind, maybe our Hammer of Justice. Where's Brain going to go with it? He's standing next to Flop. Still just not waiting to pull the trigger just yet. Doesn't want to commit the CC. Prev stuck in Polymorph. Not going to be valuable. Vendetta's coming up. There's no trinket on Chun-Li. They want to bait Chun-Li out into the open. Stun Vendetta Bomb 100%. Here comes the Kidney Shot. They're not going for it, though. Drake gets peeled away by a Dragon's Breath. Wealthy Man taking some damage as well. If they swap over to him, they get Aegis on Chun-Li for the Vendetta, it looks like. Uh, and I don't think it's going to take him down. Big Rising Sun Kick onto Drake. He's going to have to run away after that one. Brains into a Polymar. Chun-Li's rolling after him. No trinket here. Massive damage incoming. Prev manages to get there in the nick of time, fearing the whole team. But Brains not comfortable and trades Divine Shield anyway. So another major cooldown forced out from Cloud9. The Windwalker Mage is looking sick right now. And it could buy them a spot in the finals if they keep up this performance. I mean, it's looking really solid. But Chun-Li has to be careful. He preemptively Karmas the Kidney Shot. They are just trying to go through it. I believe this is actually it's not the vendetta it's just the sepsis but they cut through the karma chun li still incredibly low going for a fist of fury blinding light comes in from brain but that removes all the damage over time effects onto chun li he's just going to be throwing in the vivify crossing the map has his aegis up tanking through a lot of this damage flop does connect but he is silent so finally the crowd control will subside chun li should get topped off they're going after wealthy man he gets gripped away this is a huge push here by Kawhi, but at the same time, there's a lot of damage available for the side of Cloud9, and they want to make a push here. Uh, I feel like Kawhi, they're trying to buy some time, cross the map, stay in stealth. They realize they're in a little bit of trouble. They're returning their attention over on the Prev. Let's see if they can take down Prev. He's seeing the trade the dispersion. So perhaps, uh, you know, uh, really respecting the damage after what happened in the last game. Now it's actually going to be Drake caught into a leg sweep. They go for a counter kitty shot here on the Chun Li. What do they have on flop? It doesn't look like any CC. They're just going straight up damage, but it is not enough. And now Prev is the one in trouble. Yeah, well, let's see Prev. How is he going to survive this? Void Shift coming out here from Prev. Old Sheep, uh, or Resheep, uh, rather, onto Brain. And uh, another big cooldown being pulled here. And they had uh, Drake's Trinket down, but that's why he was playing so defensive. But now Drake has his Trinket back up. Now they're going after Prev pretty much exclusively here. And it's going to be oh a game of uh, just that get grapple. that nice grapple there on the kidney uh, beautifully done there right before the shadow step there by chun lee and now this is their time to get aggressive there's no kidney shot this is when they need to get something happen and they are going to go after drake here shadow man's coming out but they need to try to interrupt those there finally uh, a nice spear hand strike coming out there from chun lee but uh, drake will survive for now they don't have any more crowd control into brain and here comes the kidney shot nice grip there's the sepsis there's the vendetta flops trinket actually getting cheap shot here from the follow up he gets a fear, they get the karma, they might just crack the karma here, and they do get the beautiful setup here, counter setup coming out from John Lee, he might just take Drake down, and that will be his cloak and his evasion, 
And Wealthy Man actually getting creeped there a little bit as well. Prev as well taking huge damage. No dispersion for three seconds more. And they will trade out the trinket sacrifice of the brain here. So a lot of cooldowns back, back and forth flying between these two teams as Cloud9 looks to make their next push. Mana is limited. Options are limited. How long? How much longer can they keep it up here? Prev is failing to stay alive. Dispersion in touch of death range again. I think they potted him. No, they didn't. It just looks like it with that knife animation. Uh, Prev <laughs> managing to disperse in time, avoiding that touch of death range. But now a kidney shot onto Chun Li. Where's the trinket? Where's the diffuse? He's trying to be greedy, but the smoke bomb is down. Is he going to be able to make it out? Uses the human racial, breaks the stun, gets back to the pillar of flop, has zero mana at this point. They're switching back to Wealthy Man. He's taking damage. Chun Li's trying to help him with Vivifies. Brain's trying to sneak in a drink. If Brain can sneak in some mana here, that's going to be critical. Chun Li rolls over to stop it, but Drake Shadow steps in. Chun Li has to fist of fury to parry the kidney shot. He pre ages his stuns up Drake, tries to send some damage, but Drake pre faints the stun. Chun Li has to roll away. Flop got a little bit of mana amidst all of that chaos, trying to stay ahead of the dots here, dispelling it. Wealthy Man trying to get control of Drake with a Frost Nova and just to get out of it. Prev now stunned up, trying to go after the Shadow Priest, but now Chun Li gets stunned up. He's not able grapple to connect. Again. And another pre grapple free this game here in game number two from Chun Li. But Vendetta still available. They got to go for the kill now if they want to close this out before that Vendetta connects. They got Fade, they got Bop onto Prev. He's trying to stabilize, trying to get ready for this next Kidney Vendetta. They need to be ready to trade for it. It's going to be huge damage. Chun-Li pre-Karmas to stay aggressive. Chun-Li's trading everything to stay on Prev. He's going all in, but no, Flop doesn't believe. He grips Chun-Li away, but here's Vendetta stripping away Chun-Li's health so quickly. Is he going to survive? The Superior flying through, parrying the attacks of Drake as Drake is getting blasted in return. Has to trinket and run around the corner. Such a tight match between these teams. How much longer can they keep it up? Now almost seven minute mark here. Chun-Li's trying to go for to go free grapple weapons drake trying to take him out spinning crane kick Wealthy man trying to find polymorphs drake down at 30 percent has cloak and evasion is he gonna trade no, he gets potted can brain keep the pot alive trinket sack comes up in one second no it will not be available in cloud nine moving to match point asserting dominance chun li honestly looking like neo in the matrix <laughs> here like these preemptive <laughs> grapples on the, this bullets shadow. flying at him and he's just yeah he, he sees he, he sees what's happening before it even does you know the shadow step kidney shot i think three times that game got pre-grappled by chun li and i mean it's those plays that are keeping them alive and keeping them in the game i, I really feel like we got a shadow chun li for this game but all three members of cloud nine Honestly, everyone in this game played a phenomenal match, but uh, Cloud9 with this composition, they are keeping Kawhi on the back foot. And I almost feel like Kawhi is going to have to change. This is like one of the first times we've seen uh, this year. Um, we might actually have to see Seralium tagged in here. Yeah, believe it or not, but Seralium is still on the roster. It's just been a rogue shadow breeze show for <laughs> these guys the, the, the whole time around, but he is still very much there. And they could be running. I mean, Drake is a main Windwalker. Is Drake a main Windwalker? I feel like he is, right? Uh, he, is. he used to be, but we, it's been so long since we saw him on the Windwalker that it's like I'm second guessing myself at this point. But uh, yeah, Chun Li here, nice grip by uh, Flop, making sure that he stays alive. And they turn around onto Drake here. And what actually pods Drake? So Drake survives here. He doesn't have to put shadows. He trinkets out. And uh, now they get aggressive onto Prev. And I think it's just Wealthy Man just sending it yeah, onto, man. Uh, onto Drake. He just uh, pops the, the Rune of Powers. And uh, spinning crank kick coming out, pre grapple onto Drake, big damage onto Prev, and then Wealthy Man just, uh, yeah, just sends him. Just One second him on sacrifice is so devastating. <laughs> well, let's be honest, Brain, you've sacrificed so many pods, probably the most out of you. Brain has been the, the healer for sure. I don't even need to look this stat up. He's been the, the healer for sure that saves the most amount of pods. It's okay to let one go down. Uh, but yeah, now it's time. Uh, maybe tag in Seralium for some Rogue Mage. Maybe we're going to see a Windwalker Mage Mirror. There is some options here, of course. Um, or Kawhi. I think they mirror. Yeah. It, it is kind of their comp, isn't it? Like, this is literally Kawhi's comp. Why don't they yeah. mirror? I think they just play Rogue Mage Paladin. Yeah, that's like, good too. Just play Rogue Mage Paladin. I mean, Brain, I, it's something we haven't seen too much, but in the past, that's been a composition that devastates Windwalker Monks. Um, and it's going to give them a little bit more control of the match. A little, maybe a little less safety, not having the Shadow Priest there, but definitely more control. Uh, I would say with the Fire Mage, um, they'll be able to do their setups. I mean, that's they, they, these guys are known for the Fire Mage Paladin. I mean, Seralium and Brain. Um, yeah, they play it with the Rogue, they play it with the Windwalker Monk, they play it with the Warrior. It's basically the composition that has you know, it's paid dividends for them in terms of their success. So I, I really want to see Seralium here in uh, this game number three because. I kind of worry that the way Cloud9 is playing this, um, if they don't make a change, this is going to be a 3-0.
Well, you gotta get, you gotta, I don't know, do something about Chan because right now he's uh, he's basically running away with the series. I mean, Wealthy Man and doing his job, of course, and, and uh, so is Flop, but uh, Chan is just those preemptive plays is what allows him to actually stay aggressive. If he, he, if he tanks those kidneys and Drake gets full uptime, then Chan just has to run the whole time and he's not gonna have that offensive pressure, which is what uh, what's uh, making it difficult for Kawhi. And now this map, Chan won't have that much space to work with, but at the same time, if uh, he gets pre grapples, he gets pre, you know, um, your paralysis and things like that, he can definitely go and uh, do a lot of damage on this map as well, because Prev is not gonna have that much room to work around with as well. Small map makes sense no matter what Kawhi want to do here. Um, just there's less space for Chun Li to see where they're attacking, and so you can't preempt as, <laughs> as easily. It's reading the matrix, um, it just yeah. reduce the radius of matrix detection by Chun Li uh, by ten percent. They're not changing comp. Um, I think it's also likely that um, if Chun Li wasn't getting all of these plays, maybe he's just dead, and the Shadow Priest Rogue might be their best option into the other comps Cloud Nine have. Um, so if they have to go into the game after this, they want to be prepared to be able to blind lock it um, because it's been so close. Like, it, it feels like it's been so close. Even that game might not have ended if the sack was one second faster. Uh, the yeah. pod would be alive, Drake would be alive, and then what flops out of mana. So <laughs> like that game could have still gone to Kawhi, uh, and this map will really limit Chun Li's ability. Maybe they regret picking the big map. Wait, was it? It was Kawhi that picked the big map, right? Maybe they regret yeah. picking the big map. Because it, it gave Chun Li so much space to figure out what what their plan was and, and stop them. Yeah, I mean that's certainly a possibility. So I I feel like at this point, um, the truth is, even if we see Kawhi lose this, uh, there's there's a reasonable chance they'll they'll be able to make it into the finals. And so I feel like what they want to do is probably just get as many data points as possible. These games are close. There's no doubt about it. Game number one. Prev died without using dispersion, and they still had other cooldowns also. So that that's game number one. You die with dispersion. You know, you kind of got to shrug that one off. Game number two, you know, literally half a second on sacrifice, and Drake lives there, and they can continue. Plus, I feel like Chun Li played the game of his life in terms of offense and defense. So if those things don't happen, Kawhi can definitely still win this series. So I respect the fact that they're just going to keep going uh, with this composition, despite being down 0-2 right now. Uh, that's what makes this team so special. Let's see if they can take down Cloud9 or if Cloud9 is going to walk away with the 3-0. Yeah, let's see if they can do it here. Uh, Cloud9 uh, got Kawhi here on match point, but Wealthy Man right now is taking massive damage. Flop is an Amber of Justice. Wealthy Man will recover. They're nicely done with his alter time, but they did use the Trinket and the Guardian there for Flop. Could potentially look to exploit that. Prep now, though, taking huge hits here from Mr. Chun Lee. Blessing of Protection is active onto Prep. Wealthy Man does manage to steal it off. They get a sheep here onto Brain. Kidney shot onto Wealthy Man, and he is playing that Shimmer again, I think, because he just got a full kidney shot, and it looks like Wealthy Man will be the target once again in this matchup. Double Dragon's Breath coming up from Wealthy Man, and it, this might be a double-edged sword. Wealthy Man will definitely be a loss less, uh, less tanky, but at the same time, John will have full uptime, which has been a recipe for success here for Cloud9. Let's see what they can get done here. The spell steal counter spell does not come in time there for Wolfman on that big heal from a brain. Wolfman now caught up in the kidney shot, but a good backup here from Chan Lee. Gets a nice uh, disarm there to go for the detox. Wolfman, though, dangerously low. Of course, he uses ice block, full sap on the flop. He gets massive spelled out. Wolfman might just die here. Go for the sheep onto brain. They get the paralyzed there onto Drake. And he's on fire. We got a stun on the flop. Can they do anything to keep both men in the fight? He's kiting. And he manages to survive there with the ray negative of Negative ray. But it might be negative, the smoke bomb, but it will be an overly positive ray right there. The half gets all rays. But now <laughs> they need to get something going offensively because Kawhi is just one setup away from winning the game. Yeah, I think Wealthy Man's logic here is to play Shimmer because they wanted to go Windwalker on this map, but now they're just killing Mage. This is looking like a really tough game for Cloud9 here. So far behind. Can they keep it up? Can they turn it around? What are their options? Drake still has a trinket, but no cloak. Rev is getting blasted. He's interrupted. This is their chance. Can they slip through? No, Brain denies it with a big heal. His cooldowns will be blocked. 
Got Drake mind controlled into Ring of Frost, but he is able to connect to the Shadow Step to Rote. Trev is trying to push forward to finish Wealthy Man. We see Drake's soul shape, full kidney shot, gripped by Flop back to the fence line, but they're pushing in aggressively. Full blind is Flop going to trinket Guardian Spirit here. It's not a vendetta. He wants to try and be greedy if he can. Nice dismantle there onto Drager. Grab a weapon to stop the sap. Flop is still silenced, but there's no cooldowns committed just yet. I think Flop is making a wise decision. He gets away without having to use the trinket. He can line that up with the vendetta in the near future. Prev getting pressured on match point. Cannot afford any mistakes. Rain connects big heals and stabilizes him now. Full stun onto Wealthy Man. Vendetta gonna get popped. Massive damage. Is Guardian Spirit going to be enough? They're gonna proc it if he doesn't pop Ray of Hope here soon. I think they did proc it. They might just kill him through the proc. Flop is still stunned up. Trying to sit through the stun lock. Now into the blind night trinket Ray. Trying to stabilize Wealthy Man here, but his Serenity is a few seconds away. They might be able to make it negative. Doesn't look like it. Wealthy Man bouncing back into the fight once again. They stun up Drake, but Cloud9 needs some offense. They aren't creating any openings. They're just staying alive and slowly burning down their resources. Drake denies that attack with evasion. They grip Wealthy Man. Drake Shadow says full kidney shot. Going to connect. Can they follow up? Silence on the flop. This could be it for him. Wealthy Man so low. Drake looks to close up the match. Gets grappled once again. He's just punching Fan of Knives and doing whatever he can. Fist of Fury, spinning crane kick, trying to pressure Drake away, knocking him away with the Ring of Peace. Wealthy Man trying to use that to his best of his ability, but Drake is going to run around the side, reconnect onto Wealthy Man and keep the pressure going. Stun onto Drake, paralyzed onto Brain, trying to get sneak in a kill here to steal away game three. Can they find the steal? Doesn't look like it. Drake is stable and Wealthy Man stunned up once again. No crowd control breakers, and I think this is it for Cloud9 in game three. Kawhi are going to be putting a point on the board. Wow. I, I mean, this was a lot of aggression coming in from Kawhi. I, I feel like Flop was just... I mean, his playtime in this game was probably like 20% or something like that. He was CC'd 80% of the game. Uh, just oh, silence, man. cheap shot, kidney shot, hammer of justice, just tons of crowd control out on the Flop. And uh, we'll see if Cloud9, they go for the one shot, but it is going to be a void shift. So close call there. Chun-Li trying to go for it. Maybe he can take down Prev. It, there's no way, right? He's got dispersion. But I mean, don't read it. It's a two versus three. Prev might have to trade out the dispersion. Not going to. He's got the fade. He's got the dispersion. That is likely going to be a tap out from Cloud9. But Kawhi on the small map. I mean, that was a convincing amount of pressure onto Wealthy Man this game. The consistent kidney shots with tons of crowd control on the flop, even though Windwalker Monks are typically pretty good uh, dealing with the assassination rogue and helping the team out with peels. It didn't seem like Chun-Li was able to do it um, this game as effectively. And as a result, Kawhi will walk away with a, a win. Yeah, this just shows that uh, the Blazing Soul build is just so crucial uh, as the mage, uh, even though they won with it, uh, with the Shimmer in, in game number one, uh, it's just too devastating every single time you're getting kidney shot as a mage you can't do anything and uh, it's going to be a shiv and it's going to be you know some type of defensive pool unused and uh, sure you can get the detox you can get some help from the monk but ultimately uh, it won't matter that much when you're just being locked down so much and you're playing a mage so wealthy man uh, i like that he went for the build and i can, it makes sense because he wanted to just let the chun the chun lee show continue but uh, ultimately, you can see first kidney shot, Wealthy Man drops dangerously low, almost going down here, uh, uh, taking huge hits of damage, barely survives, and then uh, he manages to recover somewhat. And then the next time there's a kidney shot, he's just going to go down again. And this is without Vendetta. And now they're trying to get aggressive here onto Drake, paralyzed onto Brain. Nice setup. But Prev is free casting heals in the back line. Shadow Step Kick onto Wealthy Man into uh, a kidney shot here once again with the Vendetta. And it's just overwhelming amounts of damage. DR Leg Sweep coming out, and there. And there it is um so just every single time he gets kidney shot it's just too much damage coming out basically wealthy man just can't deal with it uh unless he can blink those stuns and get that blazing soul so i expect wealthy man to swap uh, his um uh, his build uh, back to the tank mage and i'm expecting us to go to a large map where chun can be the target and kind of kite um because that game number two Although it was, uh, you know, maybe not like a super hard convincing victory. That was their most convincing victory uh, where I didn't see like any huge openings for Kawhi. So I think we're going to go back to something similar uh, to that. And it's going to be up to uh, the man on C9 to try to close it out. It's going to be tough for them though, for sure. Here on Domain makes a lot of sense. And uh, why are you going to lock in the same matchup? And I think for Cloud9, we're going to see the same thing as well. What about Mage Lock? They could Mage Lock. Here in Domain. I wouldn't actually mind it, to be honest with you. I feel like it's not that bad of a matchup. I'd actually rather... If I was the Mage Lock, I'd rather fight the Shadow Priest team than a, 
a fire mage team, but they're going with it. I I actually am a little afraid for wealthy man. That was a, like, I mean, they had a lot of pressure. If they continue uh, what we saw in that game, like occasionally getting the cross CC on Chun Li, but just dumping everything on a flop and uh, putting those kitty shots on a wealthy man, Prev just dispelling those barriers, which are really really powerful. You know, um, it, it seems like they can definitely take this mage down. They did it in the last game. Uh, I think that's probably going to be their line of play. Just even though Chun Li is getting, you know, a, a lot of nice plays with dispelling the sepsis, with getting the grapple weapon, just kind of ignore them and try to push through that. Just worry about controlling flop and uh, really keep Wealthy Man on the back foot. I wonder if Wealthy Man actually just changes his build in this one. He hasn't yeah, played Blazing um, Soul, right? There's no way. I think he's, there's no way he doesn't play it. Like that game, he got absolutely destroyed. So I'm expecting Wealthy Man to go back to the good old tank mage and... Uh, it's going to be Chun Li. That's going to be the main target, I think, for Kawaii and uh, for Cloud9. They're going to need to have that multiple point pressure onto the Rogue and onto the Shadow Priest. And uh, if they can find that and they can have a high uptime, Chun can kind of deny some of those kidney shots. I think that's uh, how they're going to be able to win. Um, but it's going to be tough because Kawaii typically is that team that just gets better and better during a series. Um, so let's see. And they do it. Game number four here. Kawhi on match point. This is the upper bracket final. If they lose here, they will be going down to the lower bracket to fight off against three and a half men. Another rogue team threatening Cloud9 if they go down there. Uh, that last game looked so good for Kawhi. It's almost like they were just warming up in the first two games. Let's see if Chun Li can close it out here. Leg sweep on Prev behind the pillar. Bone dust through, but Drake is in position to peel. Is he going to go for it? Looks like a fear onto the images is going to shut down Chun Li's assault. Now they're turning it around, going after Wealthy Man here in the opening stage. They grip Drake away from the Fist of Fury. Bring a piece, knocks Prev out in the midfield. Combustion's rolling. Massive pyros in onto Prev. The brain is ready with big heels. Stabilizing, now charging in towards flop. Hammers are down, no trinket. They're dropping smoke bomb, but a grapple, pre-grapple on the bomb. Stops Drake from connecting onto Wealthy Man. They're still going for blinding light on flop. There's still no trinket. Quicking palm on Chun-Li. It's three versus one onto Wealthy Man. Can they get caught and block here? Drake is in. Stealth opening with Garot, looking to shadow step, reconnect in a moment. And Wealthy Man still playing Shimmer. He could easily go down. Dragon's Breath onto Drake. It's instantly dispelled. Cross Nova going to get broken out. Wealthy Man now into another kidney shot. And they're just going to train him. Start to finish. They're relying 100% on Chun Li to carry the game. Can Chun Li carry the game here for his team with the Shimmer Mage build? Wealthy Man gets a sheep onto Brain, setting up the team for possibilities here onto Drake, but I don't think they have any damage unless Chun Li wants to shove it with no stun. Flop is trying to reset that chastise with Smite. If he can get a stun here for Drake, Chun Li does have a lot of damage. He's sitting on the leg sweep, a paralyzed leg sweep. Could be an opportunity, but Flop is stunned up into a full fear from Prev. The grapple weapon Drake. And they're trying to go for the kill now onto Prev. I don't really like the swap onto Prev. I, I feel like his leg sweep on Drake could have just ended the game. They're going to bop Prev. Wealthy Man in trouble. He's down at 10%. He spell steals the Blessing of Protection, removing the bleeds for a moment, allowing him to recover. Cloud9 seem to be stabilizing. Big damage onto Prev. He's on the run. That Soul Shade swap back to Drake. Gets gripped away. Plays back and forth between these teams, but Cloud9 are a lot more solid here on Imperian Domain than on Hook Point. A lot more room. Wealthy Man goes for Ring of Fire, but I don't think he actually hits anyone there. Shadow Step Kidney Shot coming in from Drake. Flop is going to be able to grip him away. Looks like Flop will fade as well. Try to preemptively fade. Crowd control. Now Brain can move in, but he gets intercepted. Nicely done by Wealthy Man getting the Dragon's Breath. Brain then going to be using his Fleshcraft to immune the Polymorph. Such high level plays from both these teams. It's quite a pleasure to watch. I mean, Drake's going to continue this push here on a wealthy man, just making more space, making it difficult for Prev to be there to dispel, which is so important for the offense. Unfortunately, Dragon's Breath is going to be missing, but Drake does get leg swept. So uh, Chun Li coming in with some control, silence on wealthy man, still crowd control on flop. It gets blinded into a fear. It's a diminishing return quite heavily, though. So flop will be able to connect his Guardian Spirit and ultimately keep Wealthy Man alive. But this is just unrelenting pressure from Kawhi. Oh. Wealthy Man, he's going to cauterize. This is going to be a block as well. Where is this damage coming from? I mean, I can't believe the damage Kawhi is able to put out here onto Wealthy Man. Uh, and now they don't have any cooldowns left. I mean, Wealthy Man is so vulnerable. He's got no trinket, no cauterize. Flop luckily has his trinket, but Guardian Spirit's a three-minute cooldown. I feel like yep. Kawhi, they might be able to actually pull off the reverse sweep. Yep, Kawhi definitely moving closer and closer. And it is all sponsored by the Shimmers here right now. Because Wealthy Man is just dying over and over. Every single time these kidney shots connect, 
it's going to be a cooldown. And uh, right now they proc the Guardian and they're looking to potentially proc the Pod Tender here as well. But big damage coming out from Wealthy Man right now, dropping the Ring of Fire as well with that concussion, trying to reset some of his cooldowns, trying to get a little bit of time here. Beautiful swap there onto Drake. That will be a big heal though from Brain just deflecting it. And uh, now, once again, it's going to be Wealthy Man on the back foot. Blob has a ray of hope, but that's about it. And he has his trinket, but uh, how good is that going to be for him? Let's see. What can they do? Brain's moving vendetta. in. Smoke bomb. That's his vendetta. It's going to be the ray of hope. Nice blink into sheep there, but it's going to be a DR sheep. And now Drake will continue the onslaught. That vendetta is still ticking here onto Wealthy Man, so Drake's still going to be doing extra damage. Nice blinks here coming out from Wealthy Man, looking to get some distance here. And this is really where Sean needs to shine. He needs to get something going offensively. He needs to get some pressure here. Uh, but they don't have the crowd control, unfortunately, right now. Just Wealthy Man trying to survive, trying to make it difficult for the kidney shots to land. Nice disarm here by Chan on the kidney shot. They blind flop. If they get flop trinket here, they have absolutely nothing to work with. On the side of C9, they pull him off prep. He gets dispelled. Shadow step kick from Drake. Nice Nova by Wealthy Man. And Flop will sit through that blind. Yeah, able to keep Wealthy Man alive, so that's at least some uh, resemblance of defense available still for Cloud9, but they need pressure right now. They're going after Drake here, doing a lot of work onto him. Beautiful uh, deflection, though, from Brain once again with the wings. Big pressure coming out onto Prev that will force out his dispersion, so at least they managed to get that with the Bone Dust Brew. I think it was actually a Bone Dust Brew proc, and now for Wealthy Man, uh, his combustion is down as well, so they're going to need to build that, that momentum, build that distance. Between Drake and Wealthy Man, because the next time he connects with the kidney shot, it will be probably now actually. He just used that mark for death, so he has the combo points for it. Link coming out from Wealthy Man and Drake looking to chase him down, but Chan Li is just making it super difficult for him, slowing him down here. And uh, he's doing a great job just slowing Drake and making it as annoying as possible. Tries to spinning crane kick him out of his vanish, but now Chan in a kidney shot. That's great for Wealthy Man because he doesn't have to sit through that now. He has his trinket as well for the next kidney shot, so. Wealthy Man getting his ice block back as well with that shifting power has actually put C9 in a situation where they've kited long enough to actually survive for a little bit, but Brain getting full mana basically from that drink. And that was a factor to why C9 were able to win on Asha mains was the mana lead that they had. Now they're going to need to try to take prep down, but Wealthy Man in the back line gets beautiful Ray of Hope. Can they make it a negative though? That is a question. I don't think so. He has Guardian on him and Wealthy Man <laughs> will survive from 1 HP to full HP. But again, the Hawaii is just unrelenting with the pressure here onto Wealthy Man. Yeah, but Prev is slowly running out of options here. If Chun-Li can carry the game, Chastise done, but Prev pre-stuns Chun-Li on the Chastise. Siphine is down on Wealthy Man. They're pushing for the kill. One second away from Ice Block. It's available here for Wealthy Man. He probably has to press it right now. He's so low, trying to blink away. Desperation, Polymorphs on Drake, trying to hold onto the Ice Block, trying to retreat, but Prev is going for the kill and forces Ice Block with the Shadow Crash, faking out the Master Spell, faking out the Interrupts, lands the Master Spell, going for the kill. Flop is half blinded. Is he going to trinket here? Overlap with the Ice Block. They're turning it around on Prev. Prev has options, though. It would be a mistake for him to go down. He's going to just trade the dispersion and play the situation out cautiously. Drake going to pop evasion in case they swap to him as well. Baiting Chun Li in a bad position, maybe to crowd control him on his images, but he has fear and he's not fearing the images here. He's saving it aggressively, perhaps, but they stunned up now. Drake and Apollo are big damage coming out from Chun Li. It's still match point for Cloud9. If they can clutch it out here onto Prev, Brain trying to get big heals. They fear Chun Li. Trying to set up damage onto Wealthy Man. Flop trying to reposition mana is so limited for them. Flop has another round of Guardian Spirit and Ray of Hope to save Wealthy Man. But after that, there's nothing. They have Combust, though. They're ripping out Combust. Trying to steal the kill here onto Drake. Drake gets pulled to safety. They purge off the Combust. Ring of Peace. Shadow stepping over. It's reconnect. Wealthy Man blinks away. Trying to reset. Drake manages to Soul Shape. Connecting the Kidney Shot. Where's the Leap of Faith? Doesn't look like they have it. Wealthy Man blinks out of the bomb. Does he have the healing to stabilize? They drop the Ray of Hope. They drop the Guardian Spirit, but they're swapping to Chun Li as well. Rot pressure from the Shadow Priest is starting to stick here at 17% dampening. And I think Kawhi are going to be running them over at this point. They have full control. They have so many options to stay alive, and they are overwhelming. Well, Wealthy Man, Drake is all over him, corroding the heals from Flop, going for the kill on the Wealthy Man, another kidney shot, no trinket for five on Wealthy Man, no heals for Flop, and they proc the pod, and they will be taking that down as Kawhi tie it up two to two with ever increasing confidence. We're going to a game five, Kawhi. I mean, it really does feel like with this team, like getting being up 2-0 in a series is like you've just you're just getting started because you're making them mad you're you're making them play even better and you can see kind of the frustration uh from flop there at the end this team does this time and time again they'll be down 0-2 and then they reverse sweep they just figure something out they flip a switch 
And in this game, um, in this series so far, that switch has been just go after Wealthy Man, really punish him for playing the Shimmer build, not being able to blink out of stuns. You have the offensive purge coming in from Prev and lots of crowd control with the assassination rogue Shadow Priest Paladin, making uh, Flop's job really hard here. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think it's just the build. Uh, I, I, I can kind of understand why they want to go for it. Now they have the big map and they wanted to try it out maybe on the big map as well. But uh the, the only real like win that i saw was when he was playing tank match and they won on ash in the first game a bit, a bit of a i don't, I don't want to say lucky but you know uh, definitely the stars aligned at the right place this was a nice play though from ultimate uh, shimmer used the, his alter time right there before uh, with, with his human racial and then teleported back at the ray the connection there survives and then uh tries to uh, get aggressive here onto drake actually this is where they paralyze brain into a ring of frost uh, uh, Wealthy Man gets kicked, gets the Ring of Frost here onto Brain, and uh, Drake with a nice Garrote there onto Flop as well, and then they follow that up with a Silence, and at this point, there's no more answers. Flop doesn't have anything to work with, no mana as well. He's kind of done his job as a healer at that point, and they just couldn't find the kill before that, and um, unfortunately for C9, they will be going through a Game 5, and Kawhi, you said it yourself, man, uh, this is just a team that just gets better and better and better throughout the series. They always just uh, seem like the team that just adapts the best uh, in mid in mid series. But I also want to say that I think it is a bit of a throw from Cloud9 to play Shimmer now. Uh, they win one game with it, kind of luckily, and then throw two games with it. I'm not a big fan of that. I think it's time to go back to the tank mage for sure. Um, and then I try think to play every game. That mage. I think they've actually played uh, every they game. Did they own I think so, yeah. He was playing Shimmer every single game so far. Mm -hmm. But I feel like Kawhi is punishing it a lot more in these last two games for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. I, I think he should be playing Tank Mage if he's not playing it at least. Because, uh, yeah, it's just very punishing. Every single Walker kidney DK. is just going to do a lot of work. Windwalker DK? Play Windwalker D There's no <laughs> way they play Windwalker DK. Why not? I would be I would be blown away. I'd be absolutely blown away. Is it's the comp that the Golden Guardians have struggled with. Like they've struggled with these Windwalker DK clays, but no, Valorant Sewer is a really small map. <laughs> Why would they go to the I swear we're just gonna question the map pick every time, aren't we? Like Yeah, why, probably. Why would you go to Dalaran? <laughs> Empyrean was fine. I feel like. What 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 about Empyrean was wrong? It wasn't the map. Like maybe the I feel like the like in my opinion, the main problem in these games is that Wealthy Man and Shun Li aren't actually able to connect on the same target ever. Like, Wealthy Man is just dead and running. He's scared the whole game. And it's basically up to Shun Li to just solo uh, Prev, which is definitely not an easy thing to do. Uh, especially with Prev, if he's just landing defensive fears and brain's not in crowd control, like, I don't really see it happening. So maybe their line of thinking here is we need to go to the smaller map. We need to be able to actually connect CC on the brain. I, I really wonder. I, ca I can't help but feel like Wealthy Man at the very least should be like an orc. Like they should be horde for this matchup. I mean, maybe having the two trinkets is nice, but I feel like the stun reduction would, if he wants to play Shimmer, I feel like he should be at least be Relentless potentially um, or be orc could be better. But uh, I'm really curious to see what kind of adaptations they do make because I fear on this small map, if they don't change something, Hawaii is just going to win in the exact same way. Yeah, I think you're spot on with that. And uh, let's see what they decide to do here. Uh, only one more game of uh, tunneling the mage potentially for Kawhi before they are advancing to the grand finals. And uh, for Cloud9, uh, I mean, this has been uh, a strong showing for them regardless, taking Kawhi all the way to game five. But it would be a little bit of a throw uh, with uh, such a nice lead in the series. But uh, this is what Kawhi does. And uh, let's see if they can uh, repeat that last game performance here on Dalaran Sewers. The man's going to be moving in. We're going to take a look at his spec as soon as possible as well. Going to go after Prev here uh, in the opening stages. Sean Lee gets disarmed. And Wealthy Man is playing Blink Stun here. So uh, he's going to survive that. Dragon's Breath onto Drake. Stun onto Flop. Wealthy Man going for Sheep here potentially. Doesn't look like he's going to be able to find it. And uh, Wealthy Man will at least survive that setup now. And he showed uh, his hand now. He showed that he's playing uh, Blink Stun. So uh, for Kawaii, they're probably going to go after Chun right now. And Prev is actually taking huge damage, though, with Brain in a CC. And 
they are actually going to get a Ring of Frost there. Oh. Brav is super low! And no. they pop him! They, the I don't, I, I, no, they didn't sack it. They sacked sack Prev. Yeah, they sacked Prev. Because you can see the buff on Prev. And they just like that erase no Kawaii way. from the game. Look at Flop. He can't believe it. They're going to the finals. Cloud9 pull it off here in the finals game. And uh, what a way to do it. One big, work, one big burst. Basically the same way they started out the series is how they are going to end it. I can't okay. believe that game is, I can't believe it either. Just ended like that. Like <laughs> They've been playing it out like so close. Nailbiter, like they're getting better and better every game. And then this game, they're just like, nah, we're sending every button. Prev's dead. We don't care. It's just <laughs> send every cooldown, send the entire fleet, finish the match. I don't know if they weren't anticipating the spell steal on the bop, because you'll see that in the replay. They use a blessing of protection on Prev. Uh, right in this game, they're assuming Wealthy Man is still playing Shimmer. So they open on Wealthy Man with Kidney. Oh, he's Blink Stun. Now the first Kidney, Vendetta, is out of the game. Chun Li doesn't have to worry about it, which means Chun Li can just be aggressive and go wherever he wants. And he's going to go after Prev on that Shadow Priest. We've seen Shadow Priest struggle with Windwalker Monks, and you'll see that struggle in a moment as he tries to retreat with the Soul Shape. They pop a huge stun here, tries to ring him downstairs, gets the stun, pops the Bone Dust. They bop instantly, spell stolen right off from Prev, so he quaking palms Chun Li, but Pyros are still flying in from the bust. They drop a Siphon, he thinks he's fine, but Brain's still in CC with that Ring of Frost, and the Trinket Sacrifice comes out too late. Drake tries to drop a defensive smoke bomb uh, to protect the seed, but with the sacrifice already on cooldown, uh, there's nothing really left for Brain to save it, and Cloud9 are gonna take it. Why going down to the lower bracket, they have to face three and a half men, uh, once again in the lower bracket side, it's not very often to see Kawhi on that lower side, but North America appears to be leveling up here this season. Yeah, most certainly. It's it's uh, been quite a different story here in the past. You know, it's kind of Kawhi always winning these, always up in that upper bracket, very rarely dropping games. So definitely weird to see them here, you know, in the lower bracket, facing off here against three and a half men in this next series that we've got coming up. Um, and they could very well end up in third which would be a very low placement for them for this season. And just historically as a team, how consistent they've been with getting, you know, those first and second places. So we'll see what they do, uh, but they are going to be up against three and a half men. Like I said, a three and a half men having dropped down uh, to the lower bracket quite some time ago. So they're kind of ready. I feel like they're, you know, they've been warming up down there for quite some time. And uh, Kawhi may just have a difficult time. So we will have to see that series is going to determine who gets third and who will be getting uh, either second in that grand finals at four if they can you know beat cloud nine of course will win the fourth cup for north america so we're going to get to a break and when we come back it's going to be Kawhi facing off against three and a half men very shortly um but what's your take on this fan quick prediction before we head off here mm, Kawhi, three and a half men uh, i feel like we just saw uh three and a half men kind of show it's just, it's really hard to say. I mean, they just beat Golden Guardians running this exact same composition, but the matches were really close. And I, I feel like Kawhi, they, I don't know. They might be a little bit more polished at it. I think they're a little bit better into RMP. So I, I feel like Kawhi is going to have a little bit more of an edge in this one. I would probably favor them going into it. Okay, well, we'll soon find out. We will see after this break coming up here, Kawhi versus Three and a Half Men.
We are going straight into the game. It is the NA Lower Finals winner of this determines who moves on to the Grand Finals to face off against Cloud9 and who will stay in third place. It's Kawhi versus Three and a Half Men, game number one. I'm really confused right now. Uh, three and a Half Men locked in assassination in the blind pick. I mean, they they had to know what they were walking into. They had just beaten Golden Guardians with subtlety. The assassination wasn't looking that good. And now they're going to go with assassination again. So literally makes no sense to me whatsoever, but we'll see. Uh, I mean, maybe they know something that I don't. Maybe they've made some adaptations. Uh, it's going to be RMP versus the Shadow Priest Rogue Paladin. Right now, Drake oh. and Calvish right on top of each other. Calvish does manage to get the sap, but Nuke breaks it with a Nova. Can't really blame him. Gets the Dragon's Breath into a Polymorph, and they are going after Brain. Can they take down Brain? Nice grip there by Prev, but it's a lot of damage. It's Polymorph it. Polymorph, but that was Vendetta, and they didn't get any cooldowns. I really I don't understand why he's playing Assassination. Well, uh, in the past, they have played Sub into uh, Kawhi and uh, lost, so uh, I don't know if maybe the matchup between these two teams have evolved to the, to the point where you have to be Vendetta. Uh, maybe Absturge on Fala just isn't as good as Brain. I don't know. It could be a lot of reasons, but right now, Nuke getting absolutely destroyed here by Drake and the rest of Kawhi and Drake going to be caught up in that panda stun. They're going after Brain. Brain, immediate blessing of protection here. No kidding around. Full blind onto Kearney. Who are they going to go after here now on the side of Kawhi? They get the potential here for a sap. Drake will go for it, and they will go after Calvish here. Big damage onto Calvish, but he will immediately vanish here before uh, they can do any real damage to him. And he will hold on to his Cloak of Shadows with that play. Now Drake here could be the target. Uh, Kearney's still in crowd control. Nuke is taking a lot of damage. Kalish as well. Everybody's just dying here on the side of three and a half men. Finally, he's going to catch a heal. No, the ray. He mind controls the ray on the flash heal. It's still a positive ray, but it doesn't top him. Now three and a half men going after Drake here. Drake will survive now going after Kalish. Big kidney shot. Kalish going to trink it. Gets gripped back. Nice panda racial on the Kearney. It breaks though. Brain is moving in. Can he find it? Nice fade by Kearney. Into a fear onto Brain, but Brain, I don't know if he actually used his blinding light there or not. They're swapping to Brain here. Big damage coming in. Brain might have to use his divine shield. He's holding onto it. Trades out the Aegis, and this is where a less experienced Paladin for sure uses his divine shield, but Brain manages to survive with that trade, and now here comes the pressure turnaround. I think that might be it for Calvish. Should they have a follow-up stun? They have the War Stomp. No Cloak of Shadows. Full Silence. They proc the Guardian. Do they have anything more on Kearney? Hammer of Justice is available. Full blind. Brain might just bop this or bubble this and trade out the Hammer of Justice onto Kearney. He doesn't do it. He's keeping his Hammer of Justice for later. And uh, now, uh, why you know, uh, one setup away from winning the game, whereas three and a half men need at least two. And looking for triple crowd control, double dragon's breath into likely triple fear as they set up a stun on the brain with the swap into the kidney. Brain trinkets out. Will this trinket be enough to match the vendetta? Likely dispelling off that sepsis, an important opponent. Calvish now retreating away. They got the trinket. The damage is done. It's time to retreat. The hit is over. Time to run. Try and get into a better position for the next opportunity, which is a kidney combust. And I think that's actually a good adaptation by three and a half men. Send a bust on a kidney. Send a vendetta on a kidney. Send a bust on, on a kidney. Send a vendetta. You're going to cut down the Paladin's cooldowns by half if you keep threatening enough damage to kill him that way. You're going to go after Drake a little bit behind the pillar, but it's more or less just to stall him. Galvish is trying to spend energy to reset his Vendetta. Looks like Drake has his, though, as he interrupts Kearney. Is he going to pull the trigger on it? Going for the full blind. Vendetta has been popped. Galvish trinket cloaks. Is it going to be enough? Looks like it will be. He's thwarted away. Drake swaps back to Nuke to pressure across the board into two players. Sap out of the blind. No trinket. Galvish is in trouble. Trying to re-stealth with the Vanish. Manages to get popped out of stealth. Cheap shots Drake, but Nuke is in trouble. They're going to proc his pod, I think. He's on 1%. How have they not killed him at this point? Pops Blazing Barrier. Overwhelming damage out right now from Kawhi. It's a double kill for them. They proc Calvish is hot and nuke could fall over at any moment they are gonna stomp over their bodies this was insane pressure from Kawhi. just start to finish like man it was a struggle for kearney yeah kearney <laughs> i feel like three and a half men in general they really struggled with this one 
Y asserting dominance. And I mean, I, I really think this team, they want their rematch in the finals. I don't think they're happy. I mean, yeah, all three of their losses, uh, definitely unfortunate. So they got to focus up in this lower bracket. They're trying to take down three and a half men, but I'm still really confused because honestly, I, I mean, the series we just saw play out, I mean, maybe it's a Kawhi specific thing that they don't want to play the subtlety rogue, but this didn't look great. Once again, I, I really feel like we're going to see three and a half men just go back to the subtlety and that's just going to be what they have to play in this matchup for the rest of the series. Yeah, the thing is, <clears throat> three and a half men have lost with sub into Kawhi in the past, so... Uh, and they went assassination uh, as like an adaptation to that. So I feel like with three and a half men, they just don't know what to do anymore uh, against Kawhi. Um, Golden Guardians, I guess, just uh, aren't as polished in the matchup, maybe. Um, so the sub works out because you have, uh, you know, you're, you're not going up against Brain. But uh, I'm not sure. We'll see. And uh, maybe they do swap over to that sub rogue. Uh, it definitely makes a lot more sense on paper. But here, nice setup coming out. They don't have Trinket on Kearney, full blind, into full sap, nuke. Rotting down, force the ice block, gets master spell, they get a DR fear, and brain here as well, bopping himself to get the hammer of justice this time, finds it, and they find the damage here onto Calvish. Nuked here just uh, trying to survive on one HP, but literally one purge, and uh, just the shadow would definitely kill him there. But uh, they turn their attention onto Calvish uh, because Nuked obviously still has that uh, cauterize to work with as well, and uh, they're able to find the kill. And I mean, look at the damage here Drake uh, doing insane numbers, Prev as well, doubling nuke and uh yeah it's uh kawaii it just looked like the kawaii show from start to finish honestly this game they want that rematch <laughs> they're not gonna let cloud nine get away with that they're they're quickly ramping up through this series so i swear Calvin just needs to go sub i don't know if they were expecting a different comp or something in game one or they wanted to try <laughs> assassin into a different shadow priest rogue team to see if it would work but it just feels like the paladin trades so effectively with the cooldowns of an assassination rogue that it's just not a good idea where subtlety can give you more options and swap and the paladin might have to overlap cooldowns um i i would really rather see calvish go back subtlety for this series i think it seems like it gives them more options and they're just like i, I feel like for three and a half men they're one of those teams that they're kind of all over the place in a good way right like They'll go after one target, and if someone else trinkets to save them, then they'll have stun DR and go after them really quick. And it just seems like that's kind of their comfort um, is playing the subtlety rogue RMP. Um, they, yeah, I, I, that's just it. That's that's the end of my statement. I feel like that's their comfort, <laughs> and I, I really like to see it. The assassination hasn't looked nearly as clean from them. They're doing some nice hit and runs, but overall, it just hasn't been that convincing. Um, from them especially into this composition so i think just go with the subtlety go with what you're best at and, and try to just outplay i think that's what they really have to do if they want to win this series yeah i completely agree they just look way better when they play sub in general uh, of course there's some matchups that kind of require assassination but i'm telling you in the Miriam. past they've lost they, or not mirror uh, not mirror i'm thinking uh, of the, the, the series are blending together i was i don't know why i was thinking <laughs> of this as like uh the last series but all right they're gonna keep in a holy paladin so they want the Holy Paladin to counter the Asa Rogue, which I I think is good. I swear Paladin is the best thing into these Rogue teams. Yeah. Um, and that's that's likely what people are going to start adapting, I think, in, in Europe is more Paladins. Uh, just because it just gives you a hard stop. You can dispel Sepsis, you can bop Vendettas, you can sack to completely counter them. And then when that Sepsis is dealt Ooh. with, you can get aggressive and go where you want to go. So uh, Kearney is flexing here on Paladin to try and give his team a, a bit of an edge. Despite the fact that they just beat the Golden Guardians playing the same comp, uh, they could have just played Subtlety Holy Priest, I feel like. Um, but I guess Kawhi, they, they're respecting them more or something. They, they don't want to match them the same way that they did the Golden Guardians, or they don't think they'd be capable of doing it. So they're trying some pretty weird stuff now at this point, although this isn't necessarily weird. I think Paladin isn't weird. <laughs> it's just weird for them, right? I like guess. Paladin guess, is, a, uh, is a decent pick, but it's weird for them because... It's still RMP. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they're going to be playing RM Pala right now, and I, I really don't mind it. Like you said, Paladin is going to be super effective against the Assassination Rogue, and this could be something. I mean, maybe even see Mage Locks start running with a Paladin to kind of deal with these Assassination Rogues, and this is kind of one of those things where now it's nuked on the Fire Mage versus Prev uh, on the Shadow Priest, and which one of these casters uh, will be able to pull ahead. I, I kind of wonder for three and a half men who they're actually going to go after here. Uh, Brain could actually be a really good target. Go after him with like a hammer of justice into a kidney shot uh, with cross on Prev. 
could definitely be strong. So I think three and a half men, they certainly have options. I like that they have this prepared. Uh, I haven't really seen Kearney on Paladin too much. This might be his first time playing Paladin, at least on broadcast. Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, we'll see. We'll see if he can kind of yeah. rise to the occasion. I, I do believe it's his first time playing Paladin. So it's going to be interesting to see what exactly he can get done. Um, and he's going to be going up against Brain, you know. So it's kind of uh, going up against the master here. But I do like that they're, that they're bringing it out. And we are seeing something that we've kind of been uh, seeing in the past. Um, that uh, Paladin, it really is a strong pick into um, a lot of these uh, uh, assassination rogue teams. Because that's been the kind of historic counter. So I really like that more teams are willing to kind of pick that up and uh, and try to use that to their advantage. Um, so yeah, it's going to be good to see uh, what they end up doing in this match and if they can pull out uh, ahead. But you're locking Paladin for the first time in a tournament into Brain on Paladin. So... <laughs> Don't know if that's going to go too well for them. It still has the same struggles of you're going to do a, a, a Hodge go on Brain. What if they go Kearney too? Um, who wins that race? The Shadow Priest versus the Mage. Like the Shadow Priest gives an out to the Paladin, right? You can Trinket Void Shift. That's an extra out that the Mage doesn't necessarily give to the Paladin. Maybe he gets a Dragon's Breath peel, but if that gets cloaked or missed or he's crowd controlled and he can't get there um, or he's not in range, then... He doesn't have a way to save the Paladin. So if this just turns into a Paladin race, uh, I think the Shadow Priest will likely be favored. Um, but we've never seen this played out. Like, Has anyone even played Rogue Mage Paladin yet on broadcast? I don't think they have. They've all been Holy Ever Priests. Ever certainly. This, this, it, during these cups? I don't think so, actually. This is like the first time. They're really trying to experiment here. Um, and but there's, there's his win rate here on Holy Priest. 52% has played it 100% of his games. So Kearney is stepping out of the comfort zone here. Um, and again, teams have been doing this throughout the day, uh, just experimenting in preparation, trying to get a feel, a vibe for what they need to be doing in circuit. Um, and for three and a half men, like there's two teams that run the Shadow Priest Rogue. So if Paladin is just monstrously better, better to find out now um, before they get into the circuit um, and then use that as a tool uh, moving forward. And then we got Brain. Uh, his has been playing Holy Paladin. He's got a high play. I think that must be in previous seasons. There's no way he's a shaman player this time around. <laughs> um, but he's got a sick win loss, like 75% win rate in a tournament setting. Like there's a lot of teams with big names that don't even have positive win rates. Um, so like having that significantly <laughs> of a positive win rate is actually crazy. I swear it is. Like if you look at the win rates across the board, very few teams have above even a 50% win rate on a player. So this is a formidable team, has been for years, uh, and is still looking like a, a wall for three and a half men. I mean, when you're when you're the team that has literally not gotten anything <laughs> you're gonna have first a good or win second, rate. you're probably going to have a good win rate. <laughs> I feel like the math checks out. If you're just winning every series you play, uh, things are going to be looking good. But yeah, three and a half men throwing a bit of a curveball here, locking in the Paladin instead of the Holy Priest, and it's all about comfort. How comfortable is Kearney going to be on that Paladin? What is three and a half men going to be able to get done? And well, I think we'll be able to tell really quickly uh, how good this composition is going to be into Kawhi, and uh, this could just be three and a half men seeing if this is something that they should invest more time into in the future uh, for a team like Kawhi. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is uh, this is the time to kind of test a little bit. Like, sure, you're in the lower bracket final and you're looking to, you know, maybe advance to the grand finals and then take a win. But at the same time, this is the time to kind of get creative and make sure that you're testing everything out and making sure that you uh, are setting up those uh, win conditions for yourself. You are going to see Kalvish here in stealth right now, just uh, waiting, hanging back uh, with the rest of his team. And uh, we're going to see if uh, they can pull this off. It would be a pretty massive statement if uh, Kearney can just come in on his Holy Pilot and then just take the win like that. So let's see if he can pull it off. Disarm onto Drake, blind onto Calvish, stun onto Kearney, into Ring of Frost potentially. Nuke uh, going to corner Brain there in that Ring of Frost. You get a sap onto Calvish. Drake now going to be opening up onto Nuke here. Kearney in a silence, and they get a follow-up. Brain is just kind of trapped in that ring right there, but uh, not actually in crowd control. So, so far, I would say a decent opener for Kawaii. But uh, they haven't actually forced any big cooldowns yet. So, oh my goodness, Drake! He's getting absolutely blasted here. They do trade out the trinket sacrifice. So, uh, uh, correction, uh, 
a good opener for three and a half men. <laughs> Getting big cooldowns from Brain there right off the rip. And now Prev is trying to assist with pressure on Danuk here. Just lobbing out Shadow Rifts and Shadow Volleys over at him. Trying to max out his damage. Kearney trying to stay ahead of the damage by dispelling it. Now Prev and Brain are pushing in aggressively, trying to make their push. Can they get something done here? Calvish restyles, blinds Brain, cheap shots Prev, sets up on Drake with the kidney shot. Nuke is getting a ring of frost, not double, but the polymorph is there anyways. Under Prev, three versus one. Hammers are down onto Drake, trying to take him out here, but evasion is going to pop for him. Dodging the attacks of Calvish. Kidney shotting Calvish now to try and turn around the pressure, but there's no crowd control on Kearney. Kearney's just poking around the corner, getting some big heals. Brain is chasing him down now, but Kearney's on the run, repositioning away, trying to heal Calvish on his way over, but now he's caught by Prev in that psychic horror into a blinding light. Calvish down to half in midfield, trying to close out the game. Calvish shadow steps back into the fight to try and set up some stun locks, but he's still dangerously low. Kearney is silenced out. Is Calvish gonna be able to turn this around? They do recover, and now with the stun onto Drake, he's gonna be on the back foot for a moment. As soon as Brain comes out of these polymorphs, so he'll likely recover as he shadow steps back to Brain. Calvish is going to retreat, look for a re-stealth. Vendetta available on the side of Drake. He's waiting to pull the trigger on that. Who is he going to go after with it? At the moment, Nuke is blinking to safety. Calvish re-stealths clean with no dots. Brain is trying to push in aggressively. Calvish going to open here with Garrote. Kidney sh cheap shot onto Drake. A swap to Brain. Popping that Vendetta buff. Massive damage. Brain bubbles instantly on that. He's actually playing the tank legendary for Paladin. And they procked it in that push, but they're turning it around. Almost taking down Calvish, Cloak of Shadows, a bop trinket at very low HP. That was a clutch turnaround here by Kawhi. However, Brain is going to be an open target. If he's Hammer of Justice, cannot use Blessing of Protection in that lockout. Maybe they can kill him before Forbearance. I don't think so. There's no damage on this kidney shot. No Vendetta, no bust. So Brain easily sits through it. Now they're going to get aggressive. They could go for a kill here or a bubble sack from Kearney to say the least. Getting Krev out of these polys, getting him back on target is going to be important. Brain wants to push, but doesn't really look like he wants to do it just yet. Uh, Kearney's going to pre-sacrifice, anticipating crowd control here, not wanting to use the Divine Shield. Blinding Light, but it's DR'd. Maybe it won't matter. Into a Polymorph, but that's also DR'd. Into a Hammer of Justice. Will Drake fall here? He's behind the pillar. Calvish trying to run away from Drake, actually, it looks like at the moment, uh, as Prev is a side fiend on him. Prev blinks in, gets a double fear, sets up Drake for a Kidney. Full Kidney, hammers on Kearney. Calvish Trinket vanishes immediately. Knows that there's not a lot of cooldowns to trade right now. Going to be his best way to survive this moment. It's just constantly back and forth, but I feel like Kawhi are in the lead here. Yeah, kidney shot though on Brain. Can they turn it around? What is Brain going to do? He's getting incredibly low. It is going to be his trinket and he stays alive, but I believe that was the save by the light as well as the trinket. Um, so Brain will ultimately hold on, but now caught into a full polymorph. It's going to be Calvish on the run with crowd control onto Kearney. And I kind of wonder if we're going to see Kawhi actually go after the Paladin a little bit more, potentially try to go for some swaps on him. I kind of doubt it right now. Calvish, really no outs. If they can connect a big Vendetta, I, I think Calvish realizes he's dead. Like, he's going to need some massive peels. Um, Kearney's going to have to throw in some big healing. Nuke's going to need to drag his rest some spam polymorphs. You can see right now, Drake is in a full blind. They do get a blessing of protection from Brain, but Calvish... He needs to be very careful right now. Silence on Kearney, kidney shot on Calvish, psychic horror on Kearney. What is he going to be able to do? He gets the dispel off, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. Hammer of Justice out of the kidney shot. Calvish is getting so incredibly low. It's going to be the evasion cloak of shadows. Calvish holds oh on. God. Kearney doesn't even use the divine shield. I mean, that's quite unbelievable. Unbelievable. Kearney doesn't use his trinket, doesn't use divine shield. And Calvish will survive with just the dispel there on the sepsis. Now, trying to turn it around here. Can they do it? Nuke in a panda racial. Disarm onto Drake. Full sheep onto Brain. And they connect onto somebody here. It looks like they will be going after Nuke, actually, on the side of Kawhi. Obviously, uh, looking for the restuff. Get shut down. Nuke taking massive damage here, actually, from Drake at this point. Siphon gets immediately killed off there. Kearney in a full oh, line. Brain now getting swapped to here. He will use the Blessing of Protection. It should be enough defense there to stay alive. Nuke now with the Siphon on him. Doing plenty of damage. He's going to blink back to kill off the Siphon there. Nicely done by Calvish. And now here comes um, Hawaii. Full uh, silence onto Kearney. He's going to use the Sacrifice here onto Nuke, but it's not the uh, ultimate sacrifice he's still taking a lot of damage and they force the issue here you need to work the cauterize they need to get a, a little bit more damage here but it looks like nuke will recover here and kearney has no banner left he has no nothing left basically they could even swap the kearney and just take him down or continue this pain train onto nuke full kidney shot secured do they have the damage 
Kearney comes in with the wings and deflects one more time here. I don't even know how he can do this. He has no mana left. But Kearney keeps his team in the fight. And now they're trying to turn it around onto Drake. Full smoke bomb. Kidney shot. Drake will shrink it. Trades out the Eternal Ages now as well. Full sheep with the Prev. He gets dispelled out of that. Brain on one side. Prev on the other side. Drake now pushing in for the kill. And they get any follow-up here onto Kearney. Do they have a silence? Do they have a blinding light? They do. And they silence the trinket of Kearney. Nuked so low here. They don't have any follow-up CC at all. No Hammer of Justice. But Kearney with no mana left. Now he's going to keep Nuke alive. The, the initial Drake, they're trying to get aggressive. Full sheep onto Brain. Drake all over Nuke. Oh, they're not getting him off of him. And Nuke at this point, I think he is going to go down very, very shortly. Currently sitting down for just a little sip there to get a tiny bit of mana to work with. But it doesn't look like he got any. And Nuke at this point will proc the Carterize and will get potted and dropped here by Kawaii. Moving on to match point. I don't like the assassination from Kalvish. I feel like that's got to be what changes, not necessarily Kearney. Although Kearney Pally with sub rub, maybe that's not that bad. Um, but I, I feel like sub is going to be a necessity. Brain is just rotating his cooldown so expertly, just always has an answer to every swap that they try and do. Um, and the Vendetta is just not able to get through all of that defense on their side. So I, I kind of like that they're exper experimenting a bit here with Kearney on different classes. It still seems a little bit odd considering their main comp is the Rogue Mage Priest, which you've seen so dominant in Europe. It's like, why would you even really need to? But at the same time, Europe doesn't have any of these Shadow Priest Rogues really challenging um, that meta at all. Maybe we see Shadow Priest Rogue picked up more in Europe as a result if this tournament swings that way or more in that way um, and as the ladder progresses. But it's just like, look at the cooldowns right now. Drake has Trinket Evasion. They set up a Bomb Poly, but it's like, okay, Trinket Evasion, Vendetta's gone. Uh, Brain still has Trinket, Brain still has Bubble, Brain still has Sack, Prev still has Void Shift, his Trinket's coming up in 15 seconds, your Paladin's out of mana, doesn't really have any cooldowns, like, you don't have any openings here, and it's already six and a half minutes in the game, they never really had, like, a, a checkmate position as the Rogue Mage Paladin, so they're just eventually going to get overwhelmed, and I think the dampening just pay more and more favors to the Shadow Priest in terms of dot damage on multiple targets, especially when the Paladin's out of mana. Like, Kearney just literally can't heal anymore. He's trying to drink, I think, um, while Nuked ends up going down and his cauterized procs. So, like, he comes back, dumps a little bit of heals, but there's really not any left for him at this point. It's very one-sided. I, I I think I've had enough of the, the assassination rogue from Calvish here. Uh, it's, <laughs> Have you? <laughs> it's, it's, it's time to get the sub. I wonder. I, I really wonder. I mean, do we think like a targeting change could work too? They're going for these all ins on brain, but it doesn't seem like they have the damage to really do it. I wonder if they could go for more of like a controlled strategy and uh, go after Prev, try to limit him a little bit more in the matchup because he's getting a lot of damage out. He's getting a lot of dispels out. Um, I mean, look at his damage. He almost triples the damage of nuked in this game on that Shadow Priest. Now, while also simultaneously making Drake's vendetta a lower cooldown so really threatening uh, on that shadow priest and i kind of wonder if they do lock in with the same thing uh if they go after the shadow priest more or what are they going to do are we going to see fuse these are the questions that we'll find out soon the one thing we do know is we're going to tolveron what would they run this map in the pool <sighs> smallest map in the pool wait what he's trolling right <laughs> <laughs> a map that could really use a pool because it's so hard. Why are they doing the it again? I <laughs> swear it wasn't even comp. close. Like the. Uh, <laughs> this. It wasn't even close. Why are they picking it again? <laughs> it's like they're doing it again. <laughs> Why are they doing it again? You sound like you bet your life savings on this game or something. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> why are they doing it again? I, I don't know because it looks better than the Holy Priest version. Yeah, the Holy Priest that like, got double killed in one minute. Yeah, okay, like... that's fine, but just play sub. Like, you don't... You get so they many more sub goes. in the past. I mean, I, I sub is all the rage. Uh, yeah, I think sub pally. Sub pally, one dance, flagellation rogue. I don't know about the one dance flagellation. That sounds a little... <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that one, But, but, but uh, I'm with you on the sub pally. The sub pally, I could see it work. You get a lot of, uh, you know, survivability for the vendettas. You have a sub rogue, so you can just cheap shot the world and get uh, good setups for, for Nuke. I could, I, I'm with you that far. The one dance though, you're on your own. <laughs> it's not Asa anymore. It's just like you get no cross CC. What if, what if they go after Prev? 
As Asa, it's going to be a disperse ago, a fade ago, a sack ago, a bop ago, a bop ago, a bubble go, a Drake appeal ago. Like, it's going to be, a, <laughs> it's going to be like mm. nine goes of just something's going to save him. And then Drake is just free hammering damage on whoever he wants. He's getting Sepsis Vendetta off cooldown, whoever he wants. I, I don't know if attacking the tanky support class and then letting Drake do what he wants is going to be the move. Um, and they also, the, the I feel like it's like, you don't get the night face energy uh, with Kalvish because you don't have a priest anymore. So it's like, play sub, so then you get more setups because your vendetta is going to be really long cooldown. So pairing that up with sepsis is like every two minutes, you get like a sepsis vendetta go, um, maybe every minute and a half um, with the legendary. But I feel like it's not very synergistic to have the Asa Rogue in the pally. It would just be better with a sub, at least for this matchup. In the past, Assassination has definitely been really solid with the Paladin, but yeah. I don't know. I mean, you don't think the same thing would kind of happen with the sub rogue, where they're just rotating through cooldowns infinitely? I guess maybe Drake would be more of a target in that case, but not really sure what three and a half men should do. But personally, I think three and a half men like the the most convincing thing I've seen from rogue mage teams against um, the assassination shadow priest paladin is just play sub, just play sub RMP. That's it. I mean, we saw some really close games from Unitas. I mentioned that at the beginning of the day, and they literally True. just beat Golden Guardians. They were close games, but they also felt like they actually had the team on the back foot a little bit. They had pressure. They had setups. Like It looked a lot better than what we're seeing. So I'm really surprised that three and a half men isn't just trying to go for it. I feel like RMP can definitely win. It seems like it, at least. I'm, I'm certainly not an easy matchup as Kawhi has been beating most of the RMPs or all of them, but I, I, <laughs> like, just watching the games, it feels way better when they're playing sub. It's just yeah, predictable. I, I agree. I, well, I think the sub rogue, like, I, I, I would say since Legion, Asa rogue has been countered by Pali. It's always been, it's always been the same. No matter which version of Asa rogue you look at, it's been, you know, when they had the auto cleanse uh, poison thing, or when uh, you know they just did you trade the you know infinite sacks or. They just trade the uh, spam bobs. Like they always have something, and it, right now it's no difference. Like the paladin is just a great answer. You have wings. They have vendetta. Perfect. If you're not in CC, you can literally out heal it with just a dispel. If you are in CC, you can always just uh, bop the person who's getting vendetta on, or uh, right before, or you can trinket bop him. Uh, you just have so many guaranteed ways to extend the match and rotate with your partner CD. So paladin, it, it, you know, it's a great answer to answer. Hope. Why would you willingly lock in Azeroth? I mean, three and a half men have played sub as well and lost with that, so maybe they just lost their confidence uh, in in the matchup. But historically, it's been all about the sub rogue. Like, if you don't have a sub rogue into a paladin, you are by default at a very big disadvantage unless you're trying to kill them. Uh, which uh, good luck in brain is uh, literally, uh, according to Super T, is the most unkillable paladin in the game. Um, Turning, gonna get sapped here as we get potential. Uh, Final game of the series has started here. Kawhi up in the lead, two to zero. Three and a half men looking to deflect their arm pala. Link Dragon's Breath coming. Is Nuke actually playing Shimmer? Um, because that definitely looked like a Shimmer Dragon's Breath right there. So we're gonna have to take a look at that. He's definitely playing Shimmer because he just blink sheep. So Nuke could become a target, but right now they're going after Calvish. And uh, now I think they realize yeah, they know. Oh, wait, Nuke, <laughs> they know. Yeah, they, they know. All right, Nuke, have fun for the rest of the game. Uh, I think they're just throwing the game away at this point with that. If, if Drake connects at all, like Nuke is going to be on the back foot. We saw how much Wealthy Man struggled in that previous series. So without a pre-grapple weapon from Chun-Li and all the peels he was dishing out, it's going to be tough, I think, to survive. Blind onto Drake. Drake with no trinket here. Falling out of the blind on Brain. Drake's still down at half, but he's turning it around. Massive damage onto Calvish. Trying to retreat back behind the pillar as Kearney sits through a full blind. Manages to successfully sit through it. Brain coming out of the polymorph, but Frost Nova out of line of sight. Trying to walk his way over. Drake has to Soul shape back over to brain big heel gonna connect from him kidney shot kearney rolling up hammers are down setting up three two one clean setup onto drake here waiting to blind the trinket on brain but that blind removes all the dots off drake as well so with all those dots removed calvish is gonna pull away from this engagement they got some cooldowns from drake and it's not worth overstaying their welcome as they switch over to Prev for a moment, just stunning him, slowing down his pressure. They did get the Aegis from Drake as well in that push. Drake is actually looking like he's a bit afraid to push out, but hammers down, silence on Kearney, into a stun. Calvish now has to cloak of shadows and trinket in this position. He's trying to get aggressive as his health goes back to full, but there's a side fiend on him. Is he going to regret making this push? He line of sights it, Ring of Frost, Polymer's coming out, Master Spell 
from Prev clutches it out, but they get another polymer. Brain Trinket pops it immediately on Calvish's Vendetta. Answer that response, and three and a half men are playing a much better game, but now here comes the attack onto Nuke. He's gonna be sitting in these kidney shots. How much damage can they get out on this? Brain is charging in, blinding light onto Kearney. Damage onto both Calvish and Nuke, but Nuke has managed to pull away from the fight for now. Has combustion available. Could make a big push. Nuke is blinking in aggressively. Frost Nova on the whole team. Dragon's Breath. Calvish in hot pursuit of Drake and Stealth. Looking for a stun. Smoke bomb defensively, but it might not matter. Nuke blinks in and they bomb it themselves. Prev blinks in with a double fear, trying to slow down the attack. But Drake is getting blasted. Where's the Void Shift? Void Shift comes through for Prev just in the nick of time. And now they need to turn it around. They need to get aggressive here and force some big cooldowns from Kearney if they want to still have an offensive chance in this game. Now we'll see if they can do it. I mean, Drake right now, he does have the Vendetta. Going after Nuke, who's already preemptively running. I, I feel like the strat of going after Drake a lot more in the match is uh, looking better from the side of three and a half men. Prev looking to get aggressive here with his power infusion, pushing in. He gets interrupted. Nuke just playing defense, but now in a kitty shot, big vendetta onto Nuke. How is Kearney going to heal through this? It looks like he he's going to be able to. Doesn't really commit too much. That was no blessing of protection. That was no divine shield. Just kind of heals through the damage. Nuke stays alive, and that's going to be a big victory in terms of defense for three and a half men, being able to hold on to some of those cooldowns. There's still a cauterize, no ice block, though. Scary moment, DR, Kitty Shot does come in. Nuke gets procked and might get dropped. Divine a Shield is a little bit too late. Can they take it down? Oh. Currently doing everything he can to keep the seed alive. He might be able to do it. He's powering in the heels, and there's no damage there from Drake. Can they take it down? It's so close. They actually keep it alive. Nice job by Kearney, but that's every defensive cooldown three and a half men has. Nuked in another kidney shot. Blessing of Protection trades. All right, I lied. That's the last defensive cooldown that they have. <laughs> there is nothing left for three and a half men, and guess what's up in three seconds? Vendetta. Uh, ben Vendetta coming in here for Mr. Drake, and Drake is hungry right now, looking at this mage. Old Ring of Frost onto Brain. What are they going to do? Drake is going to pull the trigger. He's waiting a little bit. He needs something onto Kearney, otherwise his sepsis will get dispelled. Rev right now getting kicked here as well before they go. You love to see that. And now here comes the Siphon. Oh, it's a long-range one. This Siphon has long arms, doing a lot of work there onto Nuke, but finally will get raw and... Uh, they have some time to set this up because Kearney's Trinket is off cooldown, but it's actually not off cooldown because he human racial earlier right before the pod rocked. So he has uh, maybe like 20 seconds left on his Trinket right now. He can't actually trink it out of this Hodge. This is the Vendetta, over. and this is potentially game over. Do they have a blinding light? They do have a blinding light. His Trinket just comes back up off cooldown. Can he keep him alive? He's oh, so what? close to get a disarm onto Kearney. Kearney doing what he can. Big heal coming out. Can he keep him alive? And the answer is no. And he's going to be Kawaii taking down Nuke and the rest of three and a half men but another good finish here for three and a half men finishing in third place here really coming together as a brand new roster um in this season and honestly putting on a show uh, so far the most dominant rmp in north america but that is going to be hawaii taking the victory once again we're going to see these guys in the grand finals basically every single one of these finals and most of the the wins are just going to this team and they're looking to do it again uh, for that rematch against Cloud9. All right, Cloud9, what are you going to do? You have to beat him again. It's one thing to beat Kawaii once. It's a completely different thing to beat them twice. Yeah, I mean, we can see it here in the replay. Uh, this is just... They kind of flipped the switch once again. I mean, nuked. They burned through every single defensive cooldown. He barely held on. I I mean, kudos to three and a half men in this really dire situation. They try to reverse the pressure. They do get a setup here. Drake has a little bit low, but Kawhi knows there is nothing. And if they can just get one clean setup, the game is likely going to be at over. So they play it extremely patiently. They don't just throw out the vendetta. Um, right now, actually, Calvish uses the Cloak of Shadows to kill off the Siphine and try to connect some damage here on the Prev because I feel like both teams know exactly what's going to happen. Brain actually trinkets. He actually bubbles. So he uses the Divine Shield to get out of that Polymorph, but gets the Hammer of Justice onto Kearney and nuked. I mean, he does a really good job with his Altar Time, but at this point, what can you really do? Kearney does trinket. He gets it a spell, but a Psychic Horror follows it up. They have these long, extended crowd control chains, and unfortunately for Kearney, he just does not have the throughput. He does not have the cooldowns, and Kawhi will claim a 3-0. to zero. Very 
Swift three to zero as well. Kawhi looking strong as always. They dropped to that lower bracket and now they are going back to that grand finals showing exactly why they continue to belong here. Uh, but you guys already said it. Now they're going to have to face cloud nine once again, which is no easy task, especially when you continue to have to play these games. Uh, you know, these long series over and over again in a row. This will be their third series. So it's been a pretty long day for them. I'm sure that they are, uh, you know, they're they're getting ready to finish the day here um, after all of these games. So we'll we'll have to catch up with them, see, you know, how they're going to be doing here against Cloud9. It's the second time around. Um, and I feel like we're seeing this a lot this season, especially Zico, where a team, I mean, even today, uh, you know, a team faces one team earlier in the day, they lose to that, and then if they face them a second time in the same day, and they're just like, they've completely figured something out. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, it, it just goes to show that, it, you know, the players are still adapting, teams are still learning, uh, figuring out new strats, trying new things. And, um, you know, it's uh, it's one thing to practice, but it's another thing to actually get uh, get a, a real matchup, you know, like to actually put it to the test against one of those top tier teams. So uh, definitely could be a thing. And uh, I mean, in that Cloud9 series, I would say Kawhi was definitely kind of clawing their way back. So they're going to be hungry for this uh, next series. They're going to be hungry for that rematch. And for Cloud9, I mean, they're also a really strong team. Uh, definitely could be picking up on some things. Um, so we'll see exactly how it goes for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I spoke with Chun um, to ask him if he was ready to face off against Cloud9 after they won just now. And he says that he's feeling warmed up and he wants to crush uh, Kawhi in his words. So we'll see if they are pulling that off, if they're able to pull that off, or if Kawhi is able to get the victory in the rematch. We're going to go to a break. When we come back, it's going to be the final finals of Cup number four for North America. We'll see you soon. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, everyone. It is the North American Cup number four finals. Cloud Nine facing off against Kauai. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Gates about to open finals of North America Cup four. We'll see. I mean, Cloud Nine sent Kauai down to the lower bracket in a really explosive match. I mean, I. I I feel like all three games were that a bit of a fumble, not what or just he like said, a Matt. really crazy You're amount of burst by Cloud9. Line. So we'll see what Kawhi is going to be able to do in this one. They're going to be locked in the same comp, so they are feeling confident. They're actually going to be going after Wealthy Man, a really aggressive play early on. It's going to be the Guardian from Flop. That should be more than enough for him to survive. But I think we already get the sense of uh, what the targeting is going to look like in this match. Yep, uh, and uh, when, once the AWC companion updates, we will see exactly what spec Wealthy Man is playing. But um, we can pretty much guarantee that he's uh, playing the Shimmer. No, he, he's using normal Blink. He's playing normal Blink. He just blinked there. Um, so Wealthy Man actually just dying through everything despite being a tank mage right now. And um, this could be Chun-Li's opportunity to actually get aggressive here. Wealthy Man once again though blinking uh, before he gets stunned. Dragon's Breath coming out here onto Drake and Brain. He's looking for the sheep. Can he find it? And he will find it onto Drake. Now looking to potentially re-sheep Drake right there on the Dispo. Building some time, buying himself some time to recover. Prev here using his soul ship, escaping as well. And uh, so far, great opener though, uh, from Kawaii already forcing out that cauterize. Yeah, they're coming back with a vengeance here against Cloud9, gonna let that last series be a message here in the first game. Silence on the flop, every cooldown from Chun-Li in exchange, trying to cut him down through it. Can they kill him through it? No, flop gets big heals. Now, holy fire in return onto Drake. No trinket, massive damage and void shift. Oh, they're killing him through two health bars oh. right now. He's gonna have to vanish out and brain bubbles. That was a huge power play by Chun-Li and Wealthy Man. They're still sitting on combustion. They got Bubble and Trinket from Brain. They still have a big opportunity if Flop can get a stun reset right now and get a chastise for Chun's next set of images and bust from Wealthy Man. They could easily close this game out. There's no dispersion either for five seconds. They pre-grapple weapon Drake. They're setting up for the kill here. Can they get a stun? Holy fire out onto Drake. They need a chastise right now. They need an in cap on Brain. Can they get to it in time? Wealthy Man blinking back away trying to break brain bait brain out in the open chun li rolls up for the end cap here comes chun li they lock the flesh crap they're going for the win but drake shadow steps away and manages to avoid getting locked in place by cloud nine another swapping their damage and attention to prev though they get greater fade but greater fade is way better than their rogue being dead on the side of Kawhi here excellent maneuvers by drake to avoid that situation chun li now going back behind the pillar no trinket on him Wants to get aggressive, has the Swen. He's gonna go for the leg sweep, popping the images. Big hit of damage onto Drake. Is he ready for it? One second left on the stun. Drake's gonna close the shadows, pull away. Down under Wealthy Man by Prev, but a swap over to Prev. Insane damage, almost dusting him. Prev reacts though, trades the disperse, negates the attack, and stays alive. Uh, uh, insane plays there by Chun Li. He actually saved a lot of that incoming damage. Managed to use his keepers to get the crit bonus on Prev and almost just completely one shot him there. Got that dispersion and now Prev's not going to be feeling too confident. He's got no dispersion at the same time. Chun Li's feeling a little bit scared. He's going to get gripped away. Wealthy Man's been left behind. That's the great thing about Kawhi's strategy. Yeah, you know, go after multiple targets here. If Wealthy Man's just going to be tanking out all this damage, you need to be certain to punish him and keep that pressure up. Chun Li moves forward. The grapple weapon there on Drake, a bit preemptive. Not going to be able to get that preemptive on the kidney shot. But it's going to be a side fiend. Can he get it? Nope. The shadow step comes in. Drake will not be tricked. And smoke bomb. A little bit of a late smoke bomb allowing Wealthy Man to actually peel up Drake there. But Chunley could just die through it. Insane damage. He does get the karma off. So good peels from Wealthy Man. And now Chunli looking to get active in the match. Going to be throwing in a big spinning crane kick once again on Prev. Can he just drop him? He's so incredibly low. It will be the sacrifice from Brain. Brain just rotting down. Look at the pressure. Kawhi is really struggling here, but Brain should hopefully be able to top everyone off with that Avenging Wrath. At the same time, Chun Li caught in the crossfire with a kidney shot, but once he gets a grip to safety, just going once again. He smells blood in the water, wants to get the damage rolling onto Prev. He doesn't really have that many cooldowns, and Cloud9 looking to continue that push, but Wealthy Man is very unstable in this position. Oh. Yeah, Wealthy Man does recover, though. Prev is actually going to be the one on the back foot. Sheep onto Brain. He gets Master Spell. Can they find the re? He gets kicked on it. Nova onto Drake. Prev still taking some damage, but should begin to recover. He has that dispersion to fall back on, and uh, one Blessing of Protection. Those are really the only uh, cooldowns remaining here. On the side of why Flops Man is not doing great, but neither is Brain. Brains. John Lee stuck in a kidney shot, up with no trinket. They could potentially swap to him, but they just uh, did pop that vendetta, so won't have that available. I actually don't know what Drake vendetta there was. It Chun 
is, uh, I feel like that was a bit of a mistake uh, right there. If Wealthy Man was uh, in a prime position and uh, so was Flop, but they're going to go after uh, Chan. Beautiful bop there by Brain on Trev, and he will survive with that. Now going after Chun once again, but Drake actually getting kicked there on his Splashcraft. Looking to make his way back here onto Wealthy Man as well as Chun Lee. Flop once again sitting down for a drink here in the back line, or at least trying to. Gets a few heals here with the Apotheosis. Brain looking for the drink as well, but he gets paralyzed. And now Drake caught up from the stun. Will use his feint though, and that will be enough defense. Brain trying to drop combat, but they're doing a great job here. Wealthy Man just bouncing his Phoenix Flames and making sure that both Brain and Drake are all staying in combat here. And now once again, Rev and the Sheep going to look to potentially get aggressive here uh, onto Chan, but so far no real pressure being found. And it's honest, honestly just C9 here swapping back and forth in the Rogue and Shadow Priest, causing most of the pressure. Uh, their healer is uh, with a mana lead as a result. And if they can keep this up, this might just be a game with the, that they win on mana. Brain though, is he sitting up for a drink? No, they stop it. Once again, paralyzed, looking to convene back on to Trev, but Chan caught up in a kidney shot. Ray of Hope connects. Beautiful response here by Flop. Is it going to be in a positive ray though? Flop is just spam healing in the back line, so I assume it will be. And that will top him up. He did use his special Parma though, Chun Li. Didn't uh, trust that ray 100%. And um, now he won't have that amount to work with. But mana still very even between these healers. Both of them basically tap. That's going to trick it out of that leg sweep. Here comes the dust. Chun Li looking to dust. Somebody gets gripped on the kidney shot right before Flop gets put in that disarm silence combo. So. Nice grip there by Flop, leading Chun, taking a lot of damage. Brain trying to drop combat and drink in the back line once again. And I think he might uh, he might have been stopped there by Wealthy Man. So now Wealthy Man is going to be the target, uh, as he did just blink in. And he still has his Ice Block fall back on his Soul Shapes back, trying to hold it. And he will catch a couple of heals in the back line. Brain immediately sitting down to threaten that drink once again. And Wealthy Man struggling right now to stay alive. And look at Brain's mana just going up and up. A beautiful recovery right there with that drink, and now he will have that mana lead as well on the side of Y. Only Vendetta, Flop has to answer, dropping the Ray of Hope and the Guardian Spirit to recover throughout that assault. These teams have looked so evenly matched up to this point, but now there's a significant deficit in mana in favor of Kawhi, and they're looking to close this game out, but Chun Li's blocking it for now with massive pressure onto Prev. Unfortunately, he's still got to get through Disperse. Unless he gets a massive Rising Sun Kick, I don't think Prev should be going down. Shadow Step swap back onto Chun-Li. Prev is loading up damage. Smoke Bomb gets dropped. Void Eruption. Wealthy Man blinks in. Double Dragon's Breath. Buying time for Chun-Li to roll away. He lands a Double Fear. Chun-Li is still down to half. The Fuse not enough. Chun-Li has to trade Karma out as well. Prev now getting stunned up. Here comes big damage incoming from Chun-Li. Is Prev ready for it? Trades Dispersion to equalize the damage. Doesn't want Brain to spend the rest of his mana to save him there. When he has cooldowns and options, Drake is going to cloak a shadow as the combustion. A smart move here. Stunning up Chun-Li, trying to go for the kill. They get life grip before Vendetta. Maybe they just kill him even without it. Massive damage incoming. But now they're turning it around with spinning crane kick as well. Chun-Li really wants to go for this win, even though his team is slightly behind in this position. Just pushing and pushing and pushing to try and close it out. Steal away game one here. Massive damage onto Prev once again from Chun. Prev going to blink back into the back line with the soul shape. Flop is trying to find the opportunity to drink here, but Vendetta's up. Where is Drake going to go with the Vendetta? But Prev is under fire. Free Fleshcraft from Chun-Li. Doesn't matter. Kidney Shot is going to connect. Is Flop in position to save Chun here through the Vendetta? Wealthy Man is getting rotted down. This is looking like a double kill for Kawhi in the near future. Massive heal comes up from Flop, stabilizing Chun-Li, but Wealthy Man is now still low. Brain moves in, gets a double blind. They've isolated Chun-Li. They're going for the win in game one. He's flying Serpent Kicks back to the pillar. Ray of Hope connects, but now Wealthy Man is burning down. There's no Ray of Hope for him. He has to Ice Block. He blinks, gets the Blazing Barrier, but he's so low. How is he not going to Ice Block right now? 10% health. Your healer is completely oom, trying to pull off a miracle. Combustion gets stripped off instantly by Previs. Prev's purges. Prev is rolling in for the win. It's done onto Chun-Li. Prev in position to CC flop. Hammers are down and there's nothing left for Chun-Li. Rain is going for the kill. Shadow of Death clutches it and Kawhi take game one. I mean, what an intense battle between these two teams. Uh, they're true titans. I mean, uh, there's a reason why this is the finals. Kawhi going to be battling it back here in game number one. Looking for revenge. They just got sent down to the lower bracket by Cloud9, but this is a really, really close game number one. Cloud9 showed a lot of signs of life. They had a lot of pressure onto Prev multiple times in the match, and there was a couple times where it actually looked like they might be the team to actually get the double kill. So a very momentum-based matchup, but great defensive and offensive plays uh, make for a really exciting game one. Yeah, absolutely. Both teams uh, playing it out beautifully. Honestly, there's not really much criticism towards anybody. Um, why though pulling ahead there in the end, just uh, keeping that pressure and 
I think a lot of it is owed to Brain. He's just so good at finding those opportunities to pressure the, the enemy team with his drinks. He's going for the drink, uh, forces Wealthy Man to kind of blink in aggressively and then immediately Drake there to punish it, uh, always at the right place at the right time. And uh, that's what sets up a lot of that momentum because look at this point, Flop completely tapped the mana, but Brain still has a little bit to work with. And that's because he snuck away and got a little bit of a drink earlier on. Uh, and at this point, I mean, it's just uh, basically uh, chasing them down. Just do damage to whatever you can uh, and limit the amount of damage that, you can, that you're can that you taking. Do damage, don't die is basically the strategy at this point. Uh, run down Chan Lee before he gets cooldowns back. Punch of Karma, a couple of seconds remaining on it. Uh, he wanted to try to kite and buy himself some time for that. But even with that back, Wealthy Man was super dead and Flop had no mana left. So uh, Flop doing a great job here, keeping his, uh, his team alive for such a long time. But... Um, it is going to be the pressure from Drake and Trev and the rest of Kawhi that takes the win. Impressive show of force here in game one, but Cloud9 are still standing up to them. It wasn't completely one-sided, so if there's opportunity, we're going to see it play out. This is easily a series that could go back and forth. Definitely going to be a slugfest for both sides. And maybe it comes down to endurance. Maybe it comes down to stamina. Um, kind of mental fortitude to be able to just stay focused this long. Like, you gotta pre grapple every kidney that you can. You gotta pre defuse every kidney that you can. You gotta pre DB every single setup that you can. And as soon as one of those slips away and the other team is still playing on point, you've lost. The game is over. So, playing at that level of intensity for this long uh, is turning this more into a marathon challenge than anything, I think. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think you're right about that. It's definitely a big component here, but uh, I think in game number one, uh, both teams still looking like, you know, they have quite a bit of fight in them. So for game number two, I kind of wonder if this matchup's going to develop at all, if Cloud9 is going to try to take a composition slash map advantage, or if they're just chalking that up to, you know, a lucky win. Because if I'm being completely honest, even when I watched that last series, it still kind of felt like the wins that Cloud9 got were a bit random like <laughs> every single time Kawhi had defensive cooldowns like at the last game especially chun Li just one shot prev he had he died through yep. dispersion he had sacrifice on him so it felt like they still had a lot they could work with game number one another one where prev just died through dispersion to touch a death to unexpected damage now that maybe that's a reliable win condition for cloud nine but i i just kind of feel like if the game is trading the way like when we look at this game if both teams are making trades the way they should, it seems like Kawhi is coming out ahead, even in the games where, you know, they kind of lose. Like they're still, they have more cooldowns to work day through. It seems like their pressure overall is better unless Chun-Li just randomly one shot somebody. So the composition from Cloud9 has bought them one series win, but I'm not convinced that this is the composition oh. that's going to be able to take Kawhi in a game best of seven. It's still kind of common yeah. condition, right? For a Windwalker, just randomly one shotting someone. I feel like that's actually like a, 40% reason why you win as a Windwalker monk <laughs> is just a random one shot. So, and, and if you're fighting Brain, who's perfectly rotating cooldowns, maybe that is like the best chance is to try and just get this overwhelming amount of damage that they can't react to um, rather than kind of standard plays and dragging it out. I wouldn't mind seeing Cloud9 switch to like a mage lock though at some point in the series. Yeah. Um, if anything, just to dampen Kawhi's mental state, just like. Get an Empyrean domain, drag out the fight as Mage Lock, sheep spamming them, fear spamming them, just like try and get them annoyed for the rest of the series. Use those big maps to your advantage, uh, like the Maldraxxus and Empyrean domain, before relying back on the Windwalker Mage. Like if you really, if I was really gonna like mind game this series uh, and and try and get an edge, I would consider that if I was Cloud Nine. Yeah, um, I, I would like to see their Mage Lock just because it's the Cloud9 Mage Lock, you know? And sure, it's not the, the same one that we saw last season, but uh, they still have, you know, Wealthy Man and Cubsy there. So it feels like they know how to play that comp, regardless of uh, if it's Cubsy healing or if it's Cubsy on DPS. I feel like strategy-wise, the only team that truly knows what to do against everything in every scenario is, you know, Cloud9 and especially Wealthy Man uh, on that Mage. He has the most experience out of anybody playing Mage Lock. So I think... Uh, that's the that's the X factor, but Kawhi has oh. already stomped a lot of mage lock teams, so uh, maybe they're reluctant to to lock it in for that reason. Uh, but I kind of agree with Sid. I think uh, just go mage lock on big maps and then blind pick maybe um, Windwalker Mage because it, I, I agree with what Ben said. The wins are not convincing. They're, even though they won Ooh. an entire series, it wasn't convincing. And it's kind of a random thought as we get into game number two. 
I, I feel like Windwalker Destro might actually be decent. Like Windwalker Destro with a Holy Paladin into this Assassination Shadow Priest. I think it'd be really strong. This is, I mean, if you go after the Windwalker Monk, you have a Destruction Warlock. Free casting, but Chun-Li going to be the target early on in the match once again. And he's just going to trade up the Fortifying Brew. That's going to be the Guardian Angel. Now looking to get really aggressive here onto Prev. As he builds up some of his Mark of the Crane stacks on random targets. Goes after the Siphon. Goes after Kevin. Building it up. And that's going to allow him to get these big spinning crane kicks. So he's going to preemptively kite. It's such an interesting dynamic because Drake, I, I would say, is... Probably up. I mean, he's up there with Chun Li. Absolutely, there's no doubt about it. I don't know how much he's been playing his monk, but I would say they're very evenly matched on the Windwalker monk. So the interesting dynamic is Drake kind of knows how to play into Windwalker monks and things that he can do, things that Chun Li is looking for in the game. And we're rarely seeing, you know, him kidney shot into like a turbo fist. But what we do see is a lot of pressure right now on Wealthy Man. They might just get the cauterize. They do. Is it going to be an ice block as well? Wealthy Man's on the run. 5% health, pretty great. There's a sap right now on flop. Master spell does get shut down. And uh, now I, I fear here for Wealthy Man. All right, Wealthy Man, what is he going to do already? That's down it? both of his moves. Crucial oh. defensives. Flop gets silenced into a panda racial. Do they have anything to follow it up? Doesn't look like it. And uh, Wealthy Man in the smoke bomb that raises negative, though. The big damage coming in. Flop full blinded. It's a That's full it. Blind. GG. Bye, Wealthy Man. <laughs> Offensive, Offensive Bob. Bob. See ya. That's going to be the pod. And that's going to be the pod oh, because you're going to survive. Guardian Spirit in it. Guardian, Guardian Spirit on the pod. Spamming out the flashes, spamming out the Vivify. And they take it down. I think it's going to survive, dude. So wealthy man blooming. Drake treated it aggressively. And they used everything aggressively. They used Bob aggressive as well. So there's an opening here for Cloud9. I think he's going according to the plan right now. And uh, Wealthy Man using that combustion gets beast that dispelled right there. That is a feels bad man. But at least he is alive. So he's got that going for him. Shadow Step reconnect, but how much longer? They've gotten every cooldown yet again. He's not going to have that pod tender a second time. Prev blinks in aggressively. Brain feared away. Does look like it's ended. Stun on the flop. Looking to close the game here. Do they have follow up? Double psychic Did screen. He? Three on one. Fear. There should be no way here that Wealthy Man survives. He blinks the stun, gets the Blazing Bear, but he's re stunned. Flop is silenced, Silence. and that is it. Kawhi are now just asserting dominance here in game two. Like, that's not even close. They're so far ahead, trading things offensively, running them down. I think Cloud9 need to make a change now. It's time to go to Empyrean. It's time to Mage Lock if they want to put some points at least in this Grand Finals. I, I swear. I mean, I, I, I mean, this game, I first of all, I just want to, you know, echo what you're saying. Kawhi is looking better and better in every single one of these games. And I, I fear that unless Chun-Li just gets a random one shot, they aren't going to be losing these series. The games are just very convincing from their side now. And I do want to see a comp change. And I, I, I really think that, like a Destro Windwalker Paladin could be strong. You have a Destruction Warlock to peel it for you as the Windwalker Monk. You have a Paladin to deal with the, the Vendetta goes, protect the Warlock from potential all-ins. And I feel like that would be a really well-rounded composition that could really kind of go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Shadow Priest Rogue. Yeah, maybe we'll see it. I mean, they have it uh, available. And Chun actually used to play strictly uh, Mage and, uh, well, Destro, uh, Windwalker, not Mage. Uh, but here's their first kill. They got a full blind on the flop. He doesn't have Trinket. And they hunt down Wealthy Man. And then here, look at this is so funny. Flop in the back line, Guardian Spirit, Flash Heal, Flash Heal, Flash Heal. Look at the Chun Li, Vivify, Vivify, Vivify yeah. gets kicked. Flop keeps it alive. The pot is on one 1%. HP, actually. Did you see that? Oh my goodness. Wealthy Man just against all odds comes back to life, sends a combustion, gets dispelled on it. Uh, right now, first try for, for Prev, of course, when he comes out of the Paralyze, classic. And then uh, he lives long enough to see himself die again, basically. Drake gets restuff, Shadow steps over, Garot, and uh, here comes the pressure. The dogpiling again onto Flop. Flop fears Brain, trying to buy himself some time, but there's the disarm. Dragon's Breath comes out, gets dispelled into a full fear, and it's a double, and it's a kidney, and it's a chase down. He blinks, gets Hodge DR, and gets taken down uh, once again. So, unfortunately for Cloud9, that was in a, an absolutely crushing defeat, and uh, it's time for the Mage Lock. Or Windwalker lock. I'm a, I'm a kind of I like that idea from Ven too. Um, I think the Windwalker supports the Warlock enough with Grapple Weapon and Poison Dispel and Sepsis that he won't be run down by the Assassination Rogue. And then there's not Powered honestly a lot of interrupts either. So yeah, free casting Destro Lock gets bopped out of a Vendetta and suddenly he's just casting three Chaos Bolts with a Windwalker Monk on your back. I wouldn't mind Sounds seeing good, it. Right? I wouldn't mind seeing it. 
I would love to see it. I wouldn't. Not only would I not mind seeing it, but I would love to see it. But I don't know how much Paladin flop plays. I feel like that would be like an important component to like avoid those all-in situations because it does bring a lot of defense. It is going to be Imperial Domain, Cloud9. Are they making a change? Are they going Mage Lock? What are they going to do? Because right now this matchup is not looking good. Even the the wins that they did get, I don't want to take anything away from them for beating Kawhi, but it, the, the wins were they. They weren't that convincing. Like, it really came down to Chun-Li killing through dispersion with Touch of Death twice. And I mean, that's not something you can rely on, uh, you know, against Kawhi in a best of seven. One yeah. minute left Come on the clock here. What's it going to be, I, Cloud9? I... Are you shaken? Is your confidence destroyed? Is it time to bring in the Cubsy? Bring in the Warlock good Mage? Map. It's a good map. Yeah. Not a bad map. This is... It's on the pillars right now. This, <laughs> this, could, be, this could be Kawhi right here. This could be you guys. <laughs> could be a blizzard. It could be a rain of fire. If you're not going to pick Mage Lock, I feel like it's a bad map. Honestly. Yeah. Like Save it as a Mage Lock map just in case if you are going to go that I, I route. Want, they're probably scratching their head too. Because I mean, Kawhi has done well in Mage Lock with this comp. So it's like yeah. you got to kind of... It's like two bad options you have. They're doing Destro oh, Windwalker. Oh, they're going to do it! They're going to do Destro Windwalker. Are they listening? I don't know, but I mean, <laughs> doubtful. But I'm glad that I called that because I, I really... I feel like the Paladin would be better than the Holy Priest. But I think if Flop and Cubsy can you know, make enough space from each other, uh, this could work out well. Because if they go after Chun-Li, Cubsy will completely devastate them. Like, he will kill them. There's no doubt in my mind whatsoever. Um, but... Yeah, the question is, can Cubsy survive? And I think if Chun Li and Flop have a really good game and positioning is good, uh, there there is a chance. Is this the first game in a finals that there hasn't been a fire mage <laughs> on either Could side? Be. I feel like like in a long time, I feel like there's at least been a fire mage on one side, if not both sides. What, what about the Liquid Finals? Who did they play? Didn't they play Windwalker Mage? Right. Hmm. Pretty sure I think they did. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they played Windwalker Mage. It was Kawhi, wasn't it? Or did Fire Kawhi get popular? Yeah, no, Fire Kawhi Mage popular. Got, no, so they got the, fourth that tournament, they I think, right? Fourth. They got fourth. I think they were again. I think they played Gold, Golden. Golden. No, the Glizzy, yeah, the the Glizzy Guardians were third place. And, it's just, a, it's okay. just something that yeah, I, I think, I, think I, I looked I think at it and I was like, yeah, I think you're right, actually. It's like the first final grand finals match that doesn't have a fire mage in it. Um, Cloud Nine are playing a comp we've yet to see, but this used to be like a staple for Chun Li. He'd play this with Bugonomics yeah. all the time. Like this was like a classic comp for him. So if he's able to rip this comp out and pull some wins against I, Kawhi, that's going to be big, I think, for their team. One of my favorite things to do as a Windwalker monk, and I know Chun Li does this too because we've seen it happen and he does it really well, is use the Ring of Peace. Now, I'm just obsessed with the, you know, ice wall, ring of peace. I love these abilities where you can deny someone's movement. So Cubsy, when he's powered up with Dark Soul, Chun-Li can actually knock them in the open with the ring yeah. of peace. No pillar for you. And that's going to be an opportunity for Cloud9 to capitalize <laughs> on getting really aggressive. Here's the pillar. Here's you. The ring of peace. <laughs> now you're over here. Yeah. <laughs> you're in the open. And you're yeah. gone. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it, it's, it, it's a big uh, throwback. Uh, for Chun, like it's like you said, I think it was in Legion when he was on Splice, uh, where him and Thug played this basically exclusively, and they were one of the best teams at BlizzCon. I think they didn't they. I think they knocked Waz out that year. Uh, could be wrong, but yeah, uh, Chun, uh, absolute legend um, for playing this. But I do agree with you. I, I, I think the one weakness of this comp is well. Holy Priest, you need a Paladin. Uh, I feel very strongly that you need a Paladin. Because so far what happens with every Holy Priest is Blind, Vendetta, Trinket, Second Vendetta, Arch or Blinding Light or Disarm Silence or whatever CC you want. And it's usually the whole spellbook of the DPS and then you repeat that a couple of times and you win. So um, I, I think having that desync Vendetta for, for Drake is huge. Um, and I think the best way to, to have an answer to that is to have a healer with multiple answers. So I would like to see the Holy Paladin as well. 
Yeah. The only advantage with the Holy Priest is you reset on any resolves cooldown, but on any resolve doesn't seem to matter. It's not a cooldown. <laughs> doesn't seem to matter. <laughs> and you get a ranged stun, so like Chun Li's gonna get more stuns for his images. Um, where like the Hammer of Justice isn't that reliable. I don't think the Paladin. Maybe the Paladin runs in super aggro. Do you play like Repentance Paladin and play on top of Brain and and play super aggro? I think you do. Yeah. Thing? You overwhelm them with casts and CC. Um, that's uh, that's typically how you play the Windwalker, uh, Destro Warlock. Then you kind of have two casted threats. Like if they go off the Destruction Warlock, they're shutting him down too much. You have just a spam Repentance bot on the healer. Um, it's really really good. I mean. So the typical kind of setup we're going to see from Cloud9, um, we kind of talk about what they want to do in the match. Is it's basically a double coil. They don't have a they don't have a curse to spell, so they're going to be eating those double coils. And out of the double coil, Chun Li can burst. He can land the leg sweep. If Flop can get a stun, like basically this is what we want to see from Cloud9. It's going to be paralyze on Brain, double coil on the DPS. Flop is going to follow up the paralyze with his chastise. Chun Li is going to follow up the coil with his leg sweep, and you're just going to do that as often as you can in the match. You can even just do, you know, a chastise sun with a chaos bolt, like a little baby setup would be, uh, you know, a, a chastise sun with a paralyze on the healer, just something like that. That uh, could be an, uh, enough, also. But like, uh, I feel like for Cloud Nine, they have these really consistent rinse repeat setups that they can do, and um, if they pull it off, I feel like they should be netting big cooldowns. You call it a baby setup, but I swear they could win just with chastise on the healer. <laughs> And leg yeah. sweep on the DPS. <laughs> it's like the baby setup is actually like a you behemoth have the main setup monster. And then you have the baby setup, which is like that, you know, the <laughs> mini one. <laughs> uh, curious to see how they play it out. I think it's a good idea to try this specifically with this matchup. Destruction Warlock free casting, basically, like what? There's one kick, that's it. Um, and then Chun Li on Windwalker to counter the Shadow Priest. Like those two specs really give synergies into this comp against Kawhi. Good important data information farming for them as well because Golden Guardians yeah. like running this comp as well for the circuit. So if this can be a good comp for them for two of their matches in the circuit, then that's going to be great for them. Um, I, I agree as well. I think the Paladin, just Paladin into Asa Rogue seems to be like the best um, method to deal with it. Um, and we'll have to wait and see how it plays out with the Holy Priest. I do hope that Cloud9 don't get baited into playing like this super defensive play style with this comp. I really want to see them just like gas pedal aggro. Um, run on top of them and just force cooldowns and overpower them with Chaos Bolt. Uh, I think that's the only thing that could maybe hold them back is they play a bit too passive. Nice Mog. I like that Mog from Chun-Li. Very rare pieces of armor. Challenge mode weapons. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's... Uh, don't know where I'm going with that one. Beautiful transmog. Cubsy as well with the sheep stick. And uh, we'll see how exactly Kawhi is going to be open. They are up 2-2-0 right now in this match. They need two more to win. It's going to be a best of seven. So first of four will pull off the win. Flop right now goes into a full sap out of a blind. Cubs uses unending results. Oh, how you want to trade? They might just kill him through. Are they really going to take him down? Flop has the trinket. This is a nightmare. This is worst case scenario. He's I think finished. Cubs, he might just bomb. die through every defensive cooldown. Oh, the smoke bomb came down too late, Drake. No, not like this. Cubsy will survive uh, at the back end of that because you got the <laughs> ray of hope through. Uh, as the smoke bomb dropped, there is a bit of a delay on the smoke bomb. You gotta, you gotta pre bomb that. Like, come on, that was a three. You know, um, <laughs> we're gonna see a stun out to Drake. Kills both coming in uh, by Cubsy here. He's got, he's been given a second lifeline at this point. That was such an insane stun on. The, the it's point. off cooldown. My brain and uh, vendetta yeah. is uh, off cooldown for drake so um, um i believe he's going to be wanting to press that very soon uh, right now flop is not in crowd control and there is the eternal ages uh, so he won't be using it just yet but brain he has his hammer of justice in exactly three seconds so brain gonna go in okay here we go we're launching the setup and they make it there otherwise that silence was a little bit immature there by prev Brain needs to be making his way over there. I don't think he can just yet, so they're gonna wait. That silence, a little bit unfortunate, but now Prem actually taking a decent amount of damage from the Chaos Ball. And now Drake's moving in. There's the kidney shot, but there's no follow-up CC grapple weapon coming out from Chun, but they have some time to set this up. Cubsy still has his unending resolve, by the way. Um, so that's uh, uh, that's back on, off cooldown for him. So Cubsy at least is gonna have that to work with. Um, when they do make that push, but Kawhi, the longer they wait, the more safe Cubsy is going to be feeling. You try to push in and try to end this before Pop gets that trinket back as well. You could also pre-ray the CC chain. 
Uh, he did not know. And here comes the Vendetta. Typhine gets killed off by Chun Li. Up Z teleports away. Uses the unending resolve. Is going to be enough. Web is there. Disarm on the Chun. And the blinding light nice. is off, but looks like he's going to survive. Nice wins there. I can't believe he's alive at this point. Like after that opener. Uh, do they still have a shot here to win the game? They're winning on mana. They get a bop out here onto Drake. Another kidney shot. Comes he going to be able to break free? Chun Li blasting away at Prev. Comes he gets stunned again. Drake's rolling forward for a blind. Flops too far out of range. Chun Li swaps to Drake to punish him for pushing for those blinds. Brain's trying to drink. Chun Li rolls over to stop the drink. Chun Li is doing so much right now. Stopping Drake, stopping Brain, and then getting back on Prev. Chaos Bolt's flying in. Might be a double tap. Double tap Bolt. And Prev fade immunes all of that. Looks like it doesn't summon a blasphemy if you're immune to it either. So that's interesting. Oh, oh. never mind. Massive damage onto Drake. He's going to cloak of shadows and immediately abandon the mission. Now we're starting to see the power of Cloud9's composition. That they finally found a footing and they are really starting to sink their teeth in onto Drake and Prev. Brain denies that initial burst of damage. Drake is still relentless though, just soul shaping in right back onto Cubs. He gets mortal cold, instantly dispelled by Brain, setting up the blind onto Flop, looking for Vendetta kill here, but Cubsy ports away with Dark Pack. Drake able to reconnect with Shadow Step, has to cut through a big absorb and he's grappled. He's got no weapon. He's not going to be able to. Chaos Bolts flying in once again onto Prev. Big damage. Dispersion has been forced on his side. Offensively, I feel like Cloud9's composition is looking better than pretty much every other option we've seen. But defensively, can they keep it together for much longer? It's a hammer of justice. This is going to be a long crowd control chain. Is it going to be a blinding light? It will. Cubsy's all alone. How is he going to stay alive? He does have his demonic circle, but it looks like he's going to get corroded. Uh, he might be able to actually hold on here. The CC is still not over. Flop in a silence. Kidney shot onto Cubsy. Smoke bomb drops down. Chun Li doing everything he can to keep him alive. Flop now in a mind control. Flop just wants to play the game. Come on, Flop, get a heal. No. <laughs> Flop CC for the better part of 25 seconds there. I mean, that was just on, absurd. <laughs> and that's where, gonna... like, that's where a paladin would be so strong. Paladin like, would just really be do... instant first global. Pop, nothing happens. And then they're all dead. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, I. Don't you think that this looked actually good if you had yeah. a Paladin? 100%. 100%. If you had a Paladin, it would look good. But I think it's going to be funny because when the replay rolls out, we're probably just going to see Flop and CC the entire replay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, watch you it. Silence. It's crazy. This isn't it. This isn't it just yet. You're going to see it. Flop, this is where he, he trinkets blind. So Drake just says, okay, let's get his trinket. This is what they do. They, they Basically, they have like this... They get blind... And then if they trink it, they say, okay, great. Now we've got the real CC, which is the Hodge into a blinding light. So they weather that storm, but you're going to see what happens to Flop. And uh, everyone, uh, you're going to feel very sympathetic to Flop's cause after this. I mean, Cubsy right now, he's trying to stay alive. He's in a ring of peace, but here is the full hammer of justice. Six seconds of crowd control. From that, he goes into the blinding light. Another six seconds of crowd control. Okay. So what happens after that? That's when he gets Pandaren racial for another four seconds of crowd control. Meanwhile, Cubsy just barely surviving. Another four seconds of silence. What happens after the silence? Smoke bomb drops down. Can't heal for one, two, three seconds. Now into a mind control for three seconds. Gets out of that one, but the heals just aren't there. So I mean, that really was like, you know, 25 seconds where Flop just could not heal Cubsy. Cubsy did everything he can. Chun Li did everything he can to stay alive. But Kawhi is just so good with these all-ins, with these crowd controls. And they uh, they did it three times in a row. They only need one more to 4 0 Cloud9. That was absolutely disgusting. And th that's after the fact that they basically killed Cubsy in the opener. Like, they killed Cubsy twice that game. In the opener, <laughs> they, they, they blinded Flop. Then he trinketed it. He got insta hodged on his trinket when Cubs was already kind of low. Then he got blinded DR. And then he got silenced and disarmed. And uh, the smoke bomb came out from Drake. Luckily, he didn't chain the smoke bomb with the CC on Flop. Like, he tried to chain it, but there was a little bit of a gap. Uh, and in that gap, there was a ray of hope that came through. And with that ray of hope, he was able to survive. So if there was no gap that was a 10 second game so flop if you lock in holy priest again i'm sorry but it's a it little bit insane no you have to play it with paladin you ha I, I love that comp though because 
the, the offense is inside because this is exactly what you need. You need big, beefy Chaos Bolts to take down a Shadow Priest, you know? There's, uh, Shadow Priest, they love, you know, these like little micro ghosts. They're all perfect. I have faith. In it. All perfect, uh, you know? Uh, but when you have a big, beefy Chaos Bolt, there's nothing you can do. Okay, you got kicked. There's a Chaos Bolt, huh? You know? Um, so uh, I really hope they keep the Windwalker and the uh, the Destro Lock for this swap healer or that they bring in the Mage Lock. But I think the Mage Lock has been dismantled so many times by Kawhi that they'll probably dismantle it. And the, first, the, the thing that I, I could see for Cloud9 actually turning around the whole se uh, series for them would be if they play that same matchup, but with that H-Pal. You think they can win the whole series with it? I think Kawhi can change, like Rogue Mage? Yeah, they could change something else, but they would uh, for sure force Kawhi off the Shadow Priest Rogue if they uh, play with the Holy Paladin, I think. And then potentially they could win the series with it. They have one. I feel like I see Flop on Mistweaver a lot on this stream. Mistweaver could work. Holy Priest. Um, but no, I don't know about Paladin. I feel like I haven't seen him on Paladin. You like Mistweaver? Double Monk? Yeah, Mistweaver could work. They get double paralyzed. They get double disarm. He can teleport. Oh. And um, they have uh, Revival, which is just uh, super good if you actually use it. Um, you're going to see Mage Lock. <laughs> Some shots <laughs> fired right there. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> uh, uh, hmm. I feel like this is a bit desperate, in all honesty. Cloud9. I mean, if they don't have the Paladin prepared, what what can you really do here? Right. Um, but yeah, they're going to be bringing in the Holy Priest. So, I mean, this is a composition they've they've done a really good job with. In theory, they could win. Like, there's no range interrupts for them. I, th I think the big, the big scary thing in this match is really just it's those chains. So Kawhi, they know that if they can chain together a blind with a sap, with a silence, with a psychic horror, they're going to get every cooldown in the game. And if you trinket that, then they know they have blinding light. And then they can do a hammer of justice into a blinding light, into a psychic horror, into a quaking palm, into a silence. And those two things are just absolutely devastating for the Holy Priest to deal with, uh, especially with a short cooldown on Vendetta. And that's basically, I mean, that's Kawhi's that's their that's their game plan uh, i mean <laughs> teams i mean i would expect teams to know that but that's basically what they do over and over and over in terms of offense is those two strategies and uh, it's super effective it's hard to deal with and uh, i feel like a paladin has to kind of be the answer into it i even think paladin mage lock would be better in all honesty i think paladin mage lock would literally be better than the holy priest uh, into this composition that they're running just because you have the answer for those all-ins you can keep them at the pillar and then when they try to go for it uh with those long cc chains you actually have things that you can do um to keep them alive so um uh, maybe something that they prepare in the future but for this one i, I am afraid for cloud nine it's like a good yeah. investment the holy paladin yeah to have a holy paladin I, I feel like every team should have like a flex paladin priest um uh, right yeah. now those are like the two best the holy healers meta. to pair together. Yeah, it's the holy meta. <laughs> <laughs> we got the holy, holy war here Cotton. going on uh, in, in the arena right now. See which one's going to end up on top. Uh, right now, Kawhi are just owning, though. Like, uh, I guess, you know, you could chuck it up to a little bit of luck there for Cloud9 in the previous series, clutching out some miracle kills when Kawhi still had answers. And Kawhi are coming back and saying, nope, you're, you're not getting those second chances. We're not making any mistakes now. What are you going to do? Uh, they forced them onto that Windwalker Destro. Looked good, but they're going to need to practice the Paladin. Now they're going back to the classic Cloud9 Mage Lock. Can they reverse sweep four in a row? They went four in a row as Mage Lock, and they were struggling before with this setup. So this is going to be a tough run for Cloud9. Let's see. I mean, they've been practicing this quite a bit. It looked really strong for them last week, but Kawhi was able to best them, and uh, they looked really, really good. So... Look for the all-ins from Kawhi. Um, these kind of precision all-ins with lots of crowd control. They actually get a sap on Wealthy Man, blind on flop. Three versus one. <laughs> Drake's just like, yeah, I'm going for it. This is the finals. This is the last game. Let's try to make something happen. And they do get Flop's trinket immediately. Brain, look at him. He's in hot pursuit. Gets chastised on Flop. Really wants to avoid the Hammer of Justice. Polymorph does come in. Nice defense there by Wealthy Man, who is just absolutely owning Prev. Force to trade out the greater fade. This is the maximum damage that Wealthy Man's going to be able to do. Prev has to be careful. Don't disrespect the cooldowns. He's going to go straight to the pillar. Drake at the same time could be in trouble. He's going to trade out the feint, but might just die through it. He already used the Cloak of Shadows. He's already used the Vanish. That's going to be the sacrifice. And Wealthy Man really punishing this aggressive opener here from Kawhi. 
Beautiful stuff here, and uh, this is the thing. Cloud9's mage lock, you can never really count them out. Healthy man here on the mage, getting a lot of work done here. Actually used his uh, human ratio right there, I believe, as he did get out of that disarm, but just gonna get right back into it here. Cleaving multiple members, doing a lot of damage here with that uh, Deathborn. Still just having a field day right now. They're just tanking all of that damage. And finally, they will recover. They will get away from Wealthy Man there. Up now with no trinket. Here comes the setup. Silence on the flop. Where's the disarm? Preb's moving in. There's the siphon as well. They don't get the disarm there uh, on the flop. And they have to immediately abandon the push there. Drake didn't pull his vendetta though. They did get a dark pact at least from that. Drake gets a restuff. And this could be the vendetta push. But there's a leap of faith waiting. They're just probably just going to open up the cubs. And he's going to get instantly gripped here uh, by flop potentially on that. He's just gonna teleport actually, and now uh, Drake in a stun. Rep taking some damage as well here from Wealthy Man in the back line. Wealthy Man getting some sheeps, He's getting a little bit of crowd control. And once again, it's gonna be Prev and Drake on one side, Brain isolated on another side. They could swap to Brain here though. If Pop has a stun, I don't know. He's casting a holy fire, he's trying to get to him, but it looks like Brain will be able to duck through his team for cover here. Nice to spell there on the sheep on the Prev. And now, once again, it's gonna be Kawaii looking to get aggressive, but. It just seems extremely difficult for them to actually move and get something going. So they're going to go after Wealthy Man now. And that's going to leave Cubsy open on that Warlock. Nice Aegis, though, by Drake. But if you use your Aegis defensively like this, you want to use it when you're getting aggressive. And unfortunately for Drake, uh, that would be now. So he will get aggressive with the rest of that. And Vendetta gets popped. Cubsy not trading out anything for that. Vendetta just gets this spell there as well. And uh, they have some crowd control now onto a flop. Can they cut through it? Here comes the, se the sepsis, full blinding light onto flop. Big damage coming out. Do they have anything off of it? Nice DR blind there. And flop will trinket that rogue blind, so that will line up perfectly for him. But that means for another. Oh, nice. They got. No, they did not get the unending resolve. They got the guardian spirit, and that's about it. So there's still unending resolve for Cubsy. There's still smoke bump for Ray, and uh, there's no trinket. I really think Cubsy needs to copy Swapsy's port position in the middle of the map and have a gateway there. So that way he's always in range of his port and he can port gateway. Seems like a lot of the times he's getting dragged out of range of it, not really able to utilize it to its full effectiveness. And honestly, I think he wants to port in the middle of the map so that Wealthy Man can just free cast damage, sets it up so Drake gets snared in the middle of the map as well. Like, look at this right here. Drake gets caught out, has a shadow step defensively. So I, I think I'd really like to see him make that adjustment here. It's in a good spot right now. He can escape with it. Um, but every once in a while, the way they rotate around the map, it looks like it gets put into a weird position where he can't utilize it. I really like these Leap of Faith pulls on Vendetta. That seems like the best answer for Vendetta is just a Leap of Faith. And I like Cubsy just like pre-porting, anticipating the stun and like pre-porting and pulling Drake into a bad spot so Wealthy Man can clip some damage and try and carry the game. Right now they're trying to make a push, but Cubsy launching that instant Chaos Bolt, trying to scare Drake away. They stun Drake in the middle of the map. This is an excellent position to have Drake in at the moment, just blasting him away. But it looks like Cubsy's Fell Hunter went down. Drake Shadow steps in to reconnect. Will they take him out? Oh, the grip on the bomb, but it was not Vendetta, which means that Cubsy won't be able to escape. And look where his port is. His port is 90 yards, I think, over at that balcony right now, unless he moved it, so he doesn't have a way to port. He's dropping the double mortal coil, trying to peel them while Flop sits through a blinding light. Do they have follow-up after this blinding light is now the question. Does it look like it? Oh, the quaking palm. Both the men rotting down to some dots. Drake trying to connect to Cubsy. Cubsy trying to get in range of his port once again. Gets stunned up. Drake's going to have to retreat on that Deathborn from Wealthy Man. Although it wasn't the real Deathborn, just a proc. And the real one is available. Icy Veins is coming up in 20. And Wealthy Man is going to be a big threat at that point. Cubsy has Dark Soul available. This is when Cloud9 should be looking to get aggressive. Yeah, this is really when they're going to be able to kind of accelerate the match and really counter pressure. Now, you have to wonder, like, when is the best time to use it? In my opinion, what they need to do is when Drake and Prev decide to make another push, Wealthy Man pulls the trigger with all his defensive cooldowns and try to just basically take them down and kind of like a cross kill or just force them super defensive early on, allow Flop to reset his mana, although he actually does have good mana at this point. I mean, this is basically like a reset on cooldowns. Everyone has everything except dampenings now in the game. So we'll see how it does change. Drake, unfortunately, not going to be able to find his target, just kind of pinned at the pillar right now. Wealthy Man doing a good job keeping him in combat. Cubsy as well, just sending the pet in, that Fell Hunter, and keeping it alive. So maneuvering it in and out. Drake does get a restart, but he gets knocked out. 
And now Drake goes for a Garrote Silence. Big stun on Drake by Flop. I love that. Just make it really difficult for Drake to actually connect to his target. Shadow steps over to Cubsy. Big kidney shot, but he gets gripped away. I mean, this is great positioning right now by Cloud9. Drake's going to continue the push, though, and try to get aggressive. Big stun coming in from Cubsy. Can he get the decimating bolt? It's going to be a DR. Mortal Coil diminishing return. Half duration, unfortunately. Do get some crowd control on flop. He's going to trinket and fade immediately, realizing this likely follow up crowd control. There it is, a full hammer of justice. Cubs, he's in some trouble. Uses the flesh craft with the guardian spirit. Flop now caught into a fear. Cubsy on the run, but Drake is all over him. Cubsy trinkets out. He doesn't use that. He, he, I'm resolve. Oh. He uses the I'm resolve. Very oh, late. Flop does connect. Uh, Flop does connect some heals there, but I mean it's not going to be that much. At the same time, Drake's going to be a little bit scared. He's across the map. He's got no cooldowns. Brains at a polymorph. Look at this. I mean, this is really scary here for Drake. Oh, Drake! What are you gonna do? He's blinking back. He trinkets. He gets gripped by Prev. That was a, a panic situation. They overlapped so much there. Drake using his trinket. Prev gripping him to safety, and Brain actually using his divine shield there as well. So Brain now with no CC breakers would be the ticket for Cloud Nine to sort of claw their way back into this because guess what and that a 10 seconds cooldown Hubsy's h bar going to be using vanish um gonna be trading that ability with drake in a matter of time here unless they can get some pressure going onto drake and that's exactly what they're doing they're trying to pin him back and onto the pillar but here comes the kidney shot they just need some crowd control on the flop and um uh, Unfortunately, they do not find it. Prev actually moves in there. We need to start off the CC chain maybe with a silence. If they can get a silence and then Brain can make his way over there. And uh, that would be a, a recipe for success. But the problem is Wealthy Man. If Wealthy Man sheeps Prev or Brain when they're crossing the map or slows them, it's going to be very difficult to actually get that pressure that they need. So maybe they start the chain with a smoke bomb. They do have that option as well. They could go for a shiv smoke bomb as well. A lot of options here in terms of offense for quiet. They just need to. Uh, get the setup as cleanly as possible and of course wealthy man is the one breaking that up right now uh, actually being forced back to the pillar here once again he's gonna have his cloak of shadows he's gonna have his vanish so drake could actually vanish and try to set up for it as well but now club has his trinket drake's gonna have to be forced to do a go with a blind onto club there it is they do get club's trinket and they get the guardian here as well they actually did use the vendetta so I, I think that's maybe a mistake here because cubsy oh well cubsy has his unending resolve back again it has uh, <laughs> that night play definitely they're paying dividends right now for both of these teams. Drake getting short vendettas, but obviously getting short on any resolves. And as a result, they are back to that same situation as earlier. Cubsy with all of his defense available and a flop with no trinket and Drake with no blind. Let's see where they want to navigate here as we're getting into deep dampening. The Warlock's going to become more susceptible to that one shot wonder. Drake. Is he going to pull the trigger on it? No vendetta for a minute. Drake gets stun intercepted, but Siphoned is down on Cubsy. Soaking up some heals as well. Prev takes a big hit of damage from Wealthy Man. Wealthy Man is soloing Prev right now. Is he going to take him out? Prev's off healing Shadow Man after Shadow Man to stay alive. Drake Shadow steps back to Wealthy Man to try and peel him away from his team, but Brain is still in crowd control. Drake is now getting blasted. Is he going to go down? Brain gets feared for a moment. Big heals coming out from Brain now with the Avenging Wrath active, stabilizing the whole team throughout that assault. And now they need to get aggressive. They've got Bomb. They've got Vendetta. they got to pull the trigger on some big cooldowns here if they want to stay in it. Here comes the Vendetta. Dark Pack trades out for Cubs. He ports in the midfield really like him changing his portal so that he can escape immediately out of those stun locks maybe even relaying his gateway near his portal so he can use that if he needs to as well they're trying to get back to the pillar but look by porting in the middle drake has to either run in the middle or run away now cubs he gets to free cast this is a way better position huge damage rain almost doesn't get the sacrifice off in time but has managed to connect it big heal still coming through the benching wrath the flop has way more mana cloud nine in a great position here the best they've been in this entire series look at the devastation three members on Kawhi, all just dying deputy is stacking up they're getting whittled down slowly frostbolt after frostbolt will brain go down yes he will and cloud nine have managed to put a point on the board they need to do it three more times and they're going to be doing it in Kawhi's territory yeah, I mean, a small map is certainly going to help, but Cloud9, I mean, I really feel like they played this one very well in terms of their positioning. Cubsy was basically always where he needed to be uh, to actually get his portal off. Wealthy Man, I feel like, did a great job in this one. Getting counter pressure, the grips were nice from Flop as well. Really good uh, on that free supporting. Um, basically playing as far away from as possible from Cubsy. So if Cubsy would get attacked, he could just grip him away. And if he didn't have grip, he could also just throw a stun. Uh, onto Drake, which would just slow him down in the match. And 
that that's what's difficult for Drake. If he's pinned behind the pillar and he has to commit a shadow step and then we see Cubsy just get gripped, well, guess what? There's not a second shadow step. So uh, it makes it really, really difficult unless he has a cloak of shadows and sprint kind of in combination. And uh, he's not going to be able to connect to his target. And eventually, slowly, in dampening, uh, I mean, it's a really difficult situation for Brain Drake and Prev to recover from. They have no range to interrupt. Their all in has to be really, really solid. We've seen it work in the past, but uh, I feel like this game, uh, Cloud9 really stepped up. Absolutely, they did. And this is why I'm saying Cloud9's Mage Lock. It's always going to be a little bit different compared to the other major locks. They're just, they just have so much experience, especially with Wealthy Man uh, being, you know, somebody who's been playing it for such a long time um, and being so successful at it. I feel like he's really ahead of the curve when it comes to that. But look at that one shot that he sent onto Brain right there. And Brain, unfortunately, 15 seconds left there on his Divine Shield. He just got a, a death one proc there, Wealthy Man, I believe, at the end. And he just, uh, he just kind of sent it. Um, but uh, Brain... Unfortunately, it all kind of spiraled out of control when they had that push where Drake got isolated behind the pillar uh, on the enemy territory. When the Prev ripped him and Brain had to use his bubble as well to get back to his team, that's when everything spiraled out of control. And a big reason for that is because there's a lot of room to move around on. So, Sid said it. They're going to need to do it on a Kawhi's territory. Now, territory, no matter where we're going, probably going to be not too much, uh, you know, area to move around with. Going to Black Rook Hold and uh, a good map for Windwalkers. Uh, maybe they're trying to bait them into a Windwalker Mage pick, but uh, we'll see what Cloud9 does. I, I think for them, it's uh, simple. Lock in Mage Lock the entirety of the, seri of the series in true old school Cloud9 fashion and see if Kawhi can force you off of it. Um, Mage, Lock, uh, Mage Windwalker, you won a series with it earlier, but it hasn't looked convincing so far. Lost three games or two games with it. So I, I would like to see them just stay with the Major Lock and see what they can get done. And that's exactly what they will do. Hawaii, um, they, I don't know if Drake plays Outlaw, but Ooh. saw Outlaw Mage win, uh, you know, in, in games that looked kind of similar and a little bit of damp games. Uh, I don't know about Outlaw Shadow Priest, though. If Drake has been playing Outlaw, uh, I mean, this guy's playing Wind Walker. He plays the Seraphim play Outlaw. No, I mean, uh, it's probably on Fire Mage. You don't have to play with the Shadow Freeze. That's, uh, that's true. That's true. I was like, wait, what? Yeah, he's, a, he's an outlaw main like me now. <laughs> yeah. It's no, uh, but that is an option. Uh, outlaw definitely is OP uh, into these uh, wizard cleaves. Hey, I'm seems. making a mage then, okay? So if you need a mage for your outlaw room. Yeah, we'll see. I prefer playing with the Destro Warlocks, you know, but we'll, we'll see. see. It yeah. I, see. I like Warlocks. That's a warlock fan. I see. But I'll, I'll, I'll play. I'm, I'm going to be I'll real though. Moon Good luck finding a Destro that wants to play with someone other than a mage. <laughs> well, luckily, I made friends with all the destruction warlocks in North America. So you're just going to guilt them battle into it. You're going to hold them hostage. Like, if you want to play with my mage, you better play with my outlaw rogue. <laughs> Is that what's going to mm. go on here? <laughs> yeah, I don't think extort that's your Destro lock friends. <laughs> no, nah, I wouldn't do that to them. <laughs> I'll be dropping the ice walls all day. But yeah, Kawhi, they're going with the same composition. We're, we're really like, the only thing I can think of for Drake is like, they just gotta, they gotta have every tool available when they go all in. That's the big thing for me is like, you can't just have Shadow Step. Like if you're going to go all in, you need Cloak, you need Shadow Step, and you need Sprint. If you have those three, you can stay on Cubsy for a really long time. I mean, even if he's getting gripped, even if he's porting, even if you know he does everything he can at gates, you're still going to be able to get there. And I think that's what we need to see from Drake is he just needs to you know, stockpile all of that mobility and then uh, utilize it to actually take down um, Cubsy, uh, I think is what I'd like to see. Yeah, I also want to kind of see if they can maybe do a little flop uh, swap uh, because flop has been triggering every single blind. So I think there is an opening where they go for, you know, like a... Uh, Kidney shot, hammer of justice, silence type of combo. And uh, if they have Vendetta in that moment, uh, they can definitely take him down. Because the, the big reason why Cubsy is able to survive a lot of these Vendettas is because Flop is just playing 100,000 yards back, you know? And they can't really get the CC. Brain needs to get on top of him to get the CC. And they need to connect the Kidney shot at the same time. But when they're crossing, when Brain is crossing, there is a wealthy man standing in front of him, uh, you know, just having a field day, basically serving ice cream. So uh, it's a problem. Uh, <laughs> Brain is either getting sheeped or he's getting swapped to when he's crossing that map. 
and then he can't continue the push. So for Brain, uh, honestly, they need to get him to a checkmate position and just bubble and cross the map. Uh, that's like one way to do it, but um, they can avoid all of this if they just vanish or restealth and, and actually just do the attack onto Flop because the reason why Flop has to be cross CC'd is because of that uh, sepsis. He's the one who dispels it. And if it gets dispelled, Vendetta, uh, what did you call it, Sid? It becomes a, a wet noodle or something, I think puppy you said. Dog. A puppy dog. Yeah, that's it. Puppy dog burst versus like full grown <laughs> hound dog. Versus Chromagus. Yeah, <laughs> versus Chromagus. <laughs> uh, but what about maps? I feel like we talk about maps all the time. And I feel like we were in a position where it's like, don't pick Black or Cold in a, ro a mage lock because you're going to get locked in a room. So you know, I think last weekend uh, our mantra was that Black or Cold was the best map. But now we started talking about that's my, getting... I think you guys like the wall is nice against the room, but it's not like I feel like it doesn't. I don't think it rule. controls the game, but I feel like we've been debating maps and there's been some debate as to whether or I... not Black or Cold is bad or good into Mage Lock. In my opinion, I think Black or Cold is one of the best maps into Mage Lock. Like, I don't like this map at all playing Mage I Lock. I agree. Uh, I really don't like it at all. So I think this is a good pick uh, by Kawhi. Um, Drake's always going to have access to that central pillar, and that's just really, really important. You can go to the central pillar. You can go to like the uh, the off ramp, um, the skateboard ramp, as we said. You can go hide behind that and uh, get a re-stealth. Um, also go into the rooms, kind of bait Cubsy into the open. Um, but yeah, I like the small map. Easy access to the line of sight. It's going to be a uh, immediate blind sap on flop. I think they're going flop. They're, they're just trying to set it up a big all in here on the flop. Wealthy Are man? They? No, they're going after Wealthy Man. Can they dispel the Alter Time? It is going to be a Garot, so they do manage to get it. And that was not even the Vendetta. So Wealthy Man might be the new target in this match. Uh, you might be feeling a little bit scared. If they can get the Cold Snap and a second Ice Block quickly, I feel like Kawhi is going to be in a really good spot. Yeah, I feel like they could have just blinded Wealthy Man and got the same result, though. But um, we're going to see um, why. Take that trade and go back with it. Let's see what else they can do to try to snowball that lead. So uh, it kind of signals that they are going to be going after Wealthy Man, which is what we saw work for the Outlaw Rogues in Europe. But uh, they could still commit on the There's options here, but it would make no sense considering that they went after Wealthy Man and got his Ice Block. And Flop still has his Trinket now, though, as a result. So I like that. Now they're going to silence Flop and go after Cubsy here. Uh, but do they have a Hammer of Justice? Because this is where Cubsy is just going to get dispelled. He did commit the Vendetta there as well. So, uh, actually, no, they committed right now to Wealthy Man. Big damage coming in here onto Wealthy Man. Big hits with that smoke bomb. And Cubsy actually getting the Ray. They have multiple pressure points. So that's the, basically the idea. They want to have pressure onto Cubsy as well as onto Wealthy Man. Full Hammer of Justice secured onto Flop. Look at Crab. He's going in. Fades. Uh, to buy himself a little bit of time. Panda Rachel coming in there onto Flop. Flop trinkets it. Uh, 29 seconds onto the blind. And that was the under too. resolve. Yeah, this is a oh. checkmate situation. Yeah, unless they get KO'd right now, though. Big damage coming out from Cubs. He's got the Dark Soul active. Flop man as well. Doing a lot of work here. Um, but in F1 has timed out. So this is the checkmate situation. You have Cloak. You have Blind. You have Vendetta in, in 10 seconds. Press every single button. Press Bubble as well when you go in. Bubble, watch flop, and send it on Abdi. Right now, though, going after Wealthy Man. They might need to use something. Ice Wall coming up. And that was no surgical precision on that one. Now they're going to go after Abdi. This is the moment. And that uh, is available already. Use it on Wealthy Man there. I don't like that too much. They, I feel like they could have just lined it flop and won on Cubsy, but so um, now they won't have that. So Drake isn't playing Night Fate. He doesn't have Sepsis. He's playing Necro Lord, and he's got the oh. Bone Spike, and he's doing split damage. They're just trying to win on mana. They're just trying to run Flop Oom or get a triple kill against Cloud9. It's a completely different strat from them, I think. And so far, it's working. They have a mana lead. They've been getting pressure on multiple players, but the Vendetta's not going to not nearly be as punchy um, without the Sepsis attached to it. Uh, they'll have to wait and see if they can pull off a kill with this spread damage. Full blind, no trinket, chasing down Cubsy in the room here. Sap out of the blind, still no trinket, cutting down through that dark pack. Match point here for Cloud9. Can Kawhi just close it out? Sap is still sitting on flop into a full hammer of justice. This could be it for Cubsy. Kidney shot connects. Six seconds away from his unending resolve. Flop comes out. No, into a silence. silence. That's it. Two seconds away on match point. And Cubsy. Oh! What? <laughs> that was the biggest heal I think we've ever seen. Cubsy goes down to 1% health. 1% health and Flop saves the day with the Guardian Spirit Serenity. 100% health instantaneously. Crazy stuff coming in uh, in this game number five. Cubsy stays alive. That was the checkmate situation. But 
Cloud9 flips the board. That being said, Vendetta's available. This is still a nightmare. <laughs> I mean, he's got the Vendetta. Comes, he's still in so much trouble. There's going to be the Vendetta. Trev actually being forced back to the pillar does get topped off. Comes, he's just going to portal away, but he's taking a ton of damage. The brain is just charging in, trying to throw down some hammers. Flop not in crowd control, though. Should be able to stabilize him. Looking for a big heal. Does manage to find it at the same time. Wealthy Man blasting Drake. Drops the ice wall, forces him into the open. Allowing Cubsy to get on some damage, but it seems like Drake should be able to survive. Maybe he's getting low. Fink is up right now, so he's able to shrug off a lot of that incoming damage, but they are winning on mana. The strategy on the small map. I like this adaptation from Kawhi. Yeah, definitely. And uh, the strategy makes a lot more sense, though. But I do think that they had, uh, for sure, a, a clear win right there if they just did it. Uh, but now they have a similar situation. 24 second CD on the blind. Could go for another big play. Just keep up the multi pressure, though, because this time comes he has the unending resolve right now. Welcome, I think, massive damage here, actually. Wolf is really struggling, but I think he did sneak away there. Get a couple of ticks uh, in that room. So uh, now, once again, they have them all pinned at the pillar. This is an opportunity to come down and get some drinks, maybe. Can he do it? It looks like he is actually sitting down right there. He just sat down, so Wop is going to be getting some mana. And if that's the win condition, we need to pull the trigger right now. And they're going to do it. Smoke bomb comes in. Wop tries to play the blind, but he gets blinded fully, and he gets the ray of hope. But it's going to be it's going to be a positive one as well. So Flop doing a great job here. You get the sap there onto Flop. CC chain just going to be endless right now. Big damage coming in here. Drake actually cloaks the mortal card right there. Do they have any follow up? Brain is pushing in. They get the silence, but Flop, beautiful soul shape, but it won't be enough. And ladies and gentlemen, Kawhi has done it this time around, beating Cloud9 in the grand finals here for North America. And they are going to take another cup victory here after uh, having one somewhat shaky cup. They're able to come back and just completely dominate this region once again. And uh, what an insane performance from all three members, uh, constantly swapping and, and, and learning. And, and this is a team that actually knocked them out now, that is, knocked them down to that lower bracket. Why just came back and didn't skip the beat. So really great performance by both of these teams as well. Uh, Cloud9 as well, uh, starting to look a lot uh, like their former selves uh, with this new roster. It seems like a constant learning experience from both teams. Um, like with this, the series prior to this, they won with Windwalker Mage. Then they're forced to switch off. They could have maybe found some footing with that Windwalker Warlock comp. Maybe we see that in the circuit. If they can get flop practice on a Paladin, Magelock pulls off a win on Tiger's Peak. But here in this game, like that was the miracle moment that Cubsy should have probably already have been dead here at this point in the series. And then, then Kawhi adapt and go Necrolord assassination and focus on spread damage, multi-target pressure with the Shadow Priest. And that really overwhelmed flop. You can see that pressure overwhelming here with Waltiman dipping low and then having to spread his heals out onto Cubsy and committing his resources to two targets really made it tough for him to heal this game and ultimately was overwhelmed by a CC chain uh, towards the end of it. Here we see them blast back on Prev. They get dispersion, they get decent pressure. I was thinking like maybe they can actually win this here, uh, but on this step kidney, they get dark packed with the bomb. Cubsy portals out and then they walk into full blind. Flop has no trinket. Cubsy's like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pop in any resolve. I'm not going to be greedy. I'm going to pop that vendettas with it. Uh, and I'm going to try and get to my gateway. I'm going to use gateway and go into the middle of the map. But Drake is not snared. He cloaks to immune all crowd control. They know that it's over. There's no cooldowns left. Vendetta is still rolling and the CC chain is endless. Flop tries to escape, but it's like a last ditch effort. Brain knows it's over, chases him down and fleshes him out. And that's going to be it. Kawhi are going to be cup four champions, really asserting dominance in North America. Looking to be like a favorite to qualify out of the circuit if I was going to be making any bets right now. really goes to show how adaptable this team is, how ready they are to make those quick decisions and adaptations mid-tournament uh, to, you know, solve any problems that they do come across. So well done to Kawhi, huge deserved win. Um, and they are, you know, I feel like fully deserved, especially after this weekend, to be our number one seeded team um, in the North American region. So that is, uh, that's going to wrap that up for, excuse me, my cat decided to make an appearance. Uh, it's going to wrap that up for, for the North American region. And I, I feel like I'm just as excited for the NA teams as I am EU. I feel like we've got a lot of fierce competition and uh, definitely quite a bit different of a structure when you compare it to EU. You know, we've got you know, over in EU, Kungana, just way up at the top there. And then everybody else it tied literally for that second place. And then 
uh, North America. A bit of a different story, Super Bees. Yeah, North America is a little bit, I don't know, Kauai are kind of putting themselves in the Kangana position uh, for North America. Like, I think if we get the points tallied up, that it's probably also going to be a pretty big lead for them at this point. Um, with three and a half men coming in at third. So I feel like they're bubbling up to the top now as kind of the top dog. Uh, and you can kind of draw the parallels between those teams. Um, but I'm interested to see what compositions they practice with this downtime now. Um, and with the creation catalyst coming out and being able to craft your tier sets uh, and catch your character up, it's going to open more opportunities. Because we saw a lot of like even creativity within this series. Like Cloud9 played the comp they have never played, the Windwalker Destro. And then we saw everyone, I was thinking like, the only option for Asa Rogue is Night Fae. Like, why would you not be Sepsis Vendetta? And then Drake just plays Necrolord Asa in the last game, and it's like, he's just killing the whole team. So it's like, there's still options and builds that have been left unexplored. Uh, and that's what I'm most excited to see moving forward now. Yeah, I, I am as well. You know, it's to to go off of that, Super Tease, it's like every time we talk to some of these players, uh, uh, an issue that they're all kind of facing is the discrepancy between the tournament realm and what they have available in terms of resources over there, you know, versus what they've got on the live ladder. So I do wonder if that sort of month between the circuit and now will sort of catch those up just a little bit um, and they don't have to rely just on wargaming to you know, get time in as a team together to, to practice those comps that they want to face off against. So uh, that being said, we have our top eight for both regions and, uh, you know, we will of course be returning as soon as we can high copper um but that is uh that's it for the awc cups for now we've got one weekend off and then the next we have mdi coming up but let's take a look at the points uh you're definitely right super tease Kawhi up there at 420 points and then three and a half men um at 300 so maybe not quite a gap as we do see in in eu uh but there is you know a, obviously a huge difference points wise between first and second um, and then I wonder if just as a recap, we can also go and look over at the European teams and their standings. We did, of course, wrap that up earlier today. Um, yeah, 460 for with Kungana. And then second place is looking for org SK pieces in my way, all at 280. So uh, yeah, interesting comparison for sure. I feel like the narrative for both for both regions here for a while for these cups was like, ah, oh, you know, there's not really one top dog in the region. We don't really know who's going to win, but that has definitely shaped up to be pretty top heavy um, for both regions. So interesting how we ended the season. So now we are going to, the next time we see any of these teams is going to be in the circuit. And that of course will be May 28th. You can see down there at the bottom will be the arena world championship circuit. And then we've got some other dates coming up. April 19th is the expansion reveal. April 22nd will be the Mythic Dungeon International. The time trials have already happened. If you want more information on that, the teams that we're going to be seeing, the times that they got in the dungeons and the keystones and the affixes and all of that good stuff, you can get a lot of that information over on Radar.io, or I'm sure there's also going to be some upcoming stuff on the WoW Esports Twitter page, so make sure you guys are following that. Also, make sure you subscribed here and you've also got that notification button on so you know exactly when we do go live for MDI when that comes up here very shortly. Like I said, we have a gap weekend coming up after this weekend and then the next weekend will be that mdi starting so there's plenty more wow esports to come up but i do want to give a tremendous thank you to every single one of you watching from home for supporting us for, for supporting the broadcast for supporting you know all of the teams and players that have been competing and also a huge thank you to everyone working behind the scenes a lot of amazing people are working to you know make these tournaments possible there's mods there's admins there's production all kinds of stuff it's not just the four of us obviously here so one more big congratulations to our final cup winners kungana and Kawhi. and does anyone have any you know final Final words before we sign off here youtube.com slash warcraft subscribe most definitely subscribe well that is going to end it for us thank you guys so much and we will see you next time